First things first, we're gonna go out and find another nut chapel. And the way I shall do that is by flying very, very far away, building a portal, that's not my best efforts, and then heading on through. And from here I wanna search for deserts and not be stuck in a cave. I finally made it out and tracked down a desert. Here's the first of the pyramids and no nut chapel in here. Seems that this one is directly in a village. If I go into this person's house, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what on earth is going on here, mate? Don't mind me, just, just mining on through. There's a farm in here. This is a very, very cool one, to be honest. But the villagers have not, they have delivered, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I take it all back, guys. Well, I never. I only took two of these pyramids, and we have a nut chapel. You guys enjoy, but mine the TNT down there. Now I can build another portal and head on home. And it's very nice having all of these nut chapels, but I think it would be a lot nicer if they were all on display. So that's the next thing that I'm going to build. There's going to be some pretty major changes down here by the time I've finished. To start off with, we're going to be going a lot more open plan. This beacon is going to have to go. I definitely didn't plan to do this five minutes ago. It's a bit of, bit of a spur of the moment thing. So I'm thinking all these gaps up here should be changed to be blackstone. And then if I mine out this ceiling, then I can fill all this in as well. It's starting to look better. Now, emphasis on the word starting. I think there's still a long way to go to get it to ship shape condition. More stone bricks around here is going to help. Let's also get rid of this excess stone. And I'll try black stone underneath. I think I like the way that this looks. I I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this, to be honest. But let's see what a checkerboard pattern of diamond ore would look like. It's got an interesting look, but it's it's not quite right. Solid deep slate does look a bit better. We're trying a few different things. What do you think? Bit of glowstone, beacons. <laughs> Gone all out here, haven't I? Now, where am I going to put the notch apples? Well, I'm going to grab some glass panes and some glass. And see how a wall along along here would look. And so this is how the wall is going to look. Next, I'm going to put all of them in. You know what I'm starting to think already? I think these shouldn't be glass panes. I think they should be actual glass. Let's try that instead. If I place them quick enough, Look at that, they won't even pop off. And that is my display board complete. I've got space for 12 more, which should keep me going for a while. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Make that 11 more. It just looks a little skew for now. And now there's, there's just something missing from my house. Yes. <laughs> We need a new beacon ray. And I reckon building one that actually alternates colours could be very, very cool indeed. It's a very, very simple contraption. I've got all the materials that I need. This is where the beacon shall be. Now to start adding everything in. Now to add pistons in these different spots. And I'm going to need three of each glass, so it's going to be up this high. There's also going to be pistons behind the higher ones as well, just like that. Starting to feel a little bit claustrophobic in here. Let's go and add four tick delay repeaters all along here. This will be for going into every single one of the pistons. Got all slime mechanism here and the final thing to be done is cover all of these blocks in redstone that is all the dust down and theoretically when i do this it, it should be working and look at that it's it's changing color now to dig underneath of it and turn this single layered beacon into a full one now to try and get out of here and that looks pretty good if you ask me as you can see it just cycles through all of the colors all of the different shades yeah, I really like that. And so the Notch Apple display room is more or less complete. And I got quite a few emerald blocks from that, which means I can repair the floor in my treasure room. The repairing of this place will uh, will have to be done later. And now, I don't know what I did, but I have lost my food shulker box. Don't know where I left it. I'm thinking maybe it was at the EOL farm. So I'm going to go and have a look. There doesn't seem to be any sign of it. So instead, I'm going to head to the Hoglin farm and AFK there for a bit more food. Now that plenty of time has passed and I've got loads of pork chops, I'm going to grab a new orange shulker box and fill them up. <laughs> I'm sure the other one will turn up eventually. It feels strange every time I come upstairs and I see something completely different to what I'm used to. But it has to be said, I did really, really like it. And something else that I really, really liked is somebody downloaded my world and then tweeted me a picture where they had colour coordinated my beacons. You know what I think? <laughs> well, I think the white stained glass is kind of useless, but I think it makes the beams look even better. And now it's time to build a collection system for my end of light farm, which does unfortunately mean building another update suppressor. I was hoping that I'd be done with them by now, but it looks like I'm going to have to build one just, just one final time. This one's going to be a lot smaller and more compact than the last one, because this slice bottle right here needs to be much much higher up. Also, here's all the items I got for briefly running the EOL farm last time. <laughs> Quite a lot. In fact, if I just fly on down, I don't think I can even begin to fit all of this into shulker boxes. My goodness, guys. I'm just starting to realise how crazy OP this farm is going to be. Like, I can't even, you know, fit anywhere near all this stuff into a shulker box. Almost feels sad just letting all of those items despawn. Now, before building this suppressor, I'm creating a massive platform so that when I break it all, <laughs> I won't lose all my items into lava. But now I've finished that, let's grab the sandstone and start building this thing. And just like all suppressors, this one will involve placing a lot of rails. That's the first layer done. It's definitely much faster building this one than the last one, but different types of suppressors are useful for different things. This suppressor wouldn't have been useful for doing all of the slice portals in the AOL farm because it was too small, but for the, the sake of this little slice portal, it's pretty useful. And that is the second layer completed, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and the eighth layer is also done, which means 
They're all done. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? There's just a little bit more redstone to be added. These rails along here is where the update suppressing will be taking place. Once I place this redstone block, everything is done. I can grab the obsidian and the flint and steel, build a portal right here here and I can turn on the suppressor by doing that. Light up the portal because I forgot to do it. <laughs> if I break this obsidian, watch what happens. It's a beautiful moment. Look at that. Nothing happens to the portal. Do the same with these obsidian blocks. And there you have it. A completely perfectly working <laughs> slice portal that's a bit higher than that one. And I have the very fun project of just mining absolutely everything up. And that is the whole thing removed just like that. That was a lot quicker than having to build it. And now before building the next part of the collection system, I think it's a good idea for me to fly over here, head to my pigman farm, and repair all my items. And now I think it's time I fix the light levels on my EOL farm. This is going to require loads and loads of netherrack, and a lightning rod will also be very useful. Now before I do any of the light suppressing, I first need to build another giant roof at Y equals minus 51. I should also probably go to sleep, otherwise I'm going to end up with millions of bats spawning. That just sounds like a very stressful experience. The reason that my skylight suppression didn't work before is because I accidentally built this platform a couple of blocks too high. But the person who made the EWorld tutorial sensei has explained it to me, so now <laughs> there'll be no more mistakes. And finally, the entire roof is finished. I don't ever want to have to do that ever again. Now to grab a bit of string, start the timer on the light suppressor and head all the way back to the EOL farm. It's currently on the timer so that I can actually load in all of these chunks. And whilst I wait for it to kick in, I'm going to go ahead and add a lightning rod up here because otherwise lightning could mess up the levels on this farm. You know, if someone sets on fire, it'll brighten up, all that kind of thing. So this will just absorb all the lighting, lightning and thunderstorm and solve that problem. Enough time has passed, I can go ahead and fly around. And as you can see, new chunks are just not loading in. That means the light suppressor is definitely working. Now to turn on chunk borders, and I'm gonna add a piece of string to every chunk. That will make it so that the lighting doesn't break at a later date on the farm. Adding the string does slightly lower the rates, but it's only by a very, very tiny amount. And if it means that the farm is never ever gonna break, then that is worth it to me. Now to save and quit the game, then kill Minecraft in Task Manager. Then when I load it back up, the game will still think that it's dark down there, which is why things like bats are spawning. And now I just have to try and get back to spawn. Of course, you know, we are going to be <laughs> overrun with bats. And I'm just going to mine my way out of here. Next, I can fly up to the suppressor at spawn and switch it off. Now to create the drop shoots, a lot of glass will be needed, as well as hoppers, droppers, and a bunch of other redstone items. Let's also grab a shulker box, and then it can be filled with lava. First things first, let's create a bit of a border around this portal. And this area right here is what is going to deal with all of the spiders. The outside is going to have glass with gates all around here and lava in these parts. And so the spiders will get taken out by the lava and their items go into the hoppers. And now to build the exact same thing on this side. There we go, that looks perfect to me. And now to build the massive glass chute, which is what all of these mobs are going to fall down. That is now complete. And I've got a few warped fence gates, but I could probably do with quite a few more. So I'm going to fly over to this warped forest and mine up some of the trees. Then all of those can be turned into way more gates. We've got, we've got plenty now. And now to build the system that's going to deal with the excess bats. It's going to be lava like this, and then the bats will fly into it, no the mob can. The bats will stop spawning. <laughs> Don't do that, SP. I was about to say that the bats will stop spawning once you've been running the farm for about a minute. But doing this will mean you haven't got about a thousand of them just chilling in the, in the tube. And now I am fresh out of lava. Well, thankfully we're in a place where lava isn't a... Uh, isn't that hard to find? I can very quickly restock by doing this. And now it's back to placing it all again. And that is all of the lava down. Those bats don't stand a chance. And before I can do much more, I need to get rid of all these portals and the glass down here. Goodbye, original slice portal. It was uh, <laughs> nice knowing you. Well, that is pretty much all the glass gone. I'll, uh, I'll deal with that a lot later. Let's just get this chute brought down a bit lower. And now I need to quickly pop home, grab some pistons and iron bars. Then I'm going to head to the end, fly to an end city and grab lots of end rods. I'll also grab a bunch of chorus fruit so that next time I need end rods... <laughs> I don't have to come all this way. And now I'm going to place iron bars and also end rods along here. And in theory, all of this redstone should make it so that... Yay, look at that. We've got a moving floor now. And so mobs will land on here and then they will fall through... But they will take damage and probably die before that happens. Okay, what am I doing here? I was fresh out of firework rockets, would you believe it? So yeah, the items will be able to fall through, but the mobs won't. Except for the baby slimes, which I will deal with next. Now to build the exact same thing as there on this level. The reason I use a mix of iron bars and end rods is because sometimes the items will get stuck if I only use end rods. And if I use only iron bars, as you can see, they all attach up to each other. And this one should now be working perfectly as well. And this right here is the part where pistons are going to push all of the items into the middle. This will make them much easier to deal with in the next section. And all this creates a nice little clock that pushes each piston individually like so. And any items that are just sprinkled around like this, notice how they will gradually 
get pushed into the middle. For this next bit, we're going to need blue ice, as well as some slime and string. And to get blue ice, I'm going to have to mine up loads of all of this ice. However, my pickaxe probably won't survive that. Also, apparently hidden under the snow here, there's shulker boxes with loads of ice in them. That's kind of cool. Might as well start crafting. And before I grab any more ice, let's get this pickaxe repaired. That's everything fixed up. Now to mine up loads of ice. Made it to the end and this is all of the ice I've got. Time to craft it up. And it gives me a grand total of about 73 blue ice. But wait, there's more ice here. And that means I have 89 pieces. Actually, 79 I am. <laughs> apparently can't count. For the next part, a lot of redstone components will be needed. And I think for now, I've got enough of everything that I need. Let's go and build a massive storage system. So the items are going to land on this block right here. Let's also turn this off. The noise is kind of driving me crazy. There's going to be a slime here and a sticky piston that will push the slime block. The magma's also driving me crazy, so I'm just covering it up. And from here, I would dig in this direction, but as you can see, there's, there's lava in the way. And rather than clear out the lava, I'll just go ahead and make it so the items go in this direction. So the items will go on this blue ice and be fired over in this direction. And they're going to go about this far before dropping downwards. And if I place a few ender chests here, when the items are fired along, as you can see, because this is slightly smaller than the block, it's kind of partway on this block as well. And then hoppers along here can go into comparators. And when they get fired along this ice, these hoppers will be able to collect them. It's a pretty foolproof plan, but for the amount of items that are going to be coming through here, I'm going to need a lot of hoppers. Also, after a bit of further thought, I'm going to make this pathway right here quite a bit longer. I also get the very fun job of having to deal with lava because we're in the nether. This is the general shape of it so far. If I may go any further than this and out the chunk, then the chunk will not be loaded at all. Only a 3x3 three three around that portal will work. A bit of string here is going to detect when items come down and activate this piston. As you can see, it works like a charm. Then some more string here will extend this piston. So if I go ahead and test it out, okay, that went to there and... What happened here? I'm just an idiot and can't do basic redstone apparently. Time for take two. So they are going to be shot along there. And then obviously these items are going straight into this hopper. But if I fill all of these up, then they'll be shot a lot further along. And this is how the corner system is going to work. So when an item gets to that corner, as you can see, it, it will get pushed. Although... Why has it got stuck? You know, I think it's in my best interest to move everything a bit lower. That way there'll be no need to worry about items getting stuck. And on take two, everything seems to be working as intended. The blue ice in this direction goes all the way down there. Now to turn another corner and repeat the same process again. I also think it's time that I got rid of this massive... Oh, <laughs> don't do that. But yeah, there's a massive lake right here. And I think it's time I got out my scaffolding and got rid of it all. Finally, I have made it down to bedrock. Now I can get back to building my storage system. Hard to believe that not that long ago this was full of lava. Look at that, found a bit of ancient debris whilst I'm digging everything out. Makes sense that this would happen when you're mining such a massive area. Plenty more of the area has been mined out. But before I go any further, I should definitely heal up my pickaxe. I don't want to have a breakage on my hands. And I also need to mine up lots more ice. Getting blue ice is a very expensive task. I went around this a few times and managed to get 60 blue ice from all of that, in fact. 61. Now to repair my pickaxe again and continue building this collection system. And once again, I have run out of ice. To be completely honest, I've probably got enough where there'll be enough hoppers to collect everything. But just in case, I'm going to mine up even more ice. I only got 14 blue ice from all that. I'm thinking it may just be quicker to mine it from the bottom of these icebergs. And I can also get loads of packed ice this way as well. From that, I got so much blue ice. Yeah, that should see me through for the rest of the build. I've been adding the slime piston system to this, but then I ran out of ender chests. I could use something cheaper like normal chests, like a normal person would, but hey, I'm rich. I've got loads of obsidian, so I might as well use it. Although despite being so apparently rich, I only have 32 blaze powder, which isn't a huge amount. It's enough to make the ender chests I need to finish the build, but I should definitely take a trip to the blaze farm at some point. Now to add the hoppers, the comparators, and all of the redstone. I have now run out of comparators and I'm nearly out of redstone, just a few blocks left. So I shall fly home, buy more redstone, stone, which mends my pickaxe at the same time. And then I'm going to craft many more comparators and many more repeaters. And with these new materials, I can finish adding all of the redstone. It's going to be a very straightforward sorting system. You've seen me build these many times before. It'll just involve these hoppers going into chests with redstone torches right here, repeaters going into those torches, and then redstone dust on this bit. And that creates an item sorter. And the next thing I'm going to need to build under here is some shulker box loaders. But to build those, I'm going to need loads and loads of shulker shells. And this shulker farm was pretty good good when it was first built, but it's time I built a much faster one using portals. And I reckon right here is the perfect place to build it. 
Perfect. That's the area cleared out. Now to grab all of the materials and begin building this. 19 by 19 is going to be the size of the portals and there's going to be a glass wall one block away from it. Now that that's complete and I'm going to build another portal right here followed by another wall and another portal and I have now completed building five portals. Right here is where the shulker that is going to be duplicating itself is going to go and these stairs are good because the shulkers can only attach to one side and in here is going to be where my snow golems go but uh, I've got a problem. I don't have a single pumpkin. Although that's that's kind of a lie. I have loads and loads of pumpkins. They just need to be harvested. Also, it would appear that the golems have made an absolute mess of this. Yeah, I, I just need to rebuild the iron farm higher up. Got loads of pumpkins from that. Over, yeah, 49 of them. And there's some in here as well. Let's grab those. Now to carve 24 of them, which for some reason is a very satisfying process. The seeds can be sent for composting and all of these can be mined up. Now to begin spawning in all the golems. That's 24 of them in there. Any more and uh, they'd start dying. And this trap door will keep them safe. And now we can continue building the chamber for the shulker. She's going to have a banner right here. I'm going to waterlog the trapdoor and add two more obsidian right there. Next, I'll light a portal and build a corresponding portal above the bedrock. Back in the day, this was all very useful for transporting shulkers, but I think I can break it all now. Right here is where I'm going to build a bit of a collection system. Pistons along here are going to be pushing the shulkers, and these observers will detect if there is a shulker actually there. Same thing's going to be on this side, and every piston will have redstone behind it, so you can see if something updates. Okay, well, don't do that, SP. Maybe just with a normal block. As you can see, the pistons extend. Going to use slabs to stop the shulkers teleporting onto the observers. Trap doors to hold them in place. And I've just realised these pistons and observers are in the wrong place. Couldn't even build it symmetrical with the other side, could I? Now everything is built correctly. And now it's working much better. Everything is spawn-proofed. String along here will allow the observers to detect the shulkers. And wither roses will damage them. I'm going to do the same on this side. And all I need to do now is build a system for a backup shulker. Which will be just in case my main shulker dies and I need to replace it. Just realised I've actually built this on the wrong side and uh, it needs to be redone. After moving it to this side, I realised it doesn't actually matter which side you put it on, but uh, yeah, so that should work fine. Let's light up the portal, extend the storage down a little bit further and remove a bit more around the edge of this portal here. In fact, I'm just going to completely remove the portal full stop and everything's complete. All I need is a few shulkers. We're going to go and head through this just to make sure that it connects up properly. And look at that, it does. And I think it's going to be easiest and makes the most sense to just take the shulker from this farm. So the shulker will be able to teleport onto this block and I just need to make a long bridge all the way to there. That is this bridge complete and that is all of the rails down as well. Right here, I've set up the area where the shulker is going to go. Steal this minecart for the process. Okay, well, <laughs> please come out. And now when I break this in theory... Oh, oh no, don't kill it. No, no. Okay, that could all go wrong. I think it's okay. Bit of a close shave, but let's just get rid of the lava before I do this. The shulker has teleported onto the piston, so we'll go ahead and break the pistons now. Right now it's searching. Okay, yeah, perfect. It has now found the block that needs to land on. I'm then going to be very brave and flick this lever. There you go. Look at the snow golem send a few stray snowballs. It's no use, mate. You're just, you're just too far away. And now the shulker is traveling at very high speeds down here. He's going he's gonna to drop into my chamber. He is. He's on the block I need him to be. I'm going to push the pistons in. I can break all of this scaffolding and it's ready. The farm is completely ready. I'll just light up all of the portals and flick this lever, which will set the farm off. All right, there we go. We've got a shulker. Where is it? I think he's already gone through, you know. And would you look at that, guys? It's um, it's not properly working. This is going to get very messy very, very fast if I do not quickly get rid of this iron golem portal. Don't teleport me through. Just break, okay? We can make a new iron farm that's bigger and better. Now I've got 60 million shulkers to deal with, but that's nothing I can't handle. That's the last of them. And I'm very happy to see that they are now going through into here. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do that, but it's working. They're getting taken out by the Wither Roses. My backup shulkers are right there, and already the shulker shells are coming in. So whilst that is very, very good news, one duplicating shulker is... It's just not enough for me. So yes, you guessed it. I'm going to build another one of these so I can get twice as many shulker shells. Also, a wither rose with a turtle egg on top will deal with any stray pigmen that come through the portals. Before I begin building, I wanted a bit of snow to spawn more golems than I... Uh... I got a little bit carried away, but all this snow will be very useful for a future date. And over the last 15 minutes or so, my farm has got me nearly two stacks of shulker shells. I'm pretty happy with the performance, although I am now going to make it much, much bigger. I built another two layers of the farm. And to finish it off, I just need the third shulker, which is going to go in this minecart. Let's go ahead and place a minecart right there, which has sent a shulker through the portal. Then I head over here and flick this lever, which sends him on down. Yes, it does. And to get him properly in, I just turn that on. Perfect. Let's go and break the pistons. And I'm going to light up all of the portals. And that is three shulker farms complete. If I flick this lever, 
the farm will begin. All the other ones seem to be working fine as well, so it is going at triple the speed as it was before. And just look at all of the shulker shells that I'm getting. All of this is definitely going to be enough to work for my EOL farm drops. And now to build the shulker storage system. Most of the items I'm going to need for the shulker loader are in that box, but I'm also going to need a load of dispensers and a load of barrels. And now let's start building this. So we'll start with a couple of hoppers coming down. Into this hopper there will be a observer and another one facing down. Piston right here that will have a barrel behind it. This dispenser is what is going to send out the shulker boxes and this comparator is going to detect if they're full. Another observer is going to be there with a torch on the end and then an observer kind of going well it'll be going this way no it'll be going this way and if i put a shulker box on here that is almost full just for demonstration purposes it can be like that and a stack of items can be filtering in and once this box gets filled up that uh, does that and uh, you can see the shulker will go into there and yeah, okay, I was wondering where that comparator came from. That was just from me earlier. And a new shulker box gets placed right there. So yeah, it's, it works perfectly. And so now I'm going to create a row of these all the way along underneath this ice. And it seems that the easiest way to do that is just to place every single thing in a row. Or at the very least, that makes it much faster to build. And that is 19 of these all in a row completed. Now to complete the redstone for the sorting system part and start creating shulker boxes. All of them just go into this barrel. And this has made me realise that I'm missing some hoppers because there should be hoppers like that so that they can actually go into the dropper. I have now run out of shulker shells, so I've just got these 11 left, but I have still got quite a few barrels left to fill, as you can see. So I'm gonna fly over to the shulker farm and see just how many shells I've now got. Look at that, that's a lovely little boost. And it seems like the farm is working as intended. There's shulkers around, although apparently the shulker in this top one has died. But thankfully, it's a pretty quick process to get it back. Now I just need a bit of scaffolding here. Activate it to a rail on top with a lever. Open this up with sticky pistons. Send a shulker through. And now to send him down and close that, push him in and okay tell what i don't think that's meant to happen always remember to turn the farm off when loading in a new shulker time for take two and that is mission successful now to light up the portal and turn the farm on and whilst i was dealing with that extra shulker loads more shells have been coming through and all of these will be used to get even more shulker boxes all of the shulker boxes along here for the rotten flesh are done now to craft a load more hoppers and place them along here now i'm going to quickly fly home get some yellow dye and white dye and i've also got a bunch of other colors as well it would be useful to have even more yellow so i'm going to get lots and lots of dandelions from the flower farm i reckon all of this should be enough that's been a pretty successful mission in my opinion and now to continue loading up shulker boxes every single this straight is now fully loaded and ready to go so now it's time to add some along here i've realized i slight flaw to my system. I, I can't build a shulker loader going this way because th this shulker loader is in the way. I've managed to make room for all these. I think I might even remove these two end chests and, and this whole system just so that it's kind of a better corner. But that's something I'll worry about at the very end. I've now run out of droppers. I've run out of dispensers. I've run out of observers. And I'm out of cobblestone. So I think it's time I did some restocking. Although apparently I already have tons of cobblestone in these chests. In fact, they're overflowing. So it's very convenient that I built a shulker farm because I can now fill all of these shulker boxes. But four shulker boxes worth isn't going to be enough. I want even more. Guys, I've, I've got bad news. I left the cobblestone farm running for too long and let me pickaxe break. I did get a lot of cobblestone from it though. So on the plus side, I can fill up loads more shulker boxes. And now I'm going to buy more books and get my pickaxe back. And whilst I'm here, I might as well buy a load more redstone. It's very sad to say, but that is every single one of my emeralds gone. And I think it's a real problem that my pickaxe doesn't last forever when using this farm. So I'm going to create a super quick and easy little farm that will give me XP whilst I'm AFK. Although to build this, I'm going to need quite a bit more glass. And whilst that's smelting, I'm going to dig out a massive hole. I think this room is going to be big enough. Kind of ironically, I'm building this so I can get more cobblestone. But um, <laughs> I got loads of cobblestone just from mining all this out. And now to start building some giant giant portals. Times like this that I made a with a powered obsidian farm because I just use so much obsidian for stuff and having to manually mine all this up would have just taken forever. Using scaffolding is the only way I can see that I can realistically do the roof. Either that or I'd have to just build massive towers everywhere and that is the roof done as well as this wall. And before I light them I'm also going to do all of the portals on this side and also the mechanism in the middle and at long last every single portal is built. Now pigmen are going to spawn in these portals and they are then going to go after a turtle egg. If I put the turtle egg right here and then a hole here, they'll be stupid enough to think they can get it and walk down the hole. Although to make sure that they're stupid enough, I'm going to use trap doors to trick them. This is the tube that they'll be rising upwards in. I'm also going to need to get a pigment into that hole there, so I'm just going to build a temporary tube right here. The sign can go there and we're going to have a load of water that's going to be flowing all the way down here. Might as well finish this tube as well while I'm at it. There we go, looking pretty good. Let's add the trap doors. And now for the system that's going to be down here. Place that there. I am going to need a load of kelp as well. So yeah, let's, let's just make it onto water sources now. Now the trick at the bottom is to have a little wall so that when you walk along here, you can see it just steps you straight up. I'm also going to break all of these and that water can go there and then we can kind of just do something like this. So yeah, they'll fall in here. They'll get pushed along and then from here, 
They will get pushed by other pigmen and go all the way up from this bit. I'd better make this wall a little bit higher. But one of the guys is going to float along and fall down there. I'll just have to light up a bunch of portals to get him to show up. Now then, we have got a pigman coming through. He's fallen down the hole and he is rising up. And there we go. He's trapped in there. Although apparently I have no name tags. That's a slight problem. Oh no, I, I'm just blind, guys. Seems to be a few coming as well. Right, look, we can only have room for one in here, okay? The rest of you, you're just going to have to land on glass. We're going to call him Aggressive Man because he's going to be making everybody else angry. And now I've just got to work out how I'm going to modify this farm so that the pigmen will drop next to me. Who'd have thought someone would have put this much effort into just farming cobblestone? I know I could just use a TNT duper and make it AFK, but I don't really like using TNT dupers when I'm farming for resources. I'm starting to get a decent design together now. This door will instead be here. All of this crying obsidian is going to instead be hoppers, which stairs on the sides and underneath the hoppers is also going to be this crying obsidian and all of these need to be waterlogged which is quite convenient because i'm right by a river and then lava is to go on top of the water this is looking very good indeed although i have realized that it's a little bit flawed because the, <laughs> the water can't always get through but it's actually more efficient to look at it at this angle anyway which then works fine and the pigmen are going to be landing right here got a little bit carried away with building this tower i made it way too high now if i've built this correctly when i mine away the dirt the water should flow all the way a lot okay i forgot to put a sign there hold on get there you stupid sign there we go that's sorted well it's probably Probably gonna be better for the farm if I break this sign and make it higher by one or even better what if I made this underneath the water ice that would make it even better anyway you, you know what? we don't need to overcomplicate this let's just get rid of the dirt tower and also the lava on this side because it's only going to cause me problems you see now I can mine the middle ones and not have a problem and if I want to go for the edge ones as well to get even more I can just do that I'm also curious to see if I can cactus the drops by putting a bit of sand here cactus on top. The only question that raises is, is it going to stop me from getting the XP? And if we punch the aggressive man to make him angry, that is where falling pigmen should give me XP, but I, I don't think they really are. I think the cactus is probably messing up. Let's, let's get rid of that and go with this again. Yeah, look at that. We got some XP that time. Everything seems to be working as intended, so let's go and light up the rest of these portals. Look at that. He just jumped straight in. To say it looks very, very cool in here. Can I even get out? Okay, I may, might even be trapped. I might be going through. No, we're not. Yep, we've, we've gone through. Okay, where have we ended up? Okay, we've ended up down here. Unfortunately, it seems like the farm isn't quite working as intended. I'm guessing it's because I don't have line of sight or something. So I'm just going to slightly adjust the design down here to make it properly work. The aggressive man is instead going to live right here, and the plan will be for the pigment to die to drowning. Okay, drowning is just taking too long. Instead, we're using a rail and a whole load of minecarts. The rail's going to go like that, and I need 24 minecarts on here. That right there should be enough. And there's also going to be a sign with some water. Yep, that's perfect. Break that. Okay, in theory, this, this should all now just work perfectly. And I will also need a load of snowballs to aggro the pigment. And I do seem to be getting XP from it. Perfect, it's working. But the question is, will it be stop enough to stop my pickaxe from breaking? Well, I've been running for a bit, and it does seem like the XP is... It's, it's generally going up as a durability, or at the very least staying in roughly the same area. Like before, 1,027, now we're 1,046. Yeah, I think, I think this might be renewable. My plan might actually be working. So I'm going to AFK here, get loads of cobblestone, and, you know, put it to the test. I've left it running for quite a bit of time, and look at this. My pickaxe has actually gained durability, which means against all the odds, my plan has actually worked. Now, I should probably gather up all this cobblestone and get back to work on the EOL farm. We're getting so much cobblestone from that that I think I'm going to need to make a bigger storage. And whilst I was trying to build that, how much should... Oh my goodness! This farm is... It's just way too good. I was expecting maybe like, I don't know, two layers or something. Not flipping stacks and stacks of them. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this. I'm going to have to use these shulker shells to transport more shulker shells. Definitely been a worthwhile thing building a new and improved shulker farm. Thank you so much ENXO4 for the design. Although one layer probably would have been enough for it. I didn't need to build three of them. This one lonely shulker shell now has a family of millions of shulker shells. Let's start loading these up with cobble and also change the way this storage is so that there's twice as many chests. And it's also annoying me that every time I come into this room, there's no ender chest. If I want to get to the ender chest, I've got to go over here or up these stairs. And that's, that's just extra effort that's unnecessary. So I'm thinking I could make a little hole in the wall here and, and the ender chest could literally just live there. Nothing nothing fancy. I can grab an upside down stair to go above it just so that it mirrors the other side and you can actually open it. Just a very nice little touch. There we go. And this is also a great opportunity to craft loads and loads and loads of observers. All of these should keep me going for now. And before I get back to finishing the EOL storage, I'd like to grab a bunch of magenta wool and then I'm going to change the bottom layer of this shulker farm to no longer be made out of glass. I just think it'll fit in a lot better if it's a different colour. And whether magenta is going to be the correct one still remains to be seen. Well, I'm happy with how this first one looks, so I'm going to go and change all the other glass ones to magenta wool as well. It's all been smooth sailing changing this, but but now I've got to do the one next to the shulker. I hope this doesn't go wrong. You know, I'm going to just stand back a little bit. I go like that. Okay, are we good? Did he get angry? I think we're all right. Let's just move it. Oh no, how am I going to do... 
<laughs> How are we doing the one next to all those snow golems? You know what? No one's gonna know if I just leave a window there. You know, wait, I can do it. No, I've got a plan. Here on the SB737 channel, we do not do half a job. And speaking of half a job, guys, I'm, I'm trying to hit 4 million. Okay, that was a little too soon. I'm trying to hit 4 million subscribers this year. So if you're enjoying the video, it would be amazing if you could subscribe. And I just realized that that's all I have to do because, yeah, look at that. Peace game. And now back to changing these walls. And finally, <laughs> I have done it. Was it worth it? Well, you know what? I think it looks a lot better now. Before having glass at the bottom, it, it just didn't make it look all together. I would like to add another layer, but it'll clash with that portal. So I think we're done with it. Now to also get rid of this big train track bridge. And that is mission accomplished. Even though this old chunk of farm is, is kind of not going to be used anymore, it's going to stay here because, you know, it's a good memory. Let's also pick up all this junk that I've got lying all over the ground now, which is apparently despawning right before my very eyes. Okay, this is not good. We better get a move on. And I think that's enough of that. On the plus side, I got so much glass back from mining all of that up. Glass, which I'm sure will come in useful later on down the line. My pigment farm is not working and, and this tells me something might have gone wrong. I don't know what's gone wrong, but does it involve shulkers? Like, is there just a, a shulker overload somewhere there is a portal i think that is is sending shulkers through that aha all i've got on me is an axe i'm, I'm just gonna have to go for oh my goodness okay there's a lot of them I, I don't know exactly how many but what is going on it's just a ridiculous noise at the moment i gotta be careful that this isn't how i die to to the hand of a hundred shulkers they're just everywhere i thought they'd maybe all gone but there's just loads through here as well. I'm not sure why that happened, but I, I hope it doesn't happen again. And I got 43 shulker shells from that, so I guess that was a bonus. And now I can actually use my gold farm to mend my pickaxes. Everything's now fully repaired. I think it's time I got back to building shulker loaders. Although I, I just realized I need more droppers and dispensers. Has to be said, dispensers are one of the most annoying things to craft. They just take forever. It's all because bows don't stack, so you can only do one at a time. But that is now mission accomplished. And before I add to these, I want to change something here because I realized if I throw an item... Notice how this extends and sometimes mobs will land on this slime. Maybe some baby slimes will land on it and they won't take the fall damage. So I just need to make a few adjustments to this system. This observer will go here and the piston will push a block as normal. We have a repeater coming out of here. And then this redstone will power it anytime anything falls down. So if I just go and put a string there, as you can see, it does that which will be pushing this block and it's going to go over to here and land on this bit of terracotta. So I'm just moving everything here along by one. And this is where the second piston will then push the slime and push the items. We can also have a couple of repeaters here to make sure there's enough delay. And so now when some items come down, they're going to get pushed. Okay, that didn't work. I've been playing Minecraft for seven and a half years and I still can't do basic redstone. That's going to go there, repeater there, and I think this can just be a block at the end. This needs to also be a block that can actually be pulled by a piston like glass, something like that. Right, now when I send some items down, there we go. You can see they're going through. You can see they get pushed off there and they get pushed along. It, it is working and full damage is back. And now that's finally managed. I'm going to continue building loads of these shulker box loaders. Now all of the shulker loaders are complete. So now I'm going to grab an anvil, rename netherrack so it's called blockers, and start putting the items in for all of the different filters. That's all of them done on this row. And the reason I rename them is it's so that an item can't randomly fall in by mistake and mess it up. In theory, this entire storage should, it should be unbreakable. And that is every single one of the blockers put in. Now to head back home and grab some shulker shells on the way. And now to collect all the different drops I need to create the filters. And these are all the different kinds of items the farm's going to give me and I'm going to need to filter for. Now to start putting all the these items in. All along here it's going to be arrows followed by bones and then gunpowder and string. And this last strip is more for the, all the miscellaneous drops so it's going to have the slime balls. I think I'm just going to do 16 hoppers of those and then these meager drops as well which will fill up very very slowly. And then these final ones I'm going to leave empty. There's going to be things like bows that come across so I, I guess I'll collect them. I don't really have any use for them. Although they could be a cool fuel source. I don't know. We'll just we'll just see but I'm going to leave them open and see what happens with those hoppers. And I need to also remove this string because yeah, there's not, it's not going to be going any further. Everything is just going to stop right there. So it's, it's almost ready. It's getting so, so close to being done. However, there are still a couple of things that need to be sorted. I'll need a system that collects all of the string from the spiders. So a couple of hoppers here will be useful. And now if we mine on in, I'm going to put a dropper there, one on this wall, and then there'll also be one on this side. And if I also make a stairs, I can put one here. And this will make the items that come out of these droppers more like to go into the middle. But it doesn't matter if some of them do get stuck on this ledge because mobs will pick them up as they go down as well. So it's just a, a great little system. Out of here, I'll have a comparator going into a repeater, which is going, well, it'll go into a block. And underneath that block, there will be a redstone dust, which will connect to a piston. And that piston will have an observer on it. And right here, there'll be another observer with a block there. So you can see now that if an item goes in, let's just go and chuck in some of this. 
You'll see. Look at that. Getting dispensed out. And now to build the same thing on the other side. Comparator, repeater, redstone, piston, and observer. One final observer right here. I also need all of these hoppers to go in like this. I'm just going to make sure you know there's plenty of hoppers going in. And next I'm going to create the exact same thing on this side. And this side is also done. And you're probably thinking, what else could I possibly have left <laughs> for this farm to be finished? Well, you probably realise this, but spiders, spiders are a pain, you know. Look at it, I've got all this just to deal with them. But some of the more persistent ones will manage to fall all the way down here and land on these end rods so i better build something that's going to get rid of them it is a pretty simple thing it's just going to involve some gates again with lava on the outside pretty straightforward but somehow occasionally a few spiders will sneak through that as well so to deal with that i'm going to do the exact same thing here and that is also now complete but what about the few that somehow managed to get through this one as well you, well, you know what i don't care about them. i can't really be bothered to build another one right here in fact i've had an idea any that miraculously survived that far down will land on magma i think it actually makes sense to make this quartz magma as well in case any mobs land on that this farm is getting more and more efficient all the time. Well, yeah, it's done. It's now it's now finished, okay? Um, mobs are going to come down here and then, yeah, they're going <laughs> to... They're going to get kind of stuck like this if they end up in here. And all the item sorts are done. There's just, there's just one final... I promise you guys, this is the final thing. Thank goodness. We need shulker boxes. We need lots and lots of shulker boxes. All of these ones are going to be dyed light grey. And I've already filled up all of these ones along here, as you can see. But I still need to fill up the ones that do the gunpowder and then the ones that do the string and bunch of miscellaneous drops after that. And I'd love to add every single shulker box right now, but alas, I am almost completely out of wood. And that was after restocking back at my house. And that, unfortunately, is all of my wood used up, which gives me only one choice. I'm going to have to head all the way to spawn and spend a bit of time at my tree farm. And from all of that, I think I've probably now got enough wood. So I'll craft a load of chests and continue adding shulker boxes. I've almost filled up all of these, but I've now run out of black dye. I've been using wither roses to get it. So it looks like it's time to make a trip to the end. From there, I'm going to head through this gateway and fly to the wither rose farm. Now at the moment, there's no wither roses in here. We're going to have to head up to this little AFK platform, let the endermen spawn, and the wither will do the rest. I think enough time has passed, and I've got loads more wither roses right there. And now it's time to get back to work. And that's all of these ones done as well. Now it's time for the final row. And finally, that is every single coloured shulker box done. I'm going to put a bunch of generic ones in these end ones in case they do get used. And that is mission accomplished. And now the question is, is it ready to now finally test? Well, of course, th there is one tiny little thing I need to do. And that is to go to my storage room, grab a bunch of stone, make some buttons. And then when I press them on these barrels, it just for the first time it will dispense the shulker box it's just to get the farm going i'll never have to press these ever again but just for the first time i'm gonna do it it really adds some color to the area doesn't it now that all the shulker boxes are in none of this stuff needs to be here anymore i did also make one tiny mistake with the farm as you can see there's a there's a tiny bit of netherrack here which needs to be broken but if i go and break it right now it'll mess up the skylight suppression so yes you guessed it we're first gonna have to do a bit of light suppression before i can break that block the suppressor does now appear to be working because chunks will not load so let's break this piece of netherrack then i'm going to quit the world and when i load it back in i can turn off the light suppressor and the skylight suppression on the farm will have still been successful so let's turn on the redstone mechanisms turn off the mob switch that way hostile mobs will be able to spawn and in fact just before i do test this farm I, I, I'm worried about this. I don't think this system is reliable enough because when I unload the chunks, these tend to stop working for some reason. And that could cause me problems with the farm when I'm not here and I wouldn't know about it. You know, if I'm AFK and I, you know, how am I going to know what's going on in the nether? Pretty simple solution for it though. We're just going to run this clock to go up higher. If I put a torch here, you can see that that is now moving in and out with the clock. I'll also do the exact same thing on this side. And look at that, it is working perfectly. And that means I can run it up even higher. And with that, all of that redstone is done. If I push the button, it's all working perfectly. At some point, I'll add an on-off switch where it blocks the redstone, but I'm not going to do that right now. And now, guys, I think it's time for a heartbreak moment. I'm just doing the final test before I uh, booted up the old farm, and I've made a mistake. I've made a big mistake, guys, honestly. This is this is pretty crucial. Watch what happens, okay? You know what? We're going we're gonna to push an item, okay? Looks like... Okay, well, that didn't work, but <laughs> let's just try again, okay? So, push an item, okay? It goes along well, goes along, goes along stops going along yeah apparently it can't get pushed 32 blocks so i've got to move all of this in by a few blocks all of this across by a few blocks and i've got just five days to do it time to get serious There we go. It is now all moved. I'm 
hopefully never doing that ever again. And I've also worked out a way to make this system even more reliable by adding an extra repeater. It increases the delay and it kind of syncs it with the other pistons. Otherwise, some items will land on top of the slime block whilst it's extended and then they won't go all the way to the edge and then they won't get sorted. If I'd have moved all this even closer, that wouldn't have been an issue. But <laughs> I, I thought for a moment that I'd, uh, I'd completely messed up. But no, I can just do this and it solves it. Let's also add a two repeater delay on this first little piston as well. And with that, I don't think there's anything more I can do. There is loads of random shulker boxes and barrels. Of I will finish that another time. I am sick of working on this project, to be honest. Let's go ahead and test everything out. Out. Now whilst I'm using this farm, I'm going to kind of be flicking between replay mode and showing you how it works just so, you know, you can see what's going on in the other dimension and I can explain everything properly. First things first, you can see the mobs are spawning in. Bats will also be spawning, so I'm going to turn this portal on so the bats can come back through. So about 1,100 bats are going to spawn here and most of them will end up in the lava, but after about 45 seconds, some of them will find their way back through the portal. So that's what I'm waiting for right now. And there we go, our first one has come through. And now there's another one. And before you know it, look at that, we're getting loads of them through. We can see on the FD screen how many we've got. We've still not got enough to reach the bat cap, but now I can tell that I have got 27, 28. I'm going to let it get to 30. I can turn off the portal. Now we have a working bat switch. And over time, all the bats on this side will just die in the lava. After just two minutes, there are only about 25 bats on this side. That's not going to cause any lag. No new ones can now spawn. And as you can see, when spiders spawn, they're going to climb upwards. The lava will take them out and the dispensers will send out the string. The mobs will take full damage on the moving platforms, but the items can fall through. And then the pistons will push all the items into the middle, where they go along the ice pathway and can be sorted into hoppers. When the items go over a hopper, they can enter, they will go in. And this carries on all the way around until when it gets to the end and there is no items remaining. So yeah, the EOL farm is now fully complete. It collects all the items. I don't know many people who have uh, made a full collection system for one. This particular one gets me 230,000 items per hour. It would get me more if I had a broken more bedrock, but I, I just didn't have time in the last video to break loads of bedrock. And I'm going to AFK here now and see just how many shulker boxes it can fill up. I mean, this is, this is just such this insane farm. I will never need gunpowder again, never need string, bones, you, you name it, this you know, slime even, it's probably my fastest slime farm. It really is unbelievable. Well, we've now reached day 3,100. Everything seems to be working fine. Let's see how the farm has performed. I did also forget to turn these pistons on for a bit, so um, that, that did ruin the race. I had to come and turn it on. So I've got quite as much as I could have done, but let's see, did, did everything get picked up? Okay, it looks like it's not, it, like, we're getting too many items for the farm, because you can see... A lot of items have come through. I can just send them back through the system like that though. I see the problem with my system. Look at this, completely packed up because for some reason, when that goes along, it is powering the torches, which is powering the pistons and they're not retracting. It's definitely fixable. I won't have to move the shulker loader. I'll just have to move things around here a little bit. But in the ones that actually do work, as you can see, we have got full shulker boxes. So that's a slight teething problem. Nothing I can't fix. I should have just built it a little bit lower, but yeah, nothing that I can't repair. Seems to be a problem for all of them, but as you can see, we are getting full shulker boxes. So once once I fix that, this is just going to be brilliant. It's going to get me stuff so, so fast. And what about the gunpowder? Look at this. I'm just going to end up with loads of gunpowder, which is perfect for all my firework rockets. First things first, I'm going to go and get another notch apple, right? Wrong. Instead, I'm going to get another goat to be friends with that guy. Finally, I found a goat. You shall be the chosen one. And I'm going to warn you now, this will be a stressful journey and you probably will die. But sometimes I've just got to do what I've got to do. This is probably a recipe for disaster, but we are going to head on up and then fly home. As long as I can see the leader, I know he's still there. This has been a pretty successful flight. Let's just make it a successful landing. There we go. And we can do it all over again. And away we go again. feel like this landing is going to be a little bit more dangerous. So we, we just got to commit to the water. This goat is still alive. And from now on, the journey will be on foot. We've gone as far as we can on land. But it's time to sail in a boat. This is much, much easier than it was dragging him across land. The first signs of civilization are ahead. And finally, we have made it home sweet home. Now, you're probably wondering why I brought you all this way. Well, just let me head down here, grab some wheat, and breed you together. I think you need to be off the lanes for this to work. Yeah, okay, you do. Now, this baby goat has a 2% chance of being a screaming one. And I don't care how long it takes me, I am going to get one. Could put you guys here for a second. Because I'll have to build some sort of system to make this work. And that system will not be right by my house. I'm not listening to screaming goats all day. Instead, this poor trapped snow golem can. So right here is where the goats are going to be bred. Bear with me on this one, guys. I'm completely making this up as I go along. The adult goats won't fit through this gap, but the baby goats will. Once down here, they will fall onto water, which will be right here. It will flow along like so. And as they go along, each one will be put into... Okay, that is not 
not meant to happen. As we're saying, each one will be put into a boat. Also, what kind of a crazy attack is going on here? I don't know who you guys think you are. I'm just over there and you're going to attack me house. I'd better grab a bucket of milk and get rid of you. Drink the milk and deal with the rest of you. And this goat can refill my bucket. Now to build the exact same thing on this side and collect up the goats. This is basically the only thing that could go wrong. But look at that. The plan worked perfectly. What on earth? You just jumped straight out. <laughs> I forgot goats could jump. Get yourself back in there. None of that. And for the next part of the operation, we're going to need a load of wheat. All of this will be perfect. And then to do a load of feeding and breeding. I have lined up all of the boats that we need for this experiment. Let's get ourselves a screaming goat. I also have a serious lack of wheat. But lots and lots of bone meal. That means I can grow this, harvest it, and regrow it all extremely, extremely fast. Got exactly one stack from that. And I'm just going to feed it all to this baby one to make it grow. These slabs are also completely useless. So now all four of them have grown. I can break this, breed them, and start collecting baby goats. Well guys, I've been busy. I have bred hundreds and hundreds of these goats. And whilst I was moving these over here, I heard a screaming goat. I, I don't know which one it is. Did you just hear it just then? So now I'm going to nip to my house, grab a bunch of fencing, and put them in a bit of a pen, and put all the non-screaming goats over here. And I think this little fella is the screaming goat. There we go, did you hear that? <laughs> it just does a weird scream. And so you are gonna live with the goat of Minecraft. And you'll be called Screamer. It's just such a funny sound that they make. And what will I do with all of these other goats? I've absolutely no idea. But if you do have any good plans for me, just let me know in the comments. And speaking of letting me know stuff in the comments, a lot of you guys told me that instead of using glass blocks right here, I could use glass panes and then you can't see it. That is, that is such an ingenious idea. Look how much better that one looks compared to that one. You've really outdone yourselves this time, guys. So once again, they are all colour coordinated, but now they just look so much better. And whilst I'm at it, I might as well add a bit of colour to some other of the beacons. And now that I've got my screaming goat, I think it's time we went on an expedition to find Notch Apple number 32. Just made a portal and spawned right in an amethyst geode. What are the chances? Stumbled across a dungeon on my way up, but sadly, no Notch Apple. And so now it is my goal to try and find a desert. Finally, I have found a desert. And there's a pyramid right here. All it has of use is a couple of golden apples. And this ruined portal has nothing in there. The second pyramid is up ahead. Once again, completely empty. Same with the third one. The fourth, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. And the elytra have now broken. Looks like I'll have to get some XP from mining up this nether quartz ore. And then it's back to flying with full durability. This is the 11th one. And still the search goes on. I also like blowing up the temples now. And as for the 12th, well, it's... <laughs> It's just really not going well for me. Same trouble in the 13th one. I'm going to start losing count at this rate, but I have searched 14 of these. It is not my day for finding not Apple. And that 15th pyramid was also empty, which was a bit of a letdown. Same news in the 16th, the 17th. Even the ruined portals aren't much help today. Emptiness in the 18th, as well as the 19th, the 20th, 21st. This is my 25th one. <laughs> still not found it. I should have found two by now. I may have just found the coolest cave ever. Look, it's outside, but it's a might. This is so cool in a lush cave. Wow. If I could find a notch apple in this mine shaft, it really would be the perfect cave. Managed to successfully find one. Not what I was hoping for. But hold on. There's one, two, three more down here. Nothing useful in this one or this one. <laughs> Or oh, this one. Did they just remove Notch Apples from the game or something? Well, this cave does keep finding me new minecarts. New minecarts with nothing in them. There can't be many more of these left in here. But as long as I keep finding them, I'll keep searching them. I've even found a dungeon in here. Sadly, no good loot. Maybe, I, I don't know. <laughs> I should get back to searching the pyramids. Pretty sure I've exhausted that mineshaft. So searching for deserts is indeed what I shall now do. Although right here, we've got one, two, three minecart chests all in the open. You just never know with these. Once again, <laughs> I let down. Let's head back to the pyramids where I know where I am. You can't say I didn't get a lot of good stuff. I've got 37 golden apples from this journey so far. But the main treasure continues to elude me. And that is 30 of these desert pyramids I have searched. Today is, is just not my day. Finally! Finally, I have found one. 39 of these stupid desert pyramids. And I have got Notch Apple... Number 32. Finally, I can build a portal and go home. Although before I go, I do just want to check the rest of this desert since there are some unlooted pyramids. I doubt there'll be anything useful, but you never know. I've searched another three more and it looks like we've got nothing. And I've also run out of unsearched desert, but this time I really will go home. You know, there really is no place like home. I mean, Elytra have just broken. And while we're on the subject of Elytra, what do you think of the cape that I've got now? Yes, I have got the cape 
that you get if you migrate your Microsoft account. But it looks really good on the Elytra, doesn't it? It's my first real cape that isn't an Optifine one. And look at all of this free XP just laying at the bottom of the farm. Although sadly, it wasn't quite enough to repair the Elytra. Just means I don't have to waste time climbing up the ladder. Now everything is repaired. And I'd like to welcome Notch Apple number 32 to the wall. You really were a pain to get. And meanwhile, something's gone wrong. Everything seems to be backed up for some reason, and I, I don't know why. Oh, it's backed up because I'm I'm an idiot. What? Why would I? <laughs> what happened there? Then again, guys, me being an idiot is uh, it's not really anything new. I'll grab a hopper and put it back where it's supposed to go. Looks like it's problem solved. Next, I'm going to grab a few resources, and I shall also mine up a load more wood. Although I think I'm going to change up this redstone because use this comparative system. It's it's just not very reliable. He said I should have an observer like that, and one also right here. And that, that will, as you can see, that's just moving them all upwards with no problem going all the way up. And if you also put a piston right here, as well as a comparator into a block with a torch and redstone. Actually, never mind. It should be redstone followed by a repeater. Slightly adjusted the redstone so that I could have a comparator coming out of this one as well. And it, it looks like everything should be working fine now. I'll start mining up more wood and I can take all the wood, which will later be used to make chests so that I can make hoppers. Because to fix my EOL collection system, I need to make all these ice pathways to be one block higher. And that includes moving the auto storage one block higher and then that'll need extra hoppers, which is why I needed loads of wood. Fixing this should not take me too long at all, so let's get to work. And that is now completely done. All of the ice is now one block higher. Oh my goodness, where does a gas come from? I just can't catch a break with this machine. That's that dealt with. There we go. I can very quickly fix the redstone. And I also just need to hook up this piston to the redstone. Quite an easy task. So now when an item falls, all of the pistons will extend. So all that's left to be done is test it out. Also, apparently my skylight suppression broke in this middle chunk here. I think I didn't put any string in it. I, I'm, I'm going to have to fix that. All it requires is for me to grab loads and loads of blocks, turn on the light suppressor, and then build a roof. I've now covered up the three chunks where the light suppression had broken. I just have to build out 15 more blocks on all sides so that it skylight suppresses again. Which means filling in loads and loads more blocks. Finally, everything has been placed down. So I'm going to reload the world. Now let's get this suppressor off. Seems like only covering some of it has, has not worked because the, like, the light level here is now messed up. So I'm just going to skylight suppress the entire thing. And the full roof is now finished. I, I hope I never have to do this ever again. Now to light suppress again and then remove this roof. And for what will be the last time... It is mission accomplished. Next, I'm going to turn off the mob switch and properly test out the EOL farm because it should be 100% finished. Plenty of time has passed. Let's go and see how much loot we've got. So as you can see, it has been getting me a lot of different items. All these chests are just full of shulker boxes. But the items I care about the most are going to be the bones and also the gunpowder. I'll be able to make a lot of TNT with all of that. And I'm now going to use all these bones to make a really quick and simple little wheat farm. Because it seems to be a bit of a recurring problem that I just never have enough wheat. Wait. Oh look, Scream is an adult now. <laughs> it's just a, an hilarious scream, isn't it? Now I think it's a good place in the corner for this wheat farm. Since it's right next to the Tower of Slaver, I mean the uh, the employment tower. Water goes here with a dispenser on top and then dispensers on either side as well. And basically what's going to be housing the crop is this piston is going to be repeatedly going in and out. As you can see right now there's light inside. And now there's no light inside. And now everything is fully done. I moved it one block lower as well. I'm also going to add a couple of hoppers going into the dispensers. And then I'll fill it all up with bone meal. I'm going to manually get some wheat from here. And then fill up my inventory so that will be the only thing that I can pick up. So now if I flick this and hold right click. Okay, in theory... There we go. It seems like it, it should be working, I think. And in a very short space of time, I've already got over a stack of wheat. And I haven't really used up that much bone meal in the grand scheme of things. So I'll keep AFKing here and get as much stuff as I can. After a pretty short amount of time, I've got a lot. Nearly filled my entire inventory with wheat. Let's compact those down into hay bales. And now that I've reset the inventory, I'm going to do it again. And I have pretty much run out of bone meal now. This dispenser is empty, so is this one. I think... Yeah, to be honest, everything seems empty. But on the positive side, I have got a lot of hay bales from this contraption. So in my opinion, that's a massive success. The next time I need to craft a million target blocks, I'll have all the wheat that I need. And now something that I feel like I really need to build is a nether hub. Because what I've got right here, it's it's just a very poor effort. It's got chickens laying eggs everywhere. It just, it just looks terrible. It's just nothing. So as part of my next project, I'm going to do my best to improve it. I have a vague idea of what I'm going to do for this project. But it's going to take a lot of hard work before it becomes a reality. Now for the floor, I'm thinking this wall 
warped wart could be very useful. And I shall also fly to a basalt delta to both collect up some basalt and also blackstone. And I shall use these warped wart blocks to build a bit of a crossroads in the center. And then the basalt can be extra decoration along with the blackstone as well. I've made it a little bit bigger and I can even put a shroom light in the middle. Around the edge of the pathways, let's have stairs. In fact, hold that thought. Let's put netherrack around the sides and then stairs on the top. It might look a little strange right now, but once it's finished, you'll understand exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to grab a load of glass and then turn it into grey stained glass. I'll also need loads of blackstone, which look at that, we've got plenty. Quick with these items, I'm going to put glass on top of the pathways. This just adds a bit more depth to the floor. Now to continue adding the stairs. And next, I'm going to decorate this area's, well, all these corner areas. That's where the blackstone and the basalt will be coming in handy. And now that this is all down, it can also be covered in glass. Already I've run out of glass. And I've run out of black and grey dye. So I'm going to grab a shulker box, head to the end, and spend a bit of time AFK at my Wither Rose farm. Also, for those of you that were wondering how I got Wither Rose farm at the top of the screen, I just simply renamed the Wither that lives right here. Loads and loads of time has passed, and loads and loads of Wither Roses have been gathered. Now to fly back home, grab some more bones along the way, and create more grey dye and grey stained glass. I have to say, when I go through this portal and come out the other side, I already think it just looks so so much nicer. There's definitely still plenty of work to be done, but it's certainly looking much, much nicer than before. I've just got to finish the big project of placing down all the blackstone and basalt, which should make a very good looking floor. In fact, it's actually getting quite difficult to place it on this side, so having some sort of netherrack floor underneath is going to be my best bet. It really is starting to come together, isn't it? The next issue is I'd like to build the walls to be a lot higher than I've dug this ceiling. So I think my only option is to just do a load more mining. As to be said, I'm really going all out with the size of the room I'm chiseling out. Look, the floor's all the way down there. I'm, I'm all the way up here. And I just broke my thing. I knew it was close to breaking. Why do I let this happen? Now to sadly use up one of those precious netherite ingots. But it does mean that I can continue clearing out this massive room. And that is all of the blocks removed. I'm pretty sure this should be a big enough area for me to build this nether hub. Yes, it's not going to be a small one. Let's drop all of this stuff into the auto sorter, grab some more pork chops from here, and then I'm going to have to craft another silk touch pickaxe. I'm trying to beat the record for how many I can break in a single episode, or at the very least it feels like I'm trying to do that. And that's the pickaxe sorted. Now to head back up here and fly up to the gold farm, since all of my tools need repairing. Everything's repaired, and I even got up to 175 levels. Now it's time to get back to building. On all four sides is going to be archways right here, which is going to it looks something like this, although I think it may look better if it's polished basalt. I'll test it out here and see if it looks better. Yeah, I think the polished one definitely looks better. So let's mine this one up and make it smooth instead. Yeah, that's looking much better. Now to build this on the other two sides. And that is all of them complete. Next, I'm going to connect up these pillars with some beams. So the pattern of the beams is going to be like this. And in fact, I'll even do a little crisscross right here. And there's also going to be more pillars on the sides that connect up to these beams. And there we have it. The structure's really starting to come together. It just needs to be added to all these other sides as well. That's every pillar complete. Now for the beams. And that is all of these done as well. And I think it is time that I move this redstone as well. As it is just starting to get in the way. I'll probably add some sort of button here that will connect up to the redstone. It'll still work fine. But now that it's gone, I can place in these other blocks. Now in these three wide gaps, I'd like to make some more entranceways. Which are going to be very similar versions of the big ones over there. They're just going to look something like that. And to be honest, I'm getting kind of sick of mobs spawning on the beams now. They couldn't spawn on the glass, which was good. But now they're being very annoying and getting in my way. So I'm going to fly above the bedrock. Which will then turn on the trunk loader and activate the mob switch. Now I can work in peace and quiet. They're also all filled in. Next I'm going to need a load more of the warped wart block, which is this block right here. I'm tempted to make a farm for this kind of block, but I think for now it's just going to be quicker to manually mine it up. All this should be enough for now. Let's use it to fill in some walls. And it's also going to come over part of the roof as well. For example, this right here is going to be completely filled in with it. Although I think I'm going to end up changing these ones to instead be polished blackstone slabs. And the reason for that is because there's going to be slabs like this all the way up. thought this was going to be difficult, but it turns out to be very straightforward indeed. And we're going to have the same thing above this little entranceway. Walk to walk behind it and slabs in front of that. So yeah, the walls are really starting to take shape now. I just have to do this seven more times. I have now run out of warp to warp blocks. But as you can see, it's, it's coming together nicely. My best option is to now head back to the warp forest and mine up loads and loads more. And whilst I'm here, I've been eating the warp stem as well. So I'm going to get to work mining that as well. I also love this area. You can just tell that there's been endermen. <laughs> Look at him. 
Moving these blokes, what a mess you've made. Endermen really are a menace to society. Sometimes even more of a menace than the creepers themselves. Now I can finish these two bits of roof right here and begin work on the walls in the corners. So the corners are gonna kind of be curved like this with stairs instead connecting up. And I'll just keep layering it up with basalt. I think I've successfully built this up to the roof. Let's see how it looks. I think that worked. I haven't messed up the pattern, which is a good sign. And the gaps up there in each of those bits are kind of annoying me. So I'm going to nip back home, grab some sea lanterns, and then they can be in the roof with a trap door below them. Now I'm faced with the very tricky task of recreating that in all four corners. That's corner number two complete. And that's the third side also complete. And that is the fourth one also complete. Well, it will be complete when I put these four pieces of basalt right there anyway. This is really starting to take shape even more so now. I'm going to craft a bunch of these polished blackstone stairs and start doing a bit of work on this roof. I've come up with a bit of a pattern which involves slabs over these gaps and that's how it's going to look from down here. I'm pretty happy with how it's taking shape so I'm going to repeat it on all the other sides and that is another step complete. Now it's time to make these large entranceways look a bit nicer which is going to involve warped wart blocks. I really find it hard to say that <laughs> and also more polished basalt. In fact, we can also have some lights in the middle if we do something like that. These can have trap doors in front and more basalt going into them. Also, if you're wondering why my mic was a bit dodgy before, it's because I'm an idiot. This right here is my microphone. It's great. But for some reason, I had it all the way up there because I forgot to bring it down. So, you know, that probably sounds terrible. But yeah, I've been doing YouTube for years and years and <laughs> I still forget the basics sometimes. And that's how that's going to look pretty good. Let's also add some upside down stairs on both sides, which will then connect to a row of slabs. The stairs on this level can go all the way across and then also connect up in the middle as well. This is how the roof underneath the beams is going to look. And this is what we're going to end up with. It just needs to be recreated on all four sides. Side number two is complete, as well as the third one and the fourth one. Very happy with those. Now to build a kind of staircase that goes upwards like this. And all this has done is made me realise I, <laughs> I didn't quite dig the roof to be high enough. So I'll just do this on all four sides and dig out as much of the roof as I need to. Now that I've got more space to work with, I'll start adding in all of this roof. It's going to be a little bit of a complicated pattern, but I'll soon get the hang of it. And just as I was getting going, trying to work out how to make it into a spherical shape, I've, uh, I've run out of the blocks. So it's back to the warped forest to gather up warped wart. Now that I've got plenty more, it's time to return to building. And I think I should now have successfully done it. Oh, look at that. It, it just looks beautiful. <laughs> I'm just going to recreate it three more times. If I pull this off without getting any blocks in the wrong place, it will be a miracle. Second one is also done. Believe it or not, but that one is also with no mistakes. Once again, I've run out of blocks. So once again, I'm going to mine up some more. And with that, I can get back to building. Side number three is also done. Just one more to go and the roof will be completed. And finally, side number four is done as well. From down here, it looks like there are absolutely no mistakes. I think it would be really cool if eventually that was my way up onto the bedrock. The current bedrock hole is no longer really in a good place. In fact, there's no time like the present. I'm going to grab the needed resources and begin breaking a new hole in the bedrock. It's a pretty straightforward process. When I place a piston like that, the bedrock underneath is broken. And I've already broken plenty of pieces around this centre bit, but there's still many more to go. All the bedrock is gone in this shape. Let's mine up the obsidian and dig a hole that goes all the way down. Now the real question is, have I put the hole in the right place? I think it's perfect. Once I remove this tree right here, I can get all the way to the bottom. And if I look directly up, look at that, I can fly straight above the bedrock. I do want there to be some sort of wall around those so I can fly up and I won't like fall out or anything. So I'm going to head back home, grab some magma and then build a tube going all the way up. I've almost made it to the top. Any gaps in the bedrock will also be filled with magma and I think it's complete. And I have to say, I think it looks good. I think it adds a little bit of color, a little bit of mystery up there. We can fly straight up. Look at that. Really cool to fly through. Looks cool when you look down it as well from up here. It's a very cool addition if you ask me. Although I do still need to add a bit more lighting in here. So I'm going to go back home, grab some lanterns and end rods. And the end rods are going to be placed like this with a lantern on top. And also lanterns in the corner like this. And something else that would be helpful is chains. Then I can place lanterns in the middle like this. And also hang them down over these mini entrances. And the idea for these little entrances is that they would have portals behind them. Most of them won't go anywhere and will just be decorated but it'll just make the whole place look like a proper nether hub. With basalt behind it, of course, so that I don't accidentally walk off a big drop. Now, in theory, this particular portal here should connect to my house. Let's have a look. Good news or bad news? No, bad news. We're in the middle of nowhere. No, it's not strictly the middle of nowhere, but this is just my chunk loader for my furnace room. So I will try the one on this side instead. And that one brings me to the teleport. I tell you what, this is um, it's just not going well. Just to test it out, I will mine up the teleporter portal and see if that then allows the portals to connect up. Nope, it's taken me to... 
my portal farm. In here is not the place that I want to be, which means it's now time for plan B, which connects up perfectly. Now, if I go back through, break this portal, we'll see if this one is properly connected. So yeah, going there, it still is. I'm going back. Yeah, it still takes me to a portal, so that's a good news. Because my original plan that I, I kind of put on the back burner was to create a slice portal right here, just a little one by one one. I just thought it would just look cool, but it also takes so much work and it's not really practical It's just aesthetic So I'm gonna create all the other portals first and if one of them connects to my house Then that portal will just be used But if none of them do then I'll make a slice portal in the center and that is all of them done Let's get rid of this portal right here And I would also like to thank Christian Baylor for a lot of inspiration when building this place It has certainly come out very very well indeed So this might be a bit of a waste of netherite But I was gonna put lodestones under each of these end rods now when I think about it Maybe a respawn anchor yeah, that, that would actually look way better. And if I was going to use lodestones, I might as well just go to a bastion to track them down, rather than using up these precious netherite ingots. I think I'll also benefit from putting crafting tables in all the corners, with ender chests right next to them. The actual lodestone is going to be hidden underground, so if I go and right-click that with a compass, it's now pointing there. Just in case I ever get lost, I want to use the compass to find my way back. And other than slicing the portal, that is this room completely finished. Now, at some point today, I do want to go looking for way more ancient debris, but the best way to do that is with loads and loads loads of TNT. And to make loads and loads of TNT, you, you need loads and loads of gunpowder. And my EOL farm has given me a lot of that, but I want way, way more. So first things first, I'm going to fly to the pigment farm, which will let me repair all my tools and my elytra. And now that that's done, I will turn off the mob switch and spend loads of time AFK at the EOL farm. I should have loads and loads of items from all that now. So let's grab a load of gunpowder. And believe me, I have loads and loads of it now. And whilst I'm here, I'll also grab a few more bones. And whilst I'm here, I've also got this partially filled up shulker box of redstone. N not loads in it, but it was kind of one that broke because of the blue ice. So I might as well take it home because it could be useful. And while this gunpowder will be used at some point for TNT, for my next task, I'd like to build a sliced portal in the middle of this room. I think it'll just make things look so, so much cooler. I also didn't realise I already had loads of shulker boxes in here of bones that I brought back earlier. Everything that I need for the update suppressor is right here. The suppressor will be built right here where there's the most space. I'll just have to clear out a tiny bit of this at the bottom. And this bridge will also have to go as well. You've seen me do one of these before, so I'm going to clear the area build a platform, and then I'll be able to build the Update Suppressor. And the entire Update Suppressor is now complete. And before I create the little one-by-one -one portal in there, I'm going to nip home and grab a few extra resources. One of the things I'll be finding useful is a lot of respawn anchors. And also a few sea lanterns. So the sea lanterns are going to go here like this. And I'll also take this opportunity to now build the portal. Next, let's turn on the update suppressor, light it and break... Hold on, I need to make sure I break the correct block here. Yeah, I want to break this one up here. As you can see, we've got a little one by one, so we can now break the blocks around it. I can break this one, but I can't break that obsidian, otherwise the portal will break. So to solve that issue, I'm actually just going to move the track so it goes a little bit lower, just like that. Then I can update to press once again and break this obsidian without causing any updates to the portal. Let's chuck a respawn anchor underneath and charge it. And I think I'm going to have to move these up again. Update to press. And that means I can place glass blocks either side and it won't break the portal. Doesn't matter with blocks on this part because it, like that just doesn't update the portal, whatever. And with that, I think we're completely done. So let's just break these and replace all the glass. Let's remove all of that. And this is my portal room. So I can use this little one to go home whenever I want to. But I do also think it would be cool if I was to move a bunch of this warped wart and replace it with respawn anchors. Right now it doesn't look very good, but if I go ahead and charge them all up, it will then create this very cool looking portal floor. Although to finish it, I'd need a load more glowstone and crying obsidian. And having loads of crying obsidian isn't too much of an issue. But for now, getting loads of glowstone is a bit more of a challenge. Although before the end of the episode, <laughs> we will rectify that problem. Before I can think about that, I need to completely get rid of this update suppressor. It takes an hour to build one of these and less than five minutes to destroy. Although it has to be said, it's quite satisfying just to pick up all the items. And now now that that's done, I can begin work on the next project. And that new project is something that is known as a stacking raid farm. It's basically a much more powerful version of a normal raid farm because my current one is it's just not fast enough. This new one will get me about 80,000 emeralds per hour and I will finally be able to fix the floor in my house. Not to mention the fact that it'll also get me loads of glowstone and redstone, two very useful things. Building this is going to take a huge amount of materials and a large chunk of those materials is going to be glass. So I'm going to put my super smelter to good use, although I'm fresh out of fuel, which is a bit of a problem. So I shall head down here, fly to the fortress farm, and then I can collect up lots of coal. And after spending quite a bit of time at this farm, I've realised it's not really the fastest way to get coal, but 
you know, we've got a decent amount. I will definitely come up with a better fuel solution at some point in the future. But the good news is I've got plenty of coal to load up these furnaces. And whilst they're all smelting, I can be gathering up all of the other items. And finally, I have got all of the different items that I need. Well, almost all of the items anyway. The only remaining thing I need is loads and loads of glowstone. At least when I built this farm, I'll never have to mine up glowstone again. It took ages, but the mission to get all of the glowstone that I need is finally successful. I'm glad that I can say that I will never have to do that ever again. So that means that I've now got every single item that I'll need. And before I start building, I'm just gonna nip to the gold farm to make sure that all of my equipment is fully healed up. And you know what? Whilst I'm here, I think I'll get to 200 levels as well. I got a few extra levels than I intended, but at some point I'm sure they'll be useful. Now let's gather up all of these items and begin the project of building this farm. This should be a pretty good chunk to build it. So now it's time to grab a load of blocks and create a large stained glass room under the water. And this is one of the reasons why I needed so much white stained glass. And that is all the glass placed down with some blocks on top. And the next thing to be done is to grab a bunch of sponge and drop a load of gravel. Next, I can drain it all, remove this gravel wall and dig this hole to be even deeper. Still gotta dig another 25 layers down here. It's gonna take forever. So I think it'd be a smart move to place down some iron blocks. And I have now created a full beacon. I'll use that to give myself haste too. And now mining up this hole will be much much faster. I've made it to the bottom and this layer down here is going to have leaves on it with glowstone around the edge. And this glowstone around the edge with leaves in between of it is going to go up quite high. But before I add any more of that, I need to add a white concrete floor right here. It's all starting to come together. Let's add some glass on top of this and continue on the leaf and glowstone walls. So far it's looking pretty good, but now I've got to try and get past that high speed tunnel. And I think the way I'm going to do that is by placing glowstone behind it, which is where the glowstone would normally be anyway, creates enough lighting, but then without blocking off any important parts. I'm pretty sure that doing it like this won't break the farm, or at the very least I hope not, otherwise it would be a disaster. And it looks to me like that problem has been successfully navigated. Now to build these walls up higher and higher. In fact, this is the height that I'm going to bring those walls up to, just above this beacon. And thankfully the mining for this won't take too long. That's everything successfully dug out, now to start placing. Well, despite mining up millions and millions of pieces of glowstone. I've completely run out, but it's all right. I've got a plan up my sleeve. All this glowstone in the corners is really just a waste and doesn't need to be there. So if I mine up all of these corners, then I'll have enough to finish the project. Mission to place all the glowstone has been successful. Now to place down all the leaves. And there we go. Mission accomplished. I think my next project should be to remove the beacon. Perfect. Has to be said that this tunnel is looking very, very cool indeed. But now I need my first villager. Now who wants to be my first victim? I mean, <laughs> I mean volunteer. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here. You know what? It's, it's time to release... Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> release the villagers. Whichever one comes to this composter will be the chosen one. You are the chosen one. Welcome. You are going to be... Put in, if I can put the boat down, you're going in there. And I'm going to briefly lower the drawbridge. Anybody leaves, they, they're, they're dying, okay? We're going through... Oh, we can't get out that way. That didn't work. And you left. Well, you know what that means. You know what? I, I, always taking his chance to go back. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I rule with an iron fist. The villagers, they all know their place. Composter's coming with me. And this villager is also coming with me. Oh, look at that. We can even fit under the... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what just happened? All right, guys, don't ask what happened to the last villager. Just just come over here. Don't worry, mate. You're in incredibly safe hands. Only this time, let's not go under the bridge. Yeah, that's much safer. All right, villager, let's get you to your new home. And thankfully, because the ice river leads to the ocean, this part is pretty easy. All right, mate, well, it's been a lovely journey with you. But it's time for you to arrive at your new home. Basically, the goal is to get him to stand inside this compa- Look at that. It, it couldn't have been more cooperative. I am very, very impressed with this guy indeed. All right, now don't try to jump out. No, resistance is futile, mate. You're in there now. <laughs> yeah, there's no going back. In a way, I'm kind of glad that first villager died. And now we're going to build the home of the second villager. You have to say, these phantoms, they, they tried the best, but uh, ultimately they're... Uh, they're not doing too well in there. So yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to put some slabs here, composter there, and then a piston with a downwards facing observer. And this hole right here is where villager number two will be going. So let's go and get him. Look, guys, I know it's inconvenient and you're trying to get some sleep, but um, I could really do with one of you. Yeah, that's it. Just jump in the boat. Let's go. He looks so sad. He's looking back at his bed. Nope, not for you. We're going on an adventure. In you go as well. That one was a little more precarious. Oh, look at this. Straight in. Now, you know what? These villagers are very cooperative. They're all going to be getting 10 out of 10 reviews from me. Now, what I'm building here is a way to transmit signals up and down a load of blocks instantly. And when you see how it works, you'll probably be like me and think that it is really, really cool. Also, right here is the platform where the next villager is going to go. And now, I've successfully made it to the top. If I place an iron trap door here and then power it with redstone, can you see... Just what? look at how they are now. They're all flat. If I go like that, can you now see how they're, like, all got a little bit jutting out? You know what? I'm just going to fall and see. Like, look, they've got, like, a bit jutting out 
like that. Can you see? It's like kind of 3D. So yeah, when that state updates from all the way up there, it will activate the observer, which will then, you know, move these uh, composters. It works fantastically. But that's enough of me being impressed by the farmer's mechanics. Instead, it is time to kidnap another villager. Now, this guy is going to be a little bit trickier to get up there. I'll just have to build a bit of a staircase up. But if he's anything like the previous villagers, we shouldn't have a problem. Let's release him out of the boat. All right, mate, you know you want to go and get that composter. That's it. Don't stop. Just keep going. Look at that. Mission. You, you just, just a little bit further. There we go. Mission accomplished. And if I just go like that and pick it up, it should then be done perfectly. There we go. It's a, it, yeah, everything's fine now. That was surprisingly way easier than I expected. And now to build another of these wall towers going all the way up. Village number four is ready to go to his new home. These bridges are getting higher and higher, aren't they? And for this particular villager... Okay, don't walk back in the water. That's it. He's going to head on up. And every time he gets to a composter... Okay, well, like, apparently he doesn't care about that one. That's, that's just a bonus, mate. But as I was saying, every time he gets to a composter... I'm going to break it, and he'll just go up to the next one. Villagers are just so easy when you know how they work. He's now going to wander all the way up these stairs. Yeah, it got a bit windy towards the end, not quite how I want it to be. But look at that, he's in there. He knows his place. And then I have the task of removing this staircase. And you'll be glad to know that that is the final villager that's going to be going into the farm. The villagers will probably be glad to know that as well. Now to build some more on top of this guy. And now to add another wall signal tower, which is going to be a lot smaller than the other ones. And before I build the redstone that's going to go up there above the wall signalers, I'm going to build this platform, which is going to allow me to get to where all the items will be stored somewhere around here. Right here, there'll be a water elevator allowing me to get up and down. And I can't really build any higher with this tower until I have done all the redstone. Otherwise, things are going to get in the way of each other. The redstone up here is starting to come together quite nicely. And with that, it's actually most of the redstone now done in this section. I've reached the top of the water tower, so I can place some water that will go all the way down, fill it in with kelp from here, and once broken, I've got my water elevator. Let's also grab some lanterns and place them on top of these walls, just as a bit of extra decoration and lighting. And right here is going to be the area where all the raiders are going to be taken out. But before I build that, I'm going to build all the shulker loaders so that I can store all of the items. It's fairly similar to the one I built in the AOL farm, only the only difference with this one is I can use water, which is going to make it better, and the shulker loader is a little bit better as well. And that's because this whole farm was designed by CCS Covenant. And so, of course, the, the shulker loader is also going to be superior to mine. And all the redstone behind these shulker loaders is done. It looks a little bit complicated, doesn't it? But now I get to use snow and blue ice to build the pathway that will carry the items. So this right here is the blue ice pathway, which is going to eventually lead to this hopper. Everything in between is going to be filled with snow. And then these walls are going to hold in water, which will push the items along. The water is going to be coming from these waterlogged slabs. Okay, never mind. They're not waterlogged slabs. It's actually just going to be something like this. And then it flows above like that. And it's the same thing in these three places. And I also need a sign above this hopper Otherwise, the water's just going straight in. And there's a bunch of redstone components to be added everywhere now, so I'm, I'm going to get busy with that. And after adding a lot more redstone, look at it, there's loads of it all in here. I'm finally at the point where I can add the second ice pathway. And I am also very close to running out of time. Whether I can finish it before the video ends, it's going to be tight. The, the sun is setting on day 3200, but we're going to power on. Oh, we're not going to fall off, though. And the cool thing about this part of the farm is that the ice pathway actually snakes around like this. I just think it, it, it looks quite cool. Any excess items that don't go in the hoppers will go into that fire. Now, the area that holds the water is all built. Let's grab some water and add it to the system. And there's also going to be a sea pickle in this one, and that is now successfully done. And the moon has set, the sun has risen. It is day 3201. And you can probably tell that I, I just want to keep going with this build. I, I don't want to stop. However, you know, I've got to think we also need a second sea pickle there. But yeah, as I was saying, I've got to think this through. If I carry on and rush this, you know, something could go wrong. It's a very complicated farm. If I get one single thing wrong, I could end up dying, you know, it could be that serious, I could actually end up dying. And it is also nearly midnight, and the video's got to be done and dusted for tomorrow. I still need to, like, sort out the intro, record that and stuff. So if I carry on, I, who knows what time I'll be up to. The video will probably not be here on time. So I have no choice but to leave the video on a bit of a cliffhanger. What other things are going to be built on this farm when it's complete? Well, we've got a lure and evoker from a woodland mansion. There'll also be some fancy piston glitches to create floating snow. And loads of other things, like an entire lava room for ravagers. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. It's such a cool farm. CCS Covenant has done an amazing job in designing it. To begin with, I need a cartographer. And you, good sir, are going to be the one. The one that I shall give a load of paper, then a load of glass and a compass. From there, I will fly to where this map leads. Hopefully, it's not going to be too far of a distance. It has not taken long at all, and already, we are very, very close. Here it is. Now to put on my chest plate and explore the area. I'm here in search of one specific mob, and that 
is the evoker. Any of the other ones, they've just got to go. There's a second one in this room. And so from here, I will make a portal, which when I head through, brings me right there. Now to dig upwards and remembering to break this portal first, then put a ladder here and end up uh, like so. Build a new portal and they connect perfectly. From there, I can fly back home, grab loads of rails and make a track going all that way. Successfully made it to the portal and I'll leave us so it actually works. Next to get an evoker in a minecart and get him through the portal. Now for the risky part, I am uh, trapped in here with him, but I have got to try... Oh, I've not... Oh, no. What have I done here? Right, hold on. We just mine up this because... Yeah, I'm a bit of an idiot. There we go. We've got out. Okay. You... No, we missed. Take two. Yes, he's in. And I will see you later. He's now trapped in that little area. Time for take two with the second one. That went a lot better than the first one. Okay, well, I was going to say it was just go, go through. And this time, I've got a thing set up, although a Vex has gone into it. Let's get him in now. And then he can be sent on his way. There we go. Now it's worked and uh, he's off. Oh, no, he's not off. Yes, he is off. And that's now two evokers in there. I will need two more eventually, but I'll just get them from another mansion some other time. Now that they're sorted, it's time to go for Notch Apple number 33. Let's get searching. The first of the pyramids has been found. I hope I don't have to search 40 of them like I did in the last episode. Well, as expected, the first one's got nothing. And the second one has given the same result. Same with the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Tenth, which very bizarrely also has a blacksmith in it. Not a very good one, though. Number 11 has been spotted, and number 11 has let me down, and so must be blown up. In fact, I have no rockets, that's how. <laughs> you know, SP, don't do dangerous things like that to yourself. Yeah, you, uh, you don't want to end up down there. Same in the 12th. Ah, and there we go. In the 13th one, we've got it. That was certainly a lot faster than the searching in the last episode was. So now to head back home. Let's add that to the wall, and then I can head back to the nether and repair all my stuff. That is all now repaired, so it's time I get back to work on this raid farm, which will involve adding more snow and more ice. Right here I'm building the place where the mobs will get taken out and all of their loot will go, and it's going to be mirrored on both sides. And right here is going to be the place that the player stands. And basically there'll be a minecart on this hopper and breaking that will stack the raids and make the farm work. And this massive glass platform is going to have things like like beacons and the evokers will be trapped on here which will stop vexes from being able to spawn and take me out the giant quadruple beacon is now being built and this is now complete you know something tells me I've, <laughs> I've not done this quite right one level of iron blocks too many and now it is complete and i can get all of the effects that i need and this will also need to be completely spawn proof with glass and that includes the top of the beacons as well and now it's time to build up the places where the mobs are going to be falling this right here is the exact place that the player is going to stand and that head is going to be for alignment and this right here is where all the redstone will be that will push the pillagers downwards i've now built this up as high as i want to right now because next i'm going to be doing something that involves a, <laughs> a bit of blowing up now this floating snow that's going to be up here is key to the farm but i will need some end stone and an end crystal to do it i brought plenty of end crystals but i completely forgot about the end stone so the floating snow is going to be all the way up here so along here there's going to be sticky pits and then a bit of glass right here with the stairs on the side that's on fire. Redstone dust on top of here with a lever at the end. End crystal right there. And <laughs> if all this goes to plan, when I flick the lever, everything should blow up. And look at that, we've got a load of headless pistons. So then there needs to be a bunch of normal pistons underneath these headless ones, powered by blocks of redstone that have slime on top of them. I wish you guys would get lost. I'm trying to do something quite complicated right now. <laughs> this is the last time you bother me. And this is where I need the most important thing, but I <laughs> completely forgot it. The actual snow itself, which goes on top of the pistons and I have to place all of the blocks that are going to be touching the snow now otherwise the snow will get updated and stop floating if I were to do it afterwards but now that it's all sorted if I flick this lever watch the pistons okay they all detract and yeah <laughs> well that's floating snow we, we fell straight through if I now carefully fly back up all of this can be removed just need to make sure I don't touch the glass or these quartz bricks. And that is mission accomplished. Well, it will be mission accomplished, but I've got to do the exact same thing on this side. And to keep the floating snow on this side safe from the end crystal that's going to explode, I'm going to make a really big obsidian wall so that, you know, nothing can get through. At least in theory, nothing should be able to get through. I'm hoping this will be enough because I need one piece of obsidian left. Now it's just rinse and repeat on this side. It's actually quite difficult to tell if all of this is in the way or not. I think it might be. Plan B is to do a little bit of mining. Oh, no, it's not actually. No, you know what? That needs to... You know, let's just see what happens. I've never done this before, but honestly, what is the worst that could happen? So we extend them. <sighs> Did it work? Well, let's see. Me snow as... <laughs> it's completely gone. Oh, so some blocks did still manage to break. Not a problem. I will sort that out once I've done this side. There we go. Floating snow 2.0. Okay, yeah, well, you know it's floating when you fall through. Now to head to this ender chest, grab more obsidian, and this time I will truly make a wall that cannot be broken. Now I'm pretty hopeful that take two... Okay, <laughs> I got that completely wrong. Hopefully that hasn't just scuppered it. That needs to be lit on fire. Then we're going to do that. Now, 
We push this. Yeah, something's definitely gone majorly wrong. Hopefully Romero doesn't hurt me too much. It's just going to blow everything up. It's... Actually, it's not too bad. But disaster has struck again. <laughs> One of them broke. Are you kidding me? Come to realise that a massive obsidian wall is, is not the most effective way to do this. So if I put a stairs there, light it on fire, end crystal here, flick that, and I've got a load of headless pistons. And if I just put obsidian here, that'll protect the headless pistons. And then I can do the same thing on this side. This side can be the first one to actually get floating snow as well. There we go. That is now done. Let's add the snow to this side and all of the blocks. Click the lever, break the redstone, and enjoy my two bits of floating snow. And now to get back to layering this up below it. And I've now built up all the way to the level of the floating snow, which means that there isn't that many levels left to go. And right here is where the portals will be that will get rid of the ravages. And that is this part of the farm more or less done. There will still be some building to do on the other side the portals of course but so far it has been an absolutely monstrous project still got all the fun to come with adding the evokers but first i'm going to build the portals in the nether and quickly before i forget i do also need to remember to fill these 10 dispensers with water buckets and i'm also going to go ahead and grab all of these shulker box of lava there's one here two more right here right here is the place for the portal let's see if it connects Yep, it has connected perfectly. So now I'm going to nip back to my house, grab loads more blocks, and build a massive lava room to deal with the many, many ravages that will be coming through this portal. And that is this massive lava box complete. It will not go well for any ravages that go through this portal. My two evokers are still patiently waiting there, but I do still need two more. So I'm going to drop off my stuff, do even more trading with a cartographer so that I can get another woodland mansion map and track it down for more evokers. Now this is a strange one. I have just flown over woodland mansion. Oh okay, the map was just lagging. <laughs> Never mind then, we have, uh, we've made it to the mansion. We've got one evoker in there and another one right here. In fact, very conveniently, there is one in there as well. So both of these rooms. In that case, I will build a portal right here which should be perfect for getting them through then to remake the portal on the roof next there must be rails going all that way and i have now connected up the line to the previous one and that is evoker number one going through and away he goes and also evoker number two and now that i have all of you guys it is time to do the final part of the farm which involves walls going around like this this right here is going to be the place that stops vexes from being able to spawn and get at me and that's why we move four evokers all the way over here so dispenser face Facing down like that, followed by six boats being put inside it. Then we're just going to dispense them all, break the bottom one, remove the water, and these five boats will catch all of the vexes. And now to do the exact same thing over the other four gaps. That has now been done successfully and must be completed in three more spots. And that is every single one of the boats in everywhere. Now for the even more fun task of getting the evokers. Let's build a portal right here and a rail system for them to travel on. I'm going to attempt to swap that like that. There we go. They're off. There are vexes everywhere. And this first guy can be sent on through. In you go. I'm kind of getting used to transporting these guys now. He is successfully in position. And look at that. He's summoning vexes. <laughs> it's no use. They're just going in the boats. So that means I can set things up for evoker number two. And in goes evoker number two. As well as the third one. And finally the fourth. Okay, not finally the fourth. I, I misaligned it. Did I really have to fall right at the last hurdle? Go on, you get in there. That's it. He's not quite perfect in the center, but it seems that none of his vexes can escape. Now, the very final thing to be done, grab a few pumpkins and then spawn in some golems so that the evokers will be distracted. Don't, don't go after him. Don't go... What are you doing? I'm going to be honest, mate. At this point, you're a lost cause. I know you're just trying to do your job, but uh, you're going to have to go. Take two, and this time he should fall straight in. And now, as you can see, he is going for the golem. So when I'm stood here, he doesn't care about me. Okay, wait, is he looking at me now? No, oh, there, there you go. Doesn't care about me. Now to add another one right here, one here, and finally one here. As long as I don't go too near the golems, they won't be able to take any damage. Let's gather up all of the shulker boxes, remove this portal, and then to add minecarts to this dispenser. And I probably want to mend my armor before I test this farm, just in case anything was to go wrong and I, I needed the armor. I, I really don't want this to break because it's, it's very difficult to get. Everything is now repaired. Let's turn off the mob switch, take out a pillager captain, and test out the farm. So I just stand right here and keep breaking the minecart. As you can see, all the raiders are falling and being taken out around me. Now I'm going to stop breaking the minecart and these mobs will just happily chill here and, uh, and, 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 you know, there'll be no problem because to set up the storage system, you need like 29 stacks of every item. You can see from that already, we got loads and loads of stuff. But now I will add a few chests along with hoppers and run the farm even more so that I can get loads more items to go in those chests. I also might have made another mistake. Yeah, there's a hopper under here and it's, um, it's taken all the items 
and then putting them in here. <laughs> Sometimes my stupidity really knows no boundaries. Pretty sure I've now fixed all the problems and everything is back to how it should be. Any items that float along here will go into these chests. So now let's get serious and run the farm for a bit. Well, quite a bit of time has passed. I'm just going to leave all those guys in there so I can carry on the machine later. And as you can see, I have got so, so many emeralds and plenty of glowstone and redstone in here. Now, in order to finish this sorting system, each of these individual rows of item sorters needs to be filled with 29 stacks of items. So hopefully I have enough emeralds to do that on a few of them. It's like I have to break into all of these emeralds to do it. I've sort of done it on this one, but because the hubs are going into chests right now, I'd, I'd need to move all that first. So I'll just carry on filling them up from here. There's going to be 15 ones for emeralds, but whether or not I'll have enough for this <laughs> remains to be seen. And unfortunately, I have used up all my emeralds, so I'll spend a little bit more time using the farm. And with these extra emeralds, I can fill up more hoppers. I'm getting very, very close to doing them all. I'll just keep going a little bit more. And that is all of the emeralds that I need successfully added. And with these spare ones, I can head back home and finally fix the floor of my house. You guys have had to wait a long time for me to do this, but finally it's back to how it should be. And whilst I'm here, I might as well fix this treasure room as well. That looks so, so much better. Now for the next filters, I'm going to grab loads of sticks and also head to spawn to grab even more sticks and also mine up a bunch of trees. Now I can take all of that wood, craft it into sticks and fill up some more of these hoppers. All of the sticks are now in. Now for the gunpowder, the glowstone dust, redstone and all the rest of the items as well. And I still haven't quite got enough of all of these these kind of items. So I will continue using the farm until I do have enough. I've spent even longer at this farm now. If I just grab the items that I have been filtering into here, I can continue filling up these hoppers. And except for a few more glass bottles and spider eyes, the entire system has been filled up <laughs> with the necessary items. I actually think it's taken me longer to fill up the system than it did to actually build the farm. But I've had enough of that for now. I will finish it all later. Instead, I'm going to fly through this massive blizzard all the way back to my house because I've got another project that I want to be cracking on with. I just head to this nether portal right here. You'll remember that last episode we built this cracking nether hub. I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's even got a cool slice portal in the middle. And the reason I need all that glowstone from the raid farm is to make all these respawn anchor floors, which we will sort out later. But before that, you've got to realise, I mean, look at it. It's great until you, you have to leave and then you just, look at it. Yeah, it's just, it's just not right. So really, I need to make some tunnels. And the first tunnel can be the one to my EOL farm. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to end up making the tunnels too high and it's just it's going to be too much hard work. So if I instead head to the blackstone area, which is right here. Yes, we've got this shulker box. And in there, I've got I've got two pieces of polished blackstone. I, I came all that way for two. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to grab a sea lantern as well as a couple of trap doors and plenty of basalt. And I might regret this next bit because the tunnels are they're going to be quite long, but I wish to do quite a lot of decorations on the walls. Slab floors are also useful because then no mobs can spawn. And this right here is where the sea lantern is going to go. We're going to do something like that. Trapdoor in front and then some polished blackstone on like that. Now that that comes a bit lower, I won't have to build the ceiling quite so high for the tunnels. And I'm thinking we do a similar thing to that along here. So something like this up. To, okay, that's, that's not right. As I was saying, that's up to there. I'll put a little bit of blackstone like that. And another basalt pillar. Now to repeat the same thing on this side. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is coming together nicely. Next, I'm thinking it's time to grab the stairs. And they can go along here like that. Oh, don't fall. I'll tell you, there's just hazards everywhere nowadays. Maybe if I actually extended this platform, building would be a little easier. This tree is also going to have to go. Although I'm not even sure if you call them trees in the nether. Well, that crimson plant, whatever you want to call it, is now off the face of the... Well, it's not off the face, but it's, it's severe shortened and my pathway is being extended further and further. I reckon this block here could also be a stairs. Yeah, that, I think that looks a bit better. It'll just go in line better with everything else. And I think one of the biggest things I'm going to be doing here is a lot of mining. This bit in between everything will not be covered in lava. Okay, that is that is not ideal. Well, I can't even reach it now. What's going on here? There we go. Now, as I was saying, that is going to be warped wart block. It was a pain collecting it all for that roof up there. And it's probably going to be a pain collecting it all for this roof right here. And since I am going to need such a lot of this, and I, I, I'm SB737, I have a, a farm for everything. But apparently not a farm for warped wart because I, I never thought I'd need it. So I'm going to add a bit more to these walls using this polished basalt. Wow, there's just lava everywhere in the nether, isn't there? As I was saying, polished basalt will make up these walls. If I place netherrack all the way along here, I can create pillars going all the way along. And I think, you know, that's a little OTT on the pillars, so I'm going to make it so that every three there's a pillar. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's definitely a better design choice. Slabs can fill in the gaps. And you guessed it, I'm going to mine up a little bit more warped wart, hopefully for the final time, and place it behind like this. This is more or less how the tunnel's going to look. It's starting to come together. Let's also repeat it on the other side. This bit right here does kind of look a bit strange because it doesn't, doesn't fit the rest. So I think that should go like that. Yeah, I, I, that is definitely... <laughs> Things to prove it's like there's no right way to do it. What if 
What if we just go all out and... Hold on, we can't do that. First we need you. And then, and then you know, just make a statement. You know, we could do that all the way along. You know, I'm just giving myself more work. But I think it'll be worth it. This is basically the equivalent of being in the mind of SB. Although now when I compare both sides, like, I, I think maybe this side looks better and it's less work. So, sorry, this, this plan is... Um, it's going back to the original. And for the final piece of the puzzle, I'm going to go through my little sliced portal, grab some lanterns, and also craft chains. And then these gaps can have chains with lanterns dangling off the edge of them. Probably going to be easy if I just place all the chains first. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that is not what I was trying to do. Instead, let's actually make the chains fall from the ceiling. This is what I get for trying to speed things up. It ultimately just ends up taking longer than it should have done. But despite the mishaps, they've all been added in. And I think I like it. I might, I might do something like this on all of these bits. Just bring it to life with a little extra detail. But I feel like these these corridors definitely complement the main room, which is exactly what I want. And before I go any further, the lack of extra warped warp blocks is definitely going to become a problem. So I will head back through this portal. Get rid of these chickens in here. I have absolutely no idea how you got in here, but you, you're not supposed to be here. Apparently, I didn't think chicken was good enough to have a chest for it, so <laughs> it's going to have to go into the shulker box. Yes, the food shulker box. I, I mean, I don't know why it's going to go in there, but that's that's going to be the plan. Feathers to the sorter. And if this becomes a chicken, the, the chicken may live. Uh, you, there's nothing there. Once again, I am getting somewhat sidetracked. But yeah, before we can go any further, we need to make a warped wart block farm. That is one heck of a tongue twister. <laughs> and in order to build this farm, that'll be how I'll be referring to it from now on. I'm going to need 12 warped nylium blocks. And just in case I need any more, I might as well grab loads. I came for 12 and left with a stack. Here's all the items that I'm going to be needing. I think building it at spawn is going to be the best idea because then it should still be running in the background if my calculations are correct. I mean, I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty sure. So I'm hoping that's the case. This one does not use TNT duplication because I prefer not to use TNT dupers when I'm building farms. Now, when I'm when making a perimeter, obviously, there's not much choice but to use those. Or I could mine it by hand, but that'd take me about six million years. But when it comes to farming resources, there are alternatives, so that's what we'll be using. The game also goes extremely laggy over here. What is going on over there? <laughs> it would seem that somehow a shulker has escaped. Now, you are, you are not meant to be here, good sir. And you are going to have to be asked to leave. And right here is where this new build can be. A lot of these blocks right here are just down as guidelines for where I'm going to put the warped nylium. There's also going to be some on the corners of these blocks as well. Now for the dispensers, which are going to be full of bone meal. Well, I'll, I'll fill them up later anyway. Then all of these blocks can be removed. Redstone into various comparators will be like this. Oh, I cannot like that. Instead like that and these four blocks will be removed with torches on the sides and I, I might have known you guys would show up every night. I'm sick to death of it. I'll get rid of you for now but there'll probably be more to come later. Now on top of each torch let's go like that and add some observers. Yeah things are gonna get a little bit noisy for a bit but you know what it's gotta be there. And you thought things were noisy before but <laughs> don't worry it's gonna get worse because I'm going to need four of these underneath every single one. At least these ones aren't going off. And now there's three of you guys. What's going on? Let's get these wired up so that we can have some peace. Speaking of peace, to get away from those guys, look at them just chasing. You guys are not following me all this way because I can outfly you all. Haha. <laughs> anyway, the best way for me to get some peace is to get some sleep. And then I can return to building. All right, you know what? Something went wrong there. <laughs> There's going to be some blocks here that block any signals from getting up. And I also don't think I need the nylon there, so I'm going to move those on as well. And add in more redstone. Yeah, that, that's much better. And there's a little bit more redstone wiring to be done on this end. And look at that. That's made a nice clock now, which is good. To slow it down, I am going to go ahead and put a repeater there. There we go. They also all move together now, which, which looks way more satisfying. And I shall continue building. The redstone for this bit is now fully finished. And this is going to be on off switch right here with this piston. But for now, I'm going to temporarily place that block there because we, <laughs> I don't want this going on and off whilst I'm trying to build. This glass platform is going to go right around here like so. And then there's going to be an obsidian platform right above it. And the plants should be able to bone meal through the obsidian. This is the basin that will catch everything. And there's going to be water all the way along here. Of course, I, I didn't think about this. We're in a snowy biome and it's, <laughs> it's all freezing. But to solve that, there is a very, very simple solution. I just simply have to fly on back home like so, go down to my storage room and grab a bunch of signs. Because of course, a water source block will freeze. But a water logged block... Well, that can't freeze at all, can it? So there's going to need to be signs all the way along here. And if I also add more water on this side, they can all be waterlogged as well. As you can see, everything is meeting in the middle. Now, I do want to break some blocks, but uh, yeah, water will just go everywhere if I do that. So instead, I want to block up the water and I can mine up all this obsidian in the middle without any worry. Now, in this gap, there can be hoppers, which will nicely collect up all the items from this farm. I can also mine up all of this and release the water. And we know it's working because look at that. All the concrete is just going straight into the hoppers. Might as well stick a chest at the bottom here. And that is this system complete. And in theory, if I go and grab some bone meal, which I'll just steal from the tree farm, it's, it's no big deal, and place a stack in each dispenser, then in theory, the beginnings of the farm should be working... <laughs> 
Time will tell. Yes, it works. Okay, I'm so glad that that worked. It's really quite crazy though when you look at it. Like, look, straight through the obsidian, the plant has grown. It's really cool. As you can see, sometimes it just makes these little roots and sometimes it will make a tree. But now we need a system to get rid of the trees. First things first, we're going to build a nice little hopper clock, which is apparently a, a little bit too close to the lever. Take two on building a nice little hopper clock. This clock is going to contain 40 items. So if we go like that, it will be going backwards and forwards. Now to wire this into the main machine and destroy a bit of this mountain. Although to be fair, if it's a mountain, yeah, this, this could be the world's smallest mountain. <laughs> Guys, you, you saw it here first. Anyway, torch here, repeater coming out of it. This is where we have the torch tower that's going to go up to the thing that the, will dispense TNT. It really is no easy way to make one of these unless just you just do something like this. Now I've made it to the top, there's a bit more redstone to be done and a few more torches to be placed. Using a piston and sand, we can create a nice little multi-pulse generator. And this is where my dispenser is going to be. I'm just using walls for alignment here. And the dispenser right here will have TNT in it and it will dispense them down here and blow up the trees. And I want to create an extra one of these above the first one as well. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to create and I can actually use them below to, uh, to get the exact right alignment. And in theory, unless I've done something very stupid, all of this up here should be done. TNT will be aligned and fall straight down here. I think I just need a little bit of extra redstone down here as well, like that. Last bit of redstone is just a second pulse like this. And that is more or less the farm complete. I'll just remove all this dirt and head back to my house so that I can grab loads of bones for bone meal and also gunpowder for TNT. There's a little bit of TNT I want to grab from here as well. I am completely out of sand, as you can see from this right here, which is a slight problem. Although that slight problem can easily be solved if I just fly through this tunnel and harvest loads of the sand from this desert. People always tell me about sand dupers that I can make, but I don't really want to ever use a sand duper. Like if I'm willing to duplicate sand, like why don't I just use duplication glitches to duplicate anything? Yeah, I have my own set of rules of what I do and don't want to do in this world. I don't know, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but it's my world, I can do what I want. Let's load the shulker box up with sand. If I start doing some crafting, all of that TNT should be enough for now. So let's load up the TNT, add in lots more bone meal. And there's one more thing I forgot about that I'm definitely going to need. I don't think I actually have any of it spare at the moment. So I'm going to steal some of the ancient debris from the walls. Not a very good look, but don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll get it fixed pretty, pretty soon. Under all these bits of trees, I'm going to mine up the obsidian. I actually don't think I need anything else. I think just mine up the obsidian will suffice. Well, I'll test it out anyway and see how it goes. I believe I can just switch the machine on like this and it's, it's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. Why is that? Oh, no. What a disaster. I'm not entirely sure what went wrong there. I shall turn the machine off for now. And this snow is kind of doing my head in, so um, I'm going to let the snowstorm pass. And rather than sleep through it, I'll spend some time at the raid farm and try and work out exactly what went wrong. And after spending plenty more time at this raid farm, I have more or less got every single thing that I need. All of the glass bottles are in. And as for the spider eyes, that's all the ones that I need. But if I just go something like that, then that, that should actually be enough. The machine will be able to fill the rest of it in by itself. Now, if I grab a few shulker boxes, and I'm going to need quite a few of them because all the items that are in those two chests are going to have to be moved and put into shulker boxes. If I just break them, they're going to go into the system. Everything's going to start breaking, so I really don't want that to happen. Do you know what I want to do with these straggler items right here? I'm going to go and put an ender chest like that, which will block the water. Okay, I've just picked some of up. I don't want that. Then I will set it on fire, which will burn it all. Perfect. And if I break the... Hold on. I don't want the ender chest to burn, but if I broke it, go like that... Perfect. Hopefully I actually pick up the crafting table I did. And now all these items like the gunpowder can be collected up like so. We'll grab it all and then they're just going to go into the shulker box. Just a bit of light sorting. There's a little bit more gunpowder there so I'm going to put that in as well. And as for everything else in here, I'm just going to collect it all up, completely fill my inventory and then take it and throw it into the ocean. Yes, I'm... Uh, I'm not going to miss you guys. Oh, okay, I didn't mean to go. Okay, yeah, you're not to fall down here with it. Take two. This time, I will not walk forwards. So maybe it is kind of a waste to be throwing the sticks out as well, but I can get loads of sticks. It's not exactly like sticks are the rarest thing in the world. And as for the totems, I'm going to keep a few of them because if I dip into my ender chest, as you can see, I have my shulker box full of totems and we can just top it up. Yeah, we might as well, even though I have, you know, more totems than I know what to do with. You can never have too many, I always say, because I don't really fancy dying in this hardcore world for, for, for some reason. Now to grab these final bits of items, and we are going to chuck all of them. I almost chucked you out. You just be careful, little netherite shovel. I haven't chucked anything else important ever. Pretty sure I'm okay. I might as well just keep all these sticks, though, since they're all in one thing. I can just put them in... Yeah, we'll go in there in the, in the sugar one for some reason. And I actually realised that that was completely unnecessary, because all these hoppers... Oh, well, not all these hoppers. Some of, uh, Most of these hoppers are completely stacked to the rafters full of emeralds. So 
They can't accept any extra items anyway, so that is not a problem. We can gather up these chests without having to worry. And I'm not entirely sure... Okay, don't you go into that system. As I was saying, I'm not entirely sure what I actually did with the hoppers that were there before and the comparators. But I do need quite a few of them. I mean, I'll have a quick search in these places. Looks like there's nothing to be found. So I'm going to quickly head to this portal over on the water so that I can get back home. Go down this chute into the slice portal at the bottom. Whilst I'm here, I might as well fix these bits of walls as well that I uh, stole from before. Not, uh, not the best idea, but yeah, we don't need to use them, so they can go back. The room is, is back to how it should be. And apparently all my comparators aren't here. Now, I, I, I'm pretty sure I put them somewhere. And by somewhere, yeah, I put them in this shulker box. The shulker box is locked for now. But yeah, I've got my comparators and the hoppers that I need. I might get a few extra, actually. Just to be on the safe side, we can easily craft them from in here if we just go ahead and make the hoppers like so. That is more than enough now. And you know what else will be needed? Some trusty blockers to set up the item filters. So I'm going to grab... A load of dirt, I think. That's going to be the best way. I do have an anvil, but you know what? Let's just use some levels and rename them. They're going to be called blockers. I don't think I'll need more than two stacks. Although I've just done the math and it's 36 times four, which is 144, which means three stacks will be more than enough. Now let's fly all the way back up this chute. I just love going up it every time. It's brilliant. Now that I have reached the raid farm, I'm going to grab quite a lot of emeralds. And also shove these sugar boxes down because they're just, just kind of in the way. So there's going to be a hopper here and then hoppers. I, I think, are these? Are these, these are just going to go down like this, but but then there will be a hopper. I can't quite... I can do that. And then we do that. Then these going into all of them. Followed by comparators on top. And then if I sneak on down underneath. All of these extra hoppers. Okay, that's not meant to happen. But uh, as I'm saying, these extra hoppers can also be filled with the needed emeralds. I was just short on by a few emeralds. One of these hoppers is not quite full. It is this one. But now I'm pretty sure every single one is completely filled up. Which is great. It means we can now work on the item filters. And you know how I said the spider eyes will be fine if I was just to go like like I did there? Well, they won't be fine. Uh, but I will need like two and a bit stacks of spider eyes, which isn't a massive problem. Sure, I'll be able to find some lying around somewhere. In each of these, we're going to be adding the blockers. This is one of those things that I have now done so, so many times. Creating this entire system has just been such a big hassle, like the whole item filter. It probably could have been made in such a way that wouldn't have been so difficult. But I know that it's going to work and it's going to be reliable, which is the main thing. And having all of these items is going to be very, very useful for my next project. Although I can't really do the next project until I have got the remaining spider eyes. And I would like to use the raid farm to get the spider eyes, but that's not really going to work. So instead, I will have to chill at the very, very slow cave spider farm. Over two stacks is the goal. I'm sure it's not going to take me too long. And now I have got more than enough spider eyes for this. Look at that. There's, lo oh, there's absolutely loads of them. I think I've actually ended up getting too many. And to be honest, this will probably be the final time that I ever use this farm because I, I just have no use for it now. My EOL farm gives me all the, the string that I could ever dream of. And this raid farm is going to give me all the spider eyes that I could ever need. So yeah, that, that farm, it served its purpose while it was needed. But the uh, cave spider farm is redundant. Let's load these extra ones into here and complete the rest of the item filters. And that is all of them done. The next thing we're going to be doing is grabbing a bunch of emeralds and adding them to 15 of these. As you can see, I don't quite have enough, but if I go like that... It should, yeah, it'll filter some of them out really, really fast. Now my inventory is clogged up with spider eyes. I don't really have enough space for all that. And that is all of the emeralds now. In fact, we'll just go with stacks. That's all of them done. This one right here, I'm going to need sticks. And whilst I've got the spider eyes, these three hoppers here are going to have them above. So let's go and put all of those in. Yeah, look at that. They're filtering out as well, which is perfect. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Let's add the three stacks of sticks into these hoppers. The gunpowder right here, followed by glowstone dust. That's kind of the, the, the one of the pressing things that I need a lot of. And I need redstone. Thankfully, I have this, which has loads of redstone in it. And the redstone is going to be a really useful one. My days of ever needing to collect it should hopefully be over after this. I'm just kind of looking through. You've got to make sure you put the right thing in. If, if I get it wrong, it's just going to mess up the whole system. But as you can see... Everything is working according to plan. Finally, the sugar goes in and it's complete. The raid farm is now 100% finished. Well, it's kind of 100% finished. I suppose there's one more thing that I should do. And that is to fly away from the raid farm. Fly up here again. All the way over to the shulker farm. Which, by the looks of things, is nearly overflowing. Look at that. Is that... Oh, that this side is overflowing. I think maybe it's time I build a shulker load <laughs> for the shulker shells. Because, yeah, we are... Well, well, I just never need to worry about these again. But anyway, I'm going to grab loads of them so that I can fill up both of these two shulker boxes. Now to take these away with me and get back to that raid farm. A bunch of wood will be useful to make a bunch of chests. And do you mind? I'm, I'm trying to craft over here. Will you stop uh, crocodiling me? Good. <laughs> just uh, mind your business and, and go after the golem. Anyway, if we now go and fly down here, we've got to be a little bit careful. There we go. We've got this here and this is what is going to be filled up with shulker boxes. I'm going to make as many as I have space for and get filling up this chest. And these are just going to all filter 
so that you can see you see the shulker boxes somewhere around here yeah they're just all along here so that whenever one of these gets filled up it will have a new one straight away thanks to this system look at they've already all filtered through let's uh, put more in there this is certainly a lot easier to load than the eol farm was i don't know how many shulker boxes it takes to fully load this thing but i am now well and truly out of wood which is a bit of a problem and it still doesn't look like it's going to be full i don't know it's, it's taken a lot of shulker uh, shells so far but hold on a second it looks like right at the last uh, moment we have managed to fill it which is, is really good news because <laughs> yeah i was gonna be running out well i've got no wood anywhere as you can see completely empty we can keep the shulker boxes with the shulker shells in right here just in case i ever need them I think I won't be able to get around that side. If I fly into here, I'm going to mine up this crafting table and also light up this place because I don't want any mobs to spawn, but I think they might be able to in here. And I think that's that. I think that is farm well and truly complete. There is only one thing left to do. That is to test it out. Now, there aren't any mobs in here, so I'm going to have to go and find a pillager captain. All these pillagers. I can't seem to find a captain. Okay, never mind. He's down there. Although no sooner have I walked down here and I've, I've completely lost him. <laughs> Where did he go? Unless I saw the banner and he was stood... I, I don't know, actually. Maybe, maybe I just completely got mixed up well this time i have definitely found one let's get rid of you and then the raids can begin i've just stopped for a second because i want to see how well the farm's working and uh what do i see behind me <laughs> what on earth are you doing here so i'm gonna very carefully eat up and then try and and deal with him how did you actually how did you do it he just escaped so it is possible for ravagers to escape in this farm and i also have so much junk in my inventory which i can actually just send through the system so we can watch it go see it all in action and you can see all the items that need to be getting picked up are picked up and the rest of them straight into the fire and i might as well also take the items out of the shulker boxes and send them through the system because there's quite a lot of them and it has to be said there is quite a lot of these items but it's also very very satisfying to just send them all in now i'm actually sending too many through i'm going to be careful do, do they actually all get picked up or <laughs> I just sent them to their doom. Yeah, the farm wasn't designed to be able to cope with stacks and stacks of an item at once. I just have to send half a stack at a time. And finally, all these shulker boxes have empty. Well, okay, not these ones, but I, I kind of can keep those just because they look quite nice. I'm just going to be putting these final bits in here. Just let them filter through. I've also got rid of that fire, you can see. So if any items do sneak through, I can just go and pick them up and send them right back through the system. And you know what? I'll turn all this sugar cane into sugar for good measure. Fortunately, I don't quite have the inventory space to take every single shulker box. But if I put a few of these items inside one of them, then I will have all of the space that I need. I do also want to drop down here and have a look at these chests. See how much we're getting. Look at that. Look at all the emeralds. Okay. Don't know how glowstone dust has got in there. Uh, and none of the other ones appear to have filled up, which is, I guess, makes sense because I haven't been using it long enough. So... I'm going to use it a little bit longer. Let's hope that the farm is actually working correctly as well and, and collecting up all my items. I've had enough of the farm for now, so I'm going to go and grab this box of glowstone dust, which is going to be useful since I will be creating a lot of respawn anchors. Let's also drop off the millions and millions of shulker boxes I have amassed. And before I do get this floor completely finished, I'm going to fly over to spawn because I need to find out a way to try and fix that TNT blaster that completely blew up that was meant to blow up the warped warped stems all of that was a bit of a mouthful but yeah i'm just gonna go and fix this machine or at the very least try to fix it top one's been repaired but there's no tnt in it i just want to turn on the machine and see what went so horribly wrong before i think the issue lies here that i used redstone dust and not a repeater hopefully that works a bit better i'm going to change that to be a block as well okay the actual issue was that this repeater wasn't enough i've changed the vortex delay and it works fine now and if i just add this redstone dust we will be able to see it in action so that piston will extend and then it will come back in. If I stick a piece of TNT in here, we can actually see it properly in action. Just, just to make sure it does definitely work. Look at that. Blew up perfectly. So let's get busy on the one below. And now this little bit of redstone is done as well. So I'm going to put the TNT into all of these. And everything should be working. I've just got to make it dispense the TNT a bit less by putting some more items back into the hoppers. And I heard the TNT blow up. <laughs> Hopefully that is a good sign. Here comes some more. Yes, two are coming down. Yeah, blew it up pretty well, and d is, is that working perfectly? It looks like it. I think more can grow in their place. It, it's all coming together, guys. The main thing that decides whether or not they'll grow is whether or not I randomly get a little warped fungi on one of these. As you can see, I'm not really getting them at the moment. So that is then what makes the piston extend, and it just keeps trying. As you see, destroys it because it's, we've not got one. Still not got one, and I don't know what the chances are of getting it, but there we go. We've got one. 
That's got bone milled and it has grown. In fact, two of them have grown and the TNT will blow it up, make room for a new one to grow. And just look at all of the warped warp blocks that I am getting in here. Actually, quite a lot, which is perfect. This is way better than mining it. And because the machine does now seem to be working as intended, I think I can put more TNT in without having to worry too much about everything going wrong. There should be enough TNT to last in there for quite a bit. And I can also go ahead and top up loads of the bone meal. Pretty sure that's also going to keep working even when I'm not in the area, which is the entire idea of it. So I'll put that to the test and move away and instead continue building this tunnel. It's not going to be too far that I'm going to have to dig to get to the EOL farm, but it's still going to be quite the tunnel by the time it's finished. I have dug quite the tunnel here, as you can see, and it has led me right next to where the stronghold portal is. In a way, that's good news because I do want to make a tunnel that leads to the stronghold. But on the other side of the coin, it's also bad news because it means I've still got a long, long way to go before I reach the EOL farm. A big, big part of this tunnel has now been mined out. And I think it's time I grabbed a bunch of slabs because I'm sick of mobs like you guys all spawning. Instead, if I place down all of these, then none of you can spot. Do you mind trying to hit me in the back like that? Literally being stabbed in the back by a piglin. I've got nowhere near enough slabs to do all of this in my inventory. You can see we're on the last ones right there. That is the last five, I do believe. Got a long way to go, but I'm thinking I should do the basalt first because you can see I'm kind of, then I'll know which gaps to be filled in. Let's grab loads of polished basalt and get to work with the building. I've also got to be careful as I get towards the end because there is a big drop straight into lava. <laughs> I don't want to just walk off the edge. I've successfully reached the big drop. I, I should probably put some slabs over this before it becomes too dangerous. There we go. Now to add all of the pillars in between. I have run out of basalt. Nothing I can't quickly craft. And it has to be said... It's really starting to come together. As you can see, the pillars all the way down there are done. And I'm just completing the ones on this side as well. I've found that the best way to do it is instead of doing the pillar all the way to the top, just to count every four blocks and just get the actual foundations in. And then when that's done all the way to the other end, like it is now, I can go and add all these top bits all the way along and I just don't have to think about it anymore. Everything I know is marked in the correct place. And so that is mission successful with all of those. Time for all these warped warp blocks, which I think I'm going to have more than these and I know what to do with by the end of today. And I want to begin by placing netherrack behind all the pillars just so that no mobs can spawn inside the walls. And then all these gaps can be filled in with the warped wart, which really is a very satisfying thing to do because it just brings the entire thing together. And it looks like building the farm has been a massive success because, I was going to say because I have enough to finish the entire thing. I, I, I will have enough if I just go ahead and mine out these two here. They can just be changed to be nether quartz or something like that. And I have the perfect amount now for all of them to be done. And that means I have the opportunity to instead get myself loads of polished blackstone, turn it into slabs, and fill in the entirety of this floor. It's also very nice to finally be filling in this big drop into the lava. And now that I've made it all the way to the end, this is probably as good a time as any to go and check on how my warped ward farm is actually doing has it been working okay in the background? And the answer is a very, very resounding yes. It has been doing insanely well in the background. And this is why when I have to go out manually getting items, I just make a farm because I'll never have to worry about this ever again. It's even completely exceeded my own expectations. I'm going to have to go and get some shulker boxes. And the perfect colour for these are going to be cyan because basically... I can barely tell the difference between the two. Also me, I'm also going to grab all of these stems and take them home with me. But from that farm in that short time, I got over two shulker boxes worth. Should be enough, you know, more than I ever need. I will need to top that farm up with TNT, of course. But it doesn't really use up that much TNT for the amount you, that you get. I mean, you could see it was still going after all that time. It is quite a slow using TNT farm. Let's put all of these into this chest. Look at that, that's brilliant. And I'll put one full shulker box in here as well. And I will still need a lot of the warped wart to do this roof. So it's time we started mining. The bit that I'm breaking right here is where all of these stairs are going to be going. And this middle bit is for the warped wart. Don't know how many times I've said warped wart today, but it has been way too many. And that is all of that successfully done. So all the, all the mining of this tunnel up to this part is complete, which is, is a nice thing to see. And if I just dip into here, in fact, I don't want to grab these ones yet. I'm going to use the one that's kind of partly used. Yeah, well, there's not really going to be enough to go out here, but all I'm going to be doing here is just filling in this roof with the warped wart. And if I look at this at the perfect angle, then I can do it without having to jump as well. And this method does work fairly well, but as you can see, I, I made quite a few mistakes. <laughs> if I, it looks really bad when you look all the way down there. Let's go into my ender chest and grab the hoe, and I can easily tidy up all of the mistakes that I made. And mission to add the entire ceiling has been completed. Let's go into the black stone chest. We can grab a few stairs, but we're going to need to grab a few more as well. Should really use a stone cutter rather than the crafting table to craft all those, because you actually get a lot more for what you're crafting if you use a stone cutter. So I kind of just waste a load of blackstone right before my very eyes. But regardless of whether or not I'm doing a lot of wasting, I still have enough stairs to complete the entire roof. And in my opinion, this is looking really, really good. Look at that. I can just fly all the way down here. Yes, I would like to add lanterns in between. And I also, apparently I 
didn't fill in these bits of walls that need to be done. But it really is an excellent, excellent build. I think I'm going to be building an entranceway down there so I, I can go and get the to the stronghold portal. And if I fly all the way back along this tunnel to the shulker box, which is here, I think... Not that shulker box, not that shulker box, but this shulker box contains lanterns, it contains chains. It's probably not going to be enough for me to finish it all the way, but I might as well add as many as I can. Seems like chains are actually the thing that I'm running out of the most. I can actually go and craft some more because I've got some all the way, well, I've got some iron back there. If I, I've got so much iron, I don't know what to do with it all, really. And I probably have enough lanterns to just do the entire thing. So let's go into here to grab those, make myself a load of nuggets, then I can make a load of chains. Hopefully these 26 should be enough to get it finished. As I say, that is successfully done, but I'm, I'm one lantern short. Are you kidding me? I've got all the torches that I would need to do it, but I'd, I'd need some iron. But don't worry, if it's iron that I seek, I'm sure I've got some in this shulker box. Not in that shulker box. Don't worry, there's plenty more. <laughs> what about the iron block shulker box? Yeah, there's definitely iron in there. That can make the final lantern and that means that this entire corridor is complete up to the part that I got up to. If I want to get all the way to the OL farm it'll be much much longer but <laughs> I ain't got time for that right now. Also I lied about it being complete because um, as you can see I put slabs around the lamps here and what that means is that we need more slabs around the lamps all the way down here. And despite my best intentions I can already tell I am going to run out. Yep I was right. I don't know about how, by how many though. Uh, we don't need that many more. If I craft these into slabs yeah 60 should be enough. There we go. They're all complete and now the corridor is completely finished and I can move on to another project. First phase in that other project project is to head to spawn and then whilst at spawn i need to top up this and i do believe i am now out of tnt as well which is probably why i'm not getting quite as much as i was before but realistically for now i've got loads and loads i don't really need to worry about getting more tnt i will in the future it's not a problem but for now i'm just going to switch it off and yeah so it doesn't need to be running anymore <laughs> we've got more than i could ever dream of and my only worry is that from digging all those tunnels in the nether my pickaxe is quite broken now. I do have a whole host of different XP farms to choose from, but since I want to get a lot of the items that the raid farm offers, such as the redstone, the emeralds, the glowstone, I think using the raid farm as my main XP farm is going to be the best thing for me. You can also see just how many levels I went up today in this episode, like we're on 349 now, nearly 350. But it does get you quite a lot of XP pretty, pretty fast. Let's put the pickaxe in my offhand and start using the farm. All my items have now been healed, and so I can begin the next big project, the emerald palace it's not really the best weather for me to be showing you this but right in this forest is where i want this emerald castle to be so to build it i am going to have to demolish the entire forest i'm gonna to have to get rid of loads and loads of these trees although right now i'm really not enjoying being out in this weather right? i hate rain in real life and in minecraft so i'm going to go inside where it's warm and instead gather up loads and loads of materials that i'm going to need and looking at things one of the main ones i'm going to need is lots and lots of green concrete now 21 is Sadly not going to be enough. I have got a bit of gravel in here, which, which should be okay to do the job. But the main thing that I'm really lacking is sand. So that means that I get to go to the one place where it never rains. Yes, that is correct. I will be going to the desert to get loads of sand. To be honest, it's not the one place that never rains. I suppose the nether is another place where it never rains. And all around my house, it technically snows, not rain. So that's another one. And the savannah. Yeah, it, do it doesn't rain here. So yeah, I've kind of outdone myself. Anyway, let's forget about that. Because we do know that it doesn't rain in a desert... And that is where I am right now. So let's mine up the colossal amount of sand that I'm going to need. Since I will not only be needing the sand for the concrete, but also for a lot of glass as well. Because, yeah, there's going to be a lot of windows and stuff. I always like windows in castles and big builds like that. So there's going to be plenty of glass in there. And some glass domes at the top as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to look very, very good. It's just going to take a lot of materials. And the day that the Minecraft developers add it so that you can renewably farm sand without needing a duplicator... It'll be a special, special day. There is some cool data packs which allow you to get it from husks and stuff, but uh, nothing in vanilla so far. All three shulker boxes have now been filled. Let's grab them all. And I'll head back home. I'm going to craft as much of the concrete as I can. I'm not entirely sure if I'm able to do it all because I actually going to need 4,000 pieces. Yeah, this palace is going to be quite the project and it's going to be very, very big indeed. I've also seemed to have apparently left a few... Uh, why have I left these behind? I mean, these two shulker boxes... They belong in the ender chest, nice and safe and sound. I've just worked it out and I actually need 60 stacks of concrete, which means two of these shulker boxes more or less won't be needed. So that's kind of good news. I don't need too much of a ridiculous amount. I'm just going to get rid of these extra bits. The bad news, though, is that I do not have enough gravel. No, in here I have just, well, about 9, 10 stacks of it. So if I grab all the gravel and top up my inventory with sand, as you can see, we can make quite a few stacks, but we're, actually we're going to need a load more dye. It's a good job I have a ridiculous big cactus farm, isn't it? Yeah, you can see we've got quite a lot there. Um, we can also grab those, but we are out of gravel. Let's turn a bunch of the powder into concrete and then go searching for gravel. I will need to just repair my shovel before I do any mining for gravel. And because I can't be bothered to go to a pillager outpost so I can use the raid farm, I'm actually going to first come to the bartering farm. Yeah, this is a, a little uh, blast from the past, isn't it? But if we give these guys 
a load of gold. They will happily be bartering away with that. And in the meantime, I can be repairing my shovel at the gold farm. Now then, have you guys successfully bartered all my gold? You guys go through it. So, okay. I don't say it. I thought you had already, but no, you've uh, you've got loads of it. No, you haven't. I don't know if you have actually. Well, here's more for you anyway. And from that, I have managed to get quite a significant amount of gravel. Nowhere near as much as I'm actually going to need. But for the time being, it's perfect. Because I can also now go through this portal, which is very conveniently going to lead me to the ocean, as you can see. And what is on the ocean floor, guys? You know it. Loads and loads of seagrass. Yeah, there's seagrass everywhere. There's kelp. It's brilliant. No, but in reality, I'm down here to collect all of the gravel. Now, when I'm doing this, most of the gravel does tend to float up to the surface because from up here, I can just swim around and collect it all up. Time to wonder if I've actually got enough inventory space for all this because I've already filled a shulker box up and I did get a little bit carried away with all the gravel that I mined, but it looks like I've collected it all up and... Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I had a lot more space in my inventory than I actually realised. So with that, I'm going to get back home and craft all the rest of the concrete powder that I'm going to need. I believe with that, I have got all of the powder that I need. Now to take loads of this sand and set it off smelting into glass. I actually don't really have enough coal for that farm to be running, but I'm just going to leave it as it is and instead continue turning the powder into concrete. I've converted most of the powder into concrete, but it, it just takes so long I can't be bothered with it anymore. When I need more of it during the build, I'll sort it, but for now, I've got all the places I need to go. One of those places is the Guardian Farm. Now the main situation with the Guardian Farm is the new 1.18 update completely broke it because there's now loads of caves below my feet. Mobs are spawning in these caves, meaning not as many guardians are coming through. As you can see, it's, it's a lot slower than it used to be. And I was hoping I'd have enough prismarine shards to make all the blocks that I need, but it's, it's going to look like that is not going to be the case, because I'm going to need stacks and stacks of prismarine bricks, probably like a similar amount to the concrete, and not to mention I want to make a load of dark prismarine as well. So since this is most definitely going to be a problem, I mean, I don't know how many we've got here, not many at all, it is time for plan B. And the idea for plan B is to first go back to my house, and then all the way to spawn. This is just so that I can turn the mob switch back on. And now I wish to head to a brand new ocean monument. Thanks to the mob switch, there are no guardians here, so I can easily mine up and do work without being attacked every two seconds. I will eventually fix my guardian farm by spawn proof in all the caves and that way I'll be able to do what I need to do without getting attacked every two seconds. This is a big portal done which is what the guardians are going to float through and now I just need to remove all of this seagrass and the kelp and these blocks around the edge as well. And to do the next thing I'm gonna need quite a bit of dirt. Thankfully getting hold of dirt is one of the easier things for me to do. I also need a bunch of bricks, loads of this and plenty of chests and hoppers to collect the items. I don't think that's gonna be enough chests so let's go and just craft a load more. Going through some precious wood. I do need to get more at some point. Although I have loads of spruce logs in there. You know what? We can get 32 from that. That's definitely enough. And the only other thing I will need is some campfires. I'll need 10 of them and thankfully they're pretty easy to craft. Although, can I only craft 9? Of course I can only craft 9. Although, if I get a few more sticks. The fact that my raid farm has got so many sticks just waiting for me is a bit annoying. I've actually got more campfires than I need. And the very final thing to grab is going to be a load of fence gates. I'm going to use the warp stem. That's like my most, uh, well, the wood I have the most of at the moment. So I can easily get planks and sticks and then from there make the gates. It is probably one of the most simpler farms, and it's not actually going to get me XP. It's it's also pretty easy to do it so it does get you XP, but I'm probably not going to worry about it for now. It would just make more sense for me to make my original guardian farm work again rather than do that because that is getting me XP from the cactus as well whilst I'm there. But as a quick fix, this new little guardian farm is going to be perfect. First things first, I need to place loads of dirt in here so that I'll be able to actually light the portal. And if I mine out this middle bit, I'm going to my ender chest and find the flint and steel. I can easily light it. There we go. And even if I get rid of the dirt now, the portal will stay. Now to build a bit of a platform out here, which is going to allow me to remove a load of the source blocks. It's quite a big area to be filled in. And this is actually the main reason that I brought so much dirt. And platform number one is now complete. Let's go to this side and do the exact same thing. I think I've discovered that if I'm in the water, I can actually place the dirt way, way faster than if I'm doing it like this from up here, just being careful. Well, <laughs> I'll have one dirt in my hand, but you know what I mean? If I'm going like that, it's a bit slow, but when I'm in the water, it really seems to speed it up. Just a few more dirt blocks to go, and this is how I'm going to create the flowing water that is going to push the guardians into the portal. This is why it needs to be such a big platform, but it is almost done, and there we go. It is complete. Let us go back into this chest. We can get rid of the dirt. I don't know how I've managed to get so much kelp, now it's time for the building blocks because we need to make a nice little border all the way around. That is now complete and looking very, very good indeed. The next thing we will be needing are these trusty fence gates. I need to come across and on the ninth block I have a row of fence gates. Of course my shulker box is in the way. Of all the rows for me to put it on, I put it on the one where it shouldn't be. And then behind all of these fence gates, we're going to have another row of fence gates. Although these are a little bit more finicky because I have to kind of crouch and place them slowly, which is a little bit annoying. But now they are all in and I mustn't forget the most important thing. I need to open them all. No, if they're closed, 
everything would go wrong. That is all of those successfully open. Let's get rid of the temporary block. And you guessed it, we're going to do it on the other side. The exact same thing, only this time I'm going to open them as I go. You know what? Little uh, time saving there, guys. Although I won't be opening this row as I go because it's, it's finicky enough. I have to be crouched, otherwise I'll be opening by mistake. And I, I can't bother. To, yeah, that, that's just too annoying to try and do that. There we go. That is mission accomplished with all of the fence gates. Once I open them all like so. And once I go into this shulker box and grab myself a couple of buckets, this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the magic will happen. So we're going to place a bucket there and a bucket there. And as you can see, we can just do infinite water sources all the way across. And it's what happens when it gets over here that's quite interesting. Let's just fill those up. As you can see, it kind of flows under the gates. So if we, I then crouch, and we have to do it on every single one place water, which is it's going to be a little bit annoying to do. But if I just show you a sneak preview as I'm going along, you can see it goes underneath, but it kind of connects. So the, the, the guardians will get pushed and then they'll end up going up into the next one and get pushed into the portal. So the potential is there for it to work, but I've still got a few things left to do to make it happen. That is all the water on this side completed. Now to do the exact same thing on this side. And there we go, all completed. Now for the nether side, as I said, I'm not going to make it too complicated in the way that I link the portals. I'm just going to clear a big space on this one. I haven't manually connected these. This is just the one that Minecraft has naturally generated it. But all these blocks underneath are going to be removed just so I have plenty of space to work with. And next there is going to be, look at that, that was a nice little landing, wasn't it? But yeah, there's going to be some walls around here just to leave a little two by two gap. The guardians will be able to fall into these holes right here and they'll have a roof so that they can't escape. And the exact same thing is going to be done on this side. There we go. That's where the guardians shall be trapped. Let's extend it a little bit at the bottom. I'm only going to extend it by two blocks. Okay, what's going on here? It's all gone wrong. I went and placed the block wrong. Then we had netherite getting involved. We're going to go and put some there. This is going to come all the way down so that these have nowhere to go. Oh my god, again? Okay, I apparently I've run out of building blocks. Although if I'm not mistaken, I would have said we'd have some in there. You know what? Maybe maybe we just go on with netherite. Do we, do we make this a really bodged job? Yeah, it's, it's not looking too good, is it? Let's just add these campfires in here. And then the chests can be placed along like so. Although if I kept the chests like this, I, as you can see, would not be able to open them because the blocks are in the way. But don't worry, items will be able to go through them. I'm just going to use the hoppers and place them into the chest. So anything will come through the camp. Any items, yeah, they'll come through the campfires into the hoppers. And then there could be another row of chests under here. Those chests will also have hoppers going into them. And my goodness, it wasn't it a great thing the day they added crawling to Minecraft? It makes Minecraft so, so much easier to do things like that. You just, you know, you just go up and down and you're in. And since I've got a bit of space, I might as well add some chests and hoppers on the edges as well. Oh, this is a little bit tricky to place, but I can still do it. So all of these chests should definitely be able to keep up with the amount of drops the Guardians will be giving me. And that part is complete. The Guardians will go through there, no problem whatsoever. For some reason, I didn't go through that portal and I've, I've come all the way over here to, to go back. I don't know, I could have just gone through that one, no problem. But not to worry, the journey there should not take me too long. And here is my little humble farm. Time to start placing this all over, which will push the Guardians up. If I'm ever short on a bit of air, all I have to do is just go in here and Look at that, I can get my breath back. I might get pushed up, but I can easily get out. Now to go around a layer lower and just keep doing that, kind of just going with the shape of the monument. And on this bottom layer, it needs to go everywhere underneath where the dirt is. So basically all the way up to that block, I, I managed to judge it correctly. So let's bring this around here. Yeah, it still needs to be a bit further this way, just up to there. And that means that all of this kelp has got to go. And I marked out the full area for this that needs to be filled in. So now it's time to place it all down. That is this side complete. And this side, I was about to say is also almost, also complete, but I'm I'm kind of stuck here and I how do I even get down? I'm, I'm in a very a very tough spot. There we go. If I'm, if I'm careful, I can do that. Then I can place it. Now that bit's finished, I've just got this little bit right here. And I have plenty of blocks to do that. Perfect, that is looking very, very good indeed. Now to delve into my ender chest and grab some scaffolding and place it down so it takes me all the way up to Y equals 184. And it also turns out that I can't count because it's going to be taking me to Y185. Better clarify this, okay? So the scaffolding takes me to 184 and then I'm going to place some blocks, which apparently I have no blocks. But these blocks will take me to 185. I'm also doubling up the slabs so that nothing can spawn here. I'll stand in this little bit right here and I want a couple of blocks and then a slab to protect me from anything like phantoms or, you know, anything like that, basically. Remember the rule. Always protect your head. So this part of the farm is done. Pretty much everything is done. Except for one thing, okay. Oh, well, nice one, SP. Good job, good job totems are in the game. They weren't. I get the feeling that my hardcore series would have ended a long, long time ago. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and break the scaffolding, which, as usual, is very, very satisfying. A lot of it is probably just going to get lost because it's all going to go into the portal. And the final thing to be done before the farm is complete is to remove all of the dirt, which is also all going through the portal. Yeah, it's, we're just losing it all. Hey, we know the farm's working. If the dirt is getting pushed into the portal, then we know that the Guardians are going to get pushed into the portal. And oh, no, Dolphin, hold on for dear life. I don't see how you get out of this one alive, mate, honestly. You and two squid, yeah, you're going the same way. Because if I break this... Wait, can you can you do it? Can you survive? 
He can swim away. They call me the dolphin lifesaver, guys. Side one is done. Now to also mine up side number two. And just like that, the world's simplest guardian farm is now done. I might as well just nip through the portal and I can grab any items that came through. Or maybe they went into the hoppers. I don't know. So I'm just going to try and... Get a, <laughs> I'm kind of stuck now. What's going on? There we go. If we go back through, I reckon the farm's ready for testing. I could make it to XP farm if I was just more clever with the portals and the positioning of them in the nether, which I may change at some point. But for now, I'm not going to be worrying about that. Instead, the main goal will be to head to spawn, turn off the mob switch, and go AFK at the farm. And just look at it from there. Already, you can see loads of guardians are spawning in. All I have to do is just perch myself inside of here, and many, many guardians will spawn and get pushed through the portal. Well, I've AFK'd here for a long, long time. Let's get in the mix and see just how many items I have got. And looking at the state of these chests, it, is, <laughs> it has been a very, very successful mission. So I'm going to start gathering all of these up and crafting the bricks. And that is all the prismarine bricks that I need. It is taken a lot. And now this gas has come to ruin my day. In fact, there's two of them. How have you seen me from all the way over here? Oh my god, don't hit my uh, my build. You're going to get it. And you know what? You're going to get it as well. Just trying to peacefully murder a load of guardians and then use those drops to make bricks. So most of my shards have been used up. I think there's some in these chests, but I, I can't really get into them. I might even... I have to do something like that and then I can... I can okay, well, these just have very full. But the bonus of this farm is it gets you ink sacks as well, which is perfect for what I'm trying to do. I think, anyway. As I say, I thought I'd forgotten how to craft Dark Prismarine. It's because I didn't turn it into Black Dye. That is how you do it. So, yeah, we, sh we should be able to get quite a bit. We're going to need 23 stacks in total. Seems like the main thing I'm going to be short of to do all of this is going to be the ink sacks. Yep, that is indeed the case because this is the last of my Black Dye. So when I craft this Dark Prismarine, that is all that I'm going to be able to do. And we're short by... About nine stacks. Hang on a minute. We found 46 more. <laughs> Sadly, that won't really go very far, but uh, it is better than nothing. And when I search the chest, I am finding a few straggling ink sacks. Look at that. There's a stack in there waiting. Hang on a minute. These chests here might just hold the key. Never mind. <laughs> They're all empty. More to the point. How on earth has a chicken got here? There's always chickens. Just, you just never know how chickens get around here. And now he's literally in the way. Right. You either move or you're going on those campfires. Don't say I didn't warn you. In you go, chicken. Okay. You, there you go. <laughs> I actually felt way too evil doing that. Let's just patch it all up. Right, the last of the ink sacks and craft the last of the shards. And to finish this, I'm going to need another six stacks of dark prismarine. So I reckon the best thing I can do is fly back to my house. And obviously going through the nether is going to be way, way faster. And see what I've got lying around in my chest room. Because we've got a chest for it. We've got 37. That's a step in the right direction. All these other ones are pretty useless. Only 21 in there. I'm not happy with that. And poor people, they use ink sacks when they want loads of black dye. But I'm rich, so I use wither roses for black dye. Yes, that's... Uh, that's how we do it. Grab a couple of extra stacks for good measure. And then I think we fly back to this guardian farm. And then fly up to the surface to farm more of the prismarine shards. And to be honest, if I turn this into an XP farm, I could also get looting from it as well. You know what? It does have its benefits. But we won't be doing that today. <laughs> We've got a palace to build. The rain is pouring, but I'm pretty sure... I should have now got enough from all of these guardians. I should also probably spawn proof the walls around here because <laughs> mobs keep spawning on there. All right, if this is how I die in, uh, in my world, that, that would not be good. I've, uh, I've fallen onto the campfires. <laughs> that was not a very good idea, but I can mine my way out and safely get back to harvesting the prismarine and turning it into blocks. And I reckon with all of that, I have now definitely got enough. And so the guardian farm is going back to being pretty much useless to me. But hey, maybe one day I'll be back and I'll improve it, turn it into something special. But for now, it's time to focus on building the palace. Another thing I'm going to need quite a lot of is the green stained glass, which we've got a lot of glass in there, but we also have the issue of loads of sand all around here and and nothing to smelt it with. So my plan to solve that problem is to try and find a brand new cave. We have got one here. The goal is just to get a load of coal. But at some point, I definitely need to come up with a better fuel source for my super smelter. Whether that's going to be lava, bamboo, something like that. Because when you've been playing Minecraft for 3,300 days, mining should be a thing of the past. But I suppose it is kind of nice to get back to your roots sometimes and just, just you know, go back to the classic days. After all, literally half of the game is about mining. You know, it's Minecraft, so <laughs> I can't complain too much. And... To be honest, coal is everywhere as well. It's really easy to find. And the size of the veins is just amazing. Couple that with Fortune 3, and already I have got three and a half stacks. And there's loads more in this cave as well. Oh my goodness, it's like they make coal more common. Even though this is one of the caves that was generated in the old updates, I've never seen a cave like this. Just everywhere I turn, there is coal galore. This section of the cave is also packed with coal. And after much, much mining, I have more or less filled up the whole inventory. Although I can throw away some bits and bobs like these and continue mining up a bit more coal. And look at this, I found a dungeon as well. Although sadly, nothing very useful in it. And now my inventory is well and truly full. I'm just gonna have to get rid of a bit of cobblestone and then I think I will head back home. But this has been a very, very successful mining journey. In fact, I, I want to take all this coal with me. I'm gonna make a bunch 
bunch of coal blocks and then I can fit it. And with that, let's get out of here. So my plan is to load every single furnace with a stack of coal. I couldn't quite do these last few furnaces, but they usually have coal. You know, they don't use as much coal as these early ones. So that's pretty good. More glass is once again on the menu and it all needs to be dyed green. Once again, green dye. We have loads and loads of that. And then shoved in a shulker box. There's also a lot of other materials, but the main ones I have now successfully got. I'm also going to need 45 stacks of emerald blocks, which is why I made the raid farm. I have already got 22, but I'm curious to see if my raid farm actually has plenty more. Hopefully it does, but if not, then I may have to spend more time AFK there. Yeah, so there is quite a lot here. And I have also realised something whilst like things like sugar and all the other ones are going into this first hopper. And it's because... I need to add some item filters up there, which are like shulker box sorters. So I'll make sure to get those added before the next time I use the farm. And let's see if we have enough emerald blocks. So I have crafted every single emerald block. I think we have enough. Never mind, I've just done the calculations and we're short by like 50 emerald blocks. But I'll just worry about those later on and do as much as I can for now. All of this glowstone from the raid farm is now going to come in handy. Because I need to make quite a lot of redstone lamps. The real worry here is that I might not actually have enough redstone. Although don't worry, there's always plan B, which is to grab a bunch of emerald blocks and trade for redstone at this trading hall. That's definitely got me way, way more. And I can go back round again with all these villagers. And I think that will be mission accomplished for all the redstone lamps I need. So let's keep collecting all of the resources. Although I do still need a bit more redstone. So I'm okay. We found a cave as well. That's good news. And it's even connected to a dungeon. Come on, give me a notch apple. Okay. <laughs> Close enough. Although I suppose it's not really close enough, so that's got to go. More importantly, I shall try and track down redstone, which I appear to have successfully done. I built the raid farm so that I'd have loads of redstone, but I, I took so much redstone to do all of the hoppers that I am once again having to go look for redstone. It's possible that I will never be able to escape this cycle. Found another dungeon in this cave. Let's get rid of that. Anything useful at all? Doesn't look like it. But I'll take the coal since I went mining for that earlier. And as cool as this cave is, I've got all of the redstone that I need. And so it is time for me to get out of here. And I'm happy with all the stuff that I've got so far. And so my next project is going to be to clear the space where this palace will go, which involves mining a load of trees and mining the ground. And that is the area completely cleared out. I was mining this layer here, but I've realized it, it actually doesn't need to go. So <laughs> kind of wasted my shovel a little bit there. But now I can chuck all of these items into storage. I have to say, I really love having an auto sorter. That has made it so, so much easier. I'm going to gather up a few more needed materials and then work on this Emerald Palace can begin. Of course, it starts raining just as I'm going to build. Yeah, did not what I wanted. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to begin by creating the entranceway. This is going to have like some stairs going up to the main building. And I'm going to add some lighting in the floors with glowstone in the middle. There we go and now we can begin on the stairs which are going to go along like this although apparently i've made a stupid mistake not brought any concrete which means i'm going to have to fly through this blizzard grab a shulker box or two and fill them up with concrete okay this isn't going to work my inventory is just too full of other stuff all of that can go over here for now and then i can make much faster progress all of this does still need to be converted from powder into concrete but i will do that later because for now it is time to get back to work on the build the stairs are going to be split up into three groups like this and yeah they're going to go like like that so you can see wider in the middle and then shorter in the in the center and i'm going to just add stairs along like so and this is how the staircase is looking it's looking very nice indeed and there's going to be a load of green concrete up here which can be stood on and that will lead to the main entrance way which is going to be right here i've marked out the general area of it so there's going to be yeah, two doors right here and i'm also going to have a load of prismarine because that's what a lot of the walls are going to be as well. And I might as well get started on building these big, massive walls. Although before I do that, there is also going to be some big pillars along here at the sides of each of the stairs. Which are going to be covered in emerald blocks like so. And I have a nice little cross like that of Dark Prismarine. And the entranceway is also going to have big pillars going up like this. They're going to be mainly emerald. They're going to connect up to the, like, the other walls and stuff. And I've run out of emeralds. Thankfully, there's plenty more where that came from. And by the size of how far these pillars up, you can probably see... Just how big this building is going to go. Well, hey, it's got to be big so that all those villagers actually have somewhere to live. So I'm going to build the same little box on this side, as well as the same thing with the pillar. And with this one, I've made it all the way up to the roof and can actually connect it to the other pillar. Well, I could connect it if I hadn't run out of dark prismarine. Thankfully, there's plenty more in here and now they can be connected. And there is also going to be a couple of pillars in the middle, which are going to have redstone lamps at the bottom. So we're just going to have those for, you know, for a bit of lighting so we can see what we're doing. Followed by more prismarine and emeralds going up. The entranceway is really starting to take shape, isn't it? Although it doesn't look like much of an emerald 
Emerald Palace just yet. But let's grab a bit of glass, and then this big wall behind the pillars can also be completed. That is the entranceway complete, and it's just going to have loads of prismarine around it. And that is the front wall all done, and I do want to add some little platforms at this level, and these are going to have some more redstone lamps on them as well. I'm connecting up all of these pillars as well, and it has to be said, the more that I do, the better it looks. And I think that the best thing I can do now is just build some walls that are going to go all the way around, and just, yeah, got those foundations, and I should probably deal with this creeper, I can just see it, you know, you blowing some up, ruining everything, but that's what I get for leaving my mob switch turned off. And I've done the lowest level of all of the walls, which means I have a guide to fill in the concrete floor in between. And that is the entire floor completed. I've left a gap here because there's going to be a pillar covering this up anyway. And the next thing to be done is to build these walls up even more. Work can also begin on some of the smaller windows. There's going to be a bunch of them in different places, so yeah, one there, one there, one there, and then there's going to be a big one at the back, which will involve placing down a lot of green stained glass. I took a little bit of a break from building because I do need a lot more emerald blocks, and I'm hoping that a few more shulker boxes have come through the system. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so we got one more. I was going to say, they're all kind of different ones, but there's two emerald ones, so that's perfect. Eventually, I'll get around to fixing the system so that they go into the correct ones, and then we don't have sticks and sugar in random ones. But for now, I can leave all those guys in there, craft the final missing emerald blocks, and get back to building. And I have to say, from a distance, it is starting to look very, very good. I just need to continue building all of these walls. And I've pretty much done all of the walls to the top. I'm going to be starting to work on the roof. We seem to have already had a villager moved in. The wandering trader has found his way here. Now, this ceiling is going to be made out of green concrete, which is one of the reasons why I needed so much of it. I've left a nice little gap here for a chandelier. That's this half complete. And now to do the same thing on this side, which I would complete, but unfortunately I've, uh, I've run out of green concrete. There's none in any of my shulker boxes. So I'm going to fly back home, grab a load of this powder and turn it all into concrete. All of the concrete has been converted. I have got more than enough in this shulker box. So let's hopefully get this building finished. But I'm going to have to be quick because I have not got too much time left. And the sun is now setting on day 3300. I've just caught the night to finish this entire build and I'm still working on the roof. I'm sure you'll agree that it's looking very good indeed, but it is now a race against time to get it finished. And the bad news here is that I have now run out of dark prismarine because I had to make a load of prismarine stairs. I've already eaten into the next episode, which I'm not supposed to do, but I've come this far with the project. I won't be stopped now because here is where all the guardian drops are and I'm pretty sure I've got plenty of prismarine shards. And there's also new ink sacks in the chest as well. So let's get crafting. And I'm pretty sure those two and a half stacks should be enough. But just in case, I will fill this shulker box with prismarine shards as well. That should be mission accomplished. Let's get this building finished. Well, despite going a little bit over time, this roof is so, so close to being done. Although I've been thwarted at the last second, I am... I am two pieces of glass short. It's all right, I've got everything I need in my house. I just have to quickly fly down here. In fact, I've got 24 in this chest. Okay, well, why are they just sitting there? They could have been useful. And now they will be useful. But look at it, it looks pretty amazing if you ask me. But those two gaps get filled in. And then there's just some little bits up here that need to be done as well. That's these four towers complete. And the last part is to complete this bit right here. And there we go. The roof is complete. And this is what it looks like. It's, it's a completely different thing. I think it just looks brilliant just sat behind the village. A massive emerald palace. I really can't wait to decorate it all, make it look amazing, sort out the interior. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not completely finished right yet, right now. For a start, there's a, there's a massive hole in the floor. But you know what I do think I have time for? I think I have time to grab a couple of iron doors and make four iron chest plates and then place them on the entranceway like so. There is still going to be a staircase going up here. I need to get it so those lights are on. There's going to be a second floor up there as well. Some chandeliers in both of those gaps. It's, it's going to look amazing when it's completely done, but so far, it is looking great. I mean, the outside looks absolutely amazing. That's why we need a raid farm to put those emeralds to good use. And these villagers all down here, I'm sure they are going to be very, very pleased with this. And I also need to terraform the land around it. As you can see, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit far off the ground. Last episode, I spent so long building this that I used up three days. I shouldn't have. Well, there's no time to waste. I need to get Notch Apple number 34. And to do that, I'm going to be flying far, far away. Build another portal. Get trapped in a cave. Find some diamonds whilst trying to escape. And then search for desert pyramids. Here is the first one. And searching for these is also a great way to harvest sandstone. And unfortunately, well, I wouldn't say it's too bad, but it's, it's not what I want. And there's the second one. And as expected, it's kind of empty. But this third one, I almost missed it. It's just hidden, like, in the side of a mountain. But will it be a hidden gem? Nope, it won't be a hidden gem. It's got a couple of that. Okay, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. My third pyramid and hidden in the side of this mountain 
There was a notch apple. I did not expect that. And before I head back home, I'm going to search the rest of this desert just to make sure I don't miss any more pyramids. Sad that this one had nothing useful. And I actually checked all the chests this time before saying it was rubbish. Will this one be any better? And the answer is no. So it's getting blown up. Looks like it's going to be the same result for this one and also this one. And if I mess up this singular firework rocket, hardcore shoot is over. But <laughs> don't worry. We're absolutely fine. And I've also run out of desert. It seems to be turning into a mesa. So I'm going home. And on the way home, found a room portal with sadly no notch apple. Do I just grab the gold blocks, you know, whilst we're here? Okay, maybe. Well, we got it. Let's grab this one as well. And I have made it back home. Let's dump all of these items in here. Grab an item frame and add in the 34th. Not chapel. I've only got eight more spaces, then I'm going to run out of wall. And now I want to take this opportunity to grab some iron blocks and mine a hole right here. Okay, goodbye glass. Then I put down one bit of scaffolding so I can kind of go down here. And I've actually realized this is going to make no difference. Okay, yeah, the lava's, the lava's on its way down. Let's just block that up. And I'd like to build a beacon down here. And what is the reason for this beacon? Well, it's actually because I'm tired of never having swiftness when I'm down here. You can see I've got haste, but, but no swiftness. So I'm just going to fix the lava, repair the glass. Now to dig a hole going all the way down to the chest room. The beacon has actually activated. I believe I can keep a slab there and it'll still go through and I can use it to give myself swiftness and also place a bit of glass here so that it's covered in snow. Yeah, there we go. It looks very, very good. I'm glad that's done because I've been meaning to add it for like the last 300 days. And for my next project, I wish to change this entire floor to be respawn anchors. And the main thing I'm going to need to do that is lots and lots of glowstone dust. So I'm going to take out a pillager captain, place some others in boats so I can save them for later, turn on the mob switch, and then spend a bunch of time AFK at the raid farm. This should get me the rest of the glowstone that I need. I've been at this farm for quite some time, and now to see if I've got that shulker box of glowstone that I need. There's one there. We've also got redstone dust, which is useful. And I still need to fix this so that the shulker box sorter actually works. But I'll do that some other time. Instead, I'm going to grab some red and yellow dye to dye both of the shulker boxes the correct colours. And I've also been needing lots and lots of crying obsidian. Let's make all of the glowstone blocks, then the respawn anchor mine up the glass as well as the warped wart and place down the anchors now to power them all up and the floor is starting to look very nice indeed now to craft a load more and place them down looking very nice indeed i also have a bit more glowstone in this chest so i'm going to make a good use of that as well you know what i'm going to grab a little bit of extra glowstone out here as well and now armed with lots more glowstone and place them all down i've now nearly actually finished all of it and as we said it does look a lot better so you know what i might as well just get a few extra pieces of glowstone to fully finish it and it would seem that we have yet another stray chicken. Well, we all know what happens to you guys now. <laughs> I'm very sorry. And now to sort out my next problem. Some of you may or may not have noticed, but every time I open my inventory, where, where's my OP chest plate? I'm not wearing it because I've got my elytra on. Well, fear not, I have, I've watched my last video back and worked it out. It would seem that whilst I was at the bartering farm, I somehow emptied it into one of these chests and it went all the way through the storage system and, and I'm hoping <laughs> it's in here. Okay, it's not in that one. It's that, thank goodness for that. And there's some other random stuff. Pistons, what's that all about? I should probably just empty all these items out. And I'm very, very glad to have this back in my inventory. And for those that are always asking me how I got such OP armor, watch 2,100 days. The last episode, we built this amazing emerald mansion slash palace, whatever you want to call it. But there is a problem. Whilst it looks great from the outside, <laughs> the inside still got work to be done. So I'm going to grab a bunch of materials and get to work on building the inside. And that is this side complete. Well, it will be once I light up all these lamps anyway. And this side is also complete. I'm just going to add some stuff to here. And now since there are going to be loads of villagers inside this building, I think that it's super important that I make it as safe as possible. And now I think it's time that I create the stairs that will take you up to the higher level. It's going to involve those dark prismarine stairs along with these emerald blocks and prismarine behind. And it'll work its way up layer by layer like that. I have now almost made it to the top, just got a few more levels to go. And that is all of the staircases now complete. I really hope I don't end up with any villager casualties from this. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. And all that's left to be done now is this pillar in the middle. It's going to have some lights on it like that, then some slabs above those, and then lights like that. And with that, it's it, it's pretty much there. I would like to add a couple of lanterns to the very, very front and warped fences along here, as well as adding lots of torches underneath here to activate the lamps. And one other final thing I nearly forgot, the needs to be chandeliers in both of those. So let's get to work on doing that. The easiest way to activate them all will be to use redstone. Although I suppose just using four lamps would also... Oh no, we wouldn't have done the bottom ones then. Yeah, we... no, we need to do it like this. And then loads of nether brick fences like this. That is chandelier number one complete. And also chandelier number two. And I also think it might be wise to go do something like this. Just... 
Just for the villagers' own safety. Yeah, I'm blocking that up as well. Yeah, I, I don't want any villagers to walk back. I know how stupid they could be. It just simply isn't worth the risk. All right, I might decorate it eventually and add some beds for the villagers and stuff. But before I can think about that, I need to head back home, grab loads of grass and also dirt, and terraform this mountain so that it's not a massive floating building. And that is all of the terraforming complete. It looks much, much more natural now, doesn't it? And I would also like to just go under here and light things up so that mobs can't spawn. And whilst I was lighting up down here, I was just going into this cave. And what should we have at the bottom? A dungeon. Yeah, this is unexpected. Nothing too amazing. I decided not to break it in case it's of use for me sometime in the future. And that is Operation Spawn Proof complete. Just want to craft a few slabs and place those along the front here. And that's probably as good as it's going to get. I, I think that's perfect. Let's gather up all of the shulker boxes, fill in a little bit of extra dirt, and that is that project complete. I can move on to bigger and better things. Well, maybe not bigger. This one's already pretty massive as it is. But also, guys, if you are new here and you like my world, you enjoy this series, please, 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 could you subscribe? I'm trying to get to 4 million subscribers, but the channel Happy Kids TV Nursery Rhymes is looking like it's, it's going to beat me there. So if you're new and you could subscribe, that would be amazing. Or if you're already subscribed, please, could you ask a friend? And then together we can win this war. And now the next thing that needs work <laughs> is this. The netherite beacon. I have got a lot of netherite blocks. I know it doesn't look like many, but it really has taken me so, so much effort. But of course, until I finish it, I will never have enough. And I've realized that mining sand, it's, it's just not the way to go. Instead, it's much more efficient to use TNT. And so that's how I'm going to do it. You see, mining a stack of sand by hand, well, it, it takes, you know, it takes a good few seconds. But if I go ahead and just place a singular piece of TNT and light it up, as you can see, I get over a stack of sand just instantly. And so then if I find a good bit of desert to ruin like this, where the TNT are far away enough from each other, in a very short space of time, I have destroyed a lot of sand. And if I collect it all up, you'll see that really, really fast, it has given me a grand total of like, I don't know, 20 stacks? Over 17, that's crazy. And with this new knowledge, I should be able to get loads of sand and loads more TNT really, really fast. It's actually an idea from a viewer, so I really appreciate the person that told me about it. It's really going to speed things up. And I also kind of feel like I'm going to ruin this desert, and it's, it's kind of an area, I don't know, I kind of want a bigger flat one to ruin. Yeah, now this is the place. I'm trying to be as efficient as possible, so I've lined them all up eight spaces apart, and then I can run back along to collect the sand. Yeah, now that I have an infinite amount of gunpowder, this is definitely the best way to do it. Normally, it'd take me a couple of days to have got all this, but I've got four shulker boxes worth. I've filled my inventory, so I think the best thing I can do is fly over to this portal. Also, turn off the chunk borders are a little bit annoying now. From there, I might as well pop down to the EOL farm, grab a bit of gunpowder, and begin crafting TNT. That's shulker box number one filled up, and quite a lot is filled up in a second one as well. And now that I've got a bunch of empty shulker boxes again, I'm going to go ahead and refill them. I fear my TNT shenanigans may have they have gone too far. Run, little rabbit, you don't want the same fate. And that is another four shulker boxes completely filled. I have to say, the aftermath looks kind of crazy. It looks like one of those broken seeds, doesn't it? And one day, the entire desert will look like that. And I think that's better than looking like this one. This one <laughs> just looks like a mess now. Mining sand is something I spend a lot of time doing. And the AOL farm is still holding up strong. Look at that. Loads and loads of gunpowder here. And apparently, I'm an idiot and I accidentally put the other shulker box of TNT into this machine. Glad I didn't lose that. It could have been a massive disaster. I don't think I've ever got this much TNT for ancient debris searching before. Two shulker boxes and, and almost a third one's worth as well. I'll just mine up a little extra sand for these last bits of gunpowder. And I also want to repair all my tools, particularly the flint and steel. And since I'm actually very, very near to the pillager outpost, I might as well get rid of one of these captains that I put here earlier and begin collecting up XP from the raid farm. More than enough time has passed and everything is now mended and loads more emerald shulker boxes have come through. I'll clear them out some other time. But now my main concern is ancient debris. I also need to grab a couple of bits of wood to make a chest. I want to place it here. The reason being, I completely filled that one up with shulker boxes more or less. Now we've got more room for empty ones. And next I'm going to head back to the nether, dig all the way down to level 12, and create a really massive, massive long tunnel. When you combine all my TNT together, I have about 4,800 TNT. And all I know is that's going to get me so, so much ancient debris. Looks like we've crossed into one of these tunnels that I made some other time. But don't worry, I'm just going to ignore it and keep on going. Whilst digging this very, very long tunnel, found a couple of pieces of ancient debris already. Better chuck out some stuff so I can actually pick them up. It would be a tragedy if I couldn't. So far this tunnel is 800 blocks long, but that's nowhere near enough. Over 5,000 
thousand is the goal. And another piece here as well. Things really are going swimmingly. And after over a thousand blocks, we've come to a basalt delta. So I think the best idea is to kind of turn a corner and mine now in this direction. And this right here is piece number four. And I seem to keep running into lava on this way. So I'm going to start lining it up with TNT. And now I've reached the end of my tunnel. I'm going to dig the other way. Now that I seem to have reached another very difficult lava dead end, I'll place even more TNT. Oh dear, oh dear. It's... <laughs> Seems to be blowing up a little bit prematurely. But now let's get all the rest of it blown up and start collecting the ancient debris. Look at that. One, two, three, and there's one up there. It is really just so satisfying to go around and collect up loads of the ancient debris. I have to say, all this lava is making it very annoying, but I'm finding it. There was just a few sections with a lot of lava caves en route. And now that we're coming to the part where there's broken chains in my TNT, I think it'll be a good idea to go into me in the chest, grab this shulker box right here, then get the infinity flame bow along with some arrows, and I can shoot the TNT to light it up. And that in turn will reveal more ancient debris. Right here we've got a perfect staircase of three pieces, which will get me 36. And with 36 ancient debris, that is the equivalent of one netherite block. It's a good step, but there's still a long way to go. I always find it so strange when you find an ancient debris inside of a salt delta. It feels like it shouldn't belong there. The colour of it seems to fit a lot better with the red netherrack. And you also apparently have no idea what's behind one of those netheracks when you mine it, because there always seems to be lava. Thankfully, this four pieces right here seems much safer. It's not often you find four pieces together either. And now I've managed to collect up a grand total of 64 ancient debris. And there's still more to be found. And the end of my massive TNT tunnel has been reached. The total amount of ancient debris I've got from this is 89 pieces. That is so, so much. But I'm not done just yet. Now I'm going to dig an even bigger tunnel and place down all the TNT I have left in the shulker boxes, my inventory. I've got loads of it to go. I've been busy. I spent hours digging a massive tunnel that's thousands of blocks long. Now it's time to clear a bunch of space in my inventory. Add all this quartz ore into here. I have been mining the quartz where I need to repair my pickaxe. Then I can grab loads and loads of TNT and begin placing it all down. This might take a while. <laughs> Sounds like something has set off the explosions and the, the TNT, yep, there it is coming off after me. I'd better get moving. There we go. Okay, it, it's caught up. Look at that ancient debris already, but we're going to carry on. This tunnel is so long, I even went through a basalt delta, which, which took a lot longer to mine and probably won't be as good for finding ancient debris. But it's still not going to stop me from blowing it up. In fact, I'm not going to leave any gaps with this TNT because I probably want it to blow up a bigger area. And now we're back to the good old netherrack, so I'm just going to go back to the two in a row kind of ones. Something tells me it is not <laughs> going to be a good day for that piglin. You know what? Just have the satisfaction of uh, watching it. <laughs> Sounds kind of evil, but I'm blowing it up. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Blown to smithereens. I'll teach him to get angry just because I'm not wearing gold. And we're now on day three, 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 three. We've not had one of those since day two, 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 two. Uh oh, it's blown up. I've just realized I've just gone past some ancient debris that I must have had when mining. Uh oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, revealed a bit more though. Well, that's a happy day's moment. Three here in total. But I did very nearly get blown to smithereens. Believe it or not, it seems that the tunnel is longer than the amount of TNT I have because that's that's the last of it. So let's set it off. That's a shame I didn't bring more. Hold on a second. I was wrong. <laughs> There's more in this shulker box. Okay, we, 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 we can carry on then. A little bit more ancient debris in the roof there too. And as it happens, I've made it to the end with a bit of TNT to spare. Yeah, like nearly two stacks. I have to remove a bit of this lava and create a way for me to escape. So that when I blow this up, <laughs> I don't get blown up as well with it. I, I hope that this will be safe. Yeah, look at it go. Okay, now we can get a load and load of... Okay, that was a mistake. Let's put my elytra on. And as I was saying, I can get loads and loads of ancient debris. And is it a problem that the TNT just stops every now and again? Well, no, no, it's not. Because whilst I'm mining that, that's all blowing up. And so far, I've got just over two stacks of ancient debris. And I probably won't find quite as much in the Basalt Delta, but hey, there's still some around here. And that was a vein of two. And there's another one just here. And it is actually a lot easier to spot because of the colour contrast. This is also a great way to collect up loads of Basalt. I might as well be putting this into here. It'll all be very useful for extending my nether hub. But yeah, I have noticed you definitely find a lot less ancient debris when you are in the basalt desert. And can I please just get out of this lava? That, that would be nice. You can tell I've got too overconfident in this world when I just willingly jump into lava. But yeah, with armor like this, it's, it, it, it does make me pretty safe. And now that I'm back in the netherrack area, I'm finding lots of ancient debris much, much faster. I've still got loads of this tunnel to go, and we're up to over three stacks. And look at that, I have now reached four stacks, and I, uh, I can't fit this poor little piece of ancient debris. I'm sorry, but netherrack... You've got to go. Sad thing is, by the time I finish, that's only going to be worth about seven netherite blocks. It, 
It's so hard, but I still won't stop until this quest is complete. With four and a half stacks, we're now re-entering a basalt delta. And if my memory serves me correctly, that means we haven't got too long until we reach the end of the tunnel. At least I hope that's the case because I've been exploring it for ages. And after getting a grand total of four stacks and 63 blocks of ancient debris, the end of the tunnel has been reached. And I guess the fastest way to get back is just going to be to fly through, which is actually going to be quite fun. And it's also an interesting challenge trying to navigate past. Yeah, it's not fun when you're just going through lava, I suppose. But all the time, it's just a bit of skill, yeah. Look at this, this is great practice for me in my quest to get better with the elytra. And you never know, I might spot an extra piece or two of ancient debris that I've missed on the way back. Although so far there's not been any sign of any of them. Oh, I think the total might be going here. Quick, half a heart, come on. Yeah, there goes the total. <laughs> Sorry, it gives you fire resistance, so there's nothing to worry about. But just to be safe, I'd better get another one out of here before I let anything else happen. And with fire resistance, travelling back is way easy. I can just fly through the lava. And now I'm going to dig a bit more of a tunnel to place these last few bits of TNT to collect up even more ancient debris. And the end of the tunnel has been reached with a grand total of 336 ancient debris. I've also found myself trapped in a massive lava lake trying to get to the shore. I mean, with this armor, as you can see, I'm basically losing no damn. Look at that. We're, we're, we're on full health and I've made it to land. And before I do anything else, let's load this up with more basalt. Grab some gunpowder from this shulker box, as well as a bit of paper. I craft myself a bunch of firework rockets because uh, I've been missing those. Now that that's sorted, I can fly on home and pop to my gold farm to repair everything up. Everything is now repaired. But as you can see, in all that time, we have not got much gold at all. And really, we, we need to do something about it. I need something that's going to be much, much faster. But before I worry about that, let's head on through this portal and get all of this ancient debris smelting. Something very satisfying looking at six blast furnaces, all with full of ancient debris. Let's also take this magenta shulker box, which has got loads of this nether quartz, and fly on down here so that I can add it to this chest. Yeah, now that's looking a lot healthier because I kind of used it all up on things like comparators and also observers. So nothing like a healthy top up. There's also loads in here for XP if I ever need it. A bit more blackstone to be added, as well as, okay, I was going to say more netherrack, but to be honest, we're kind of full on that anyway. If I grab myself a little bit of red dye. This yellow shulker box can be made red and added to the collection. And I can also put this shulker box down, grab a load of basalt and put it all in there. Okay, not quite full enough, but it will do for now. And for all this ancient debris, I'm probably going to need a bit more gold. We've got all of these gold blocks here, so I guess with that... Yeah, we'll have enough. And I think I have a few, yeah, look at that, a few spare netherite ingots waiting there. But I'm still waiting for this to finish smelting. And now it is all done. Might as well use the XP to heal up my pickaxe. Then to craft all of these ingots, look at that, over a stack. Oh, it's beautiful. We make the blocks of netherite and we've got nine. Oh, if I had one more, four more ancient debris and I have enough. I, I, you know what, I've got to go for it. I'm just going to swoop on down, dig a massive hole into lava. Yeah, good idea, SP. Maybe maybe that wasn't so wise. But anyway, now <laughs> I'm down here in one piece. I can grab even more nether quartz ore and dig a massive strip mine in an attempt to find even more ancient debris. Okay, well, well we found some already. <laughs> Wait, we found two. This is brilliant. I literally, I, I, I literally just dug out into this cave as you saw, turned a corner... It was right here. So that's two down and two to go. And two to... Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's three that... I have just got the luckiest I think I've ever got with Ancient Debris. It, it doesn't get any better than that. Literally went from there, found some more here, and then, and then I'm just at this game. That has to be the best I've ever done. And people say finding Ancient Debris isn't easy. Now let's set these five pieces off smelting. Grab my nether quartz magenta box, you know what I mean, and put those in as well. Craft one more ingot. Craft the block. There we go. We got ten blocks of netherite. And yes, I know it sounds like a lot, but it is actually very, very depressing when you, you see them all placed down and you realise it. There's still loads to go. Although once the bottom layer is done, you would have to say probably one of the hardest parts is done and every layer from there will get easier and easier. And that is how I'm going to keep thinking positively. Now for this next bit, I've, I've got a bit of a plan. The plan is to turn my lag machine at the nether perimeter into a proper gold farm. I mean, that was has always been the plan for ages and I've just never got round to it. So a lot of you will have seen this. It is my massive, massive perimeter. And it's actually, yeah, it's got a massive lag machine, which is probably making the game laggy as we speak. Yeah, look at that. You can see it's it's really laggy because I can just fly up and up and up and up and that firework rocket is lasting for ages. So really, the first thing I need to try and do is is turn off this farm. And the way I'm thinking of doing it is just finding out what coordinates is here and then timesing it by eight, which gives me a grand total of 6,784 on the X and 2,762 on the Z. And because as you would expect, the lag machine has completely lagged out my game, I'd better reload the world. And then somewhere around here, I'm just going to build a random portal. And you know what? 
Completing the ruin portal seems like a fitting idea. Look at that. It brings a tear to my eye to see it completed. Of course, though, it links down to a cave. It's just so annoying. Every time I generate a new portal, I end up 100 blocks below the surface. Anyway, it wasn't hard to get up because we're below an ocean. An ocean right by a mushroom isle. This is interesting. I don't think I've ever been to this one before, especially since it has those cool azalea trees below it. Well, the, the lush cave is below it. The azalea trees are, are on it. <laughs> oh, now I know where we are. This is the place where I got my brown panda. It really is a small world. World, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I know I'm here now because the uh, chunk loader's right here. And this can be turned off. I think, does that turn it off? Nope, okay, that didn't work. I'll just break the redstone and put it on there. That should do it. And then if I work my way down underground, there we go. All the pigment that would have been under here have despawned. And this pit down here actually won't be used anymore. And I'm thinking down here it would just make the most sense to create a bit of an entity crammer. Since I don't have a very good portal set up. As the way I've set up the portals, I can't really get the pigment to come back through. And then use looting because... <laughs> I'm too close to the edge, so mobs will spawn on there. If, if only I'd have built the middle of this to be in another way. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of an idiot when it came to that. And you know what? After giving it a bit of thought, I think I'm just going to use fall damage instead of an entity crammer. This is going to be a very interesting design for a farm. Can't say I've ever tried this before. But hopefully it should also solve all of my problems. I feel like I'm going to be bringing so much kelp that it deserves its own shulker box. There you go. Let's get all of you in there. And half a shulker box worth definitely isn't enough. Let's fill it up as much as we can. For now, this is going to be everything that I need. Let's get this thing created. So once a mob comes through the portal, it can't go through another portal for another 30 seconds. So when I create this system, it must take 30 seconds for the pigment to get to the other portal. What is my plan to do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to create a massive water tower that goes all the way to sky limit. It'll take them 30 seconds to float up it, and then they will go through another portal and fall to their doom. Looks like we've made it up to the top, and there's some water already waiting. But we're not stopping here. I want to go even higher. And apparently I've run out of glass. Thankfully, though... Hold on, let's get rid of all this junk. We've got so much, so much stuff I don't need here. And as I was saying, I thankfully have loads more glass in this shulker box, which should hopefully be enough to make the super high tower. The tower is now over 100 blocks high, still not high enough, and it's going to go higher than this chunk load. Oh my goodness, what a mess. There's iron nuggets everywhere now, but now that it's out of my way, I can just keep going. And whilst I'm going, I might as well get rid of this bit of obsidian, as well as the droppers. And you know what? I'm just going to get rid of everything. Uh, maybe some of it's going to get wasted, which is sad, but it's all just got to go. And now that this final bit of obsidian is just about gone like that, we can get rid of a few stray pieces of glass, just those two. All that cobblestone that... You know what? I was going to say all that cobblestone there needs to go at some point. That some point is right now. I, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of it before I forget about it. I can grab a bit of a few items on the way as well. Very nice indeed. And now that that's out the way, let's try and fly all the way back up to the top. Wow, it's, it's pretty high already. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy that I plan to go like another... 200 blocks at least. I don't know what's going to happen first. I'll run out of glass or I'll get to the sky limit. All I know is I'm not going to have much glass left by the end of this. And placing all of the glass has been going well. Although I am now, unfortunately, <laughs> out of glass. Which does make sense because when you look at the size of this tower, it goes up to about level 280. Let's just... Uh, not die. So I'm going to head back home, fly all the way over to this desert, and start using TNT to get even more sand. I have to say, this bit is probably the most satisfying of all of it. And there we have it. All of them have blown up. Let's start collecting sand. Although I'm a little bit worried that maybe I don't have enough storage for all of this. I didn't really bring any, any shulker boxes. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll chuck it into here. So the one thing I can do is as I'm collecting the sand, I am also accidentally collecting up sticks every now and again. So sticks... They've got to go. We, we don't need those in there. Although no sooner have I thrown them out of my inventory and there's, there's more back in. Also, if I go ahead and jump into my ender chest, we can chuck that in there. In fact, I've got loads of space in my ender chest. I might as well put a few other things in there as well. This shulker box can also be filled to the top. Right, this is this is all the space we've got now, okay? I have got some sandstone, but I, you know what? I'll see how I'm doing. I, I might keep the sandstone if I can. But if I can't, then it too will be thrown away. Once again, I'm fresh out of space, but what I could do is take this brown shulker box and chuck sand in there. There we go. You know what? It's all about maximizing your space. It's a... Okay, I, I put something important in there, I think. Yeah, the other sand one, that doesn't need to be that. Yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, is it, to be using spare shulker boxes for other things, but you know what? It, it's worth it. I'm going to be able to carry the sandstone now and all the sand. I just need to remember a note to myself. Next time you go to collect sand, bring loads of shulker boxes. But yeah, now I'm very happy with that. We're going to fly over the Grand Canyon. It's like the Grand Canyon, isn't it? But it's the old EOL farm. And head back to my house. Now that I'm home, let's grab all the sand out of the shulker box that it shouldn't be in and put it into the minecart. And I'll also fill up these hoppers. And I have to say, by the end of this, I'm never going to need glass again, am I? And thanks to my chunk loader, which is constantly now going to be working. And if I just grab some firework rockets, that is going to load all of the chunks around this furnace array, which will mean that even when I leave the area, 
it'll all still be smelting. I'll do one last top up on all of these hoppers and the rest of it I might be able to just fit into here. And bad news has also struck. We are <laughs> fresh out of coal in this furnace. This one's nearly out of it. You know, we're back into the troublesome situation. This 31 furnaces here. And do I have any coal? Okay, I've got four pieces of coal and no coal blocks. <laughs> but lots and lots of coal are. Okay, this could work. I just nip over here, grab myself a better pickaxe. Well, a pickaxe that can actually get the coal. And I actually could just chuck all of that into... Well, I'll chuck it into this dropper right here. So let's just go like that. And then I can just sit here... And, and mine it up. That is plenty more coal obtained, but I still want more. So I'm going to do what somebody recommended me to and find a brand new mountain biome. Because according to the person in the comments, they have coal absolutely all over them. I think I'm nearly into new chunks, but we've got a ruined portal here. Now, you just never know with these. There's a chance of a notch apple. Well, there wasn't one. But you know what? I'm going to take the gold because gold is always nice. Even though I'm literally in the process of making a new and improved gold farm. But hey, when you see a ruined portal, it's always nice to go for it. Okay, we've got a regular gold apple. I haven't had a notch apple in a ruined portal one for ages. You've got to search like 80 odd of them to, to find one on average. No, what I'm actually looking for is something that's much bigger and much easier to find. Yep, that's right. A mountain. And look at this. It already has some coal in the side of it. If I just grab a bunch of stone, then I can glide on over here and land on a block and mine up lots and lots of coal. And there is quite a lot of coal here, because look, there's just some down here. The problem is, is it just little bits of one? No, look, there's loads of them. And 31 stacks is my goal. Shouldn't be too hard, should it? And what on earth is that? That has to be the strangest place I've ever seen a tree generate before. It's literally on a little pole and it's <laughs> it looks so bizarre. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that too much longer. It's the greatest tree ever. Instead, I'm going to continue grabbing this coal. Look at that emerald as well. Look, I don't think I've ever seen emerald inside of a mountain before today. I knew it was possible since a new update, but yeah, I'm going to grab the ore because, you know, the ores are kind of rarer than the actual emeralds. Since I can normally just trade for emeralds, but to actually get the emerald ore, well, that takes a little bit more effort. Look at that. More coal down there. And these iron quite high up as well. I didn't realise that was a thing. And already, I am up to a grand total of, well, a, a lot of stuff. Over 11 stacks so far. And this mountainous area is just what I'm looking for. Look at this cave, by the way. How cool. I love the cave update. It just looks amazing under there. And coal! Kind of pointed the wrong direction, but there's a few there. There's also some coal right here. Whoever told me about this was right. It is really easy to find coal doing this. And just like that, I have already filled up the inventory. But don't worry. Blocks of coal can be made. And then I can continue with my mining. It's actually so abundant. Like, look how much. I've already got nearly three stacks again. And that was just from mining in that one place up there. Another ruin portal. I am... Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to grab that gold block. Maybe I'm not going to grab that gold block. Nothing too useful in there if we just place a couple of blocks like that. Is it going to burn? No, it's not going to burn. Let's also build our way up here very carefully. There we go. Grab that. I've got another mountain waiting for me. Do you see any coal? Oh, there's some coal ready like that. Perfect. Nice, uh, nice landing. Let's grab it. Now, this has got to be the kind of mountain I'm looking for. Pure stone. There's absolutely loads and loads of coal on it. And once again, my inventory has filled up. So let's go and grab the crafting table, create more coal blocks. There we go. I have got loads and loads of them. I think maybe I'll fill up my inventory one more time. It's crazy how I start one project, then just get completely sidetracked and go mining for coal for like three days. And here I am supposed to be building a super fast gold farm. And with that, I think... Okay, it keeps going to the gold, but I was about to say, I think I have got enough... Yeah, I've got, I've got more than enough for my entire super smelter, like nearly four stacks of coal blocks, which will, will definitely keep it going. At some point, I do want to actually build a much bigger super smelter as well. I feel like... It's a bit of a sorry excuse for a super smelter. And when I do eventually do that, I'll also find a way to solve my fuel problem. I probably would end up using lava again. And I'm not sure if I can be bothered flying all the... Oh my goodness, what is down here? Oh, wow. What a cave. It's amazing. You're just flying along. Amethyst geode. This is a cave. I would build a base in this cave. Not come here for diamonds, but just look at that down there. Wait, is there diamonds down there? No. But anyway, my, my, as I was saying, I'm just going to make a portal. Because there really is no point in flying all the way back home. It's like another 8,000 blocks or something. So let's create that. Do I have my flint and steel? No, I don't have my flint and steel. But my ender chest does. No, it doesn't. Okay, it's in my inventory. I'm just blind. Nothing that you guys didn't already know, though, I suppose. <laughs> Alrighty, this is an interesting... Oh my... What is that all about? Okay, soul sand. Not what I wanted to see. Can I actually get out of it? I can get out of it. Perfect. And I've kind of come to a dead end. So you know what? I'm, I'm just digging. A tunnel. There we go. Now life is much, much easier. Although apart from the fact that I was flying in that direction, I'm meant to be flying in this direction. But to be honest, the nether is a pretty difficult place to navigate. More tunnel digging is going to be needed. And of course, there's a little bit of lava. Why? What's it all about? What were the chances of that happening? As I've got more quartz on the way as well. And this area does look kind of familiar. And the reason for that is because we are now home sweet home. So let's now go and head up these stairs, up to the furnace room, which seems to have stopped now. Is that because we're out of coal? No, wait, has it just smelted everything successfully? I bet it hasn't smelled it. No, you see, there's some sand left. But first things first, let's chuck a load of this stuff 
into the system. Don't really know where to put this emerald ore, so I'll, I'll put it with the deep flat emerald ore. Now I can turn loads of these blocks into actual coal and start filling the furnaces. And apparently with all my glass, because I made it so it didn't go to the, uh, the chest room, I've really... Uh, <laughs> Jammed up the system here. Yeah, that's not good. Let's get this shulker box filled up so I have a little bit more space. And the rest of the glass can just be sent back through like that. You know what the great thing about this is? I've got loads of spare coal as well. And I can also, in fact, fill up the old blast furnaces for the ancient debris that I'm going to be getting loads of over the coming episodes. And all this spare coal can just be put into here. Let's grab the shulker box full of glass. I do not have a lot of spare glass, so I'm going to chuck it into this chest as well. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to grab a bunch of other items such as slime blocks. And you know what? Because I will be making a sort of sorting system, hoppers and things like comparators will also be kind of useful. And whilst this bit's probably not necessary, I am going to grab a few trap doors and also some turtle eggs. In fact, I could also... No, I've got the glass. I don't need more glass. I just need to get to work on building this thing. So the first of the steps with this is to grab a load of glass and continue building this chute. Realistically, it probably is already tall enough, but I always say it can never be too tall. Although it could possibly be too tall because I also have to build a portal here. So I think we're probably a good enough height here. Let's go and make ourselves a nether portal. So here it is right here. I'm going to put some glass on top as well. Okay, well, we, we I, I did it to the exact right height then because nothing can actually go above that. Let's light up the portal. Now I need to make a portal that corresponds to this one, but I'm pretty sure that as long as it is in the same place, but just higher than the other one, it should be fine. Let's now go into here. We want to grab the water buckets, I think. Can we place that there? There we go. Yeah, we're probably going to need four of them. Or perhaps the easiest way to do it would be just to have two of them, but with glass above. So that's going to create myself, well, for me, myself, all the port. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Some water sources. Then if I break that one, it will go all the way down. And just up here, we're going to need a couple more like that. So they're going to be flowing into the portal perfect now to swim all the way down hopefully without drowning look at that i actually swum down faster than the water can travel so that's a, that's a win and from there it's time to go back into the ender chest get out the kelp and get to work placing it all down i'm not really sure if there's an easy way to do this which is why i'm just kind of going like this you know as i'm placing all this i'm starting to think to myself was it really necessary did i have to place all this glass and go so high. I mean, I'm not even, I can't even see the top yet and I've been going for ages. At this point, I still can't see the top. I'm kind of surprised that I haven't actually run out of kelp. Look at that, I can finally see the top. I might just do it. I might just have enough kelp to make it to the top. You probably all thought I was going OTT when I brought an entire shulker box worth of kelp. But as you can see, it was very, very necessary. Now, I don't actually want to go too high with the kelp because otherwise, well, let's just see what happens. We can't actually go into those ones anyway. We're at the max, okay. Now I've got to get all the way to the bottom. And if you think I can be bothered to swim all the way down, you've got another thing coming, okay? Instead, I I'm going to try and... Oh, I missed! Oh, I was so close. And then from here, I'll, I'll just do something like that. Yeah, it's making a bit of a mess. Can we even place them back? No, we can't really. No. You know what? Let's just swim to the bottom. Then I can break all of this kelp. Yeah, that's right. And we're going up. Okay. Now then, was it on this side that I need to get out? Okay, I missed it. I get a feeling like it's going to be a sad moment where all the kelp just goes through the portal and I can't reclaim it. Yep, that is what happened. Anyway, let's go ahead and break a bit of glass. Then I can fix this gap as well as this gap right here and head on through the portal. Ah, it would seem that it was all coming through this chunk loader. I didn't know this chunk loader was still in operation. Okay, that's not meant to be happening. Now it should be stopped. So has this just been collecting kelp? It's been collecting all sorts of rubbish. Yeah, come on out of here. You, you go. Right, I don't really need that. So that can go into there. That's There's nothing in that one. Yeah, it's all here. But at least I had a nice collection system to get all my kelp anyway. But anyway, this portal has got to go. The chunk loader is no longer necessary. And thanks to my perfect sense of direction, I can remember where this hole is. So we're going to go and carefully float down and then build a tower right here. At the top of this tower, there will be a portal. And this one definitely needs to be spawn proof with glass. And the pigmen will fall either side down one of these chutes where they will land on this platform and be down to one heart. And before I do any more on that, I should build this chute upwards using all this glass that I now have loads of. So I've actually just done a little bit of testing and I've had a change of heart. Because I was an idiot and didn't build the center of my perimeter over another way, it, it kind of messed everything up, which means I can't use two portals to make a looting pigment farm. So instead it just makes way more sense to take out all of the pigment in this dimension and then use the water chute to send the items back through to the nether. If it doesn't make much sense, don't worry, it will do very shortly. So the pigmen will be falling all the way down here and the trusty pistons will be pushing the items down this hole. Let's do the same thing on this side. And once the items are down here, they're going to get pushed along this way. And from here, I'm going to have to create a little extra water chute. All around here is going to be obsidian with two sticky pistons and 
slime like that. Pushing it into what will be another water chute once I add the blue ice. Come up here so that I can craft some signs and also top up my water. And I found myself building yet another glass chute. But realistically, I think it's going to be easy to do that rather than get the items to flow into there. And this chute is also not going to need to go all the way up to Sky Limit. In fact, I reckon it might even be high enough right here. Let's light this portal and make sure it correctly links up, which it does do no problem. I can add signs right here and begin placing my kelp. And there we have it, mission accomplished. All the kelp can be broken and any items that float up here will float into the portal. And I think I can actually make this portal to be much lower. And it turns out when I go through this portal, it's, yeah, it's a slight disaster. How on earth do I get out of this mess? <laughs> okay, I managed to get back through the portal. And yeah, I should stop being lazy and make this portal a bit higher up. Okay, this time I'm fairly confident that I've actually built it high enough. Oh my goodness, that was a, that was an interesting moment. Didn't expect them to still be angry at me. Is that two totem pops in one episode? I, I just use totems like it's nothing. But at the very least, it would seem that no pigmen are coming through this top portal. So let's get the water down. And despite this supposedly supposed to push you upwards, I'm, I'm swimming down through it. I, I didn't know you could do this. If I let go, look at that, it pushes me. Look at that. If you're in the corner and you swim downwards, it's, it's doable. Anyway, I've got to re-add all of the kelp. I've made it all the way up to the top. Now to break it. All right, that's the last time I'm doing one of those. And I can test to see how well the farm is working based on where the kelp's gone. So it has all come out on the end there. Some of it, like, just flown out. No, it's, it's all... It's all here, which is perfect. I was thinking I might have to slice this portal for the items to fall through, but I think they'll just naturally come down here. And I can then push them together using pistons. From here, I've got a slime block that's going to push the items, which will have blue ice right here. This is what I've created so far. It's going to be an ice system that transport the items all the way to where I'll be standing. But I do need to get rid of this old portal up here. I think I've mined up as much as I can. I'm just going to put some glass on top of that to spawn proof it. And now I just need to nip back home and grab more blue ice. It is still such a massive achievement, wasn't it? To make that perimeter. It took so long. I would make another one that was better in a, like, in a better location if I could. But it already took me like 300 days to create the last one. I am not doing that ever again. There's the blue ice that I need. In fact, whilst I'm here, if I've got any spare, I'm going to grab some glowstone. Look at that, we've got loads. The reason for that will just be to light certain things up to spawn proof it. Since I don't really want any mobs to be spawning in my system. This is about as far as the items can reach without getting stuck. This is all starting to look very nicely set up indeed. This is where my little AFK platform is going to be. And so I want these items to drop down to a level just above that. In fact, I might as well build a decent sized platform. If I make this go to about here, that should be more than enough space. I want to grab a piece of magma from the wall, which is what will get rid of the extra swords I don't need. And then hoppers along here, which will be going into comparators with repeaters underneath and redstone on top. And I also will need redstone torches, which I, I didn't bring. I only need eight of them, but to craft them, I'm going to need some sticks or wood or something like that. And I don't seem to be coming across any of that. And in trying to find some, I've pretty much flown all the way home. Am I going to take a tree or do I just, you know what, let's just go all the way back. On second thoughts, I can just get rid of one of these. I, it, it's a lot quicker than going all the way back. I don't think I'll need any extra items after that anyway. Although on second thoughts, I, I'm going to need to collect some string, which I have loads of right here. I've already got the observers, but some extra repeaters could come in handy. There's only three torches there anyway. Let's craft all of the sticks. Use... I think I can use that redstone. Yeah, we're all right. The rest of the stuff could just be dumped into there. And the build continues. We're going to need hoppers all the way along here. With hoppers facing into those. And then these will go into chests. Now that should all be fully completed. There just needs to be some item filters added. And since I'm only going to be filtering out the gold, I can just grab some from here. So gold ingots are just going to go straight in like that. And I'm also going to need... A few nuggets. And any other items are just going to get burnt. There's no point keeping the other ones. They're just, they're just annoying. And, you know, like smelting gold swords to get it to nuggets. It's just not worth the effort. Let's get this wired up to an observer. I think if I put a piece of redstone there, that should be fine. And then a string in front. When an item drops down... Oh, there we go. It gets burnt. I better be careful about that. But yeah, it's working. For this one, I'm going to use two repeaters. Something like that should work. And I need to make sure that all of this is also spawn proof. Same for these bits down here. And to spawn proof this obsidian, because I can't really do it any other way, if I use glowstone, it'll be lit up. I'm really doing my best to think this through, aren't I? And that's all of them done, which means when I flick this lever, that redstone... Don't get stuck. It didn't get stuck. Okay, it's, it, it, it got close to being stuck, but it hasn't... I don't think so. It's coming along. Come on, redstone. No, don't pick it up. Let me just try that again. So the redstone has successfully got to here. And then what on earth happened there? Built it one block too high, didn't I? Which annoyingly means I've got to make all of this one block lower. But that's exactly the reason why we test these things. Now I can conduct attempt number three. Here comes the redstone. It's going along. It's not falling off. Okay, if it gets all the way to the bottom, 
And it's got burnt! Yes! Oh, wait, it didn't get burnt. Even better. Although I do need to remove this to make sure that all future items do get burnt. Now I just need to put a bit of glowstone here and hook this up to a bit of redstone. This is just a very simple hopper clock that will just keep pushing it in and out. Let's just test it. Is that... I think it's a pretty good speed. I might just speed it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Now to go through one of these portals. I need to hook up all of these pistons to some redstone. Well, that's going to be very difficult with some random water. Where is this water from? Oh, it's from there. Let's just patch it up and forget about it. So these pistons are going to be connected like this so that they can be periodically pushed. So when I flick this lever... Yeah, look at that. We've got we've got that going in and out, pushing the items down. And this also needs to connect to those pistons, which can easily be done by doing something like this. And does it does it reach? No, not quite. Okay, I just need a, one extra repeat one second and it's pushing the items which will go up there you know what it's it's working everything's working the only thing left to be done is to test it so if i stand right about here pigmen will be spawning and very soon look at this items are coming through you know what a decent number of them are coming through now then how's it looking in my chest down here is it filling up no not just yet but that's because this hopper is still filling up in fact i bet they are now filtering in aren't they yeah look at that we're getting nuggets we're not getting in there yet. But it seems slow. I, I, I feel like I've done something wrong. And yes, <laughs> this is what I've done wrong. Items are coming through out fine. That's working absolutely perfectly. But the idiot that I am forgot to hook it up <laughs> to the pistons. If I go like that, look at how many items are going to be going through now. This is going to be too much for me storage to handle all of a sudden. <laughs> I thought, yeah, surely it's just slightly faster than what it's currently doing. And indeed it is. This is now looking much, much healthier. And look at the nuggets just fly in. You look at that. The chests are filling. What will I be doing with all this gold? Well, I've got plans for it. I've got actually more than one plan for it. Yeah, this is all working fine. I'm going to AFK here for a bit. And just see how much gold it gets me. Just let me, yeah, just get loads and loads. Plenty of time has passed. Uh, the drops are still flowing. And as you can see, I have got so, so much gold from it. Look at it. It just goes into all these chests. I'm going to have to clear some space in my inventory. And right here, I'll put a crafting table, a piece of glass above it to spawn proof it. Now if I start grabbing all of the nuggets and I'll craft them into ingots. I have to say, just crafting all these nuggets into ingots is taking me forever. Look how many gold blocks I've got already. And I've still got entire double chest worths to go through. And it seems that because I haven't personally aggro the pigmen, I'm not getting things like gold swords and gold ingots coming through, which in reality makes my life much, much easier. And that's pretty much all of my gold crafted that I need to worry about. We've got some more here. I'll shove the ingots in there for now. You know what? I, I think I can just shove all the gold in there for now. This chest is already filling up at a rapid speed because that farm is just working in the background whilst I'm still here crafting. This farm really is much, much faster than the last one. Before we start the next build that is going to involve a lot of gold blocks, I want to sort out the situation of all these villagers. They deserve to be unleashed onto their new home, so it's time that I actually made that possible for them. And the first thing we're going to need is beds. Lots and lots of different coloured beds. You see, if my estimations are correct, there is like 50 villagers in here. They, well, I don't know how many, but there's a lot. Just give me a second, I'm going to count them all up. One, two, three, four, five. It's difficult to count them because they're all moving around, but I think there's about 43 in there. And as you'd expect, 43 villagers are going to need plenty of places to sleep. So that will be the first project. Accommodate all these villagers. Probably going to be a big mistake, but I'm going to place all of the beds upstairs for them. Now with all these colours, I'm going to craft one of every bed and they can all go in a line along here. That's all of them crafted and I'm just going to, in fact, we're going to go, I don't know why it makes a difference, but we're going to be very particular about it. And that is how the beds, it looks so empty in this massive room. Since I've got so much lime wall, I'm going to make a bunch of carpets and create a bit of a flooring around here. I will finish that once I go and get more lime wall, but for now, let's go ahead and put a couple of crafting tables here and there. And we'll do more beds. And that is all of them done on both sides. And since the sun has now set, I, I think I'll have a sleep in one of them. Let's swoop on down here. Add a little bit more grass down. And go into the sheep farm. Why on earth is there snow everywhere in the sheep farm? This has rogue snow golem written all over it. Anyway, as I was saying before I had to clear everything up. Let's grab some lime wool. Maybe not quite that much lime wool. Make some carpets and decorate the floor a bit more. In the end, I've gone for this kind of carpet pattern. I think I'm just going to fill in the entire thing with light blue. And that is how each side is going to look. I don't think it looks too bad. Certainly looks better than it did before anyway. I'd also like to add a couple of ender chests up here just for a bit of decoration. In fact, they might look better if they're on top like that. You know what? Even better... What if they're right up there? Yeah, I like that. Better than them just randomly being to one side. Yeah, that doesn't really work. I would also like to decorate the floor down here. And I think carpet's probably not good enough. I think I'd like more emerald blocks. And the best place for emerald blocks will be the raid farm. So I'm going to fly to the portal that leads me to the stronghold and also pillager outpost. Let's just say the portal room's through there. But if I instead go this way, and I'll have you know I've never got lost yet. Okay, that was actually... <laughs> that was not doing that on purpose, guys. But yeah, this is the right way. Here's a captain that I saved earlier. In fact, you're not even a captain, so you can just be gotten rid of. And now we 
fly to the raid farm, where I can begin collecting all of those emeralds. Plenty of time has been spent here, and a milestone of 400 XP levels has been reached. And if it's emeralds that I wanted, it's emeralds that I've got. Now to start emptying these shulker boxes and turning them into blocks. That is all of them crafted, and we have one entire shulker box of blocks. And all these other shulker boxes can be gathered up and put back into the system. Now with these emerald blocks, I wish to make some sort of floor pathway. I'm pretty sure that's symmetrical. It took me about a minute to work it out. And I can fill these in with emerald blocks instead. And you know what I've learned from this? That emerald blocks just, just don't work in that situation. Instead, I'm going to head back to my house and all the way down to the storage room so I can grab some black dye, or at least some wither roses to make black dye. And then I'm going to fly all the way over to the Guardian farm. And whilst I'm flying over there, I'm now asking myself the question, has this ruin portal been searched? I'll grab the gold box so that I know for next time it definitely has. And I can't seem to spot a chest. Okay, that's that's a new one. Either I've broken that chest in the past, or I've just been completely scammed. I also had to do a bit of searching, but I finally found the Guardian farm, only to realize, yeah, I, I didn't turn on the mob switch. Hopefully, there is going to be plenty of Prismarine already there. And the answer is, there's a few. That might just be enough. Actually, I go so far as to say that there's loads. More than enough for me to do what I need to do. That's why I brought an entire shulker box with the roses, because we're running out of dye, we can just make more. All this dark Prismarine should be more than enough. And I might as well just head back home by going through the nether. And now that that's sorted, let's get back to work on doing the bottom of this palace. So dark Prismarine like this. Which definitely does suit better than Emerald Blocks, but we can add a bit of decoration in there. I also want to mine up both of these because this is also going to be turning into Dark Prismarine. Of course, I've lost a door underground, but <laughs> I'm going to have to go on down. And whilst I'm here, I can actually go ahead and if I can if I just reach, I can go and do that. This is a nice bit of extra underground work. And I also think it'd be good to just mine out underneath the fences and again, place some emerald blocks. I mean, I did take the time to make a farm that would get me millions of them. <laughs> I might as well make use of that. Now, can I create some sort of floor pattern by using these lights? Well, you know me, I'll try anything once. Whether it actually works, though, will remain to be seen. Alrighty, this is what I've come up with. And I tell you what, I like it. I think it, it brings a bit of something to it. But I also reckon I can make it look even better. And the way to do that will be by getting a load of green stained glass, which I'm going to have to craft. You know what? Do I craft a load of stuff? I don't want to do craft too much. don't want to go over the top. We have also got loads and loads of green dye here. So we'll just go and craft as much of it as we can. Yeah, that's going to be plenty. And then I'm going to redo all of these blocks to be one block lower, which shouldn't be too difficult. I'll just do something like this. Probably the lights that are the most annoying one to move down. So I've got to break each and every one manually like that and do that and replace it all manually to light it up. But despite that, it is slowly but surely coming together. Now it's all been moved down one block, I do believe. All I need to do is just try and get out of here, which is a Okay, I didn't mean to break that many blocks. Now that I'm out of here, I want to get inside out of this horrible rain and mine away at this floor. And this is what we've got now. I've it's not quite finished yet, since I firstly want to cover it in green stained glass, which I have now successfully done. Next, I'm going to take this dark prismarine and create a bunch of stairs, mine a border all the way around the outside, and then use these stairs to go all the way around the outside. Will this work? Will it look good? <laughs> Only time is going to tell with this one. And there we go. What do we reckon? You know what? I like it. And I like it enough to do the exact same thing on this side. Although before I actually finish it, I definitely think that I won't quite have enough Dark Prismarine to do everything. And even though I've already made one trip to the Guardian Farm, I'm going to grab a Shulker Box, head to spawn, so that I can actually remember to turn off the mob switch this time. And then I will make the journey... <laughs> Not into the lava, but all the way over to the Guardian farm. Where this time, Guardians will actually start spawning. Plenty of time has now passed. I think we're going to see what we've got. We've got plenty more Prismarine shards, that's what we've got. And for now, that should be all of the Dark Prismarine that I need. I'm going to use a stone cutter to make the stairs because it's actually much more efficient. And now I'm going to get to work on doing this part of the floor. And that's this floor complete. I decided to try it with normal glass to see if it looked better than the other side. But I do think that green stained glass looks much, much better. It looks like I get the very fun task of just breaking all of this glass now. And place the green glass all back down. And there we go. I think I'm pretty happy with all the floor designs. Although a border around the edge of emeralds might look pretty good if I do something like that. Yeah, I think I like that. It adds a bit more extra colour. Reminds everyone that this is an emerald palace. So I'm going to carry on mining out a trench around here. And then it can be filled in with emerald blocks. So yeah, I really like that. I don't think it would make sense to have it go all the way to the door. Before I forget, I do want to mine into the floor 
patch it up and collect up all the concrete that I mined up because I don't want to waste it. A lot of it took me a lot of effort to get. I think it's worthwhile just nipping back home so that I can drop off all of this stuff. And now I'd like to grab loads and loads of different job site blocks. I do want some brood stands, but apparently we need blaze rods. And something tells me the blaze farm will be the best place to get those. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does work. None of them are waiting for me. Let's just wait for them to spawn and then take them out. I've got seven from that. It, it is enough, really. You know what? I'll get you as well. I'm not going to leave you behind. Now I've got ten. That is definitely enough. And you know what? I might as well take on some stray blaze as well whilst I'm at it. Turns out I had plenty of blaze rods in this barrel. You, you, know, you know, next time I should probably just look. But not to worry. I can now craft my brewing stands. Took quite a bit of time, but I have now got every single job site block, which in theory should keep all of these villagers very happy. And very busy. And the plan is to just put them all in a row along here, like so. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Because I have an odd number of job site blocks, but an even number on the wall, that's why the brewing stand is going there. I'm not going to bother putting them in the exact same order as the other side. You know, we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. There we go. That's all of those done. I also wouldn't mind just quickly nipping home, grabbing six more blaze rods and 18 cobble so that I can craft six more brewing stands. Why do I want six more brewing stands? I just feel like... They just didn't make sense, you know, just to have one on each side, you know what I mean? Just th those one on each side when there was equal spaces in all the areas. So instead, I'm thinking, yeah, we've got one there, but why don't we also put one there? And then on this side, we could also have one here, one here, and then do the exact same thing on this side, both on there and both on, well, not both, no, <laughs> that one's already there. And I really can't think what else could be done. I, I think I I'm ready to just extend this fence, which probably involves me going back to my house to grab a load more spruce fences so that I can extend it properly and safely. And when I say safely, I mean safely for the villagers, you know. <laughs> it's not like the most dangerous thing in the world, placing fences. But if I get this wrong for the villagers, it could be a matter of life and death. There we go, that's up to that wall. I should probably fence off this cave because I, I really don't want them disappearing down here. Or down here, you know what villagers are like, they love wandering off. There we go, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on the other side of that, you'd be like you'd be in prison. But on this side, there's no problem whatsoever. I'm also going to extend this fence ride right here to go with, yep, you guys, you're going to be getting out real soon. They've literally spent their entire life living in a tiny water pool. Maybe I am the real monster of this place. So I think it's ready, I don't know what could possibly go wrong. Let's first get rid of the old fence, and then we can let all these villagers go free. There we go, guys. You're finally allowed out. Now then, who's the first one? Is anybody going for it? Come on, mate. You know you want to. So far, they just look like they all want to get me. No, leave me alone, guys. That's it. So far, none of them have worked out where to go. Maybe I need to open the door for them or something. I don't know how smart their brains are for pathfinding. And while I wait for them for, to actually use the Emerald Palace, I can get rid of this wall here as well. And I'm even getting a few extra Emerald Blocks from this as well. I literally mined the entire floor of my house when I had spare Emeralds just sitting here. Right. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was an accident, mate. Don't run. I'm sorry. I built you a big house. I just want to mine up these spinning tables. And they too can be placed in this house to hopefully lure them over. I'm guessing the reason this hasn't been the grand opening I was hoping for is because you guys are just all having a big meeting at centre. This guy looks determined to go in there. Look, if I if I mine this, what do you reckon? They say, why do you want to go in there? It's, it's really nothing to say. Said, now we know. No, look, look, mate, trust me, there's nothing to say. Guys, I know some of you want to go to bed. There's loads of beds up there. It's entirely possible that this is a, bit, a bit too far away from the village. But one way or another, I will get them here. All right, guys, if you come this way, there's an entire world waiting for you. That's it, villager. You fall for my trap. Yes, you might think you're here for a job. But no, you're going to be working in here. Welcome to your new home. You are the first villager. And he's got a job. There you go. Happy days. Right, mate, I, I don't want to be horrible to you, but... But you're staying here for now. Look at that. They're all coming in now. They're all getting the idea. Really brings a tear to my eye to see them finally using this place. And because this villager right here was the very first one to enter, you shall become the Emerald Leader. Congratulations, mate. Enjoy your position. Alrighty. Your brain's really got you through this time. Meanwhile, these stupid villagers can't even work out how to use a front door. Not to worry, though. I've got more important things to be cracking on with. Such as my new and improved bartering farm. And the reason that it's going to be new and improved is because it's going to involve updating suppression. All the items that I'll need for it are right there. However, it would also be useful to have even more powered rails. So I'm going to grab all these ones that I've placed for the evokers. Grabbing the powered rails is pretty straightforward. It's picking up the levers that's quite annoying. So I, I might even just leave those behind. Although it's weird to explain it, but I feel like if I leave the levers, I'm kind of like littering, if you know, <laughs> littering in Minecraft, I know. And you should never litter in real life or in Minecraft. So we're taking the labels with us. Well, I've made it back to the first portal, which is a good sign. I've nearly filled this shulker box up with rails. So you know what? I'll leave all of those behind to be collected another day. And now I'm going to go ahead and start building the update suppressor inside the massive perimeter. And you know what? Because you've seen me build these loads of times before, you can have a time lapse.
and the entire update suppressor has now been built. The only thing I have realized is that I want the slice portal to be more over in this direction, but I, I built it in the wrong place. So instead, I'm going to extend this end bit over this direction a bit more. I'm hoping doing something like this will work. Only one way to find out. <laughs> no, it didn't. And after a few more attempts and adjustments, it's, it's now sorted. And whilst I've been building this update suppressor, I have been getting gold, as you can see, there's, uh, there's loads of nuggets in here. But very annoyingly, I don't have any obsidian to build a portal, and I don't have any ender chests. So I think it's important that I solve that problem. And the way I shall do that is by grabbing a bunch of obsidian, as well as eyes of ender, and then crafting plenty more ender chests. In fact, I'm just going to grab a little bit extra obsidian from here as well, because there's plenty more uh, ender chests that can be crafted. So there we go, got 44. That should be enough. Let's get back to work. So right here, I am going to build the portal. I'm hoping it'll work if I do it right here. Then I light it up, and I think if I break this piece of obsidian... There we go, we've got a little one by one. All of the obsidian around it can be broken. And then in order to break the obsidian below it, I just need to move this down a block. I'm hoping that this will still work. Let's just do that. And okay, yeah, the, the update suppressor is no longer working. Maybe if I move this to here, it should now do it. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go, it's working. And if all goes to plan, I can break this piece of obsidian there we go we've got a little one by one portal and i cannot place any blocks on any of these four edges of it otherwise it will break well that is mission accomplished this update suppressor can be taken down i've said it before and i'll say it again these suppressors take an hour to build and five minutes to destroy and that is everything collected up the next thing to be done is make a portal that perfectly connects to this one and as i'm building this it does make me realize that it's a completely pointless way of doing a bartering farm could have achieved all this just by keeping all the items in the same dimension but i also think it's a really cool way to do it, update suppression isn't going to be in the 1.19 update so i'd like to use it whilst i still can and now the slice portal on the other side needs to be right here but you know what it's going to be just too much effort to build it underground and we have to dig out a massive area to build the update suppressor so i'll just build it somewhere up here so the other suppressor is going to be built right here i just need to clear out some leaves and it probably makes the most sense to use shears to do that and from what i can tell the entirety of this tree is in the way so it's all got to go i mean i know if i just mine up the wood it will disappear on its own but I'm kind of trying to give it a bit of a helping hand as well. Shame I don't really have any storage. I think I think we need to store some of this stuff. It could all come in useful one day. Just got no idea when that day will be. That should give me enough space to do the building. So now it's time to get to work. And of course, as soon as I start building, it starts raining. I, I hate building in the rain. But oh well, it looks like I'm just going to have to power on through. And that is update suppressor number two complete. Let's turn it on. I believe we are now update suppressing. Right here is going to be the portal block that's going to be staying. So we're just going to go like this. Apparently, I'm not update to present. Okay, now we are. And next, I shall light the portal, break this block right here, and then all the blocks around it. And I need to do the same thing as before to be able to break the obsidian, creating something like this, suppressing it all, and mining it up. Now, just to double check, let's head on through and make sure it works. And look at that, straight through. Okay, we fell down, but we went through that one. That means I can go back through this one and begin removing this update suppressor. And I think everything has now <laughs> been destroyed. So now I can go back through this portal and head back home to get some more items. And the main item I'm going to need to get is going to involve me crafting a lectern. There we go. And whilst I'm out and about, I'm also going to grab a bunch of emerald blocks. You see, my pickaxe needs repairing. And I could go out and use an XP farm. And oh my goodness, what has happened to you guys? I guess that's why you should never leave the door open. Change of plan, we need to do some brewing. Using a couple of spider eyes, I should be able to get the weakness. And then I can make it splash with gunpowder. And whilst I'm waiting for that, if I head on down, I can grab a bunch of golden apples from here. I didn't expect to be doing this today, but hey, at least it'll get me better trades in the future. Let's grab all of these, do some splashing. And whilst I wait for that, I can trade with you guys. I know I have a raid farm, so I don't really need to buy redstone, but I also have way more emeralds than I know what to do with. Now let's head on down here here to the trading hall which is it's, it's still a bit of a work in progress guys but despite that i need to get a curse of binding book from this fella right here oh my goodness i got it first time i got it for oh my word you know what that's the best rng i've ever seen in my life you sir really are an amazing villager. Well, it's nice to see that one of the bits that I thought was going to be the hardest was, was very, very easy. All of these can go into a shulker box for now. And I'm also going to need to come down here to purchase a load of name tags. Look at that, I can buy loads from you guys. You know, I, you, you want me to buy more? Is that, don't worry, I'll buy loads from you. I'll do them for different prices. Don't worry, I've got plenty more emeralds. I'm, I'm stinking rich, mate. The economy, you, you guys... You don't stand a chance. I've got over a stack of them. I, I think that should be enough. Glad to see all of you guys looking much, much better. Let's buy loads and loads more redstone. And my pickaxe is nearly being fully mended as well. Well, as we said, this trading session has been very successful indeed. Having unlimited emeralds really is the best thing ever. And speaking of having unlimited emeralds, I'd like to spend even more of them to get loads more books. And this time, I'm going to actually remember to close the door. And you're probably now wondering, what is the next phase in my plan 
to do this fancy bartering farm. But we're going to be moving on to what I like to call the annoying phase. Why is it called the annoying phase? Well, that's because I'm going to need to get hold of loads and loads of piglins. And then not only do I have to find them all, I've got to lure them right here. Now, we're not in the right biome for piglins to spawn, so I've, I've, I've got to go and find that first. And it looks like this is the nearest crimson forest. And so I'm going to build a platform in this biome right here. I reckon all the way up here should be high enough. I don't seem to have any gold armor, so I think I'm going to have to go into this treasure shulker box, grab a few pieces of gold, and create a gold helmet from that. That's just going to make the piglins be nice to me, because I, I can't be bothered to deal with them any other way. This is the size of the platform, a pretty big one. And I also really don't want hoglids to spawn, so I've got a plan to stop them. Hello, little fella. You're uh, welcome, welcome up here. To be honest, mate, you're no use to me, though. Yeah, I need adults, not, not children. Anyway, as I was saying, I do not want hoglins to spawn, so the way I'm going to get around that is by grabbing some glass and placing it like this, because hoglins need more than one block to spawn, so they won't be able to. Well, I, I was trying to tell you guys they can't spawn. Yeah, on the bits that I haven't placed the glass, they can, though. Foiled again by those beasts. Okay, mate, you're kind of getting in the way now. Let's see, you, you go over there. Oh, my goodness. You... No! Why did, why did he walk off? I was actually planning to murder him because he, he's not supposed to be able to. I mean, I, definitely not. But then he accidentally walked off. I tell you, being 100 blocks in the air is not the safest place. There's definitely too many hoglings starting to spawn. I, I should be placing the glass. At least this gives me a bit of extra food. All right, little fella. I know you like it up here. I know it's fun. Try not to walk off. But apparently baby piglings have a habit of doing that. Aha! <laughs> get spleefed. I may have the most powerful netherite tools that you can get. But sometimes you just... Just got to outsmart them. And the piglin farm is pretty much complete. I just need to place these final bits of glass. All right, guys, there's, <laughs> there's loads of you up here. And I'll be honest, I don't really have a good plan on how to get them all to the bartering place. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now you're all angry at me. Oh, dear. I completely forgot how protective they get over enter chests. So for this, I am going to need a lot of boats. I'll craft a few right now and start collecting piglins. Yeah, I have no real plan other than just sending them over the edge. Got a pretty good system for sending them off. I just, I just go like that. They go spiraling down on a terrifying experience and I just stay up here. I'm also only choosing piglins with swords, not crossbows. That way I don't have to worry about them accidentally damaging each other. If you think I'm going to one by one boat them all the way to the bartering farm, you've, you've got another thing coming. And I've now got... 24 piglins, which is all the ones that I really need. If I try to put more than that in a one by one, they'll start entity cramming. I could use vines, but it, ju it just overcomplicates everything. So the next thing to do is make loads and loads of leather boots. Why do I need leather boots? You may be wondering. Well, all will become clear. We're going to be putting cursor binding on all of them, which is really going to make a big dent on my XP levels. But that is where powdered snow will be coming in. So I'm going to grab a single bucket of that. As you can see, I have plenty there. I did unfortunately break an anvil, and this one is very close to being broken. You just can't see it. So let's grab the items to craft a new one like so and I can go back under there. It's not like I'm struggling for iron or anything like that, is it? So I've got all the boots. I've got the powdered snow. Let's go back to the piglins. Now if I mess this bit up, it will uh, it will break the slice portal. But we're going to have powdered snow right here. There we go. That works fine. And then all around it like so. Now me, because I don't have any, any leather boots on, I'd fall right through this. And that is what's going to happen to all the items that the piglins barter. But because they'll be wearing leather boots, they won't fall through. And the reason all the boots have cursor binding is otherwise the piglings will decide to upgrade to the iron boots when they barter those. I got this design from Not J Hill, and whilst it is a bit more complicated than it needs to be, it's also a very cool way to do it. And I'm also making a nice safe shoot for the piglings to fall down so that I can safely lure them all the way to this hole. I've no idea how well this is going to work, but I'm, I'm hoping for the best. In order for this to go as smoothly as possible, I'm also going to use armor that doesn't have thorns on it. But it's still the very, very OP armor. And now I'm going to start supplying you guys with your very own new and improved boots. Go on, put them on. Don't, don't be shy. There we go. He's got them. And don't they just look great, all right? You're, you're all getting a pair. Since I don't want you to despawn, I'm also going to give you guys name tags. Let's let him out of the boat. Okay, guys, welcome. <laughs> welcome out of this. Of course, he just walked into another boat, and they're really hard to get out when there's two of them. Okay, you know what? Let's just learn one one guy, all right? Just one of you, okay? Let's see if this all works. Look, mate, I, I put the gold helmet on. Why are you still mad? There we go. He's calmed down now. He really is just going to wander off into the void of nothingness. Don't worry, mate. I've got a place for you to go. Just need you to walk down here. Stop being so good at pathfinding. Come on, that's it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, and I've got no... Uh, <laughs> I forgot I have... Yeah, let's just do that. There we go. You're, you're trapped. Then we push you down there. All righty, see you later, buddy. I'll be back when I've got more of these guys. I'm going to try and use hitboxes so I don't actually hit the piglins, I think. Yeah, that works. There we go. Let's, let's get you out of there. 
That's it, right. You guys, follow me. That's it. Two of you. Come on in, fellas. <laughs> there we go. You in as well. You two can be sent down the ladder. I realise that getting them to go all the way to the bottom of a ladder is a bit of a nightmare. I mean, look at them. They've managed to climb all the way up to the top. What's that all about? So I didn't want to have to do this, but it's, <laughs> it's time for plan B. And what is plan B? You may be wondering. Well, I'm going to go to my chest room, grab some slime blocks, and also a single piece of glowstone so a mob can't spawn on the slime block. A little bit of a risk, but I'm going to try and lure five of them in one go, okay? <laughs> They're all currently chasing me. Okay, this is why I've got the good armor on, though. There we go. Let's just keep moving. Also, for some reason, these two don't seem to care about me. Guys, you need to be angry. Come on. All right, fellas. <laughs> Catch me if you can. Now, this bit is going to be a little bit more tricky than... Uh... <laughs> Than the other times. Oh, and there goes a totem. All right, now I've got to be really careful. All right, we don't want to do anything particularly stupid here. <laughs> Otherwise, this will be the end of SP737's hardcore world. So we don't, we don't want that to happen. Turns out just standing up here was the easiest way to do it anyway. Let's put some a gold helmet back on so that they are no longer angry. And I'm going to move away a little bit and open an ender chest. And with that, I can get myself another totem. Three in one episode. What's been going on today? And I can hopefully float down this ladder if I can if I can get past these guys anyway. There we go. I got down somehow. I don't know how I did it, but <laughs> anyway, we're past. All the way at the bottom, we're going to change this glass to instead be a slime block. Let's put a bit of glowstone next to that for safety. And I'm going to attempt to break all the ladders. I think doing it like that might be the best option. Oh, they're going. They're going past me now. <laughs> well, you guys ain't coming back up this time. Whoa. Oh, I forgot about that. Some of you guys are... What do I do here? You know what? Let's put a slime block there. Just you and me, buddy. Don't walk into my axe. It will be painful for you. Now, we've made it to the bottom. Am I going to get stuck here? Is a chance. Let's see. Can I break that? I can. Yes, we're out. Okay, good stuff, guys. Welcome to the bottom. And you know how you guys like to get angry at me for absolutely no reason? Well, this is going to be one of those times. All right, fellas. Straight in. That's it. Push it. Wait, you had leather boots. Why did he fall through the powdered snow? That guy's not coming back. I should have tested this properly. But it turns out that if they fall more than two blocks onto the powdered snow, they, they'll just go straight through. That poor piglin now, he's, he's, he's a gunner that's gone through there. But anyway, what's going to happen is if I go and mine away this. Yeah, once they're all there, I will mine this piece of glass and then they'll just all go on the snow. I guess this is why I should really test these kind of things. What about you? Are you you're not going to get mad? There we go. Now you guys just wait there. I've got to retrieve my boots from this piglin. Looks like the piglin didn't make it because, yeah, there's, there's actually nothing below here. So, yeah, I found the boots though. So, in my opinion... That was a successful mission. So now I have to fly up this chute. And when I get to the slime at the top, if I just break it, there we go. We should be pretty good. I can push these guys straight down. Now, I need to just check. Are we surviving at the bottom of here? Oh, look at that. We're having a good bounce and we're having no problem at all. That's good to see. All of them have been successfully sent down. So it's time to go and get more. I also need one of you guys because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't ask what happened to the last guy that uh, that you're replacing. You'll be fine. I mean, seriously, what's the worst that could happen to him? All right, mate, here are your boots. You'll be named Trader. And this time I'm going to really push the boat out and just bring all of them. Now, this guy already has some boots on. Are you going to upgrade? If you don't, you're staying here. You know, okay, that's it. You're, <laughs> you're going to go the same way the other guy did. Now, some of them are starting to wander off a little bit. So I'm thinking... We maybe just take what we've got and get out of here. All right, mate. There you go. You've seen... Whoa, they're everywhere. Let's release you as well. Oh, my goodness. I'm pretty low. There's an army of them after me. Now, have I got time to eat? Look at that. Loads of time to eat. That guy... The guys at the back are getting lost. Come on, guys. Don't lose focus. The finish line is in sight. And it seems the best way to do this is what I did before, just to build up a load of blocks. And they soon all just wander in. And I wonder if I just break this block here. Oh, that's it. All of you, just go down. That's it. You're all going on the slime. Just get ready for the ride of your life. I would go down there as well, but I feel like it's just going to be a bad idea. So I'm instead going to do something like... Oh, how are we going to do this now? If I go like that... No, that didn't work. <laughs> Take two. Nope, didn't work again. Different idea. We go like that. We place the block. There we go. We're going to fly on down. Yeah, so I kind of want to lure them from this side. All right, guys. Catch me if you can. Oh, my goodness. They're all coming this time. That's it. All going. You two as well. Oh, nope. All right, Mr. Piglin, you are the final one. You guys sit tight. All right, I'll be back. Let's grab the rest of the boots. Now, I'm sorry to do this in front of you all, but this guy will not put the boots on, so he's he's got to go. And you, good sir, with the shiny sword shall be his replacement, if you want to be anyway. All right, we're going on down. Here's some boots, a name tag, and I give boots to all the rest of you. All of the boots have been distributed, and the boats are getting broken. And follow me, guys, to your brand new home. All right, fellas, in you go. That's all of them sent down. Now I'll join them down there and get them to come into the machine. That's it, fellas, all of you in. Hopefully, if I've done it correctly, when I break this glass, they'll all stand on the powdered snow. The moment of truth. There we go, look at that work. Don't know what I was afraid of, okay? 
worked perfectly. All these extra bits of glass can be removed. You guys can be welcomed to your new home. All of the excess glass is now gone. So I think it's time to fly back home and get a bunch of blue ice and also some pistons. I don't know what to do with all the boats. So I'm just going to shove them into a shulker box and put them into a chest. I can also put my good old armor back on that has all of the fancy stuff. And the backup armor can go back into the shulker box. Pretty sure everything I need is right here. Except for one item that I need a lot more of. And to get it, we're going to be heading over to the iceberg. Since it's pretty much the only place to get it, it's the fastest way that I've found to get it. Much faster than farming and crafting it anyway. Yes, I have come to collect blue ice. Now, is this blue ice or packed ice? Okay, it's packed ice. Never mind. That's what I'm looking for, yes. The blue ice. I've already mined up quite a bit and there's another big deposit right here. So once all of this has been mined up, I'll probably have more than enough. Yeah, I've got two stacks and four and I've also got a bit more packed ice, which can be crafted to blue ice. So yeah, I've got, I've got plenty. First of all, I'm going to build a blue ice pathway all the way to the piglins. And I'm hoping that if gold lands here, they can grab it. I better just test it out. So if it's there... Can they get it? Yes, they got it. Okay, what about if it's all the way over here, though? I guess they can't quite reach that. Oh, they can. Okay, perfect. So right here, I'll have a couple of pieces of obsidian. There's going to be a slime block on the end, and then I need an obsidian bit right here. I also need to spawn-proof this blue ice before I forget. And I'm thinking if I do something like this, when I go ahead and stand there... Okay, it kind of works. Just needs a bit more delay on the repeater. And now if I was to throw items in... <laughs> I missed the string. Yeah, this, this isn't quite working. Instead, we go string, observer, and redstone like that. Throw the items at this angle, and they get sent off. Now, is it going to reach? Yes, they, they're bartering it. Okay, so I'm like, oh, I just want to barter my gold. That gets sent all... The okay, that didn't work. It's gone down there. You can always tell when I'm making something up as I go along, because it always goes wrong a few times. But this time, when I send it through... Okay, it, it can get stuck. But in the end, I decided to completely change the design... And just use a lever. It's, it's, it's much, much easier and it works fine. And now that that's done, we need to go through this portal so that I can build the auto sorter on the other side. Probably going to be best if all of this floor is blue ice. And for this, I'm just going to have water like that, which is going to go all the way to the edge. And from here, it will hit a row of ender chests, which will make the items be aligned perfectly to go in the hoppers. I also want to grab myself. I'm trying to look for the walls. There we go. We've got the walls. They're going to come along here as well, just to keep stuff like this water in place. I went quite far in this direction, then I realized that these chunks, well, this chunk here particularly, wouldn't be loaded by that portal, so I'm going to have to mine these ones up. And that's why I've instead decided to turn a corner. Let's add some more ender chests to this end. we we'll continue with the walls. And to separate the water so that, you know, it doesn't flow backwards, we're just going to place some like that. We're going to do the same thing here, just so that it can go around the corner. And with this one, it should take us all the way to the end. And I'm just going to go back through my portal, if that's even possible. There we go, did make it through. And then I'll grab a single piece of magma, which I'm going to light on fire so that it burns all of the books, the fire resistance, and the boots. So let's test it out with a bit of string, okay? It comes through the portal, it goes through there, it goes all the way around, and look at the speed that it's going. And then it gets burned. But to make sure that everything else doesn't get burned, <laughs> let's make the storage system. And to do that, it would actually be helpful if I had a load of blocks. So jungle wood is going to be the answer. These are just going to be temporary blocks all the way around the outside. And then they'll have hoppers pointing into those blocks. And these blocks can be removed and we can have blocks underneath instead. Which will have the comparators. You've already seen me in this episode build an auto sorter. So I'm just going to get on with it. Normally I wouldn't like to build a jungle wood. But <laughs> since we are in a jungle, I think it actually looks quite good. And this first half of the storage system is complete. Although I do want to just add an extra row of chests underneath just to make sure that I don't run out of space. And I'm now creating the floor that I shall stand on. Although to extend these extra chests out a bit more, I'm going to need more wood because we're, yeah, we're fresh out of chests. In fact, we have actually got more wood. Will it be enough to make the chest that I need? Not quite. So it looks like it's time to begin Project Deforestation. Although calling it Project Deforestation might be a slight overstatement considering I'm, <laughs> I'm only mining one tree. I've got plenty more and for now it should hopefully be enough. And I think I might get rid of all these chests and hoppers right here so that I'll have room for the ones on this row. Because I'm not using that corner bit, I have had to extend this a little bit further. It is going to go into there. I don't want it to... Uh, <laughs> well, I need to make sure I get that right. So I'll just, let, me, let me change this up. You know what? Forget it. I'll just put water there actually. That, that should work fine. And I'll throw a single plank down just to make sure that it does go all the way through and get burnt. Once again, I'm going to need more chests, and I'm also going to need a load of hoppers, which is why I'm going to keep mining up lots of wood. And all of a sudden, Project Deforestation is, <laughs> is actually becoming a deforestation. But as long as I've got enough resources to finish this build, I don't mind. Building is going well, but sadly, I <laughs> didn't quite bring enough repeaters. But it's nothing to worry about, because I can simply just head back home and craft plenty more repeaters. And they can all be placed down with the redstone on top. Next, I'm going to place blockers into each of the hoppers to filter the items. And once I add in these final chests... 
The full system is completely finished. The only other thing I really need is an easier way to get backwards and forwards because that, that portal's not very good. So I'm thinking I should make a portal right here. Let's light it up and then if I try and build one on this side that will correspond to it. Looks like right about here should be a good place. Let's spawn proof it with glass on top and see if it works. Okay, so it did bring me to this one here. And if I go back through, it also takes me to the correct one. Let's now check that these ones still work properly. And look at that, no problem whatsoever. And since this has all worked so well, I'm going to get rid of this tree and also this tree up here. And then I'll build a massive glass platform that connects to that one. I think I got a little bit carried away in placing loads of glass. But all in all, I think it looks great. So let's go ahead and offload all of these items. And next I need to head to the old and inferior bartering farm, which is all the way up here, and grab a bunch of each item. Apparently I've got no crying obsidian and I've got no gravel, by the way, so I'll have to sort that out in a moment. In fact, the easiest way for me to probably sort it is to just go into here and grab myself some gold and trade it to all of you guys. And from that, I got plenty of the gravel, look at that, loads of it, and enough crying obsidian. All the rest of these items aren't going to be needed at the moment, so they can just head on through. Now to grab this shulker box of all the stuff, fly to the gold slash bartering farm, and add items to these hoppers. This is also why I named the items, because I nuggets have to go through, but they don't stack with the blockers. Just temporarily, I am going to turn off this fire and do a proper test on the bartering farm and hopefully see if it's working correctly. In here, I have loads and loads of gold, so let's just go and craft it all. And then I'm just going to send it all through to them like this. It's all sat there ready. Flick the lever. Okay, and it's going to be sat there and they're just going to start bartering it. And when they barter, look at that item. Yeah, okay, I thought, <laughs> I thought the items didn't go through for a second there, but they are all going through. Absolutely fine, look at that. It really is kind of cool to watch as it all just drops through. And I kind of want to see what's happening on the other side. If we can quickly... Will we be able to see any items come through? Probably not because, yeah, it's not, not going to work like that. They're not going to be bartering anymore. Maybe if I throw an item through like that, they'll, they'll trade and I can <laughs> load it. There we go, look at that. We can see it in action. So they are bartering as we go. And it looks like... Yeah, the only items that aren't getting sucked up are the books, fire resistance, and the boots. So I can actually set this back on fire because it is working as intended. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to put down loads of item frames, which will correspond to what is in each chest. They're all now set up. I have to say, I'm very proud of this bartering farm. And it is a really cool, meme way to do it as well, using slice portals. And those guys have still got loads more gold to barter. And as I'm studying, my gold farm is still working and getting me loads and loads of extra nuggets. Might as well craft all of these and send them across to the piglins. And for my next project, even though I am losing all my gold to those guys, I actually need quite a lot of gold. So I'm going to spend a bunch of time AFK at this farm so I can have enough gold for my next project. So quite a bit of time has passed. The metal look like there's not much in this chest, but that's because I have been trade uh, turning it all into gold blocks. I've also been bartering it with these guys. So if we go and send some of it down there, but I have realized in the bartering system that when he's at that corner, these guys on the left don't get it. So I need it to be on this near side. So I'm going to take all these gold blocks home with me, which will be very useful for the project. And then I want to get a block that's not a full one that can't be pushed by a piston. I'm thinking a grindstone might be the ideal one. There's my grindstone. But whether or not it's going to be the correct size remains to be seen. So my plan is to put the grindstone right there and throw gold like this. Then when I push it, okay... <laughs> <laughs> that did not work. I'll try putting the grindstone the other way, but it seems like that is that is not an answer to the problem. So it's back to the drawing board to try a different item. The grindstone was useless. I'm, I'm going to burn it in the lava. And rather than going all the way home, I'm going to make a little detour. A detour that takes me to a bastion. And out of this bastion, I want one very specific thing. A lantern. I reckon a lantern will solve my problem. And I didn't even have to go all the way back to my house for it. So if I place a lantern right here and then throw a bunch of items against it like that. Oh, I don't want to pick them back up but anyway for de demonstration purposes there we go they get pushed all the way along and the piglins can grab them let's send the rest of the items down as well yep absolutely perfect that is problem solved i'm also curious to see how much stuff i've actually got at the bartering farm quartz is looking very healthy generally speaking it all just goes into the first chest lots of blackstone which is great same for gravel and the best thing is i haven't even used up most of my gold because obviously i've got that for another project so i am very happy with this new farm and you may be wondering what on earth have i got all of this gold for well it is going to be something to do with my next build and for this next build i'm going to need quite a few gray items and i'm also going to need about six stacks of some colored terracotta i only have about five do i have any in here at all Nope, I've got none. So that leaves me with only one option. 
to head all the way to the fortress farm and then go through this portal, which takes me straight to a lush cave. And I would say that lush caves are the place for getting all the terracotta, but it would seem that I've already mined most of it up. Not to worry though, there's still quite a bit to be found over here. And I seem to have found an extra area of this cave as well, which has even more clay. I think the nearly six stacks that I've got should be enough. And I'm pretty sure if I dig in this direction, I should get back to the main cave. Hey, look at that. We found some more clay. And it's led to water. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the time there is water above the clay. Oh my goodness, there's a creeper in here as well. <laughs> I think he blew up. So another one, what is going on? Yeah, things really are getting a bit crazy. I should just turn my mob switch back on. Here is my portal. And here are the furnaces ready to be filled with clay. Now let's make some cyan dye and then we can make loads of... Of cyan terracotta and there's a bunch of other gray and black blocks that i'm going to need for this build and since i am now going to be needing quite a bit of concrete that means that in order to craft it i will need gravel which we have enough of but also sand which we, we don't have enough of let's grab a bunch of shulker boxes as well as some tnt and head to the desert to collect lots of sand pretty much just going to be continuing my massive destruction of the area by placing down lots of tnt in a row i've nearly got two shulker boxes worth of sand which in my opinion should be more than enough that should be all the gray concrete powder i need i believe i've already got white concrete right here and i will need some black concrete and also some black concrete powder and now with that i've got everything that i need so let's go ahead and get on with the building it's going to be on this mountain over here and before i start the sun is going down so i think i might make a really quick trip to spawn and get this mob switch turned back on I'm sick of having to deal with mobs all the time now sat on this mountain right here i want to have a giant SB737 statue let me take my helmet off here you can see what i look like properly yeah this is this is what it's going to be looking like and I'm going to try and get it here to sit on this mountain. Should have more than enough items to do this. But it'll be very interesting to see how it looks at the end. It's really hard to differentiate all the different items in your inventory. But when you actually place them down, you can see there is a big difference. And right here, I'm just creating the actual feet. You know, we're going to start at the bottom... Work our way up. Absolutely anything could happen with this one. But the good news is that it is kind of a mirror on each leg. So I can kind of use the other one to help. This is what I've got so far with the bottom of the legs. And if I take off my armor, I can't really show you very well, but... You can see, yeah, we're, we've got something like that. And then I'm going to try and add a bit of a bend in the knees now as we get a bit higher up. So I think I've sort of managed to do the top of the legs. What, what do we reckon? Yeah, it's, it, they look like knees to me if I've ever seen knees before. And I'm going to be trying to use the mountain to hide my terrible sculpting skills. Let's also change this stone to be dirt. I think it'll look a bit better. Oh, that, that's not what I wanted. I'll just nick a piece of dirt from here and... Uh, Stick it in the wall. And now I can begin building the torso. Better make sure I get that six pack in there. <laughs> no, not really. I've got a massive onesie on, so you'd never see the six pack that hides beneath it. And Operation Do My Torso is now complete. Yeah, do you know what? It's starting to take shape. Although I think I should work on some arms. <laughs> it looks a little bit strange at the moment. And I'm sure they won't be too difficult to do. And that is shoulder number one complete. Let's look at it from a distance. You know what? I'll take it. It's... <laughs> you can't really see it for the beacons. But yeah, I think it looks like a good looking arm. You know, like I say, the rest is still to come. It's not going to be the world's best building. Or should I say, it's not going to be the world's best build. But I'm going to do my best. And that is arm number two complete. Yeah, it's, it's definitely starting to take shape. Like, it's not a very 3D build. But Minecraft skins aren't aren't very 3D anyway, are they? Yeah, they're quite blocky. So you, you've got to expect this build to be a little bit blocky. I'm sure once I get my head added, it's going to look amazing i've got to use string there to hold up the concrete powder let's do the exact same thing on this side and add white concrete in the middle let's get the beak on the front oh, okay. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty crooked beak if you ask me i'd like to think mine is a, a little straighter than that let's move that down to where it should be and fill all of that in along actually is that right i think this end one actually needs to be black concrete powder same on this side there we go. If, if I'm unsure, I just, just got to look at my face. And then I can go around the entire outside of this with grey wool, which is going to kind of create the hoodie. You can't really see it with my helmet, but yeah, I've got a hoodie on. So let's bring that round like so. And now comes the fun part of adding my sunglasses. If I kind of go like that, do the same thing on this side. What do you reckon? How's it looking? I think they're looking good. We go like that. Should we get a little look at them? Oh yes, it's really coming together. Let's continue adding things on to the face. The top of the head is now complete. So yeah, it's, it's definitely looking good. I've just got to do the hood a little bit higher. And there we have it. The build is now complete. Although when I compare it to the top of my head and look at this one, I don't know, I almost feel like it looks a little bit flat. I think I'm just going to bring this front bit up one more layer. Something like this with wool all the way around the outside, but not like, you know what I mean? Kind of like gradually built up a little bit. So it's a little bit curved. And I reckon with that, we are definitely done. Yeah, I think, I think that looks better. Look at him. He's, he's sat on the mountain. Is the, uh, the big, the big penguin man himself sat on the mountain looking over the world. I'm actually really pleased with that. I think it, I think it looks good. I think I've, I think I've outdone myself there. But I'm not done just yet. Oh, no, no, no. You see, peasants would sit on a normal mountain, but I am no peasant. 
player like me deserves to sit on only the very best of the mountains. So I will be sat on a mountain made of solid gold. Yeah, this might take some time and it's going to use up quite a lot of gold, but when it's complete, it will without a doubt be worth it. Well, although it is still early days, it is starting to come together. I will also need to add snow on top of all the gold as well, unless Unless the sky could do me a favour for once and, and snow when I actually want it to. But yeah, with snow on top, it does help it to look a little bit more natural. I've done a decent size area and I've still got loads of gold left, so I'm confident I can get this done. And after lots and lots of placing, I have now run out of blocks and perfect timing. I was about to say I'm going to have to cover it in snow, but... Well, the snow has come to do the job for me. Kind of difficult to see it properly through the snow, but you can see, like, most of the mountain is now covered in gold. I mean, it would be cool if I could do all of that mountain and all of it behind and stuff, but... <laughs> that would take a lot of gold. And whilst I have got the farm for it, whether or not I have enough gold for that remains to be seen. So whilst it's snowing, I'm going to leave it to do that. And I'm going to grab a load of string from down here. Because whilst I do want all of the gold blocks to be covered in snow, I don't want my penguin to be covered in snow. No, he should not have snow on him at all. You know, my original plan for this was to actually build the statue out of gold. But after testing it out, it looked absolutely terrible which is why I've decided to do it in my own original colours. But if anybody is a really, really good builder and can make a gold one, feel free to tweet me a picture or something like that. And I believe that is all of the snow now dealt with. Oh, not quite. <laughs> it's going on my sunglasses. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like... I don't know. It looks like I've got grey hair or something. The term white eyebrows springs to mind. Yeah, we're not going with that. Let's put those... So we need it on, yeah, basically all of the sunglasses. And now I think it's definitely uh, completely snowproofed. I'm also going to add snow to all these areas that are underneath the penguin since they can't get snow on them. That includes this big area underneath the arm. And since the snow has done most of the work for me, I'm just going to do a few extra bits here and there. And all of the gold should more or less now be covered. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. I would like to add a few more gold blocks here and there. But to do that, I need more gold. Which means another trip to the gold farm is going to be necessary. Probably shouldn't have given so much of my gold to you guys. I could have used that to make a lot more blocks, but anyway. Have we got any nuggets here? We've got, oh, you know, we've got loads here already. That's fantastic. Loads of gold ready and waiting here for me, and I didn't even have to AFK for it. I think I'm now going to take all these nuggets and leave. I don't want to run out of time. We, we all know what happens when I go over time in this series. So for once, I'm, I'm actually going to try and finish on the day I'm supposed to. Let's use these 81 gold blocks that I've got to change a bit more of this mountain. And I have run out of gold blocks. That's as good as the gold mountain is going to get in this episode, but... Yeah, it does look pretty good. And oh, the sun is setting. I'd, I'd better get a move on. I just want to place down snow on top of all the gold blocks that I've placed. And there we go. That has been done successfully. And Penguin Mountain, which I am, I am sitting on, has now been completed. And I have to say, I really, really like it. Yeah, I think it looks good. What do I need to do first? I need Notch Apple number 35 <laughs> for this wall. And you know what? I fancy mixing things up and activating the Nether Mob switch so that I can hunt for Bastions using the Entity Counter. I've also decided that I need to get to new chunks and it's going to be easier to do that by just going above the nether. And I'm about 7,000 blocks away from spawn. That, that should be far enough. But how will I get down from here? If I'd have been smarter, I'd have brought the items needed to break bedrock. But instead, I'm going to go through a portal, grab some clay from this lush cave because it could be useful. I reckon I've probably managed to get enough clay. Now to get out of this cave, fly a few hundred blocks in this direction, check out the jungle pyramid on the way, which doesn't really have anything that I want, and then build another portal. And there we go. I'm not on the roof anymore. Not found a bastion yet, but I have found a ruined portal with nothing in it. And bastion number one has been tracked down. And even even better, it is a treasure one. I've just got to make sure I don't, <laughs> I don't die. Let's play for you guys. And in this, oh my goodness, the first one. Okay, I've just got to get to save. What are the chances of that? Might as well take the diamonds as well. You know what? Do I take the diamonds? I, I think clay's worth more. I, it's not worth dying in there. In the last two episodes, my Notch Apple look has been so, so strong. I think it's a one in eight treasure bastion. So yeah, that was that was pretty good. But because that was so quick, I think it's got to be worth it that I search for even more. This is a pretty big ruin portal. No Notch Apple, but you just never know. Okay, another bastion has been... Okay, well, I was going to say it's going to be loaded in. I found it. Just basically spend the whole time flying around looking at the E-counter. So the safest place with these is above the lava, because these guys, they're just useless. You see, you get rid of that spawner, that's that's out of the way. Spleef any brutes. And I think I can even reach the chest. I can, okay, no Notch Apple this time. And sometimes you do get two chests, but in the last two, we've had, we've had only one. So let's dig out and carry on searching. Looks like there's another bastion somewhere up ahead. And here it is. And it's another treasure one. Oh my goodness, I keep finding them. Okay, and I went straight into a brute. I should be a little bit more careful. Now, what has this chest got to offer? I tell you what, a bit of ancient debris is useful. I'm going to stick that obsidian in there and then grab the netherite ingots and get out of here. Now, this bastion is one that will not have a notch up in, so I'm not even looking. Instead, I'll just keep exploring. And here's another useless stables bastion. After finding all the treasure ones, I can't seem to find any more now. Finally, I have found another one. Let's swoop on down, spleef the brutes. And there's two chests here, okay? Anything, nothing that I really want except the netherite stuff.
Okay, yeah, that was a little bit of a stupid situation. <gasps> Come on, SP, don't die here now. No, no, not after all these world these days. You can't let it slip in a bastion. You know what I should do? I should put some clay in here and then carry some actual blocks in my inventory because that was way, way too close for comfort. Maybe someone would be put off by that, but uh, not me. I'm going to keep searching. Yet another treasure bastion. I'm just going to go in gung-ho as usual. Anything in the chest? Not what I want. And I'll be a little bit more careful about leaving by actually placing some blocks behind me. And since my elytra are nearly broken, I'm going to put all the clay in this shulker box, grab this pickaxe, and gather up a bunch of quartz. And already, they are nearly completely mended. Such a renewable system. Nothing useful in this bastion, or this one, or this one either. Maybe this one will have a, a bit more success. It will. Okay, perfect. That is uh, that is fantastic. We've got another one, and I have had enough. Oh my god! Don't die now. Oh my god! No, no, no! Come on, SP. Just hold it together. Okay, just just keep moving. There's a magma cube after you as well. I could eat the notch apple to be safe, but you know what? <laughs> I ain't wasting that. Let's just build up here, block myself in, and get another totem. And I could fly all the way home, but I just think it's going to be easier to build a portal, come out into the most beautiful cave I have ever seen, with diamonds waiting on the ground, and I'll grab a few of these spore blossoms whilst I'm here. Then I can grab some Eyes of Ender, track down the stronghold. Turns out strongholds stop generating after 24,000 blocks, and I'm 100,000 blocks away. So travelling through the nether is actually the best option. And I'm going above the bedrock roof to do it. And here we are, home sweet home. Let's grab two item frames and add two more notch apples to the walls. And now I would like to show you something in my bedroom. Look what I've added. I have added a penguin plushie. I can even twirl them around if I want to. And if you'd like to own one of these little fellas for yourself, like I have right here, he lives on my desk, just go to sb737.store. And for this weekend only, there is a 10% sale on all plushies. The link is down below in the description. Also, you're gonna have to get off my shoulder, mate. I'm, I'm trying to play Minecraft. And I was thinking for the next project, I have the Sonic statue, and I really, really like him. So now I think it's time to build a tail statue right here. Anything could happen with this, but I'm gonna do my best. I don't want to be too overconfident here, but I think maybe, just maybe, I I've outdone myself. Just gotta somehow create the tails and then I can reveal it. And I think that should be the tails done. And guys, <laughs> please don't laugh. But there he is. You know what? I think he looks kind of cute. I, I think he looks very, very good indeed with Mr. Sonic. Tails is smaller than Sonic in the games, which is why I've tried to make him a bit smaller here. And you know what? I, I like it. I'm just gonna do one final thing, and that is to grab some string and cover his head so that he doesn't get snow on it. And there we go. Those of you who've been asking for a tail statue as well, I've now got your wish. Next thing for me to do is head through this portal and take a trip to the old gold XP farm. That way I can mend my elytra. Now to sort something that I've been meaning to for quite some time. It's going to require a bunch of renamed blocks and a trip to the raid farm. From there I need to grab one of each item and then load up these hoppers right here. What I'm creating is the shulker box sorter. So instead of every single shulker box going into this one chest, they will now sort themselves into the correct ones. And I will test it later to see if it works. And for my next project, I'm going to expand Expand this tunnel all the way to the EUL farm. Look at that, I found some ancient debris. And now that the tunnel is done, I can decorate it. And that is everything placed down. The only one thing I do still need to do is grab these torches, craft loads of lanterns, and also some chains. Now to place them all down and add the lanterns below. I've also integrated this portal into the wall. And if I go through it, you'll see that it leads to this one on the desert. Much better than it was before. Anyway, let's get to placing these last lanterns down. And it is now complete. I can fly all the way through it. No problem at all. It's very, very spacious. And in my opinion, it looks very, very epic. And the four directions will go to different areas, but <laughs> that's for another day. Instead, I'm going to grab some sand, gunpowder, and craft some TNT. Now I can take this TNT, fly through this fancy new tunnel, which has taken me to the desert, and then I can continue utterly destroying the landscape. Here goes explosion chain number one, and all of this sand has filled up nearly two shulker boxes. With that, I can craft loads of TNT, because I want to get another ten blocks of netherite to get a step closer to the netherite beacon. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to dig a massive long tunnel, grab 
grab more sand so I can craft loads more TNT and then place it all down. To get 10 blocks of netherite, I need about 5,000 TNT, so I'd, I'd better get to work. I've dug a massive tunnel, laced these walls with TNT, and now it's time to blow it all up so that lots of ancient debris can be collected. Just from doing the tunneling, I already had 42 pieces. And to get the 10 netherite blocks, I'm only going to need six stacks in total. And already the first stack has been obtained. And there's still plenty more to be found. And that is 100 pieces now obtained. And there's plenty more still to go. And that is two stacks obtained. And now I've got three stacks. And I'm only halfway through all of the tunnel. And with this, I've now got four stacks. So there's just two to go. And now that's five stacks down, one to go. And that is six stacks obtained, which is going to be 10 netherite blocks. It looks very nice indeed, but... Uh, we're not stopping there. I've still got about 400 blocks left of this tunnel. And the end of the tunnel has now been reached. I have so, so much ancient debris. And another one. <laughs> I just found another one as I'm leaving. I, I just can't do any wrong. There's two of them here. No, make that three. Sometimes when it's going for you, <laughs> it's just going for you. All of these can go in here. And I'm also going to need quite a lot of gold. What I've got in my inventory should be enough. I did also break my silk touch pickaxe before whilst mining the tunnels. So let's grab the necessary things to make a new one. That's all the books. Let's craft the pickaxe, use the anvil, and use a precious ingot to upgrade it. And whilst I've been doing that, my ancient debris has nearly fully smelted. I also should have been using the XP to mend my pickaxe, so that's, that's a little bit of a waste. Now the grand reveal. How many ingots do we get okay look at that how many stacks okay we got we got six we got over 100 ingots and we got 11 blocks of netherite that's one more than i was intending to get which doesn't sound like much but that's an extra 36 ancient debris worth so it is quite a lot now for the satisfaction to place it all down it's not actually that satisfying at all but uh, we have almost done the bottom layer. 16 blocks to go. I might be able to do that in the next episode. Even though it would take a lot of TNT. I also think I'd like to add a little bit more gold to this golden mountain, you know, because it's, it's not quite finished. But to get the blocks for that, I'm going to need to go to the gold farm. I'll be glad when I've mined a tunnel straight there. But for now, I'm going to have to manually fly through all these nooks and crevices. Here it is. Now to AFK here and watch the magic happen. I got loads and loads of nuggets from that, which is going to get me loads and loads of blocks. And if you ask me, four and a half stacks of gold blocks is pretty good. And because I'm feeling kind, I'm going to send some gold <laughs> down to those piglins. Don't spend it all at once, fellas. And with these gold blocks, I can add a bit more to the mountain. And that is quite a bit more of the mountain done, really. I've more or less done all of this side. Just don't look at it from the back. <laughs> it exploits everything. And so in this video, I do want to build a super duper new and improved super smelter. But the first thing I have to do before that is to sort out my fuel situation. I could use lava. I could use coal. I mean, I've already got loads of coal anyway. But I think the best thing that I could use is blaze rods. And I do have a blaze farm, but it's just based off one spawner. It's way, way, way too slow. I mean, just look at it. I'm getting like one mob every 10 seconds or so. It's just, it's no good. So I'm thinking instead I create something much much more powerful. Some sort of fortress farm in the nether perimeter, but the important thing is I need it to not interfere with the gold farms rates. So I've actually designed my own farm that I can switch on and off. I'm very much looking forward to building it, but because it is my own design, there's always a chance that it could go very, very wrong. So first things first, fortress mechanics. As you can see, there is a fortress right here, and it does go into the perimeter. I, I just destroyed it when I blew it up. And fortresses are made up of bounding boxes, and in certain areas of that bounding box, you can place any block and a mob will spawn on it, and in other areas, you can place nether brick and a mob will spawn on it. So even though the fortress didn't originally come over here, the massive bounding box around the entire structure did. And if I build over in this direction, these blocks that I've placed can now spawn fortress mobs. And so this is where I shall build the farm. Although all these bricks right here aren't necessary at the moment. Look at that, a blaze did spawn. Okay, I'm so glad to see you. You have no idea. It means my plan is actually working. Sorry guys, but all three of you are gonna have to go. And I'm instead gonna start placing pistons along here. And on this next layer is where the portal's gonna be. And it's gonna be the maximum height it can be. Now the next task is to light it, spawn proof it with glass, and then I can continue with the redstone. These observers along here are gonna detect if a mob spawns. That will then trigger the redstone from behind and extend the piston. As you can see, they uh, they will push them in when they spawn. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. For now, this portal doesn't need to be lit. It's just, it's just kind of annoying me. But I did say I wanted a way to turn this farm on and off so that if I want to use the gold farm, the fortress farm doesn't affect the rates. Doing that is going to be very, very simple. We're just going to use redstone lamps. You see, for mobs to spawn, they need light level 11 or less. And so when the lights are on, this farm can't spawn anything. Magma cubes can spawn in any light, but they need a three block high gap. So yeah, it, it, it's completely foolproof is my plan. And so all that leads me to do is just keep repeating this over and over again. And this farm is going to have multiple layers, so I can also layer it up like this and repeat everything above. Whilst of course remembering to spawn proof the stuff below. Whilst fortress mobs can't spawn on these blocks, I think general 
mobs that can spawn this biome can. So I can't forget about anything. It is coming along nicely. I've linked the redstone up using glass like that. But I'm now out of redstone lamps. So because of that, I'm going to head back home, buy a load more redstone, and then I can craft plenty more. I'm also spending a bit of time mining up some glowstone, which is more interesting than just AFK and get a raid farm. Now with all that extra glowstone, I can make way more lamps. I don't know if it'll be enough lamps for the entire build, but it'll get me well on the way. Layer 2 is complete. Let's get on with the next one. I'm just going to test out all the redstone connected to the lights to see if it's working. Looks like the signal does kind of run out when it gets higher up. I've added in some torches like this, which I think have extended it. And if I turn it back off, it's all working as intended. Just wind the redstone up for the lights on this side. And that is everything now wired up. And now I can start building another of these towers. And I am now starting to run out of resources for this, such as observers, which I have now run out of. So you can see how it is looking so far. Pretty good. And now I'm going to fly back home to get all of the other needed resources. And that will also include spending a bit of time AFK at the raid farm. I spent a bit of time getting loads and loads of resources, and this is absolutely everything that I'm gonna need to finish the build. This farm is actually a much bigger project than I first expected. It requires a lot of resources, and the width of it is gonna be all the way to the edge of this second chunk. It's just high enough so it doesn't interfere with the farm below. Because I'll be AFKing up above the bedrock, this farm won't be working while I'm up there, since it'll be too far out of range. Even though this portal is right on the edge of the chunk, it will still just about be in range. And so this will be the farm's full length, but I'm also going to recreate this... <laughs> well, blazes are spawning. Along in this direction as well, which means this pillar right here is going to have to go. I also maybe shouldn't have built so many spawn platforms. I'm, I'm going to get bored with blazes, aren't I? In fact, just to stop this mob spawning, I am going to place a bunch of lamps and light them up. And that should be enough. And rather than building all of that floor, I'm just going to work on building up these platforms more. Now I can continue getting rid of this pillar and continue building up the farm. It is pretty straightforward. The only bit that's a little bit annoying is building up the redstone on the side. But because I've already got it in the middle here, I don't actually need it on that bit. I can just place the lamps across the top and hook it up to the redstone that's already there. Unfortunately, on this side, I don't really have have that luxury but I can still do something like well not like that but rather like this and then I can continue building up and that is yet another layer complete just one more right here to go and that is all of the layers on this portal done so now it's time to rinse repeat and just keep going It's been an absolute grind, but I've still not finished it. As you can see, it is absolutely massive and it is not far off being done, but I've completely run out of glass. So because of that, I'm going to fly all the way back home, grab some gunpowder, and also trade for more redstone whilst I'm in the area. Next, I'm going to head back to the nether, fly down this very long tunnel, and go through this portal that takes me to the desert. And now I can mine up a bit of sand, craft some TNT, place it all down, and blow up the area. But not this rabbit. Run, little rabbit, run! <laughs> and now that I've got a shulker box worth of sand, I can set it all off smelting, buy even more redstone, and then I can go back to collecting even more sand. All of this is going to be enough, and I am just going to put it in store for now since there's already more than enough glass that has been smelted so i've topped up on plenty of items which means it's time to get back to work and that is yet another column complete just one more to go once i activate this farm it is going to run pretty fast but if i wanted to run it even faster i can build more portals on top of these ones and repeat everything and make it go even higher this is roughly another 16 blocks until i'm out of the fortress's bounding box i will of course be testing the farm out before i even think about expanding it but it's just good to know these things for future reference there we go we are now now on to the final layer. This has been a pretty massive project, but I'm very glad that this part of it is at least almost finished. I was so, so close to finishing, but I, I need like six more redstone lamps. My goodness, if only I was in a place where I could get glowstone. Oh wait, I'm in the nether. You can get glowstone anywhere. So let's get mining. I only got six pieces. It is the bare minimum of what I got. I couldn't be bothered to, to mine anymore. I'm just excited to finish this phase of the farm. It has taken hours and hours to build. I completely underestimated how long it would take to make it. I wasn't going to try and do a slice portal design, but it was too complicated getting a nether, a nether brick underneath the slice portals instead of obsidian. I was like, oh, it'd just be faster to do this design instead. I'm yeah, I was, <laughs> I was very much mistaken. Not to worry though, I can just now light up all of these portals and then I can begin the next phase of the farm. First involves getting rid of this portal and then flying about 100 blocks in this direction. I'm at a pretty precise location and right here I want to build up about 75 blocks. This right here is the very precise location that I will be building the portal and there's going to be another portal directly on top of it. Let's light them both up and also place glass behind this one and build a little bit of a platform. Now when mobs come through this portal, obviously they're going to kind of be just standing chilling and once enough have come through they're all going to start to push each other along and that's the mechanic i'm going to use 
to get him up to that portal. I'm gonna now bring it around like this, and now I need the stairs. Yes, to get upwards to this portal, the mobs are gonna push each other up these stairs. And you gotta remember, once a mob has gone through a portal, actually, I've done this right. I was really in full flow there, wasn't I? But I think it's gonna be a good idea to extend this by one, and then move. Yeah, just move the stairs like that. And as I was explaining earlier, before I started to doubt myself, once a mob has come through a portal, so once they've come through this portal, they can't go through another portal for 30 seconds. So that's why they're slowly being pushed along. It's gonna take, it's gonna take like one to two minutes. So by the time they eventually do get up to this portal, they'll be able to head back through. All of that should now be perfect. I'm just kind of conserving the glass that I can keep. Let's place a few more right here and head back through. Now I seem to be trapped in my own device. So mining out is my only option. And now I need to go above the bedrock to build the other portal. It's day three, four, five, six. We haven't had one of those since two, three, four, five. Anyway, let's just build the portal that the mobs are going to return through. And because we're all the way up here, the gold farm is now no longer working, which is how I will successfully split the two farms. And just to finish the chamber underneath that, I am going to head back home because I'm going to need some chests and hoppers. And you know what? Whilst I'm here, let's also go ahead and grab four slabs and a few trap doors will be useful as well. I'm just going to bring the lot. I think you only need two, but <laughs> you can never have too many, I always say. You know, getting rid of this big tower seemed like a good idea at the time, but now it makes it really hard for me to spot where the bedrock hole is. So put Putting some sort of tower back in is, is probably a good idea. I'd also like to spawn proof the top of this, land on this single piece of glass, build this a little bit more, and then the chest can go like this with hoppers into that, slabs on top of the hoppers, and if I block that up and put a couple of trap doors, that will make me completely safe from any of the blaze and stuff like that. And then I'm also going to put another chest underneath and then hoppers into that just as a little extra storage. And I think it's ready to test. I, I don't know what else could be done. But to make the farm work, I need to flick this lever, which is in a, a very, very awkward place. I will move it when it uh, <laughs> when it needs to be. But you know what? Do we, do we just extend this platform a little bit? Hopefully that should make life a little bit easier. So if I do that, the farm should now be working. I can get up here easily because I can see the glass. So now whenever a mob spawns, the piston will push it straight into the portal. And in about one to two minutes, it should come through here. So as I'm waiting here and the mobs are going through the portals, I'll show you in replay mode what's happening on the other side. The mobs are spawning in this portal and eventually they all pop out. And as more and more mobs come through the portal, they're slowly going to push each other along. And eventually they will all go up the stairs and start going through the portal. And that's where I can take them out on the other side. Side. And you can just see from the speed of it, look like mobs are constantly coming through. Like, I'm never running out. It, it's probably a good XP farm if I just sped it up a little bit more as well. And I've only been sat here for about a minute taking out these mobs. I kind of want to see just how much stuff we have already got. Look at that. Nearly a st over, in fact, over a stack of blaze rods. Obviously, I'm going to be getting gold swords and, and stuff like that. I will make a proper sorter to deal with all the items. But I've, well, I've been I'm looking in those chests. Loads and loads more mobs have spawned, which has led to me getting a second stack of blaze rods nearly already. So my plan is to just AFK here for, you know, I, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe a bit longer. I just get millions and millions of blaze rods. This may be one of the most favorite farms that I have ever made. Quite some time has passed, and as you can see, I am now completely overrun with items. I'm pretty sure that's because of what, yeah, all these gold swords are kind of blocking things up a bit. But on the positive side, look at all the blaze rods I have got. I, I could make it so the pigmen don't come through here, but I feel like it's worth keeping them, since it is just literally extra free gold. I, I might work out some sort of uh, design with it, but anyway. That is, yeah, that is what we have got. And when I want to go ahead and turn off this farm, I just fly onto this platform, flick this lever, and that will mean that every single redstone lamp will turn on, and now nothing can spawn there. I'm very, very happy with that design indeed. And so now we will have all the fuel we need for a brand new super smelter. That's right, Cole, soon you're gonna be old news. Let's fill some shulker boxes, and then they can be put in the blaze rod chest. And now I need to start thinking about a place for the new super smelter to go because I, I don't want it to go in my house. Instead, I want to build somewhere really, really hot for the super smelter to go because, you know, it's a, it's a hot place is a, a smelter. So I'm thinking a volcano in my world could be perfect. And you know what? I reckon right here could be the place for it. It's quite a big area. It's not too far away from my house. If I get rid of a couple of these trees, it'll free up a little bit more space. I've also got to make sure that I don't go too far across and then <laughs> take over the ice farm. We need to leave that. And the area is also going to need to be flattened off a little bit. And all of that should be enough mined out for now. I'll just get rid of this little platform here too. So Operation Flatten the Land is complete. I think the next task could be to go to sleep because those guys are 
absolutely doing me head in. And before I go to my bed, I'm going to chuck all these items into here. And this is a special moment. I can sleep right next to my plushie. I've never been able to do this before. Good night. Good night, SP. Mini SP. Now, in order to build that giant volcano that's going to be there, I should probably see if this village is okay with living right next to a volcano. Guys, I'm just to let you know, there is going to be a volcano right next to you very soon, okay? Do not be alarmed. But no, the actual problem that I need to sort out to build a volcano is I'm going to need so, so much basalt. So I think it's going to be a good idea to build something that I, I kind of forgot existed in Minecraft. And that is going to be a basalt generator. I don't know how I forgot about them, but I guess it's because I never thought I'd ever want a load of basalt. I suppose it's been building this entire massive tunnel that has probably been what's used up most of my basalt and most of my blackstone. I mean, it's very, very cool. And we're going to be building loads more of them, so... I have sorted out a way to get... How did you guys spawn? You're not meant to build spawn. Well, I guess they can, but anyway. As I was saying, I solved the blackstone issue by building a bartering farm, and I will solve this issue by building a basalt farm. Here's all of the items that I'm going to need, and this farm is one of the ones that's actually a lot faster if you build it in the nether rather than over here. What is the reason for that? Well, lava actually moves six times faster when it's in the nether compared to the overworld. You've probably seen that in action. If I place this down... Look at the speed that it moves. It's not that fast otherwise. And before I forget, I want to get a bit of polished blackstone. I'm going to need a button and I feel like polished blackstone looks nice. Next, we'll fly up here. I think above the bedrock will be the safest place for it. Such as right here next to the Hoglin farm. So for the storage system, we're going to go ahead and have loads and loads of hoppers like that. Now, I am going to need a few chests here as well because I'm going to have hopper minecarts and the chests will just align them. I need to place rails facing this way on each of these. I've realized that normal rails will just make it very, very hard work. So instead, it would be much better for me to head back home and use powered rails. Because with regular rails, if I go like this, can you see they all connect up like that? And yeah, that, that's not what I'm going for. But with powered rails, I can just do that and they'll be like that and I can get exactly what I want. Clearly, I've played way too much Minecraft to know all the little ins and outs and mechanics of rails. Although I pretty much learned all of that from the amount of update suppressors that I've built. So very simply, we can just do this and then place them like that. Break all of these. Did any of them go into the chest? Yeah, there we go. We've got a culprit there, but not anymore. And now for the next job, grab all of the minecart hoppers and start placing them along. And we've got to push them up. Okay, no, you, when you go up, you stay up. That's, that's the rule. And the reason for that is then they will kind of go into both chests. Like if I just chuck, let's put a block of quartz in, like both hoppers will be taking the items and it will do it faster than it normally would have done. And that's how the storage will keep up with the sheer speed of this basalt farm. Also, I think before when I tried to show you the, the double speed, it probably didn't work because I hadn't shown the, done that with the powered rails. I think now, is that faster? You know what? I, I can't even work it out at this point. So if I, if I, you know what? Just take my word for it, guys. <laughs> it works. Now, if we go ahead and put the soil above like that, then I've got pistons facing into it, which I can push down like that. Now, any items that go on top of here will be picked up. Now, to remove all these chests, place blocks above here and use these pistons to push them down. Thankfully, if I come around on this side, I do not need pistons to place these blocks. The blue ice above this is what's going to generate the basalt. Some nice glass walls and a roof will make it so we can see what's going on better. Now, for some of the most complicated redstone I've ever done, a button there, bit of redstone here, and then repeaters coming out like that. On both sides, we've got dispensers facing downwards with lava inside. Let's set a sign there so I don't get covered in lava. And finally, put a bit of glass along here for spawn proofing. Now, unfortunately, it, it's still not quite ready yet because, uh, well, it, it, it does work. As you can see, basalt is getting generated. But I can't mine it very fast at the moment. It's, it's very, very slow. So we're going to need something very, very useful. A, if I can find it, a beacon. And I also happen to have loads of blocks of iron, which is pretty useful. So let's just go and do that. Let's go ahead and... I'm trying to think, do I want an iron ingot? Let's use an iron ingot. And let's build a haste beacon right here. That is two layers successfully built. Two more to go. Now to chuck the beacon on top, we're going to go put an iron ingot in there. Put haste two. And once that activates, you can see it can actually go through bedrock. Can a bedrock, can a beacon beam? But we don't have bedrock to go through, so that's not a problem. Now we have haste two. If I turn on the farm, you will see... It, it works pretty fast, doesn't it, guys? I mean, this is a pretty good farm, you would have to say. The speed is beautiful. But why have why have I got the repeaters up there? What is this all about? Well, it's actually a really cool design by Eagle Eye, and it, it uses a really useful mechanic. So if I just go ahead and mine all of this, okay? If I press this button and start mining before uh, the lava comes down, you'll see what happens. Oh, I, I, okay. Pfft. Let me just get this ice in here. <laughs> Try that again. My goodness, I have I have one job and I messed it up. Yeah, if I press this button and start mining, the basalt actually generates faster. I don't know if you can actually tell the difference. I should do a side-by-side -side comparison, really, shouldn't I, to prove it to you. But trust me, guys, this is working faster than it would be if I wait. 
and then go like that. At least I'm pretty, yeah, it does generate faster, okay? I don't know if you can tell or not, but yeah, that's that's why we've got that uh, that mechanic like that. And look at all the basalt we're getting. As you can see, plenty of stacks already. I need 3,000, which isn't actually that much. I should have it done in like probably 10 minutes. So there's not much else I can do, but uh, sit here and wait. I'm hoping that's going to be enough because my pickaxe is pretty much broken nearly. So... Yeah, that's that's gonna that's loads. That's plenty. That should definitely do it. Very conveniently, I've got this black shulker box which had all the uh, the items for building this. I don't really need that anymore, so we can put them on there. That's one done, and I can head back down here, grab a couple more shulker boxes, trade for redstone with these guys, which will also repair my pickaxe. And now I can fill these boxes to my heart's content. And as it happened, I didn't really have enough room to carry all the basalt, so I've filled up this yellow shulker box. Let's add all these into here, empty this out. And whilst I'm collecting things up with shulker boxes, I'm going to fly through this empty bedrock void till I reach the fortress farm. And I can take all the blaze rods and put them into shulker boxes. And whilst I'm at it, I can be crafting gold ingots, which has given me quite a lot of ingots. Then if I swoop on down past the great fortress farm. I can throw all of the ingots out and send them to my piglin friends. Since my volcano is going to need loads and loads of blackstone and I I'm not entirely sure if I'll have enough. And whilst I'm studying, that farm will be working. I, I must have already taken the gold out on earlier dates. And whilst I'm here, these hoppers need to be swapped around with the chests to create something like this. It'll just make it block up a little bit less. Even more so now since I'm going to add even more chests and hoppers. Now then, how much blackstone have I actually got from these guys? I, I should... You know what? I've got a decent amount. 42 stacks in total will be needed for the volcano and i bet i'm not too far away from that yep i actually have way more than i need so that's another good step in the right direction and i'm also going to add slabs going all the way along here that way in the future i'll easily be able to find my way back home and also to the farm there's the great magma cube farm which i, <laughs> I never ever use yeah i've been building this and i've realized i'm I'm a little bit off track with my line here. But you know what? I'm only going to make this once, so I might as well do it right. There we go. This line is looking much, much better. I've got completely distracted from what I'm actually supposed to be doing. But let's get this black stone into shulker boxes. The correct coloured shulker boxes, I mean. And that's pretty much the two only main items that this... Oh my, I used the wrong shulker box. But anyway, it doesn't... <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's mainly the two items that I'm going to need for this farm. Basalt and Blackstone. And I just realised it's not a farm, it's just a volcano build. Although, the, is it the Super Smelt the kind of class of the farm? Probably not. I'm going to stop looking into technicalities and get the rest of the items that I need. It does actually involve five shulker boxes of lava buckets. Thankfully, I have got an incredibly fast way to get lava. If I just swim on down here and go through the hyperspeed tunnel, it will take me to the lava farm. And I could use it, but instead I, I might as well just take the lava from these shulker boxes like I Seem to be doing every time. And the only thing left that I need to... Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't bring that many lava buckets that I can't, can't bring back the shulker boxes. But yeah, the only thing left for me to get now is a bunch of glass. And thankfully, my old super smelter has been very busy with that. So getting the few stacks of glass that I need is, is not going to be a problem. And before I start building the base, I'm just going to get rid of a little bit more terrain. Kind of going to circle around the edge of roughly where it's going to go. So let's mine out everything in between. Because if I don't get rid of all this now, I'll only have to get rid of it later. And that's that all nicely sorted. I wouldn't mind just nipping down here and grabbing a shulker box or two. And just gather up all this extra dirt and grass, which does sometimes come in handy for terraforming. I might even end up needing to terraform that very volcano. I've also realised that grabbing four shulker boxes for those few measly items was a complete waste of time because, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't as much as I thought. I think a lot of it despawned and some of it, yeah, obviously, there just wasn't as much as I thought. But that's enough of that. Let's grab all of the items that we're going to need and start building a volcano. I'm trying to terraform this bottom layer to kind of be in line with the banking so that it's, you know, it's kind of seamless onto the terrain. And that's the kind of size of the bottom of the volcano that I've got so far. Nice and random, but also fits in well with the terrain. And the next layer is just going to be a continuation of this as I terraform it upwards. And that is two layers complete. It is now just starting to take a little bit of shape, but I may still make little adjustments here and there as I'm building it. And something tells me that building up this entire thing would make a pretty good time lapse. Okay. So that is the outside of the volcano complete. I have to say, it's <laughs> it's looking like a pretty good shape, but it's missing something very, very important to a volcano. Yes, lava. <laughs> it wouldn't be a proper volcano without some lava. So I'm going to quickly nip back home and grab some dirt, okay? Now, okay, let's just uh, <laughs> get a little bit more space in the inventory. If we go like that, I'll do the same 
with the black stone as well. And basically the idea of the dirt is gonna, it's just gonna be temporary blocks that I can place the lava on to make everything much, much easier. We're gonna put the snow in there. Now I can grab as much dirt as I need. And before the dirt gets placed, I am just gonna make a bit of a glass roof so that when you're stood inside the volcano, because you will be able to go inside this volcano, you will look up and see a load of lava above you. Which I suppose you'd expect to see, you know, <laughs> walking into a burning hot volcano. And that is the glass floor fully done. And now this is where I am gonna place a layer of dirt. There we go, that is complete. I bet, <laughs> I bet it doesn't look very good from down below. And then if I just get myself loads of lava buckets, we'll just chuck anything we don't need out. And then I'll mine my way into here and start placing lava down, which is, yeah, just going to cover all the glass. You are actually coming here, so it doesn't matter how the lava looks. As long as from the bottom, everything is fully covered. Now to try and get out of here without <laughs> jumping straight in the lava. There we go. We can block it back up and then begin placing lava like this. And as you can see, the lava is also... Gonna start going down there. Now, hang on a minute. Is it actually ready for lava down there? You know what? I better go and uh, build a barrier. I could build a barrier. You know what? I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna see how it looks. It, it could end up going into the river. It could do anything. Well, that's also what would happen with a real life volcano. So, you know, at least it's, it's realistic. And as I place the lava, I do also need to get rid of the dirt underneath. In fact, here we are with plan 2.0. We're gonna make a barrier so that it just makes life a little bit easier. I know exactly where I've placed the lava then as well. And there's no problems removing the dirt below there. Oh, and I've broken some glass. I just heard it break. Oh, no. <laughs> well, there was a problem. I've got some spare glass here. Let's let's try and place it down. I think that that should do it. Let's have a little... Okay, we'll see. Yep, the lava has been blocked up, so that's good news. I'll have to start being a little bit more careful. For something that very few people are going to see, because it's, it's literally at the top of the volcano, I sure am putting a lot of effort into it. I also like the way I've got to get my dirt back. Look at that. Living on the edge of, uh, of danger. Just, just to get out of the lava. Not many layers left to go now, but I have almost run out of lava. Good thing I know a place where I can get plenty more. And now I am officially all out of lava. No, I'm not officially all out of lava. One bucket left. Now I'm out of lava. All of these buckets can go into storage. And it's time to make another trip to the Guardian Farm. Even if the Guardian Farm is currently quite useless, the lava farm is very nice indeed. The machine has finished running. Let's put the buckets back in it. Well, the buckets don't look uh, supplies. Look like they could be better, don't they? Anyway, we've got plenty of lava, which is the important thing. Let's just gather up the glass. And I'm going to fill all five of these shulker boxes, I think, which is hopefully going to be more than enough. I say it's hopefully going to be more than enough. I think it's definitely going to be more than enough. I think you only need, like, one shulker box's worth. And you know what? I'll take a full inventory of lava buckets with me as well. <laughs> We're leaving nothing to chance. So with a full inventory, let's go back into this. Now, it's weird as this, because ever since 1.18 came out, it ruined my hyperspeed tunnels, because I think I actually travel faster than the chunks can load. So sometimes... I just get stopped. See, look at that. I get stopped and then, and then my dolphin's grip. Well, thankfully with this one, it didn't run out, but going to spawn, it's really, really bad. And unfortunately, nothing seems to fix it. Ah, well, not to worry. Let's just focus on the task in hand and get more lava down. That is the risk of <laughs> trying to do the lava strat. Sometimes you do get burnt. At least I've recovered from that. Let's get back to placing lava. And with that, we are on to the final layer, which means things are going to be a little bit more tricky because I'm Kind of stranded here now. We're going to have to do a little head hit. Okay, well, didn't make the head here. Also, we do have this one to make as well. Let's just fill that in. All of it is successfully down. So now we need to extend it up a layer. And that is going to make some lava flow down backwards off here as well. I might, before I do that, just fly down here. Because I do want to sort of terraform this into the mountain. So something like that should be good. Because lava is going to be coming over here. So let's fill in this gap. Seems to go all the way around. I don't know if it should be stone. Maybe, I don't know. But once there's lava over it, there'll be snow around it. It'll be fine. And from there, we can fly all the way back up to the top. And because I do a lot of flying in my world, that's why I want the top to look good. Because I'll probably end up being able to see it. And I'm just going to add some lava around these edges to add a little bit of, I don't know, could you say 3D-ness to it? I don't know. It's just going it, to... I'm just going to add it around the edge. <laughs> and the snow is now coming again. I don't mind this time because it was kind of getting in the way before, but since I'm nearly finished, I'm in a, a red hot volcano. I don't mind there being snow. I think it will look good. I, I was toying with the idea, you know, do I cover it, the whole thing in string? I think just leaving it to naturally let the snow cover it will make it fit in better to the area. Also, this is not how I had in mind to be placing down some of the lava. Yeah, sometimes you've got to get into the lava to place the lava. You know, it's times like this that I sometimes think a fire resistance may be useful. But look at that. I can hear the lava flowing down. It is it is on its way. And I'm just going to carry on filling in things around these edges. And sometimes you're just in a situation where you think, I've, I've got no choice. But just to get a little bit, get, get my hands dirty, as it were, and uh, just jump in the lava. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly easier when I'm in the lab. Oh, I'm going all the way down now. Um, but I just kind of want to keep going around like that. Filling it in. Yeah, what's the worst that can happen? Okay, I need a little bit more lava. This shulker box has a couple in, but probably not enough. And this shulker box definitely has enough. So everything on this side is done. If I just go and put my elytra on, 
I can fly to the other side. There's a bit of bit of safe area for now. But that too is now going to be covered in lava. And with that, I think that should do it. You know, it's a little bit extra flowing downwards. I think the snow is doing a fantastic job at bringing it to life. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my volcano. I think it looks good. I, I really like the look of that. Oh, yes. The snow is perfect as well. It's really just made it look like it's part of the terrain. Because even though you think of volcanoes as being very hot, you do get them in snowy places, you know, in real life. So it makes sense to be one in Minecraft. And the next issue for me to solve is how am I going to get into the volcano? Where do I want the entrance? I kind of want it right where the lava is, which as you can imagine, might be a slight problem. I reckon my best option is to grab some black stained glass. I just heard the goat scream at here, and for a second I thought it was somebody screaming outside. <laughs> yeah, maybe having a screaming goat in your house is, is not the wisest idea. It's 11 p.m. right now for me, and I was just thinking, who on earth is screaming at this time? And I, well, it was a goat, actually, so never mind. Glass is going to be quite a big feature of this build, but not the normal glass. If I can grab a bit of black dye. I'm not going to need a huge amount of black stained glass, so let's not go crazy, but let's let's just go. So if we got ourselves nearly three stacks, no, two stacks, that's, two stacks, that's enough, yeah. So indecisive on <laughs> how much to get me. I mainly need red stained glass, that's what I'm going to need loads and loads of let's go back and actually grab more out of this chest as well i'll just grab you know let's grab two more stacks and that should keep me going for now maybe a little bit more that definitely should do me and and for the first time ever <laughs> all this netherrack that i have uh, collected over the uh, over the, i suppose the last year is actually going to be useful i'm going to be able to use it for something i'm happy about that have i got loads of magma that is the other question i have a magma th you know what a stack should be okay and the final thing i will want is some blackstone stairs and i think my best option is to use a stone cutter. I'll go with two stacks for now. That should be good. Because a stone cutter actually gets you more than a crafting table would with stairs. And I'm all about that efficiency life. So with all that done, let's build an entrance. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this. All I know is it's going to be too high. And I, I need to start getting in there and <laughs> blocking up some lava without getting burnt if I can help it. The idea of the entranceway is that it just needs to be central. Nothing else really matters to me. I just, I don't want it to look stupid. You know what? I, I think that works. I think that's central enough. It's kind of hard to see because it's only glass. Let's go and add some walls to the sides. And once I've built this wall here, I think the lava should no longer snake round. Now to try and do the same thing on this side. Now then, have we got a bit of a have we got a leakage problem? No, we're good. Look at that. It's working. Against all the odds, I've, I've successfully done it. I didn't successfully do it without getting burned, but hey-ho, you can't have everything. Now let's open this very, very dark place up. Look at that. It looks really eerie up there, doesn't it? I like it. This might be shaping up to be one of my favourite builds. Also, I've got to be a little bit careful here. Let's, let's put some glass... Yep, that worked. I was going to say, let's block it up with glass. Yep. You know what? I think I'm going to move this pillar backwards on second thoughts. Let's do... Does that work? And then, and then that could pillar down... Like so, couldn't it? And then underneath the glass, I'm going to go with some blackstone. That bit can go as well. Let's just place all this. Is, is this working? I, hold on a second. I'm not too sure now. That is starting to come around. I don't like that. So I'm going to just make this one block longer. Now for more blackstone underneath there. And I'm also going to remove this wall <laughs> very carefully without letting any lava come through. In fact, we can just go... Look at that speed. On well, second thoughts, if I remove that, some lava's surely going to flow through there. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I will have this like that. Let's move this side back one as well. I'll terraform it a bit more just so it, it looks more natural. Bit of black stone in the wall just to vary it. This is very quickly becoming an absolute masterpiece. And now for my entranceway, that's, <laughs> that's where I'm going to need loads and loads of lava all over again. Probably even more than I needed up there. Crazy thing that there was just one flat ground along here. And now it's a massive volcano. This is going to be the kind of shape that the lava is going to go in. I mean, this, this above here is also going to be going. And that is all of the dirt, grass and stone removed. Although I do just want to kind of extend everything out by one more. Okay, now I'm definitely happy with it. I, I'm not changing anything else. Around the edge there is going to be stairs, so I'm just going to kind of mine this layer above. Very annoying when I get to the stone because I'm, I'm too far away from any haste beacon. But not to worry, I'll, I'll just have to be patient. Now my inventory is a bit clogged. I think all of the stuff on the floor here, well it's despawning right before your very eyes, but it, it is just going to get burnt with lava. Let's drop off a few items into here. And all this spare stuff I'll just put in the shulker box for now, so I can get to the fun task of placing all the lava. As we all know, there's never an easy way to do this but I, to be honest, it would probably make sense if I start at this far end so that I'll be able to get out of the volcano and actually get to my shulker boxes. Otherwise, I'm going to be trapped. So, yeah, we're just going to have lava like this. Yeah, I'm just going to accept that I'm, I'm going to get burnt a bit. But hey, I didn't get this super amazing armor not to use it. So let's let's get in the lava and uh, 
once again get our hands dirty. Or should I say, get my feet burnt. It's also nice to be inside for a change and not have phantoms swooping on me. There were so many of them when I was actually building the outside. Another layer is done and I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that this is a little bit painful in more ways than one. And that is me already fresh out of lava. That happened a lot quicker than I expected it to. So it looks like it's time for yet another trip to the Guardian Farm. And this time I'm bringing a lot more shulker boxes. Let's top up all of these buckets in here since, yeah, this chest is looking very depleted. And I think I will also use this farm to get some lava just to keep things nice and renewable. That should top up lava supplies nicely in how to fill all these shulker boxes. In hindsight, I'm wondering, did I get carried away with bringing so many? You know what? We need the lava. We're just going to go for it. That should be my new catchphrase. You can never have too much lava. But I feel like in my case, you kind of can. I also need to get out of the habit of just chucking all my items on the floor when I, I need more inventory space. Imagine if I accidentally, you know, got carried away for five minutes and let them all despawn. There's some good stuff in there, like my chest plate that I can't get any other way. Well, other than downgrading my world, and I, I really don't fancy doing that one again. And is every single one filled up? And I need my pickaxe. <laughs> I was trying to break it, and I was like, where's my pickaxe? Oh, yeah, it's over there. Don't quite have enough space to carry them all because I picked up too much lava, so... There we go, we just need to do that. And now let's get out of here and continue placing all of the lava. And I have also just realized that there's a much easier and much less painful way to do this. I'll just grab a load of stained glass, place lava as I go, and then just put the glass on top of it. And, and that will completely solve all of my issues. I'm no longer getting, but why didn't I think of this earlier? Probably because I never do things the easiest way first time. I always, always make it hard work for myself. Now, if I put glass on top of here, can we still see Oh, we can see that. Yeah, we don't want that. So to solve that problem, the black stone is going to be very, very important. And you know what? Let's not take the easy way. Let's, let's just go for it. Let's go and break that and place it down like so. And we're going to have to do this all the way around the border. I just can't stop myself from jumping into lava today. And that is all of the black stone down, I think. Yeah, we can just bring that round like that. So all I can do now is continue placing... If I can actually... Can I get out of here now? Am I, am I indefinitely trapped? No, if I go like that... Yeah, if I just continue placing lava down and then follow it up with glass as I go, yeah, nothing could go wrong. I don't have to get burned. It should all be very, very straightforward, as you can see. And that is the floor completely finished. Next thing to be done is come over to here and grab the blackstone stairs, and then we're just going to make a nice little border around... Okay, well, not like that. But instead, a nice little border all the way around the edge. It just kind of gives it a little bit of definition because it's, you know, it's a stairs, it's not completely flat. And really just breaks things up nicely. Although now that I've got to this part, I am going to have to change things around the floor because I haven't really left enough space for my furnace array, so I'm going to have to move it, yeah, this floor a little bit. So you know how I painstakingly placed loads of lava along here? Well, it's it's getting filled in. Yep, it's it's got to go. <laughs> it's got to be the biggest waste of time in my life. No, but all the rest of it, which was the bulk of the time, is still to stay. It's just along here. The furnace array is thin enough that it could fit on here, but it's quite wide, and I want it to be wide so that it is super, super fast. And because of that, I have, I've got to move the floor. I've got absolutely no choice. Can you tell that I'm pretty much just making things up as I go along with this? It's also in my best interest to get rid of this glass. And if I continue mining out this floor, because it's, it's not here to stay, then it will give me the blocks that I need to fill in this lava. Now to continue placing stairs along here. I have run out, but I think I should just about have enough to do the entire thing. So I've got two stacks and one stack got me all the way around, well, past the halfway. So this stack should get me all the way back. There we go. And look at that, I've got nine to spare. And it, it really is starting to come together, isn't it? Well, the next thing I need to do is mine out this entire floor of grass. It, it doesn't need to be here. Instead, it is going to get replaced with a different block. A block which I don't think I've ever used in a build before that's, that's like going to stay. But I think for the first time ever, it's, it's actually going to fit into place nicely. And there we go. That is the entire floor mined out. And the block that is going to be used is, is not in here. I'm just going to shove all of this in here. No, instead, <laughs> welcome Netherrack to the team. You are actually going to be used for a build. It really just does fit in well with that molten rock volcano kind of vibe. This does actually make me wonder if one shulker box of Netherrack is even going to be enough because it's it's quite a big area. Although, you look at my inventory, I've still got loads and loads left, so hopefully we're going to be okay. But then again, if I'm not okay, it's, <laughs> it's not like it's a long way to my house. Just over the river and there we go. Well, that is half of the floor done and I'm, I'm starting to think we're going to need more netherrack. Yep, I am now onto my final stack and it has all run out. Not to worry though, since if I go into this shulker box, I have still got a few stacks left. It, it might not quite be enough, but we can see how far we get. Well, would you look at that? Against the odds, I almost had a full stack to spare. Very nice indeed. And I think I'm going to make a little minor mod modification to the entrance here because my furnace array is actually going to be off center I've, I've done a bit of testing and stuff and it's because it's an even number this is an odd number door it's just going to be off center and i really can't be having that so i'm, I'm going to uh, 
place down some blocks. I mean, if everything is not symmetrical in Minecraft, then <laughs> what's even the point? There we go. Hold on a second. We're going to get a little bit of a leakage here if we're not careful. Um, uh, have we got any blackstone? There we go. <laughs> no on that. And speaking of blackstone, let's mine up this and then change all of this under here to be blackstone. And I'm also going to need to... I, I suppose I, I could have done with that lava that was over there. I'm going to have to make this wider with lava as well. I don't want to use the black loops of blackstone, so I'm going to go in and... Uh, be a little bit risky. There we go. We're safe. Oh my goodness. It's just lava everywhere I look. But that includes in here. There's also lava everywhere I look. So we can easily fill all of this in like so. Also replacing the black stone. Where is it? There it is along the bottom. And then putting the glass back on top. And whilst the entrance will now be symmetrical, the, the circle isn't. And you know what? I can't live with myself if I don't fix that. Let's get to work on it. At least on this side, it's less difficult because there's less of patterns inside. I moved everything along. All of this just to have everything perfectly balanced. And there we go. Operation symmetry <laughs> is complete. So next, I'm going to grab the magma and just go around and randomly dot it in the ground like this. There's no specific pattern to it. It just breaks up the the floor a little bit. There we go. Although it, it does look a little bit patterny, but anyway, it, not to worry. It does kind of light up the area, but I feel like I should come up with a way to light it up a bit more. So let's grab up all of the shulker boxes. Although before I do, I am just going to move this along one more. I just don't want the lava to be flowing like into it, if that makes sense. Which I suppose does mean extending everything, actually. <laughs> I didn't think about that. So that means a little more lava is going to be required. Although being the idiot that I am, I, I put it in completely the wrong place. Let's actually remember to mine out the floor. And that is much, much better. Now I can fly back home. I'll float everything into the storage room and then grab some glowstone and red carpets. And so the plan for these is just to put the glowstone in the ground. I, I think, you see, you've got that. Actually, I'm going to move it across one. But I reckon just sticking a carpet over it, yeah, it just makes it look a little better. And as long as everything is lit up enough so that mobs can't spawn, then I am happy with that. Alrighty, that looks good enough to me. Let's build the furnace array. And this is going to be completely different from the one in here. It's not going to involve a hopper minecart. It's going to distribute it much more evenly, which will ultimately make it perform much, much better. One of the main items that I'm going to need a lot of, you guessed it, <laughs> cobblestone. Why do I need cobblestone? Well, we're going to have 46 furnaces, so... That's quite a lot, but we've got 48 there. That's that's actually more than enough. Once upon a time, I did have a chest purely for furnace. Oh, look at that. We've got loads. Well, those two spare ones can go in there. Red nether brick is also... Well, I was going to say it's going to be an item we need, but <laughs> we definitely need it. We don't have any, apparently. We're just going to have to craft it all, which means we're going to need quite a bit of nether wart. Now, my nether wart farm has never really been a super OP one. It's just one of those ones you just... You just casually use it every now and again, and then have to replant it all. Like, it's, yeah, it's not the best farm in the world. It's not the biggest one. But I have plenty of nether wart for the things that I need to do. Now, then, do we have a crafting table? We do. We can make... Yeah, we can make quite a few stacks. I think it'll be four stacks, which I'm going to go for. And then the extra nether wart can all be replanted. Let's also re-grab glowstone. And I'm also going to need 92 normal nether brick stairs. And I'm not entirely sure I'm going to have enough now. I think I overcrafted the red nether brick. Oh, it's close, but not close enough. I've only got 88. See, this is one of those moments where it would have been really good to have my new super smelter done. But it's not done, so instead I'll have to use this one. It's also going to be one of those builds that requires a ridiculous amount of hoppers. Well, not a ridiculous amount, but it's going to require four stacks of hoppers. Which means I could probably do with grabbing a bit more wood. What's the best place for me to find wood? I reckon spawn will be a pretty good option. Oh my goodness, what's been going on here? Why is there millions of golems again? Yeah, the iron farm is going to have to be changed up. We have also, yeah, got the tree farm. I really want to make a proper storage system for this, but I'm thinking it might be the best option to just use this one. I, I'm guessing it should have a bit. I, I, those hoppers, those things. Where's the lever to turn this off? <laughs> Either I broke the on-off switch or I've completely forgotten where I put it. I'm going to guess that I actually broke it because, you know, I, I do stupid things like that all the time. To turn it off and on, I think you just go like that, don't you? Never mind, that is completely wrong. I, <laughs> you actually put it right here, I believe. That should do it. Okay, it just seems that the machine is permanently broken. That's why it wasn't turning off. Okay. Anyway, I didn't come here to fix my dodgy redstone. I came to get some wood. Which, you know what? I've, I've got a decent amount. Of, it's mainly getting me the warped warp blocks more than anything, but I'll take it. And I also think it is in my best interest to spend a little bit of time at the tree farm. And I'm going to need a sapling to do that. Got plenty of them here. Let's put them in the offhand. Jump in. And, uh, oh, well, we need to turn it on. Man, I just can't remember how to turn on anything nowadays. <laughs> there we go, now it's working. I can place that and mine to my heart's content. And you know what? I think enough time has now passed using this machine. We've got this guy in here and all. I don't see you, but I know you're here. Blue ice could potentially be a good trade, but you know what? I'm not too bothered about that. The main thing is that I have managed to get plenty of wood. Now, if only I brought a shulker box so I could actually transport it all home. Not to worry, though. I'll just take what I've got, fill up this chest with it, then grab a shulker box and fill it up with all the rest. And with this, I should be able to craft the remaining hoppers that I need. Because that is all of the chests. And getting the iron is... Well, that's definitely not going to be a problem. Mission accomplished. I think that's 
probably everything that I need. Except for one thing. One thing that I have forgotten. And it's something that I don't think I've actually ever built with before. Yes, this furnace array is going to include gilded blackstone. I don't really know where the best place to look for it is, because like I said, I've never ever bothered with it before. But I think, yeah, down below seems like the best. Although down below is covered in lava. It's actually quite a hard thing to get a lot of, isn't it? I, I You know what? I'm going to need quite a bit of this. 46 pieces to be exact. And I feel like I might need to visit more than just this bastion. I think it is one of those things you can kind of strip mine for as well. Maybe if I got TNT and blasted up. Okay, well, we found some exposed. Yeah, I, I think there might be some hidden in the walls, but... I don't think I really have time to spend ages looking for it. Although, having said that, oh, there we go. We found, oh, of course, we found lava as well to ruin my day. But yeah, actually, finding that is good. And getting the blackstone is also useless, uh, useful, not useless. <laughs> so I've got eight pieces, which I'm pretty happy with. No, make that nine. So I reckon my next option should be to go into this place. Yeah, look at that. I can see, I can see, well, I can see one piece. <laughs> one piece is better than none. There's another one up there. Yeah, there's quite a few dotted around. And there's still some angry piglins that live here. I didn't even know that. I thought I'd wiped out the entire species. This is definitely making me realize the reason why I never normally build with this. It is just so much hassle to get. And as far as I'm aware, there's absolutely no way to farm it. You've just got to go out and look for it. Which does make it kind of cool in its own way. Do we get... Oh, look at that. It's in the chest as well. You know what? I'll take the quartz. SB from the past didn't think the quartz was worth anything back then. But hey, I tell you what, it's a useful commodity. Oh, no. Why did you have to jump in? <laughs> well, there goes the last piglin. I was wrong. There's, there's one left and he must be protected. This is for your own good, mate. Oh, wait, there's two of you. Okay, that's it. Just just get in there. There you go. Safe as houses. And I think I've more or less got all the gilded blackstone that I can see. Oh, there's just one up there. It's a little bit awkward to get to. I have to, like, mine through and jump after it <laughs> towards lava. Then we fly up and go in search of another bastion. Although not before checking these chests because I get a feeling like they're there. Look at that. There's a great amount in there. Will this chest also do it? Okay, you know what? Bastion chests are actually the best way. And bones. Yeah, I'll take bones. And if I'm not mistaken, I do know the location of another bastion. Well, actually, I know the location of quite a few of them. But let's see if I can correctly find this one. Look at that. I, I managed to find it. I actually didn't think I'd find it that easily. I thought I'd have to fly around a little bit. But look at this. This is probably a much better one for finding the Gilded Blackstone as well. Because it's just everywhere. I'll, hold on a second. I'm not falling for that one. Yeah, let's just block up the lava first. And I can safely mine it and it's not going to get burnt. And with this, we've got 33. So we're not actually that far away. I wonder if this chest has anything in it. Oh, there's a lodestone. You know what? A lodestone is like a netherite in God's word. So it's worth taking. Never really done a good job of looting these bastions, have I? What about this chest right here? Ah, not, not what I wanted. For a bastion that started off with so much of it, I feel like it's mainly higher up. Once you get lower down to the brick sections, it's, it's kind of hard to find. But hey, there's a bit of blackstone here with one in there. I'll drop down yet another level. There is piglins roaming about here. I've got to be careful. I don't really want to get into a battle with them. I just feel kind of evil of me to come into their home and, and murder them. Oh, look at this. Right on the side of the building. Let's just do some... Oh, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. There you go. <laughs> I'll try to do some fancy flying, but you know what? Sometimes you've just got to go for it. Just seven more pieces required. Now six. And I think I saw some on the pillars. Yeah, look at that. There's a little bit here. Oh, and there's loads on the side when you have a proper look. Mining for this has definitely been an interesting experience. But that is piece number 46. So I'm out of here. Assuming I can successfully find my way home anyway. Here we are, back safe and sound. It looks like the nether brick has been, well, the nether rack has been smelting. So I've got plenty more nether bricks, another stack, which I will turn into stairs. I'm also going to need four red nether brick stairs. Very good stuff. Let's get to work. So these nether brick stairs are all going to be placed along like this. And right in the middle here, there's going to be a chest. And then there's going to be red nether bricks like that. There's also going to be a repeat of the stairs on this side. And then the gilded black stairs above. Now there is one issue with this entire thing. The volcano width is a little bit small right here. Like it would have fit if I built it right in the middle, but it would have looked a bit strange. So I'm going to end up having to expand out into the wilderness at some point, but we'll, we'll leave it closed for now. I'm just going to continue to do as much as I can, such as placing down lots and lots of hoppers. And these hoppers are going to be under the furnaces, so they are what are going to carry the items out of the furnace. And speaking of furnaces, <laughs> I might as well place them down now. There we go. They're all in. But the real question is, what on earth did I do with the, the four red nether brick stairs? Okay, for some reason, they managed to work their way into me under chest. I'm not sure how that happened, but at least I found them. And they're going to be placed over the top of this chest. That way I can still open it. And let's also begin adding a little bit of redstone along the back of here. And this redstone that I've done here is just going to be repeated on the other side. And this is where I get to the issue of running out of room in this volcano. <laughs> I'd better start doing some mining. Now let's add all the hoppers, which will supply fuel to the furnaces. And even more stuff can be added to the redstone. I didn't really think about what building block I was actually going to use. So I had nowhere near enough blackstone. Not to worry though, there is plenty more 
more in here. And now these hoppers are going to supply the furnaces with everything that's going to be smelted. And it should make a nice even distribution of it as well. More hoppers are going to run all the way along here. And because this side is a mirror image of that side, everything is just going to be the same. And this is probably going to be the most complicated part of the redstone. And it's, it's not even that complicated at all. Just repeaters with the correct delays on. All of these hoppers will be transporting the items to be smelted along. This chest right here is what you will put the items in that you want smelted. And I'm going to add a bunch of stairs that will hide all the hoppers and make it look nice. And unfortunately, the redstone isn't nearly done this. <laughs> still quite a bit to go. This top part is probably the most complicated bit of it all, but it's still not too bad at all. And that is all of the redstone down. I misspoke before, by the way. This chest right here will be for the fuel. And then the chest up here is what is going to be the items that you want to smelt. So if I'm not mistaken, it is now done. I'm just going to decorate it with a little bit of glowstone, which can be on both sides. And then more redstone bricks on top. Although in this middle section, we want upside down stairs, so we can, we can still open the chest then. There we go. So I think the next thing I want to do before I test it out, but hey, look at that. It looks pretty good. But yeah, the next thing that I want to do is repair the outside of the volcano. Shouldn't be too difficult for this bit. I can just go something like that, cover all that in blackstone, and then yeah, we can just kind of terraform it up. Yep, I'm happy enough with that. Oh no, I'm not happy enough with it at all. Hold on. We've got a few uh, few strays. I, I wouldn't mind a bit of basalt. If I've got a basalt shulker box. Let's dip into that. Chuck that there. Yeah, I, I think that looks pretty pretty well hidden. And that is the thing about terrain. It can just be random anyway. And as for this side, it's going to take a little bit more expansion to hide everything. But you know what? As long as, okay, I was about to say, as long as I don't cut off any redstone, it should be mission accomplished. In fact, I can cut that bit of redstone off. And with that, it should be fine. I do kind of want to be using basalt here and there as well but you know what yeah if we just fix that a little by adding way more blackstone around and there we have it operation terraform a volcano oh how's that gonna work is complete I, I think i'm happy with that i don't really need to change anything now i just need the skies to do the rest of the work and cover that bit in snow but yeah there's, there's not much more that i can do in here I, I mean i might kind of you know what yeah i'm thinking if we kind of we could kind of blend the terrain into the edge a little bit as well just to make it that little bit more seamless, just with something like that. It just needs a little bit of a doing on this side as well. And there we go, mission accomplished. I think it's time to test it. So let's say the blaze rods are gonna be the, f okay, let's try and actually pick them up. But yeah, the blaze rods are gonna be the fuel and I want to smelt a load of sand. Now if all the blaze rods are fuel and we're gonna empty the entire shulker box, you will see that, are they, don't start distributing yet. Sorry, once I put the fuel in though, they should, so that's well stocked with fuel. And what I mean is once I put the items to be smelted in... Oh, hold on a sec. I've just got this <laughs> completely all wrong. I need to label it up really, but yeah, the items to be smelted go in the top one and they start distributing. This is the output chest. Yeah, blaze rod should be in there. Blaze rod should be here and you'll see they also start distributing. And all these furnaces are getting filled up, as you can see, because of the fuel. There we go. And then they just all switch on together on the right side. They should do as well, unless I built something wrong. No, okay. Not sure why you two aren't working. Something's gone wrong there. It's entirely possible that the hoppers are clogged up or something like that. Although they're all working now, so I have no idea. So yeah, all of my sand could go in there. We're going to go and empty this shulk. Oh, wait, I've emptied them both already. Yeah, look at that. It just goes through that fast, as you can see. And the output is this. Aha! Okay, yeah, so there was some basalt that snuck in. That is why that was happening. But you can see, look how fast it is coming through. So, so quick. And every time an item fully smells, look... It, it instantly, well, it doesn't need to get instantly topped up there, but once this one fully smelts, you will... Actually, it's going a little bit faster on some of them. Anyway, point is, it's it's smelting them all. It's distributing them all very nicely. There's one to two in all of them. All of the blaze rods are also distributed really evenly. And smelting is happening really, really fast. And the next thing I want to do is to create a simple way for the items to get all the way to my chest room. And apparently, I did forget to empty a sugar box. <laughs> I'm just an idiot sometimes. So I want some hoppers underneath this chest but I want a way to lock them. And the lava makes it slightly more complicated because I don't want to get burnt, but I'm thinking if I can just get down here, there could be repeaters going into the hoppers, then simple redstone going around here, which will just connect up to, I think, a lever. And this lever, I don't think it will affect any of the hoppers around it, otherwise it will be a problem. But I think all the other hoppers should still be unlocked. Oh no, that one's locked. Okay, that's that's a problem. Is it is it unlocking now? Yeah, okay, that is a problem. But I wonder if I instead make it glass, does that then solve the problem? I mean, there's no items to go through it right now because we've, we've... Are we smelling it all already? Oh my goodness, that was quick. Thankfully, uh, yeah, I've got another shulker box to go at. So go on, uh, get back to work. Now let's test this out. Is it still... 
Okay, it's still blocking it, and the signal doesn't go downwards. I think my only other option is to actually move these hoppers. Instead, they can just go around like this, which I, I don't think should have any effect. These can be turned on, and none of them are then going to get backed up. And the chest is nicely filling with glass. So next, let's start adding hoppers. See, this is where <laughs> got to be careful of the lava, but let's just add the hoppers going down like that. I also reckon I should modify this little stair system. Create a nice little staircase around the edge. Down here should be low enough, so let's start adding hoppers. And these hoppers will be going into a dropper, which will be right there. It's going to spit the items out, and now I need a big water stream. Managed to end up in a mine shaft as I'm <laughs> digging this tunnel. Ah, well, straight through we go. These items have got a chest room to get to. And now that I've reached the area where haste is in effect, this is <laughs> much, much faster. And there we have it. We have made it into the chest room. Instead of this composter, I'm going to have a double chest that is going to have hoppers. I don't know. How do I want this? Think something like this. I'm just trying to make sure like it's going to be able to keep up. But I reckon it should do fine with something like that. And in case any get missed, we'll just go like that on the edge. Now, is that going to be a problem? Where is the, the items? Yeah, the items are going to go in. Right, that's not going to work. Instead, I'll just I'll just go like this. And yeah, it might make a bit of a backlog, but it should be fine because it's, yeah. That, I'm just thinking out loud here, guys, but the water's going to come along here. So I want a drop down. I'll make it drop down. I think this should be perfect. So this is the system I've got. There's going to need to be some water. I'm, I could do with some ice as well. And very conveniently, I'm, I'm right by my chest room. Now, how are blue ice stocks looking? Yeah, we're going to need to go on a, a bit of a mining session for that. But I can at least place down these first few bits. And this entire water tunnel is going to have blue ice on it. That's going to make the items travel as fast as possible. Looks like I've run out. So it's time to head to the icebergs. Could use my ice farm, but the fact that it's something ridiculous like 72 ice just to craft one blue ice, it's probably just not worth it. And I also can't count. It's actually 81 ice for a blue ice. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The main thing is that I have reached the icebergs and that the bottom of the icebergs are the best place to find blue ice. I was going to say, having said that, I can't see any, but <laughs> I can see some. So let's get mining. I'm not entirely sure how much blue ice I'm going to need, but I'm going to guess it's going to be a couple of hundred. So once I've got five stacks, I'll be happy. And I think all of this should now be enough blue ice once I've mined that bottom bit. I think there's none left. Right there, hold on a second. There's a few <laughs> hidden in the roof, which I definitely want to grab. Yeah, one or two at the surface as well. You don't want to waste blue ice. It's, it's actually worth 81 normal ice sitting right there. There we go. We've got it all. Uh, if I can just get out the water, please. And as you can see, loads and loads of stacks. A little bit of packed ice there. I'll take it back with me anyway. So that can go in there. I also do have a few spare stacks of blue ice. I don't think I'm going to need all of it. So I'll go with something like that. Water is going to be very, very important. And also a load of iron trap doors. That's not how you make iron trap doors. I was about to say, that's not quite right. Is that it? There we go, iron trap doors. An entire stack would be nice. So I'm just going to keep going. There we go. That is 64 obtained. Let's put some water right there. So yeah, that's what's going to push those items along. And now to mine out all of the floor. From there, it's going be filled in with blue ice and the good thing is that if i'm quick enough to add all the water then all this leftover stone will get pushed along and i love the speed that i can go down here it's like a super fast highway anyway i still need to do a little bit more ice placing and then right here is where there's going to be a water bucket and as you can see the water should flow down absolutely perfectly picking up all of these items as it goes and to keep things moving that's where we need water and trap doors yeah, just so it keeps the flow. And since I am going to need to keep refilling my buckets, I'm just going to make a nice little infinite water source. And if we take something like... Oh, okay. There goes my water buckets as well now. And the trapdoors just make sure that the water doesn't flow backwards. It's a massively long ice stream, but we are getting to the end of it now. I think maybe we're going to be close. Now then, how do we do the end bit? Wait, is this going to be perfect? It's not going to be perfect. So we probably want to have a trapdoor like that. And then... Oh, and another one here as well, so that that doesn't go backwards. We place the water... It'll stop there perfectly. And now that means I can chuck a bunch of items that I don't need down. We should hear them. Let's listen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the piston's working. It's pushed them up. I can hear it. Next question is, how on earth do I actually get out of here without breaking this trap? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of that. Oh, then we can go. No, that didn't work. What about that? Yes, that did work. And then if I go and break it on my way down, perfect. And now to get the items, they're going to power the dropper. So I need to find a place to empty these buckets because I, I don't really need them anymore. So <laughs> there's only two of them, yep. And they can go in here along with a bunch of other random stuff. And let's get this smelter fully, fully finished. I'm gonna glide down carefully. Now, this is, yeah, this is where the redstone could potentially go a little bit wrong, but it should be okay. We're just going to have a dropper like that. I'll put blackstone over the top so that... Nothing, you know, the items can't go the wrong way. Then I want an observer like this, and then I want a comparator detecting if anything goes in. Can we can we do that on the same? Why don't we just keep it simple and go like that? <laughs> but yeah, if something's in here, then this will power the comparator, which will power this piston, and it should make the dropper work. So we're just going to hook it up with some redstone like that. Do I want... Actually, I might even... Let me think about this. I think I'm going to go with a repeater. 
That should work. Should we, should we test it out? Let's put in some coal ore. Look at that. Very nice indeed. Yeah, because there's two hoppers going into it. That should work as well. Let's try it with... I, I don't know what to try. <laughs> Let's try it with stone. Yeah, so it stays. They're all dispensing. They should be going to my chest room. I reckon we just stop messing about. I reckon we go big and we, we release all of this glass. Which... Is that all gone through? Where, wait, what's going on here? Why? Oh, no. We've jammed it up. Just when I thought I was finished... A hopper. Why is that hopper jammed up? Oh, because of this repeat. Because I moved them along. Uh, well, that was a bad idea, wasn't it? Give me a couple of minutes. I uh, <laughs> I will fix this. You know what? The fix could be way easier than you think. It could just be like that. I reckon that might solve the problem. I flick this down. Wait, they were going down for a second. Are they going down? Yeah, I've unflicked. And look, they are emptying out pretty rapidly. Let's just move all this glass across. And uh, <laughs> that way we don't really make a mess. Then a hopper can go there. This hopper can go there. And these ones can, I think... Can they all be broken? Yeah, they can all be broken. In theory, if I now put this in here, it should... Yeah, look at that. It's going in there. Then if I unflick that, the items are emptying out. Oh, it's it's working fantastically, guys. I'll block that back up. Yep, all right. The system's working. Now then, all of the glass should be heading at a rapid speed. <laughs> I've run out of food, but it should be heading at a rapid speed to my chest room. Let's see if that's actually the case. Well, I can hear it. Is it glass? Yeah, look at that. Glass is going up. And what's going on with it's this chest so it should be going yeah as you can see it's rapidly going through that chest and get it emptied out and going through so <laughs> the system works perfectly look at this they're dropping through like flies i know i probably sound quite surprised but my machines never normally work so well so let's not mess about let's get this super smelter completely filled with fuel and i reckon we could do with more nether bricks so let's grab that and also smelt more sand it's a little bit of a bigger journey to travel and i do want to just sort out like the entranceway a little bit but the main thing i want to do is just see it in action once again every single one of my blaze rods is nearly in the system they should last for some time so let's start adding the sand look at that they just all flick on together it's it's so good the design's by il mango and it really it, it made it years ago and it's still a brilliant, brilliant design. And the way the items flow along, it's, it's just so satisfying. I'm starting to think now that only being able to smelt a double chest at a time, it's, it's a bit of a problem. So some sort of expansion needs to be in order. An expansion that would involve hoppers, but I have no idea where those hoppers have gone. Oh, well, no problem there. I can easily craft a few more. It's not going to be anything too special. It's pretty... <laughs> I'm going to stack up with chests. Who uses chests to stack up? I'm just thinking add another chest at the top and then more items can be put in there that way. Probably not necessary to do the same thing with the fuel since, you know, fuel is worth a lot more blocks than what would be in the chest. What it does mean is that I can put in all my netherrack now as well. And the machine can even differentiate between them. So look at that. It's now switched to doing netherrack. Like, they, they don't stack them. I suppose that's because the netherrack is going through in the top slot here. If I change that to be sand, I suppose we'll start seeing sand go through again. Oh, look at that. Yes, we will. It's switched to sand. Okay. <laughs> I love playing with this machine, but you know what? Let's just leave it to do its thing. And lately, my newest issue has been not having enough space for all these shulker boxes. Every time I go to shulker box, I just put one in there. So let's make another chest for shulker boxes. But to make it look right, I'm going to go and split this into slabs and put one underneath like that. Do the same thing on this side, you know, nothing like a bit of symmetry. And then craft two anvils, which can go below each one. It, it would be able to go below this, this one, but I'm an idiot and, and placed the slab in the wrong place. So <laughs> there we go, take two on that. Now it's better. And to avoid an overflow, all of this extra glass that's starting to come through can be put into a shulker box. And it's snowing. That is absolutely exactly what I wanted for once. <laughs> because now it will cover up these edges as well, make it all look nice. And speaking of making it look nice, let's grab some netherrack out of here. Kind of place it around the entrance a bit. Even though you won't be able to see it because it's going to be covered in snow, I still like the feel that it gives. And where, where there's lava, yeah, we've got it. We've got to have it down because the lava, you know, melts. Uh, the snow. I mean, you know what I'm trying to say, guys. Yeah, that's definitely much better. And just to add it a little bit more, I'm going to put a bit of lava. I'll probably end up... Oh, not like that. Um, but I'll probably end up accidentally... Wait, what? Is this ice? I've got to get this right here. <laughs> that needs to be blocked up. I'm probably going to end up walking in the lava by mistake, but I think it'll just bring it to life a little bit more. And it will stop everything from, you know, not being... Well, being covered in snow a little bit as well. There we go. Very nice indeed. And any items I want to send down to the auto storage, well, we just... We can just chuck him in here. Very, very nice indeed. And since all my tools are, are looking a bit worse for wear, I should head to the brand new XP farm. The one that also happens to get me blaze rods. If I could actually make this bigger and remove the pigment so that it was only blazes coming through, and then get a constant stream of blaze so that I can keep the XP, it would actually be as fast as an XP farm as my guardian farm was. But it would have to be expanded and modified quite a bit for that to work. I think I've spent enough time at this farm. I'm uh, completely overrun with blaze rods, plus... All of the chests are really, really full up as well. Such a fantastic farm I have built. So let's follow this trail that I uh, very specifically built. Not the straightest line I've ever made, but you know what? It, it seems to be doing the job. And it has successfully led me all the way 
to the base. I still think the volcano looks so, so cool. Maybe the entranceway looks a little bit strange, but you know what? It doesn't matter since there had to be some way to get into an entrance. And now I can go ahead and put all these blaze rods into here. It's still smelting away all the netherrack. Yeah, there's, there's, there's absolutely loads. Have I, has it filled everything up? It's probably like maxed out all the hoppers behind. Maybe it would be a good idea to build a chunk loader. That way the farm will keep working even when I'm not in the area. Chunk loaders are pretty easy to build. I've, I've done them many times before and I even know all of the items that I need off by heart. Now the first portal needs to be in this chunk, but it means I need to be below that lava and I ain't digging down through it. So instead I will go down this way a little bit place that back above my head and then I can mine underneath. This is where my portal is going to go with the droppers like this and a couple of hoppers, rails on those and minecarts on top of that. And then we're going to do a little comparator system trying a slightly different design that's going to be a little bit more consistent but it's also making it a bit more complicated. So I'm thinking when I put an item in here it should go all the way around and, and just keep going. Actually, I think adding a slight delay will help. And it's working perfectly. And now to build a portal that perfectly corresponds on the other side. That is all of this bit of redstone built. Let's just slide it and make sure they link. That one has brought me here. I, I think it's the right place. I'll have to see. Yeah, it looks like it is. And let's make sure it works going the other way. No problem whatsoever. So now I'm going to clear a bit of space to do some redstone. I want it to be some sort of redstone clock, but I'm gonna use a hopper clock because it's a little bit more reliable. It has a very quick and easy design where if you put some items in here, it will keep moving them back and forth. I want the place to turn this on and off to be right here and a redstone lamp. Okay, well, maybe I've put it in the wrong place because the, the lamp shouldn't be on all the time. Yeah, that's my mistake. Let's move it across by one. Something like this should make it work correctly and an item should go around every time. As you can see, that's perfect. So I've messed around with the timings just to get it right. The chunk loader should be working perfectly. I've also hooked the lever up so I can easily turn it on and off. Instead of using a single piece of netherrack, we're going to grab loads of nuggets and shove all of those in. And that should come back up to 64. There we go. So it is working. It's been sent back through. Everything's going to plan. Whenever I want to turn the chunk loader off, I can just flick this lever and that piston will stay extended so that the clock will not carry on. And I can turn it back on with the flick of a switch. So now I need to just test out and see if it actually does work correctly and I suppose that would mean giving it some items to smelt. So let's grab some TNT as well as gunpowder and shulker boxes and I'm sure you know what's coming next. I'm gonna fly all the way along this tunnel to go to the desert and then completely obliterate the land. An operation get loads of sand is complete so we shall fly back home and it really is something amazing is this desert now. Look at it! It actually looks so so cool. I need to finish the whole desert to look like that. Wow. I love it. Yeah the whole desert should look like that. It's somewhat special about it. But I don't want to smell every single piece of sand that I've collected but still enough to know that the chunk loader definitely works. There should be more than enough blaze rods in every furnace. Let's go ahead and chuck all of this sand in there. I, I like to watch this bit. Just watch everything suddenly turn on at the same time. Every single furnace more or less. Any second it's, it's going to happen guys. I'm sure. <laughs> there we go. They all come into life. Perfect. Now it's up to the chunk loader to do the rest. And I am going to fly far, far away. Because if I'm too near, I'll be loading the chunks and it would just completely defeat the whole purpose of it. And whilst I leave that to see if it's working, I'd like to do my own little test. I'm going to put 60 minutes on the clock and see just how many diamonds I can find in 60 minutes. Should be an interesting experiment. No sign of the kind of cave I was looking for, but you know what? I'm going to dive mine along. And as soon as I come to a cave, I'm going to start the timer. Look at this. On my way, I've, uh, <laughs> I've discovered an amethyst geode. Well, that's kind of cool. I don't really need anything from it, but... The calcite is kind of useful. Is it calcite or is it calcite? I can't remember. I remember getting told off by you guys for pronouncing it wrong. And I can't remember what's right. Oh my goodness, I found diamonds. Oh, well, do they count? You know what? The time starts now. 60 minutes on the clock. Okay, I'm not sure if it's that messes up the experiment, but I've got to spend some time strip mining now to find a cave. Okay, mission accomplished as well to find a cave. I should have brought night vision. Didn't really think this through, did I? Do I have any night vision? Nope. Okay, well, we're just going to have to use my eyes. Good thing I ate plenty of carrots today. <laughs> they should help me see everything, including the diamonds. Oh my goodness, I didn't expect it to be lava there. Already up to three. No, make that four. Okay, yeah, we're not building with diamonds. We're not We're not going that route. I wonder if I can spot any others underwater. And then to that would be, no, I can't, but I can spot some over here. I'll tell you, finding diamonds in Minecraft, it just is easy peasy. But until I have a ridiculous amount of diamonds, how can I truly say they're for peasants? And I'll clarify, as I've always said, diamonds themselves aren't for peasants. It's people who are still wearing diamond armor and haven't managed to get netherite. They're the peasants, okay? Very, very important not to get that confused. This looks like a great cave. Do I mine redstone? A bit of time on the clock, but redstone's redstone. Way, way more precious to me than diamonds because you use so much for things like pistons and observers. So it's definitely worth grabbing the odd bit. What have we got here? A mine shaft. This is 
prime location for diamond. And anything else, you know, you never know. I've gone up, but I want a notch apple. I if I got three in this episode, that would be a pretty good achievement. Also, the lower you are, the better the chance of the diamonds. So dropping down and looking in here isn't a bad idea, but it didn't pay off this time. Seem to keep finding amethyst geodes more than anything. And would you look at that? Even more diamonds. And after digging around a little bit more, there was a third one there. So that's why I always like to do extra checking. And with that, I have got diamond number 10, and that was in less than 10 minutes. My goal is to get an entire stack within the hour. I'm sure I can manage it when I eventually find some of the massive caves. And just whilst doing some strip mining, I found a big deposit of diamonds. That's brought me back on track because I was... I was kind of falling off the average, but 17, no, 18? Fantastic. And we're in another cave as well, that's great. I wonder what secrets it will bring. Now, this is more like the kind of cave I've been looking for. And there's a cool way to use the F3 menu. You can use it on the right and look and see what block you're actually looking at. And, you know, you never know, you might see some diamonds underneath lava. No success in that lava lake, though. But even better, there's some over here. And there's a lot, too. There's at least four. Looks like five. And that means I'm up to 23. And this cave is beautiful. It is massive. Just what the doctor ordered. And I am determined to try and find some diamonds by doing this method. It doesn't seem to be too effective. But, you know, I'll just keep looking. I'll just... I'm there like, oh, I wonder if there'll be any around here. I'm literally... Stop looking at the F3 menu and start using your eyes, SP. Because there's some perfectly good diamonds right in front of you. And not just one, two, oh, three, nice. I'm doing my best not to burn them. <laughs> it's easier said than done sometimes. Oh, there's another, yeah, you see, if I mine that, they would definitely burn. Well, let's grab that. Yeah, look at that, beautiful. And looking through Lava Strat, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it does work, but it's just so rare, I guess, for it to work. I think it's just quicker to keep exploring the cave. Or to search underwater for them. And it looks like with these two up here, I now have half a stack of diamonds. It never gets all walking around the corner and seeing a couple of diamonds. But in the smaller caves, it is definitely harder to spot them. But still very, very doable. And that is 40 diamonds in less than 27 minutes. We're on very, very good pace at the moment. Okay, look at that. Finally, my plan... For Deep Slate Diamond Ore, I think there is some right here. Using the F3 menu, it actually worked. All that for one diamond, but hey, we're up to 50 diamonds now. With 37 minutes on the clock gone. And we have opened up into a decent sized cave. I'll keep searching for the elusive diamonds. And that is 60 diamonds found. Make that 61. That is diamond number 62, 63, 64. Yes, we have now got over a stack of diamonds with nine minutes still to go. With just three minutes left, I'm still going strong on a grand total of 69 diamonds. And that's it, it's all over. Well, <laughs> it's just got an hour and I've found it. So 69 diamonds is how many I managed to find in an hour. But in one hour and one minute, I managed to find 72, 73. Oh, this would have been great in the total as well. Well, I guess I kind of found 73, but they don't count. 69 is the official total. And there's another one round here. Of course, just at the after, after I finished it. Now I can't stop finding them, yeah. Either way, it was a pretty successful mission. And oh my goodness, look at this cave. I can swoop out of it so well and dig my way up the rest of the way. Now let's hurry up and fly all the way home. Because I want to see, did my chunk loader work? Is my super smelter in action? Well, we'll soon find out. Here we are, home sweet home. Let's drop all of these items into here. I'll go and find out if we've got good news or bad news. All the furnaces have stopped. The items aren't there. Yeah, it looks like it should be good news. But the question is, where have all the items ended up? I don't think enough chunks were loaded for them to actually go around the, you know, into the sorting system. Yeah, they're not here and they're, they're not showing just yet. Let's add in the deep slate diamonds. There we go. Look at you've got a pretty good collection of diamonds going, haven't I? And this is where all the glass has ended up, as you can see. So it did go through the system and it's reached here. But of course... It can't go any... F oh, what's going on there? Oh, there is a backlog. Okay, that is good to know. So if I'm using the chunk loader, there will end up being a backlog. And that's because these chunks aren't loaded. So the items will just be stopped somewhere on the water stream when, you know, they're out of the chunk loader's distance. They'll come along here, well, when I reload the chunks, and they'll suddenly, all all of them, are, you know, our entire chunk box worth just ends up on top of there. The hoppers can't pick it all up in time, which leads to a massive backlog. So I'm going to have to do something about that on the other side. Shouldn't be too difficult. I'll just have to add a load more hoppers. You know what time it is, guys? It's not chapel time. So I'm going to fly far, far away, build another portal, and start searching. A desert has been located with a ruined portal right here. Nothing too interesting. Here we have pyramid number one. And this is also a great way to collect sandstone. And there's nothing of use in this one. And I better be careful that I don't die. <laughs> I took a little bit longer than I should have done that. Here is the second one. And this time, I don't think I'll blow it up just for safety reasons. And here we have the classic desert pyramid inside a village. This has happened twice before and both times there's been a notch apple. Will it be three for three? It looks like the entrees 
Sadly, no. Might as well get some use out of this village, so I'm, I'm gonna sleep in your bed. And now the search can continue. And in the fourth pyramid, I've once again had no success. <laughs> oh, in the fifth one, though, we've had success. That was very, very quick indeed. So I'm just gonna search this desert a little bit more because there's still more of these pyramids to be found. Although the sixth one didn't have any joy. And the same result with this ruined portal. And look at this one, very hidden underground. Sadly, nothing good hidden in the depths. And what about this one? Had some diamonds and nothing else good. At this point, I've kind of lost count of how many I've actually searched. And there's not too much of this desert really left. But despite that, there's still another up ahead. If my memory served me correctly, this is the 10th one. 10th one that once again had no joy. I almost didn't see this one. It's just so well blended. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's anything to be found. I don't know why I'm picking up emeralds because I have a raid farm that gets me millions of them. And it's the same with my gold farm. It gets me way, way more than I could ever get from these pyramids. I feel like I've searched so, so many of these and I still don't seem to have had much joy. But I didn't give up in searching, and I've been successful. Has to be said, this has been a very successful mission. I'm gonna sleep before I go home and carefully navigate through the nether. And in a 200 IQ move, the way I'm gonna get all the way home is by digging a massive tunnel which can be there for the TNT and netherite when I do it later. Nothing like doing a bit of multitasking, is there? And after all this time, this is the first time I've actually come across any ancient debris. Look at that, it's three pieces. I now seem to be finding loads of it in a short space of time. I think the tunnel I've dug is now long enough, so I'm gonna fly up, build a little tower so I can find this place again, and fly the rest of the distance home using the elytra. All of this can go into the auto storage, and the ancient debris can be smelted. Now to grab two item frames, and two more notch apples can be added to the wall. And that means I have 38 in total. And now I'm gonna try to do something where every time I do it, <laughs> it usually goes wrong. Gonna require a few stone cutters, glass, water, and grindstones, plus the materials to spawn the wither. So I've got 39 of in here. Now I'm gonna set my spawn right here and head on through. Then I need to build a spot for a wither to go right here. And there's gonna be a stone cutter here and a wither like that. It's gonna have water above its head. I can do that correctly. And as you can see, everything is, is, is working as it should. But it's this next bit where I usually end up having to battle a wither that I'm, I've got to be prepared for. And I've actually realized a better way to do this without the wither completely breaking my farm and everything. If I actually get rid of this wither... Okay, don't be angry at me, please. I don't think it can see me. Good. Okay, we can get rid of it. Oh, well, it's super simple then. At least it was simple until the bow stopped working. Now... I'm actually going to have to hit it and yeah, it's going to start shooting me and stuff, which is not a good news. If we can just keep it flying up though, it shouldn't really be able to break anything too much that I can't easily fix. There we go. Let's replace glass and change these to be end stone. Next, I'll grab a few extra bits of redstone by nipping back to my house. Now I've got everything that I need. When I flick this lever, you'll see the snow golem starts shooting snowballs. So I want this to be on a timer. Timer which can be set up using a hopper clock. So this redstone will connect all along here like, well, not quite like that. It's gonna go all the way. Mm, this isn't gonna work. If I put a block there and go like that, that will be better. Now the pistons push down. In fact, let me get this right. We do want the redstone there. We don't want this. I'll put five stacks of items in here and I've got till this empties to spawn the wither because when it does, that will retract upwards. So let, let's head on through. This obsidian will be broken, followed by stone cutter and spawning in the wither. There we go. I'm gonna just put that like so. That's all working correctly. And now we just wait two minutes for the snow golem to be able to start throwing snowballs and the obsidian farm will work. Just realized I messed up with the redstone. That's another wither I've got to get rid of. I think that should fix it. Let's mine this block and try it all over again. And it now looks to be working as intended with the chest nicely filling up with obsidian. Next, I'm just gonna chill in a hole right here and wait for loads and loads of obsidian. I made myself invisible and took off all my armor, but I've realized that the wither apparently can see you no matter what. The golem has sadly been defeated and it is wreaking havoc on the rest of the world, which means I gotta take it down. Wasn't too hard. So the issue with this farm is, as you can see, the obsidian is backed up because we have completely filled up the storage. But when I tried to go and empty the storage, the wither then detected me and escaped. So I'm gonna fill up loads of the shulker boxes. That's nearly 10 shulker boxes worth filled. So I'm gonna gather these up and then I can take them home. These extra ones can also be dyed to be purple. And now I want more glass so that I can fix the problem with this storage system. So what needs to be changed is that all of these chests and hoppers are just too close to where the wither is. So they'll all be mined up. Now when I break this glass, any items will flow all the way down here. And all the way over here should definitely be far away enough so that the wither 
does not see me. I've really increased the storage so that it definitely doesn't overflow this time. And now I'm going to dig a staircase leading out of here. All of it's mined out. And I'm just removing a few extra blocks so that I can better place these stairs. Very nice indeed. This chest here can be full of shulker shells just in case I want to ever transport stuff. And now this is all complete. <laughs> I guess we've got to test it. And we've also got to get the iron golem back that was, that was brutally murdered by the weather. To do that, I'll need to make a trip back home, grab a pumpkin and some iron. Then he can be spawned right here and hopefully pushed in. This trap door will make sure he can never leave. And you'll be completely safe here, mate. Don't ask what happened to the last guy, though. Now we've put a couple of stacks of netherrack in there and set the farm off, hopefully, <laughs> for it to work perfectly. And the safest place for me is to be all the way down here. Look at that. It's working perfectly. The obsidian is now flowing down really, really fast. Has to be said, that is a job well done. I'll add a bit of lightning here so that endermen don't spawn. And let's just wait to collect up lots and lots of the obsidian. Enough time has passed. Let's go and see how much obsidian we've got. You know what? Look at this. It is working very, very well indeed. And there's absolutely no backlog up here. But all I can do now is start filling up some shulker boxes. And it has to be said that all of this is a pretty good haul of obsidian. Now, in order for me to be able to safely come and go from the end, I will have to get rid of the wither. I just have to get it down to half health from a distance. And then do the rest from up here with my sword. Now, let's gather up as many of these as I have the inventory space for. Which turns out to be all of them. So, that is a job very well done. And I'm going to do something about this piston. Constantly moving backwards and forwards for sorting the items. Because it's kind of slowing it down. If I instead get a repeater and then break this. Oh, it's lovely to have some pace. The comparator goes like that. Which will then go into a repeater. Piston will be here. The observer like that. And that's kind of the speed that I guess it should be, yeah, doing the dispensing. Or even better, something like this, which, I don't know, doesn't seem to make much difference. But it's still much better than having a piston moving in and out. As you can see, it's a lot more, I don't know, constant, I think. Maybe if I had a bit more delay to that. This is my final design. I've added a load of repeaters. As you can see, this one stays constant, and then this one's flashing on and off. When the items stop, it'll, or the piston will still retract. It is much more peaceful. Now, if I do something like this, and then put items in there... It should make this fill up a bit faster because now these items coming in from two angles. Next, I just need more hoppers along here like this. And now the item sorter has been improved. Let's grab some eyes of ender and then head to spawn. And from here, I'd like to try and find a brand new stronghold. I think I have been to this one before, but it was so long ago, I can't for the life of me remember where it is. So the stronghold is roughly right about here. And I'm pretty sure digging down here should be the perfect spot. There we go. Mission accomplished. And now to find the portal room. And mission to find it has been successful. I'm going to light this spawner up because I think it might be a cool thing to actually keep it. Now to add in all of the eyes. And in this 100 days, I'm going to create an epic portal room for this end portal. And it will become the main one that I use. Since the other stronghold has all sorts of stuff in it, like the setup for the obsidian farm. And yeah, I don't want to ruin all of that, but I don't want it here either. Apparently torches do not stop you guys from spawning. Now let's head through this portal, remove this one, and I'll build one here that's going to line up perfectly with everything. Let's just double check I've got this right and not built it in the wrong place. Yep, that looks good to me. And now to build a massive long tunnel that will connect to the nether hub. And this full tunnel is now complete with all of the bridges. As you can see, it is <laughs> very, very long. I didn't realise it was going to be this long. It's going to take some time to put together. It, it, it's completely dismantled the old creeper farm. And it comes all the way to here. Now I just need to dig this roof so that it is six high in total. And whilst digging out this roof, I found a very rare piece of ancient debris. Next, I'm going to fly all the way back home. Get rid of all of this stuff. And grab lots and lots of blackstone. And next, I'll be placing all of this down all the way along here. Already a big straight of slabs has now been done, as you can see. But my pickaxe is looking a, a little bit worse for wear. So I shall get it repaired at the gold farm. And that is all of the slabs placed down. And now to begin with the basalt pillars. Starting with this beam all the way along is probably my best bet. And that is both of the beams done all the way. Now to add all of the pillars in between. And that is all of the pillars done as well. Next I'm going to need loads of these warped wart blocks. And I'll also be adding slabs along like this. And now that all of those are down, let's start adding this. And that is one side complete. Now to complete this one. And this side is now complete as well. Next, I'm going to place netherrack all the way along here so that I can put stairs on the side. And that is the stairs down, which means the warped wart roof is the final thing to be added. And that is the roof also now completely done. Let's just add a load of chains with lanterns underneath. And there we have it. It was a bit of a mega project 
But all of it is now done. I was thinking it'd be cool to make this portal look a little better, which will involve placing obsidian around the edge like this. I'm also going to be digging out behind this and placing warped wart. And finally, some slabs along here just to cover it up. Now let's light it up and head through. Connects up perfectly to the stronghold. And once this whole place is transformed, it's going to be amazing. But before I can do that, I do just need to finish the front of this tunnel here. Why is there always a chicken? The amount of chickens I get in this nether, it's, it's just absolutely unbelievable. Not to worry though, we're going to have something like this all around. I'll use slabs to fill in the gaps. I mean, it is technically meant to be four blocks, but... It does work as full blocks anyway. And finally, I'll add a trapdoor on there. And that is looking very, very good. So two of the ways in this nether hub are now complete. And eventually these other ones will be done. Let's drop off a bunch of this stuff. And now I think it may be a good time to fly up here, head to the fortress farm, and start collecting up a load of XP to mend my pickaxe. And I have now made it to level 350. I've got loads of blaze rods, quite a bit extra gold. This can all be dropped off into chests. And next, I'm going to grab lots and lots of gunpowder. And in fact, I'm going to grab so much of it that I have 30 shulker boxes worth. This ear well farm really has been so, so useful in my netherite beacon quest. And now I have already completely destroyed this particular desert. So I'm flying out in search of another one that I can ruin. We're in a savannah, so I guess a desert won't be fine. In fact, it looks like one might be loading into view. I'll quickly check this room portal. Nothing of use there. And now to find a good section of desert that uh, isn't too close to a mesa. I managed to find a pyramid on my way. I wonder if I've ever been to this one. Looks like the answer is yes. Is, is there any desert temples I haven't been to at this point? And I'd say this desert right here probably looks like the best place. Now to gather up a little bit of sand, craft TNT, and then I can start blowing this place up. And that is all of the TNT crafted, about six shulker boxes worth. And now I just need to fly all the way home. And then I can drop off all of these empty shulker boxes. Put the spare sand in here. And here is the hole that I dug earlier, where I can begin placing loads and loads of TNT. And I've got over 10,000 pieces that I want to place, so... Uh, <laughs> This is going to get me a lot of ancient debris. And that is all of the TNT placed. So let's light it up and start collecting up the ancient debris. I placed enough TNT to fill up my entire tunnel, but I've still got like three shulker boxes worth. So I'll probably save them for a bit of a later date. I would have liked to get 18 blocks of netherite today, but I think that might end up being a little bit too time consuming. So just getting nine or 10 blocks is fine with me. Also guys, we are on a quest for 4 million subscribers this year. And it's not going to be an easy quest, but if you are new and enjoy this video, then please, don't forget to subscribe. And I've managed to get 36 pieces, which is one entire netherite block. Just nine more to go. And that is an entire stack of the ancient debris. And if I do something like that, those are all the ones that are going to be filled. I also find it useful to pick up quartz while I'm doing this, because it's a great way to get loads and loads of the ore. And then if I go into my ender chest and get this magenta shulker box, I can go ahead and put it in there, and this will be very useful if I ever need XP when I'm out and about. For example, when I'm traveling really far and my electro break, it's just useful to be able to break out another quartz or and get the XP from it. Also, as you can see, I spent a bit of time going through a basalt delta, and unfortunately, not a single piece of ancient debris in there, which is a bit strange, but we've got some up here. I suppose because the, the size of the blast is smaller in this compared to when it's the netherrack, that's why you can't really find any. Or at the very least, that's why you've got less chance of finding any. But in this area, there's lots of it to be found. And that is stack number two complete, with loads more ancient debris to be found. There's few things more satisfying than exploring these massive blown up tunnels and finding loads of ancient debris. Some people in the comments couldn't believe that I just take entire cuts until I get to the next stack. Yes, there's a lot of me just painfully running through these and just looking for ancient debris and mining it up that you don't see. It's both satisfying and painfully repetitive. But when that netherite beacon is finally finished, it will definitely all be worth it. And that is stack number four. And also the fifth one. Oh my goodness, look at this. I have never seen five together. Although they are in two different chunks, which makes a bit more sense. This is a great little boost though. And the end of the tunnel has now been reached with a fantastic amount of almost six stacks. I'm going to dig me, well, I'm going to attempt to dig my way out of it. Probably not in that direction. And the best thing is I've got loads and loads of spare TNT for the next episode. And here we are, home sweet home. And I reckon the best way to deal with all this ancient debris is flick this lever so that... Okay, I don't know what happened there, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, nothing can come out of this chest. Then I chuck all of the ancient debris to be smelted. Now, yeah, it will be slow than using blast furnaces if all of these are blast furnaces. But because there's so many of them, just wait a second and you'll see every single one of them comes on together. Look at that. Beautiful. And they'll all be simultaneously 
be smelting this ancient debris. And it's all just filtering into this chest so, so fast. And whilst I wait for that, I'm going to grab the ancient debris that I put in here earlier, as well as a little bit in this shulker box. Let's fill this one up with all of the spare quartz. I'll take the, the loose quartz out, though, just the ore in there. And then all this can be sent down to the chest room. The bow and arrow can go back. I should probably at some point repair my bow, since you can't put mending and infinity on the same bow, which is kind of annoying. Instead, the way to repair it will be to grab three bits of string, combine it with three sticks, and then fix it using an anvil. 33! What a rip-off hour! Oh, well, we might as well do it. <laughs> I mean, I did have 350 levels after all. Now then, looks like this is all finished. Oh, look, it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Then I'm going to unflick this lever, which will unlock the chest, and I'm going to fill this with nether axe. I'll just get a load of nether bricks from it. Could be useful. And whilst I leave those cooking, I'm going to need a lot of gold. Now, do we have a lot of gold? We do have a lot of gold. This is the exciting part. Put it together for ingots. Look at that. Over a stack. It just, it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? We've got loads and loads. How many blocks are we going to get? 11. That really is fantastic. Now, we've run it, nearly run out of gold, which is a bit of a problem, but not to worry. We've got a few spare ingots for next time as well. Let's place these down. Yeah, this is the very, very satisfying part. And there's just five more to go to finish the bottom layer. And once the bottom layer is done, it will near enough be halfway, which is exciting. My, my goal is to have it done by 4,500 days. That's that's the day that we're shooting for. Although that could be quite the challenge. And you'll also be able to see that uh, both my pickaxes do need repairing, especially this one. And also this flint and steel, that's uh, seen better days, hasn't it? So to do that, I'm going to fly all the way to my nether perimeter, where I can get lots and lots of XP. And from this, I have got more than enough XP to heal all my items. I've got so many blade rods. Yeah, there definitely needs to be a bit of a storage system here at some point. It's just clogged up with so much random stuff, as you can see. So if I could have, if I could have a system where, like, all the gold nuggets go down to the gold farm and the blaze rods, you, you know, like going to another thing. It would be amazing. Hopefully I'll get that done in this video, but uh, right now I've got other stuff to be getting on with. Such as putting all of these blaze rods into here to be the fuel. Even though the furnaces are pretty full, they can, they can always be topped up more. And the next thing to be done is sort out this axe. As you can see, it is not maxed out. Every other tool and armor that I have is completely maxed, but... Yeah, my axe for some reason is not. I even maxed out the flint and steel, so yeah, we, we need to sort this out. The upgrade that it is missing is sharpness 5. I think the reason for it is probably because my axe broken and I just never got around to putting that one on as well. So we can buy sharpness 5 from one of these guys. And this is the man for the job, but it needs 64 emeralds. And I only have 57. Okay, well, <laughs> that's a slight problem. Hopefully, I have got some at this redstone farm. Oh, look at that. Indeed, I have. Perfect. That's the exact right amount. I'll take a couple of extra stacks down there anyway. Buy the book and add it to the axe. That's more like it. And now I want to build a new farm. You'd think at this point I'd run out of ideas for farms. But today, when I build a brand new end portal room, I've been needing quite a few purple blocks. How do you craft purple blocks? Well, you need chorus fruit. So yeah, <laughs> We need a way to farm them. It is one of the simplest farms that there is. You know, it's not really a way to make it a complicated one. But it should still be a great farm nonetheless. And the next question is, where do I build this? I'm thinking the lava farm, you know, it was good when it was built. But since then, I've made a much bigger and better one at the Guardian farm. So in my opinion, this has got to go. And now I'm starting to think that if I make it so that this staircase goes down a bit lower, then I'll be able to have it branch off at different angles and I'll be able to get quite a few farms down here. Somewhere through here, there is the aquarium. Can I even dig to it at this point? Yeah, there, there you go. You can see. <laughs> so I've got to make sure that I don't go too far. Well, I've got to make sure I go down far enough, in fact. Yeah, make sure I go down low enough. Otherwise, everything could start to get a bit tangled up. And since I am pretty much out of cobblestone, if I go into my ender chest and grab this pickaxe, now when I start mining, I will be getting cobblestone, which will be very, very useful. No point collecting loads and loads of stone, because that, that doesn't grab quite as many uses as cobblestone. So I reckon right about here is a good place to dig a room for this chorus fruit farm. And apparently I'm just a little bit too far away from the beacon to get haste now. I can't have that since haste is going to be very, very important to me. So I'll get myself a brand new beacon, and I'll build one down underground here. I might as well be really, really low down with it, since they give the effect upwards all the way up to sky limit. And now that this full room is dug out, I'll grab the iron and build my beacon. Now that that's all done. Let's go and give myself haste to swim up and out of here. And just to make the beam look a little nicer, I'll grab some light blue glass and use it to change the beacon's colour. And now that that's all sorted, I can get back to mining out this massive room. And in fact, I want to be doing it with getting cobblestone at the same time, don't I? I've also discovered that chorus plants can grow to be up to 20 blocks high, so 
This is going to be a much bigger room than I realised. And I reckon this is going to be a big enough length and width for the room. But I am going to want the roof to be black concrete. I want this kind of room to look like a massive void, if that makes sense. And it's going to be much easier to burn the roof while I have this floor below me, <laughs> rather than me mining out and then trying to do the roof later. And that is all now mined out. We've, <laughs> we've ended up connecting up to a mine shaft. And I also want to make the room a couple of blocks wider on both sides. Oh, well, we've, we've found the beacon beam. <laughs> You know what, we, we won't be making it a couple of blocks wider after all. And that should now be enough dug out, which means I will now fly all the way up to go all the way down to the chest room so I can get some black concrete. Now, will I have enough blank concrete? Possibly not. So that means grabbing a bunch of sand as well as gravel. And it looks like black dye is in a little bit of short supply. For now, I'll just put this concrete powder in. Okay, I've done that wrong. That was the actual concrete. Now the concrete powder is in. And poor people, they use ink sacks if they want black dye. But rich people like me that have spent 3,500 days in a world, well, we use wither roses if we want black dye. Yes, that's that's the way to do it. In a way, it is still kind of crazy that this is the fastest way for me to get black dye. Although I suppose my newest guardian farm does also give me ink sacks. And now that it's all been crafted, I can begin turning the powder into concrete. And that is now all successfully done and it is in here. So next I'm going to take this and fly all the way up here. Look at this. You know, I may have taken a bit of damage, but some... Pretty good piloting skills. And then this roof can be filled in, as well as the walls. I have already run out of concrete, but you can probably see just how much of a black void it is going to create when it's done. Very strange. It's interesting that I've actually never done something like this before. I've got loads of spare sand for concrete, but I'm worried I'm not going to have enough gravel for the entire project. So I think it might be my best interest to grab two or three of, even four of these. And then I'm going to head to the bottom of the ocean to mine up lots and lots of it. So yeah, day 3558. I feel like I mined up loads and loads and picked up so much of it, but... Uh, <laughs> Didn't even fill a full shulker box. So it looks like I'll just have to keep on mining. And I think I have enough gravel. I've also got a shulker box that's nearly full of it. I know I brought these other three ones. I, I don't know if I can really be bothered to fill them as well. And there is also a bit of an easier way for me to get gravel anyway. Only problem is... It's also a little bit slower, but if I just fly up here and head down through the bedrock, I can send a little bit of gold down to those guys, and I can collect the gravel from it. Actually, whoa, I have way more gravel in here than I realized. I've been mining it off the ocean floor for the last 30 minutes. I, I should have just come here. Good thing I also brought so many shulker boxes because, uh, well, they're, they're all nearly filled. Let's also take out these extra items. I don't really need to be there anymore. Yeah, look at that. Every single, well, all four shulker boxes full of gravel. There's a little bit of an overflow in these two as well. Blackstone seems to be something that's a little bit slower to get. I'd also like to bring as much quartz as I can. I can't bring the whole lot, but th that will do for now. And now to go all the way back home by following this beautiful blackstone slab trail that I very cleverly made. And with that, I can drop off this quartz, shove these items into the shulker box and craft plenty more black concrete powder. And once again, all of the powder must be converted to concrete. And that is all of that done. The only thing I can think of before continuing that down there is to head to the nether and fly all the way up here and use my gold farm to repair my pickaxes because there is going to be quite a lot of mining involved. So two fully repaired pickaxes will be very useful. And now that everything is mended, I am almost ready to continue working on this room. I am just going to finish the walls. Yeah, this room is going to look insane when it's done. It looks so strange. But in order to build a chorus fruit farm you you need something very specific let's just put those in there and yeah <laughs> you need chorus flowers unfortunately i have plenty of the fruits but not the flowers so i can use my brand new corridor to go all the way to the end which really is a great way to travel yeah i don't know if i'm going to keep or get rid of this spawner still but I, I feel like we could make a cool feature with it now i must head through a gateway and the chorus flowers are these bits on top so these are the bits that you can plant. So I believe I can just mine that, as you can see. It's a chorus flower. If you plant one of these on the ground, well, on endstone, it will grow into a chorus tree. But if you break it like that, you don't get the flower. So it's a little bit of an annoying thing to have to mine manually. But it doesn't matter too much because once I've got plenty of these, I'll be able to farm them manually from my house anyway. It's like I accidentally upset an enderman. What's your problem, mate? And I have now got an entire stack of these little chorus flowers. And it's made me realize that if I really did want loads and loads of chorus fruit, I could just go and run around, do something like this, and then go and pick it all up. But me being me, I've, of course I've got to turn it into a farm. It's more fun that way and I won't have to bother going to the end. These seedlings can go in the sugar box for now and the courage fruit into the storage system. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think I am going to need quite a bit more black concrete powder. What I've got in there is it's, it's just not going to be enough. And I'm starting to worry that I'm actually going to run out of black dye, you know, for all what I was saying 
You know, I've got loads of wither roses. Yes, I have got a lot, but they will not last forever. Crafting all these will make an entire shulker box worth. And yeah, the wither rose supplies are <laughs> not looking too good. I know I've literally just been there, but I think it's in my best interest to go all the way back and then fly to the Wither Rose farm, which as you can see, it even says it at the top. All you have to do is rename a Wither for that to happen. And then I can AFK up here on, <laughs> well, up here. Got a little disorientated in the void, but yeah, on this glass platform, watch the Enderman run through and turn into Wither Roses. I'm just curious, have I actually got any Wither Roses to start with? I've got, well, I've got four in there, so I suppose that's pretty good. We have got a lot of Ender Pearls in here as well. Why? What on earth has gone on here? Somehow the bottom of this did break, I think. Do I need to put one like that and then... Will that get them? Not entirely sure. It's been a while since I built this farm. And I've just realised, yeah, I put a block beneath this for some reason. When in reality, yes, I'm going to need a hopper. Thank goodness there's one in that chest. If I break that block, put a hopper right there, it should now be pulling any items in. For example, those wither roses. And they should be turning up down here. Let's see if the plan works perfectly. Yep, there's plenty more in here. So that's Operation Fix the Wither Rose Farm complete. And I'm kind of sick of flying up and down here. I'm going to get on this glass platform and stay there. I think I've waited long enough. And I've got plenty more Wither Roses. To make it a bit more effective, I should probably, like, cover that entire island in double carpets or something. Then they definitely can't teleport. Because some of them were just teleporting them out. Or water. Water is another option. These will no doubt be very useful later. And I'm going to get all of these converted as well. Which shouldn't take too long. Just uh, quite a bit of mining. And that is every single one of them now done as well. We've got them all in here. And so now it's time to crack on in mining out this room. And turning it into a dark void. Now that this is done, I have to say, it's a very, very strange room to go into. Let's drop off a load of items. And I also want some yellow concrete for this build. So now let's start placing all of this down. And now that that is done, let's add dispensers all the way along here with redstone on top. And then I want to place endstone where I'm actually going to have the chorus fruits grow. Now to make a little infinite water source, fill the dispensers. And finally, I'm going to need a button right here. So this is how I'm going to work out how to move things. I've realized all of this will now need to move down one layer. We're going to mine out this, bring the concrete all the way across. And this is the design so far. So everything should all flow. If I go ahead and push this button, let's watch it go. Look at that beautiful, just going straight down all the way to the end where it'll just stop. Let's turn that off, fly up this very long staircase. And I'm going to grab some glowstone as well as hoppers. You know what? A few ladders might be useful too. So just to give a little bit of light to the area, I'm going to change this. Look at that. That looks better. It's so cool is the black room. I still can't get over how cool the black room looks. But yeah, adding glowstone around the outside just gives us that little bit more light. And I can't place glow. I got both of those wrong. For the hoppers, I'm just going to have all of them going into this end one in the corner. If I need to get up and down, then a ladder will help me out. Let's also cover up these sides. And if I craft myself a load of slabs, they can go underneath here. Sorry, Bats, you're going to have to move. That's all of them placed. I'm just going to remove these little corners and put slabs there instead. Let's plant all of these chorus flowers, grab some end rods. And I was going to place them underneath, but you know what? I, I, I don't think it really works. But what I know does work is having shulker boxes either side like that. They kind of look like shulks as well, don't they? And then we can put the chorus flowers. These are all growing nicely. And then if I mine out the middle, place end rods along like this with glass above. And we've got this, this kind of cool thing. I don't know whether it should have slabs underneath, but I think leaving it open looks good. I think we can deem that Chorus Fruit Farm complete. So now I just need to extend this staircase and add all the blackstone stairs going down. And whilst I'm in my storage room, I think I'm going to remove the brewing stand one. Because why do I even have an auto sort for brewing stand? It's not like there's something I use a lot. And dispensers would be much better for it. If I just go behind here and get to the inner workings of this, I think the filter for brewing stands. Yeah, there we go. We'll put dispensers in instead. And spare brewing stands can go in here. And whilst I'm here, I might as well grab loads of string, along with loads of sticks, buy loads and loads of redstone. Next, I shall craft lots and lots of bows and then craft dispensers. And now I have an entire stack of them. So I'll shove them through the auto sorter system, which means they then filled up this hopper and we'll be going into the system. And there we have it. 35 dispensers ready and waiting. And after all that, I've actually forgotten what I came down here for. I think I came for some stone brick stairs. And I have one. Okay, well, that's just brilliant. Thankfully, I, I have plenty of stone bricks, so we can go ahead 
and just craft them using a stone cutter, of course. Way more efficient to use a stone cutter than to use a crafting table. And then I can place them all going all the way down there. And now that they are all placed down, I need blackstone bricks, which I don't think I'm going to have enough of. As you can see, we've not got loads and loads, but I shall fill in as much of the walls as I can. So I'll just be mining out this. Now, I kind of don't want to break all this, you know. It's a bit of a memory, you know, what I created here, the old lava farm. So I might just leave it up here hidden behind the walls. And that is the roof completely done. We're gonna make the floor to be stone bricks. And somehow, <laughs> somewhere along the lines, I completely messed up the roof. What am I doing? Look at that, I, I, it's, it's like really cramped in here now. I feel like I'm banging my head. Right, we need to sort that. Needs to be higher up by one entire block. And now I can get on with changing these walls. Goodbye chest of lava, you will, uh, you will never be forgotten. Well, I actually had enough black stone to do the wall all the way on this side. I don't think I'll have enough for the other side, though. Yeah, I completely run out while finishing the corridor. I'm also curious to see if I go and take a trident. Oh, it breaks them, and then it comes back to me. Oh, look at this. It's beautiful. It is probably faster to maybe use a crossbow. I have a quick charge one there. I have the multi-shot. I've never needed to use the multi-shot one or a crossbow in general for anything, but this is just a great way to, like, harvest multiple ones at the same time, as you can see. All I need is to get enough of the flowers so that I can redo the farm. I don't have to get every single one, but decent amount. Can we get all three of them there? No, we, <laughs> we got one in the end. Nice. But as long as I get a minimum of 10 flowers, it will keep the farm renewable. All right, I think I'm happy with that. I can just reach a few of these by my hand as well. You know what? We'll just get rid of these final ones here. There we go. Now we can harvest all of it. Beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful. Even somehow I've got some glow ink sacks in here. Where, where, where on earth are glow squids coming from? I have absolutely no idea, but... Let's just grab everything out of here. Replant the flowers and then shove it all into the shulker box. I think I'll leave this crossbow and the arrows here as well. Although that does mean I'm now going to need some flint. And I would say along with feathers, but look at that. Completely out of feathers. So that means it's, it's probably not a good day to be a chicken. You know what? You guys have been here for so, so long. We're, we're starting again with the population. This will be your fate pretty soon, guys. <laughs> Don't need them. Don't need them at all. We've got a ridiculous amount of eggs. We've completely, you know, maxed out on all of our storage space. Somehow you are the only surviving chicken. I don't know how, but we're going to leave you. And then just spawn in loads and loads more of you guys. Yeah, all of you guys should definitely be enough. How is there all just chickens everywhere? Where did you come from? I'm not going to ask questions. I don't know what you guys are all doing in there. Let's, let's just get on with making these arrows. And I can also use the super smelter to cook all the chicken. Let's get a stack of arrows crafted. So they can go back into the shulker box and the shulker box can go back into the ender chest. Loads of these items can just be shoved into here. For some reason, I don't have a chicken chest, but I have a... A, a tropical fish chest. Why would I ever use tropical fish? Congratulations, it is now a chicken chest. Or at least it will be once I change the inner workings of it. Tropical fish out, chicken in. And all these fish, because they don't really have a place to go, they can, they can just go in there. And now the next thing I'm going to need to get is more blackstone. There's a little bit in that shulker box, but you know what? It's, it's not enough. I'm going to fly all the way in this direction to this basalt delta. Then I can mine up lots of blackstone much, much easier. And I'm pretty sure, let's uh, try not lava myself, but I'm pretty sure that all the blackstone that I... <laughs> can I stop doing that? All the blackstone that I've got should be enough. It's definitely a lot easier just using the bartering farm for future, I think. But maybe not quite as fast. Let's now create some bricks. Leave these millions of buckets <laughs> behind it. Yeah, if I ever need a bucket... I know where to go. And I'll also continue mining out this wall. And there we go. Walls are complete. And I reckon putting some ender chests into the wall might be a good idea. Like I've got on that side. It's just it's just really helpful to have them, you know, nearby. Yeah. Instead of me having to come up the stairs and then walk all the way over here to use an ender chest. Now I've, I've just got one right here. So. <laughs> but for symmetry purposes, we're going to need two, aren't we? And then I am actually going to have to walk all the way downstairs. Because I actually want a couple of polished blackstone brick stairs. That can go there. And that can go there. Then I can grab myself my torches. And I need quite a few of them to place them on the wall as we go downstairs. Because at the moment, it's, it's just a little bit too dark. Yeah, that's much, much better. Loads of spare blackstone for future use as well. And now since I'm going to be needing quite a bit of purple, let's take the cause fruit and harvest some extra ones down here. And then all of it can be taken to the super smelter in the volcano and be cooking away. Now, I also want it to stay here because I don't have a place for pop chorus fruits in the storage system. So any moment now, all the furnaces will turn on. Look at that. It just looks so beautiful. They are now doing their cooking. I'm going to get some sleep right next to my little bedroom plushie. Available at sp737.store. And now I want to build a bit of a contraption that will fix a problem on my gold farm. I think all of these items should be enough. Let's fly on over there. So the main issue for this farm is that if I go through one of these portals, it does connect up fine. For some reason, this pulse is always stopping, even though, let's say if I click this lever, 
You'd think there'd be a pulse all the way going around, but it, it always breaks. So I need to create a new and improved clock system. It's going to be a pretty straightforward one using hoppers, as well as sticky pistons, redstone blocks, and comparators. Yeah, you've probably seen me do these many times before. Then if I just put a bunch of items in here, you will see that this will move every time a hopper enters. So this one's about to run out, and it goes back. So I probably don't need that many items in. It's probably a few too many, but then I'm just going to hook an observer up to that so that it will send a pulse every single time it needs to. So I'm just using five or six items and I reckon this is a pretty good speed for it to be going round. We don't even actually need that there either. And that adjustment in redstone should completely... Oh, half a hat! Oh my goodness! But yeah, it should completely solve the problem. So now I'm going to switch off the fortress farm and I've just realized things aren't quite working as expected. I must have done something stupid and there is water now flowing down here. Best way to stop that from happening again is gonna be to make some sort of sign. But I tell you, just when you think you've done everything, of course, something has to go wrong. A couple of signs here will mean that no water can flow through. I've got a fish down here, that's how bad it is. What are you doing? Yeah, get out of here. And then I can fix the broken, oh, not like that, I can't. <laughs> but yeah, I can fix the broken redstone. Look at, that. Look at all those items that are about to go through. I always have to make things more hard work than they need to be, don't I? But now it is all working and items are going into here. And whilst I'm here, I want to get something else that's kind of going to be useful. And I can actually grab it, I think, from one of these shulker boxes. Yeah, we're just going to get one of these lanterns. That's a long way to travel just for one little item, wasn't it? But I'm just going to place that there and then... If I was to get some gold, it'll be much easier to send down to these guys because I'll have two to aim for. I can go like that and they will be very happy to barter all of it. I've just been looking, the farm is working fantastically. Loads and loads of gold, which I might as well give to those guys down there. And now I want to make a few adjustments to the storage system or should I say lack of storage for this fortress farm. At the moment, it's just a complete and utter mess. All of this looks like it's gonna be good to me. Let's now make a storage system. Although the first issue I have is that I'm going to need to empty all of these chests. So I think if I, you know, I've, I've gotta get organized here. Let's shove all of these items I'm gonna be building with into here. Grab as many blaze rods as I can, drop them off and grab a bunch of shulker boxes to fill them up with all these items. Might as well take these nearly four stacks of gold and send them down to you guys. And that is the storage successfully emptied. We just got loads and loads of gold swords everywhere. Gold swords that are all going to be burnt. Now I can have another full shulker box of blaze rods, dye it to be orange and put it in here with the rest of them. And I think I can now at long last get on with we're building the new and improved storage. How on earth did the, you guys manage to sneak in there? And these hoppers are going to go into two different droppers. And the droppers will send the items down this chute. But to do that, we're going to need observers connected to pistons and comparators coming out of the droppers. Quite like the redstone I've got here. So if I just put some items like that, I think that, look at that, dispensing beautifully all the way down here. And that is where the next storage phase can begin. Got my item detection system, although I probably need some string. So now it can detect when items fall down. And I'm actually gonna want all the gold nuggets and ingots to be able to drop straight down here into the gold farm's storage. So, you know, we've got one storage. But the problem is, there's an entire fortress farm in the way to go there. So I'm thinking if we have it drop right here, that should be a good spot. And the block that I need to break to get down there is right about it. I think it's I think it's this block right here. Never mind, it's not. It's that block right there. Okay, so yeah, I need to break this bedrock under here. And I also need a way for all of those items to be sent all the way over there. First things first, let's nip home and grab the materials for breaking bedrock. Here are all of the items that I'll need, plus the obsidian in there. And now I can get busy breaking it. And that should be piece number one. <laughs> if I choose a pickaxe, be quick. But yeah, piece number one is broken. And I'll also have to break quite a few of them around it to be able to break the one below it. And now I can break the piece of bedrock that I need to. And the hope is there's no more bedrock below. And we can just, if we just get the shovel. Oh no, there's another piece. Great, that means I've got to break way way more bedrock now and i have now broken enough bedrock to be able to break the final piece that will allow all items to come on through there we go i think i might add a little bit of glass around here as well and when an item falls through it's going to come all the way and it should land bang on the only issue is that yes at the moment there's gold coming through because the piglin farm is activated but if it normally it won't be activated so i'll need an observer Probably just above. Yeah, I reckon if I do something like this and have an observer right there, then it should all work perfectly. And just to make it extra safe, there's one more item that I want to get. And that is a couple of cobwebs. Now, right here, there's going to be a cobweb just to slow things down. And they'll be the same thing at the top, but I've, uh, <laughs> I've got to build it first. So the observer's here. It's got a string next to it, so it'll detect more items. And then we're going to have a couple of 
repeaters. I think this is quite nifty redstone relay. We're going to just go like that. That like that. So when it detects, it should extend the piston below me. Spawn proof the quartz with some glass on top. If all's gone to plan, I can go like this. And look at that. There, there we go. They're getting pushed out. And so next, the blue ice pathway is needed. There needs to be some ender chest right here to align the items. And an observer with string like this. And so now when an item goes through... It gets pushed out. I'm hoping the items will be able to reach all this way. So this chute goes up all the way and it's going to connect. I'm not going to have it go all the way down. I'm going to, you know, have a gap so it'll just come loose. But I think I am going to have a cobweb going down as well. It should just help with items not flying off the way they're not supposed to. And now the big question is, <laughs> will it reach? With a single piece of string through the machine. Come on, please just get all the way. No, it's, it's not. This would be so much easier if I had access to water. But not to worry, I can still make it work. And that should all connect up nicely. I just need to spawn proof it with glass above as well. And there we go. The only thing I really want is maybe a little bit of glowstone. And to also break the last of this blue ice. But the bit that will send the gold down should be working perfectly. And all the useless items like swords and stuff will just be getting burnt. So I'm going to go on a quick mission to try and track down glowstone. And the mission didn't take long. There is some in the roof. I don't need that many pieces, but I'm just going to get as many as I can. There we go. I have got loads. 41. Now to use them to spawn proof. It just makes it so the obsidian's lit up so nothing can spawn on there. Same thing for this one. If I actually go like this, I can test it out. Is that glass? Is that... I don't know. I, I, I hear things going on, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess it went through. I just do another test with a bit of redstone. See what happens. And it has managed to get stuck on top of here. So... All that needs to be done for that is I need to just open it up and I think go like that. Let's also put the glowstone right there. Yeah, I, I think that I should still be spawn proof. That's probably where the issue was, but that is still spawn proof. But to make extra certain, I'll put some glowstone there. This bit of glowstone, it's probably not in as good a position as that one. And that should do it. If I go ahead and put, let's, I don't know what to do. I, I'm, whatever I put in is going to burn. So you know what? I've got loads of string. Let's put all that in. It is going down. Now let's see, is it going to fall through? I've got a bit of time actually, because it's going to be going through the cobwebs first so i'm gonna have to just kind of keep an eye out here and watch the items come into this cobweb and there we go we've got some string that is falling through is that all of the string it could be i don't know but that is yeah going to slowly come down and then land in the system and it should yeah it's going along and it, it will get burnt see you later string but the main thing is it's working as intended and so now i'm going to build the part that will collect up the blaze rods i'm gonna have four hoppers worth which is going to be more than enough those comparators will go into the redstone and then repeaters will take this signal send it into these blocks which will have torches on the side these hoppers are all going to face downwards with hoppers going into the sides of those and for easier access i think at this point it just makes sense for me to put the blaze rod chests all the way down at bedrock but from here there can be something like this and that should be a fully working story so let's go ahead and just put all of the missing hoppers am i gonna have enough hoppers oh the perfect amount these will soon be full of blaze rods which is pretty much the whole reason i built the fortress farm but because it gets gold i might as well make use of the gold it's the last thing i need to attempt to try and do is <laughs> i don't know how i'm gonna manage this actually if i maybe if i fly in here I can then break, yeah, just want to break the quartz. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Brilliant maneuvering. We're going to break all of this quartz all the way down. And then I just want to test everything out. So first things first, in order to test it, I need to fly underneath here. Can I? Okay, that didn't quite work. But yeah, I need to fly underneath here, land on there. I need an easier way to do that. I need to put, maybe I'll put it so the lever goes all the way there. Maybe I'm overcomplicating it. I don't know. Either way, we flick the lever so the machine is now switched on. And from up here, I'll be able to chill, take out Blaze, and... Look at that. They'll go down. And that should go in. Oh, no, wait. I didn't make the item filters. Don't panic, but this is definitely a time to panic. I need 20 different renamed items that are going to be the filter. No, wait. Do I need 20 or do I need 16? 16 was the correct answer since there's only going to be four in each. Proceeds to accidentally put five in a hopper. <laughs> and I could also probably do with a few more blaze rods. Yeah, that would definitely help. Thankfully... This is absolutely... Look at it. There's loads of them. Oh, my goodness. They're all taking each other out. Stop. Well, I mean, they're entity cramming anyway. Well, let's... Yeah, let's take all those out. I have got myself plenty of blaze rods that can then go into these filters. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. They're all filled up. No, we don't want you filling up. You're not welcome. But yeah, once these fill up and get to about 40, then they'll start letting items pass through. So let me just take out a bunch of you guys. Looks like the system down here is having no problems with keeping up. It's all... Look at that. It's just It just looks beautiful to watch it all go along ice and, and see it going through the system. Now then, if everything has gone to plan... There should be... Yeah, look at that. Blaze rods are filling up this chest. One hopper would probably have been enough, but I always like to have spares. We can go ahead 
and feel oh what's going on with you guys what's going on with all of you guys this is why we test these things all right bit of a jam in the old machine i reckon the fix for that is to have glass blocks on both sides then nothing will be getting caught part way along plenty of new mobs are here ready and waiting and in order to make this completely safe for fully afk use i am also going to need to get a load of iron blocks and then build a beacon that's going to give me regeneration because sometimes when you're using the farm you can end up starving if you're there for ages you run out of food and then you would die but if you have regeneration then you regenerate faster than starvation can kill you and since i do have such an abundance of iron blocks i'm going to make this pyramid a little bit bigger so that i can put four beacons on top i don't need four beacons but when you've got as many nether stars as me uh, you might as well just use it the beacons are giving me a lot of very useful effects now I just need to spawn proof it. Simplest way to do that is just cover it completely in glass. And can mobs actually spawn on top of beacon blocks? I don't think so, since it is a light source. But just to be safe, let's put four glass on there anyway. The area really is looking good. I think I can now pretty much put this entire project to bed and say it is now finished. Maybe the only other useful thing to be done whilst I'm here is just make this platform a bit bigger because it's a little bit tight for space and difficult to land on. I can put the crafting table and the ender chest. Oh, look at that. I picked it up as well. That's a bonus, but I can put those... In a bit of a better place, like just on the edge, something like that. And just looking, and it seems that my problem of things getting caught is now no longer a problem. This platform will be more than big enough to land on. Let's just double check that everything is reaching down here, okay? I'll know if it's working because I'll have gold ingots. Okay, well, I've got none. <laughs> so, is it working? I don't know. We, we might be having a, an issue here. And yeah, I see the issue. Didn't think about it, but when these items are landing the cobweb, they're not lined up against the ender chest. So... They're just going straight into the fire. There isn't a particularly simple way to fix it. But my method will be to push them using a slime block and just a little... Do I actually... Well, I don't, I don't even know if I need ice. Maybe not. Maybe I don't need the slime block. Oh, well, too late now. But then if we have a load of ender chests <laughs> all the way up, I think I'm going to break this one and place an extra one here. But if it works, then it really doesn't matter. I think once I put the string there, it, it should solve the problem. Put the cobweb to catch the items right there. Yeah, let's... <laughs> Let's go and test it. I'm pretty sure that this will be the final test. And in order to properly test it, I'm going to take seven gold ingots, send them through the system, and hopefully they get all the way there. So far, so good. They are in the cobweb. And now they are in the second cobweb. They didn't take long to go through. It goes to there. Lines up. Come on, surely. Did it pick them up? If they're in this chest, it worked. <laughs> what? Wait, hold on a second. There's a chance. There's one tiny chance that it worked. Yes, it did because this hopper was not full of gold ingots. Thank goodness for that. I thought I'd somehow messed up again. So let's fill this up. Put all 28 of these through the system and we see them all show up in the chest. I'm very glad that that is properly working. So now we're going to test it out for a bit. Just see how much we get. Make sure the storage is all good. Yeah, I'm just going to going to AFK here for a bit. Well, I spent lots of time here and everything does seem to be working as intended. The amount of blaze rods that I've got from this has been incredible. Look at that. A, a double chest and a half. This chest gets a few in. This one doesn't really get any in these two end ones. I also got quite a decent amount of gold from it, but I'd kind of been bartering it to those guys, so there's not much in here at the moment. But I might as well send that along to them as well, because getting all the gravel from these guys is going to be useful for me. I could probably do with even more than that. But for now, I'll just take what I've got and get out of here. I also think it is probably time to start thinking about creating the end portal room. I've done loads and loads of other little projects, but now... I think it's time we started on the big one. And once again, I am going to need even more black concrete. Unfortunately, I've got like a little bit. It's just it's just in a powder form. In fact, let's convert it. Seems to have done nothing but sit here and mine lately. <laughs> yeah, one and a half stacks is good at all, but I'm going to need 60 stacks in total. And that does mean getting a load more dye. And, and I know I said before that my Wither Rose farm is, is the way that rich people get dye, but... I've realized, you know, maybe we should embrace the actual fastest way to get dye. Yes, it is time for me to build a super powerful and fast squid farm. That way I'll be able to get loads and loads of ink sacks. I've got all the items here except for a couple of stacks of eggs. As you can see, all these chickens have grown up. They've, they've grown into lovely chickens that are just absolutely everywhere once again. And now I need to find a suitable river. I'm thinking if this is a river... This is it. This is this is massive. Okay, is it all river or is it partly forest? On the F3 menu, a lot of it's forest, which which doesn't really make sense, but we'll, we'll keep looking. And I actually had an even better idea of where to look. In 1.18, rivers were made much, much bigger. So it makes sense for me to look for one somewhere where there's new chunks, and this stronghold is in new chunks. So from this portal room, I shall just dig my way out. And you know what? I'm kind of sick of silverfish. I have decided that they are no longer part of the framework, so... Goodbye, spawner. Now let's get myself dug out of here. I have to say, I've come out into a cave. It's like I'm outside, but I'm not. Like, even there's, like, lava lakes under here and stuff. It's really weird. And I'm super high up. So I think I can actually... Yeah, I can actually just fly out, but... 
Yeah, it's, I was about to dig all the way to the top of a mountain. And this is what I meant about the rivers being bigger. They are just, yeah, just generally a lot wider in this version. I reckon this is the area for me. Look at that. We've even got squid already spawning here. I forgot. Biomes change based on the Y level. So if I'm actually jump, it changed from dark old forest to river. So yeah, this that, that's going to be interesting because if I'm actually just down here... I guess this is all classed as river. Now this farm is going to require draining a bit of the water. Although at this point, I am a bit of an expert at doing that now. So this is the part where it gets fun. All of this needs to be drained. But then also all the areas around this as well. So that we get squids only spawning where I want them to. And doing something like this is the best way for me to dry all of my sponge. Now let's get back to draining. I don't think I need to drain this cave, really. It depends what Y level it is at. Okay, yeah, maybe I will need to drain. Look at the squids that are spawning. Oh my goodness, yeah. Suddenly, I didn't choose such a good location. And whilst it's a bigger project than I initially expected, it also won't take me too long, I don't think. And why won't it take me too long? Because I'm gonna head back home, grab plenty more sponge, which should speed up the process. A lot of time has passed and I've been doing a lot of draining, much to the dismay of these poor fish. And I've drained this entire river as far as it needs to to be out of the spawn distance. Well, I will have done... See, look at this. You can see it's working because there's loads of squids in it. Well, you guys won't be spawning here for much longer. And there is this cave that goes underneath the river, but I don't need to drain that because squid cannot spawn below level Y equals 50. And then all of that water down there isn't in the river biome, so I also don't need to worry about it. Might as well only get rid of the water that I actually need to get rid of. And the same was the case with all this water here. It looks like it's in a river biome, but it's actually part of the dark oak forest. And doing this isn't really necessary, but I think I'm going to block up the holes on the side. I know squid can't spawn in there, but I just feel like it's tidying up the landscape a bit. Same for this one right here. And finally this one there. So I've almost done, but <laughs> I need to drain a load of this river as well, unfortunately, because squids can spawn in it. But once I've done this, I will be ready to build the squid farm. The fact that squids are actually one of the hardest mobs to farm has kind of caught me by surprise. It doesn't help that this river is just so, so deep. But on the plus side, at least it's not as wide as the other one. And according to my calculations, I need to drain the river as far as this, because yeah, this is all still river. I suppose does dripstone caves not count as river, which might be useful. I don't know. It's all a bit of a mix of different biomes. So I think just to be safe, I'm going to drain it. Yeah, all the way up to here. That's quite a lot, but <laughs> there's only one way to put your... Well, there's only one way to do it. Put your best foot forward. And I have now successfully marked out the entire area where the river needs to be removed. All of this over here is dripstone caves. Although I have unfortunately run out of sand. I've got this that I can mine up, but I, I doubt it's going to be enough for the project. So I'm going to place down the sand that I have available. And then I'll quickly nip back home to get a new shulker box worth of sand. Everything in there should be enough. Let's also dry out all of the sponge. And let's hurry up and finish draining this river. And that is now all of the sand down everywhere is marked out. I just need to get my sponge and get draining. And finally... I have drained it all out. I think this is this is too low. Yeah, it's below Y equals 50, so that is good, and it's even that way anyway. So yeah, that was a <laughs> that was a crazy, crazy project. It better be worth it for this squid farm. I do now have to dig out a massive hole here, and I've come to realise, guys, that if I continue this squid farm, there is absolutely no chance that I get round to doing the end portal room, and and that is more important to me. And yes, having unlimited ink sacks will be very useful in the future, but I think I'm I'm going to have to just try with what I've got. Otherwise, I'd be pretty certain to be, <laughs> be going overtime in this one. And something tells me my editor <laughs> definitely doesn't want that. So yes, whilst I am going to need a lot of black concrete, I'm hoping that I have enough wither roses here to do it. And you know what? I probably do. You know, maybe I have just been wasting time. I do, I'd like I say, I do want a squid farm. It will be faster than a wither rose farm. But for the current project, this is probably going to be enough for me. I'll start by crafting as much as I can. And there's already one shulker box filled up. And I already am starting to think that I'm probably now going to run out of sand because I, I used it all in draining up that river, didn't I? Although, hang on, there's still quite a bit left. We might just be okay. And I think with that, I've probably got enough. Yep, making a squid farm is completely unnecessary for this project. But yeah, like I say, it might be useful for future projects. And that is every bit of concrete sorted. Look at that, I've got gravel and sand to spare. And I will also need a load of other items, which I will proceed to gather up. And I've pretty much got all the items we're now going to need to do this end portal room. As you can see, it's a, it's a lot of items. The only issue is that the, oh, the black concrete is not yet converted. You know what? I should probably do that. Easiest way will be to load up this machine and then get mining. And finally, everything has been converted, which means I can grab all of these shulker boxes and also a bunch of blaze rods. From there, I'm going to see how my popped chorus fruit's doing. Look at that. Looks beautiful. It's all ready. I suppose the main thing that this room is missing is a couple of crafting tables. So let's put one there. 
and the same thing on this side. And now I need about six stacks of end rods. We've already got four. And another two stacks there should be perfect. And finally, some purple -pur blocks and purple -pur stairs. And the only thing I can think that I'll probably need is something to break the end portal frame. Yes, we're, we're going to be breaking it. You just use the same method that you used to break bedrock. But I am very, very happy with everything I've got. Although I've just realized I can't count and I actually need 23 stacks of end rods. Not six stacks. Doesn't look like this farm is going to be quite fast enough for all the cores for it. I need to... It's all unraveling fast. So I'll have to harvest the extra bits from the end. Which shouldn't be too difficult. There's literally chorus plants everywhere. All of this will definitely be enough. Although I can't for the life me remember where the end gateway is. Damn. I'm a little bit lost now. Turns out my problem was I was flying in completely the opposite direction. It's very easy to find. I can set all of these off cooking. And whilst that's doing that, I can be off working on the end portal room. Well, guys, in classic SB737 fashion, I was not recording as I've done all this, but we're now <laughs> we are above the end portal room, and we're just we're just blowing it up. Okay, as you can see, very satisfying. We've found loads of diamonds from doing this as well. I will try not to die. As you can see, though, very very good method for making a very very big hole. These seal fish are also getting on my nerves. So you guys, well, let's just say it's not going to end too well for you. That's right. Get blown up. <laughs> Whoa, I'm getting blown up as well. I'm okay though, I've got good armor. But yeah, whilst I was forgetting to record, I basically just said that I have got a, a lot of... Well, I need a really big hole, and I don't have time to manually mine it all. And I've now laced the entire outside of this with TNT. Let's see what happens as the chain goes. It's just going to blow up, and we should hopefully see some, some areas revealed. This is just basically the border. There we go, it's, it's going all the way around. And I think I should do another one above it, just so that we can reveal the area. And how many silver fill? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm just going to proceed to drop a TNT on all you guys. Yeah, watch this. Are you ready? Good night, Vienna. <laughs> oh, he's still loads of you. So this is about the size of the room that I'm going to need. I just need to take out this entire middle bit with TNT. And I've placed down so, so much TNT. Let's blow it up and uh, <laughs> watch the magic happen. I've got to get... To a bit of a safe distance as well. Oh my goodness, I could have died there, but wow! We've really made some good progress with that one. So whilst I have dug out an absolutely massive room, it's still not actually quite big enough for the entire end portal room, because it's going to be a big thing, it's going to look amazing, but I, I'm going to start building, because if I don't, <laughs> we're, we're definitely going to run out of time. And the first thing to be done is to remove the end portal frame. We're going to do that using pistons and TNT. If I just go like that, you'll see that the first bit of frame has been removed. Basically works exactly the same as Breaking Bedrock does. Let's get all 12 of them removed. And that is the entire frame removed. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Can't say I've ever done anything like that before. And now around this frame, I am going to be adding these purple stairs, which creates a very cool looking end portal. Each of the corners are going to have slabs like this. And then stairs either side facing that way. And then if I put one in the middle, you can see it creates like that effect. And I'll do that on all of the sides. And then the next thing I'm going to need is quite a lot of black stained glass. So we'll grab loads and start to build a bit of a floor with it. It's now day 3601. Oh dear. <laughs> and yes, I, I may technically have run out of time in this episode, but um, <laughs> I'm not stopping just yet. I at least want to make some half decent progress on this room. And each of these four sides are going to branch off into a different colour using a mixture of glass and also concrete. And I have made a bit more progress. You can see it, it is starting to take shape and it will look really good when it's finished. I'm kicking myself that I thought it was a good idea to make a squid farm when I had this massive project. I don't, don't know why I thought I would have time for all this. But we have completely run out of time. I, I can't keep going. It's, it's getting late. If you want to see this video, then, uh, you know, I, I, I won't have time to finish this today. So the only option is that we finish this portal room in the next episode, which which isn't a problem. But I would just love to keep going with building this. But, but I'm not going to, guys, okay? This is... This is what we're, we're getting so far, okay? <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks great, doesn't it? But yeah, it will look great. I mean, it's a cool custom portal, if nothing else. Since I went overtime in the last episode, I'm already three days into this one. And that is all because of this project at the end of this corridor. Let's head through this portal. And yes, it takes me straight to my soon-to-be-finished end portal room. But before I can work on that, I actually need to go to the end. And I need to go out in search of end cities. There's a couple of them up ahead. And why am I going out in search of end cities? Well, quite simply, it is to collect the these dragon heads. And I also wouldn't mind getting a few more Elytra. I'll also take diamonds. There's no, not really any point in taking gold or any of the other stuff. Let's just keep searching. 
I am finding end cities all the time, but if it's not got an end ship, then I'm not interested. So it looks like that one ahead actually fits the quota. That's two heads down and two to go. The third one has also been obtained, along with the Elytra. And with this, I've got the four that I wanted. Let's get the fourth one of this as well, and then realize I, I forgot to bring my under chests. Not the best news since I am completely out of firework rockets. Although there's no need to worry, since I've got one right here at the end city. And now thanks to that, I can head back home. And I might as well grab a fifth and a sixth one while I'm in the area. Can't seem to stop finding them now. End gateway spotted. So let's get back home. Turns out I had loads of these in this chest already, along with an entire shulker box of like, I forgot about them. But these four heads will still be very, very useful. And now I'd like to get an unbreaking and mending book. These guys are probably the cheapest way to buy it. And we'll put it all together with the anvil, just so I've got spare wings in case my original ones break. And speaking of original ones breaking, the ones I'm wearing right now don't look too good, so they can be repaired at the pigment farm. And now that's sorted, let's have a timer on the screen and see if I can track down a notch apple in under 10 minutes. This will be quite the challenge. The good news is I've managed to find a desert, as well as the world's smallest swamp, but tracking down the pyramids seems to be a bigger challenge. Although the first one has been found, and it looks like I've never been to this desert before, thank goodness. No success in this first one, and time is already ticking. Maybe this was a bit of a harder challenge than I first thought. Second one was also no good, and there's only seven minutes left. There's another one right here, but it too was also no good. Although I am finding these pretty fast. <laughs> Literally one behind me, one in front of me. Just four and a half minutes to go. I should probably stop grabbing regular golden apples and... But you know what? I just... I can't say no. <laughs> right, you know, speed things up. We'll blow it up like that. I'm getting a lot of pyramids, but not the RNG I need to get the notch apple. Maybe this one will be better. Nope, it was the worst one yet. Maybe the mineshaft carts will, uh, will help me. Maybe not. Are we setting up for yet another failure? Yep. Yes, we are. Just two minutes to go. Oh dear, oh dear. Although you'd have to say, like, for the amount of time I've spent, I have actually been finding a lot of them, which is good. It's a massive desert. And this pyramid is the last chance. It's in a village, which is always a good news. But there's nothing in here. The ten minute dream will be over. And it looks like it we is. So, yeah, that's not good. Could a ruined portal save the day? Nope. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nothing in that one either. Just use the totem. Yep. Great work, SP. Try and be more careful. It's all unraveling fast, guys. I wasn't really counting on how many I've searched, but hey, we found it. Alrighty, perfect. That is more like, alright, you know, 14 minutes, 38 or whatever it was. That's not too bad. Especially since it looks like the desert's starting to turn into ocean. Yeah, I am very, very happy with that. Just check a room portal to be sure. Nothing there. And I would make that into a portal underwater, but it'd be too much hassle. Let's just build one manually. It's a few thousand blocks of a journey back home. Apparently not the first time I've been in this area. On my way back, I've come across a bastion. Just interested to see if there's a notch up. Three netherite ingots. That's pretty good. What about this one? Nothing else good, but definitely worth a visit. Now to continue the journey back home. Here we are. Let's grab an item frame and add it to the wall. Look at that. It's, uh, it's nearly full. And now I can give me plushy a little twirl and get some sleep. And as most of you guys know, I did build a working teleporter in Minecraft. And I've had a new destination. <laughs> Bedrock, yes. And what happens when we press this button? It teleports me to my world in Bedrock Edition. A lot of people have asked me for this, so I've made it possible. I have had to modify a few things here and there just to make it work. Because on Java, my world is massive and uh, some things would break it if I carried them over. Got my whole house here <laughs> complete with the goat of Minecraft. And there's so, so many other things to see. It's available on the Bedrock Marketplace so that any device can access it. And I've made it as cheap as the Marketplace will actually let me make it. The link is in the description or just search SB737 in the Minecraft marketplace. There's also eight pushes to try and find the world and spoil it. <laughs> One of them's in here. And now if I press this button to teleport, I'm now back home. And now I should probably finish what I meant to finish in the last episode, this end portal room. Put the dragon heads in here for later. And I found out where I put all my ender chests. <laughs> About to have cleared that mystery up. Let's grab these diamonds, as well as these ones over here, and then continue working on this outer rim. I seem to be creating a similar black void as the last episode. Basically, I'm just bringing this down and down into Sophia and I need to keep mining out the floor. It will be a lot more colorful when I add all the quartz and color decorations, but for now, the priority is completing the bottom half. And I'm too scared to use TNT down here, just in case I damage everything that I've done up there. It's a little bit dark to see, but I've almost dug out everything and filled in this black dome. That's another layer dug out. So I'll add a load more blocks and let's dig out this final layer. And I also have to say, looking at the end portal from below will look so, so cool. That's all dug out. Let's place the concrete. There we go. And at the moment, this just looks like a massive black void. But if I just fly up here, grab black stained glass and place it on top of all the concrete, which will make things stand out a bit better. Although since it is so dark down there, I'm going to start grabbing end rods and place them all the way around 
around and also on top of these. There'll be quite a lot of them down by the time I'm finished. And I'm going to be building these end rods and glass panes all the way up to the top where the portals will be. But you can probably start to see how the coloured theme of this build is <laughs> it's all coming together. And is anybody else stressed that I'm doing all this without holding my totem in my hand yet? This is where I could die. Although my mob switch is on, so nothing could spawn. I've got nothing to worry about. And it looks like I've now run out of end rods. So I'm going to nip back home. But I think using the nether portal will be the best way. If you're wondering why I managed to run out, it's because I apparently had an inability to count properly in the last episode. So I'm going to need to nip down here to harvest more of these chorus fruit and get some glowing sacks while I'm at it. I, I still don't know how the glow squids are getting in here, but it's not too much of a problem. Next, all of these can be smelted. Have we got any in here? Oh, I've got loads. In that case, I'll just grab all the blade rods. I'll probably leave... Um, I, I guess there wasn't enough for them to go into this side. And that did not take long at all. In fact, there's, there's a couple more coming. And whilst I'm at my base, I'm just kind of curious to see how the amethyst farm is doing. I kind of left it alone for ages. It should just be running on a continuous clock. And filling up these chests and oh my goodness look at that that's that's pretty good you know that's uh we're not used to get that many amethyst shards in fact it looks like it was just harvested like two minutes ago as well when i finally want to make tinted glass that will be very useful and now let's get back to work on building this and that is all of the panes and the end rods down underneath and now to grab a few different materials and build the structures on top of these tiles there's going to be upside down stairs like this then quartz stairs all the way around and upside down ones on top of that and gray concrete above that with gray glass to fill in the gaps and now to do the same thing in the other three corners and that is the entire underneath now done. And so let's start now building up the next few parts. There's going to be walls built up here and they're going to be made out of glass panes with more end rods being added as well. And I'm also going to start building up this top side of the dome with black concrete. And now I'm going to start to build the areas where the four portals are going to be going. The portals are now starting to take shape, as you can see. So I might as well grab some flint and steel and light them all up. It's starting to look good, but there's still plenty more work to be done above them. It's a way bigger process than I realised because of all the glass and the end rods and stuff, but... It is starting to take shape. I've also now run out of end rods so I can craft a load more and top up on supplies. And we are now starting to get quite close to the roof here. It's starting to take shape even more now. I'm just building those beams which will all connect to a part. Oh, don't go through the portal. As I was saying, those beams will connect to some pillars in the middle which are connected by end rods and the purple blocks like so. And that is all of those done. Now to connect everything up. Good progress has been made up here. Just need a few more of these purple slabs to go like this and like that. And I also need to finish all of this concrete, but I've, <laughs> I've completely run out. I thought that would be impossible with the sheer amount that I brought. But it looks like I am going to need to go and get a load more. And if I can remember where the original portal was, I think I should break it as well. Bit of parkour needed here to swoop back in. And it looks like the yellow one is going to be the closest one to connect in to the portal. It worked perfectly. Now to grab some sand, gravel, and wither roses to make black dye. That should give me loads of concrete powder, which I can then turn into concrete. And now that I've got all of this, let's get back to work. The top is completely done, so I just need to cover it in concrete. And I think the room's finished. I'm also glad to say that I brought more than enough black concrete. And the only other thing I do need to add is a beacon beam. Let's grab 12 of these, as well as blocks of iron. And I'm not going to have just one beacon beam, which <laughs> I just realised these aren't going to work yet. But instead, I'm going to have three on each... Oh, that's not quite... <laughs> three on each side. Basically, wherever I've placed the blackstone slab is where it's going to go. So I think in this position right here and those two bits, I'm going to have to dig a hole all the way up to the surface. That's the first one, Doug. And of course, it's it's at the top of some sort of mountain. 114 blocks in the air. <laughs> okay, I've got a lot of digging to do here. But that is the first one successfully dug. And there goes the beam. For the next one, it's just going to be easy to get the position of that and then fly straight up and then dig back down again in the exact same location. That's the second one done and the third one as well. That is all 12 beacons placed. Now to continue digging the holes. Also whilst I'm doing this mining, I'd just like to say that I'm on a quest for 4 million subscribers this year. So if you enjoy my videos and like my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And that is every single one of these now successfully dug. I'll add a bit more of a border around the beacons and a couple of emeralds should be added underneath stuff as well. And with these final ones in place, I'll break all the stone and that is mission accomplished. This entire build is now finished. Although I should also grab the dragon heads because I want them, I think, to... 
Where do I want them to go, actually? Something like this. It's so weird placing them down, isn't it? But it just adds a little... Oh, you need to move. But it just adds that little bit extra decoration. But what do you think, guys? It's a, it's a pretty different looking build, isn't it? Kind of epic. I can put some stuff in these chambers if I want to. No idea what. Maybe... You know what? Why don't we put some ender chests in? Something like that. And then change this to be a crafting table. Alrighty, that is all of that done. Don't want to forget to grab my TNT. And also any diamond ore that's left in the area. There's actually quite a lot of them dotted around. And guys, don't look so scared. Yes, my pickaxe is so, so close to breaking. But I'm keeping an eye on it, so don't worry. Now with those extra 12, let's not waste any more time. I need to get it repaired at the gold farm. And now that everything is fully repaired, I can begin the project of completing the bottom layer of this netherite beacon. I need just five more blocks. Which involves... Finding ancient debris straight away, I guess. <laughs> I just started my tunnel literally from there. I got three pieces already. But yeah, I'm going to dig a long, long tunnel and then place down loads and loads of TNT. I decided to try spacing these out a little bit more than I usually do. See if it's actually more efficient or not with my TNT. And that is all of them placed down. Let's light it up and start collecting up ancient debris. Because I've spaced them out more, the chain will break quite a lot. But that's why I've got my infinity flame bow. And whilst I'm mining it up, the chain keeps on going. And that's why I usually do so much. TNT close together because then the chain never breaks and it does make a bit of a bigger hole but hopefully being able to reignite it with flame will make it worth it because these are not very long chains some of them. I also got like over 50 ancient debris just from mining the tunnels so that's quite a big success. And so spacing them out more I, I didn't really find much on this first tunnel I made maybe six or seven pieces and I think that's probably because the hole is just so much smaller but I've got some much much bigger tunnels to blast up. I'm going to put a little ender chest here just so I know where, like, the corner point is. That tunnel is the longest one. Let's start off by going down this one. Yeah, I think next time I'm going to place way more TNT down. I just feel like this is such a slower way to get the ancient debris. But hey, when you get a massive chain like that, it's, it's actually a lot better. And that is my first stack obtained. I need about three in total. Seems to be going through an area where I'm getting quite a bit of ancient debris now, which is good. Maybe I shouldn't write this method off just yet. Looks like another tunnel end has been reached. Almost missed a piece of ancient debris. Just saw it as I was flying back. Every piece counts. And the beauty of flying back through the tunnels is that I will spot pieces as I'm going. And it's also good training for me, Elytra, as well. I'm back at the origin because I found the ender chest. And of all three tunnels, this one should be the longest. And now I'm up to two stacks of ancient debris. Let's just keep going. And it looks like I have now reached the end of another tunnel. I have 171 ancient debris. And as I fly back, I'll keep my eye out for any more. I think I'm back at the beginning. Didn't manage to spot any. Let's fly up this hole and head back home. Although whilst I'm in this neck of the woods, I might as well come to the blaze farm and gather up XP to mend my pickaxes. And now everything is repaired, except for the bow, because you can't put both infinity and mending on it. I'm curious to see just how many blaze rods we have now got. Looks like plenty, plenty more. And what about the gold supplies? That is also looking pretty healthy indeed. So now I shall fly on home and see if I actually got enough ancient debris to finish the bottom layer of the beacon. I'm going to quickly smelt it all using this super smell Melter. And whilst I wait for that, I can drop off all this black stone and grab some gold. This has actually just made me realise I, <laughs> I need a bit more gold. Kind of annoying when I was literally just at a gold farm. But not to worry, I'm sure there's going to be plenty at this one up here. Yep, the chest is pretty full. Four and a half stacks will be enough. Looks like all of this has finished smelting. And I've got a little bit more in this sugar. Okay, actually, some to smelt as well. We've got ingots. I wonder if I can just put them directly in there. How many can we craft? Oh, quite a decent amount, you know. Now then, it's just going to be enough. All the rest of this can just go into the shulker box, as well as these two extra pieces. And look at that. The bottom layer is now complete. It looks amazing. I'm so glad I'm finally making some decent progress on it. One more netherite block, and the beacon will be halfway done. And now I can crack on with the next project, which will be to finish the squid farm that I started last episode. And the thing that I need to do right now is dig out quite a big hole. So I'm going to set up a haste to beacon and then get mining. And that is everything dug out. I'm going to grab a load of obsidian and then I'm going to start building some portals. Plus I've also realised I need to make this hole one block wider. Kind of makes me wish that I hadn't broken my beacon. And all of this has now successfully been mined out. Loads of spare blocks on the floor. Not going to worry about them. Instead I'm just going to start placing obsidian. It's going to be a 17 high portal and I'm going to connect it up all the way to the other side, hopefully not falling. And there's only going to be two of these portals anyway, which isn't going to be too bad. So let's go ahead and <laughs> take a little bit of fall damage. But I've got portal 
Number one. Actually, I lied. There's going to be two more portals, not one more. And now that they are all in, let's grab a few stacks of glass and fill in the gaps in the middle, as well as the sides too. And apparently, for whatever reason, I, I have not brought enough glass. Don't know how I managed that. But it does mean that I'm going to have to go all the way home, grab plenty more, drop off a load of this junk, and then continue adding these glass walls. I'm also going to cover the tops with glass, light the three portals, and then I need water. Thankfully, this is not a river biome, so I didn't have to drain the water here so I can fill two buckets, and then go along and fill in the whole thing thing with water source blocks. This is probably going to take quite a bit of time. And that is this one now completely filled in with water. Time to do the same thing on this side. And this side is also done. Now I'm at the middle point and I'm going to build up 10 blocks and dig a tunnel to where my AFK spot is going to be. This block right here is where I should stand. And right here is where another portal is going to be. Let's remove this portal from up here. And now when I go through, there's a chance... Well, <laughs> I'm greeted with an ink sack. I think I'm going to be greeted by a few squid. Okay, not just a few. What have I done? They're everywhere. <laughs> what a mess you guys are making. Get out of here. Well, at least the farm seems to be working. But now we need to make it actually fit correctly into place. My first portal will be in the wall right here. This lantern can be removed. And I need to get some slabs for... In fact, no, actually. Do we just remove the slabs completely and... Yeah, I think that works, doesn't it? I'm hoping this all links. We've just got a lot of portals in one area. But this is where the squids should be able to come through. Let's just light up this one. Yeah, we're good. The, the problem is with lighting it that squids are going to start coming through. But I need the materials to build the rest of the farm, so I've got no choice. Yep, yeah, well, it's working. Look at them. All in this area, ready to be removed. Now I'm just decorating the area to make it look a bit nicer. And this is my version of decorating a room, just basically <laughs> filling it all up with the same block. The chest that will collect the ink sacks is going to be there, and then we're going to have hoppers going in. There's also going to be a row of glass in front, which I think well, actually, I better not fill it all in because I need to place a boat which contains a baby chicken. Then if I give... Okay, I don't want to be in the boat with you. The idea is if I give the chicken some seeds, it'll grow up faster, but its hitbox is too small. So instead, I'm going to break the boat, give the chicken its seeds, and then lure it in. There we go. Fully grown chicken. We can send you... Theoretic... Okay, well, I know I need to break this block. You can go on down. Then we need to do the same thing and get another chicken. There we go. Don't get in the boat. Are you just doing this on purpose? Run straight for the boat every time. And now that you've grown up, I'll send you to go on top of the other one. There we go. Chicken number three. And I'm going to have to nip home and grab another boat for the last one. Just five spruce planks will be required. And hopefully in the next 13 eggs. Well, I, I did get a baby. It always seems to want to run over there. I'm guessing because there's an adult chicken or something underneath. That's all I can think of. Don't you dare run outside now. No, we're blocking this up. Final boat down. Definitely had enough of dealing with these chickens. But now that it is done, the portal can be completed and then lit up with my flint and steel if I can find it. I think if I just do it there, that works. Let's patch up the roof. And in theory, well, it's almost done. We've got a hole there. I don't want that. Are we okay on the other side? I think we are. So in theory, it should be completely done. The only thing that could possibly go wrong is if the squids come through this portal. But I'm confident. If I stand here... The squid are now spawning. So let's head through and, and see if it's working. No squids there. <laughs> Why are just none spawning whatsoever? Although we do have one little link sack. Okay, well, um, you know, we'll put it in there. It makes me feel like it's working. So the first fix for my farm will be to move this portal and move it one slot along to be further away from the other portal. That should solve the problem of squids turning up in there and now they will be in there. And now if I go back through, stand here for a short amount of time and then go, go back through again, some squid have come through. And so I am technically getting ink sacks, but I've also discovered an issue. My arms are a bit more 3D in 1.18, so under here, there is, like, it becomes a river biome at slightly at, at certain points in the dripstone caves. Here we are, as you can see, if I go down, I'm in a birch forest. If I swim up, it becomes a river and goes back to a birch forest. Well, that's a problem. So I think my best option, rather than cutting corners like I did before, is to instead drain out a lot more of the river so that we do not run into any more problems and, and efficiency is as good as it can be. The mob cap for squids is really, really low. So even if just there's a few spawned in here, you know, it only takes like four or five to spawn and then my farm won't work. So I kind of have to <laughs> make sure it's fully working perfectly and there's no water. Well, there's no water in a river biome at the very least anyway. Never really a fan of doing this, but let's uh, start placing down sponges. I think I'll also find it very useful to grab a hoe. And there's no point in me draining all of in here because that is literally just all going to be dripstone caves. So I'm blocking it off with sand so I can get back to getting rid of... Oh, look at more gaps. <laughs> They've all got to go. And that's one compartment down, many more to go. And I'm happy that over this side, I have definitely drained enough this time. And I've had a really good look on this side. And I think it is all either burnt forest or dripstone cave so I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about draining it here and I've discovered that a squid has spawned underneath this river I, I think there's like a water cave underneath the river 
where squids can spawn. I really chose the worst place ever for this farm, but I'm going to drain out as much of it as I can. And I think I've pretty much drained everything that needs to be. I mean, down here I can drain if I want, but it, it's probably too low for squid to spawn anyway. So now after making all these little adjustments, it's time to see if it's making the farm actually work. Let's head on through the portal and <laughs> see what happens. Okay, no sign of squids being everywhere, except for everywhere in here. Oh, look at this. We've got an egg as well. Brilliant. An egg farm we've created and a... A salmon as well, but in a very, very short amount of time, we've got we've got so many ink sacks. This is fantastic. I think my best option now is to fly back home, dry out all of the sponge, and then dump it into the storage. And now I want to grab plenty of shulker boxes, which will be ready to be filled with ink sacks. And then I'm going to go through this portal, add some torches, and AFK right here for quite a bit. Plenty of time has passed. I have still sometimes got the problem of squid connecting to this portal. And when that happens, ink sacks will then go back through. But just look at the success of this. Every single shulker box has been filled. This has solved all of my problems. Why on earth are there pillagers in in the boats? I have no idea. Anyway, let's gather all of these up, dye them all black, and head back home. Next, this chest can be loaded up. What will I do with all that black dye? I have no idea, but I'm sure I'll need it at some point. And now to start gathering the materials for a massive new project. Whilst I did have quite a lot of glass in those shulker boxes, I think I'd like more. So I'm first of all going to fly to the EOL farm to grab plenty more gunpowder and then drop that off at home to be used in the future. And then I want to continue using this desert right here to collect up even more sand. Blowing it all up is probably the most fun part. They can all be easily gathered up and placed into shulker boxes. And that is all four shulker boxes filled to the top, which means I can once again head back home. From there, I'd like to fill this double chest with sand, which will mean loads more glass will end up down at this storage. And to cope with all that glass, I'm going to need some hoppers and to then try and head up here. There we go, successful. I'm going to put hoppers along the sides and then more along here as well, going into these so that any glass that's coming through it will be able to cope with it all. And these hoppers need to come down the sides and connect up to those ones. And in fact, I'm a little bit worried. Actually, I'm going to just move these. So I'm wondering if the items will actually get stuck on the hoppers or something if I tried that. So instead, we'll do something more like this. And then that one can go into there. That can be changed back to stone. And then this can all be blocked up. And you may now be wondering, why isn't there loads and loads of glass coming through? And the answer is because I accidentally left this lever flick. So yeah, this is completely full. They're all going to start filtering out now and go down to the storage. The only reason I needed all those hoppers was for the case if I ever left all that smelting because of the chunk load and then I went out of the area. The backlog of items wouldn't then despawn and there'd be enough hoppers to pick them all up. And now I'm going to be taking a load of this glass, dyeing it white and loading up the shulker boxes. That's all the glass sorted. It's also going to require a load of warped fences because they won't burn. And the same is true with the gates. And I now have every single thing that I need except for concrete. I still need 16 stacks of white concrete. Don't they have to be white concrete, but it will make it look nicer. Coupled with white dye, we can craft plenty of the powder and start converting it. And these are all now done. And so I am now fully ready to start the build. It's going to be done at spawn. And I don't know if I said, but it's, it's going to be like a roller coaster that's also an iron farm. The place that I want to build it is going to be right here. And this time it doesn't involve portals, so it's, it's not going to interfere with the shulkers like uh, like before. They were, they were all getting the wires crossed. It was a bit of a nightmare. In fact, it's actually because of the shulker farm that I'm having to build a new iron farm. And this one, yeah, it's going to be so, so efficient and so, so so fast. And it's also going to be so, so stupid getting all the villagers in it. But I'll worry about that one when I actually get to it. Project deforestation has gone very, very well. Now I just need to start flattening out this ground. And I can use all the blocks that I've got from that to cover up this ravine. And that is all now completely covered up. Well, it is for apart from this little hole right here. I'm just going to tidy up the terrain a little bit, you know, terraform it where it needs to be. And I'd also like to change the stone in this floor to be grass blocks. And now that everything is looking good, let's chuck all of this stuff out here. And then all these extra items that I've just got in my inventory can be taken back to my house and shoved into the item sorter. And whilst I'm in the area, I'm also going to take the opportunity to repair all of my tools since they are looking a little bit broken. And now that that's all done, Let's begin building. Right here, I'm going to build a little system that will transport items upwards because some of the golems will fall down here and then the ice will, well, the ice and the water will push them along. Then water columns will push them upwards. So let's box it in so that the water can't go anywhere. Add gates so that the items can get through, but the water can't. And then add the actual water. And I forgot I'm building this in a biome where water will freeze. You know what? I've got an idea. Go back home, grab some glowstone, and place it underneath. This part, we're going to have loads of glass, and then we just need a little area. Yeah, so there's going to be like water like that and like that. And then that will flow along. I've been busy building this shape and created a nice little area where lava can go in. Obviously, these gates won't burn. And it'll perfectly spread 
and there's no gaps for it to fall onto the water. The lava is what will deal with the golems. And so now I can just keep building up these walls. This is as high as the glass wall is done. As you can see, I'm also repeating the same thing over there. Now I need to grab some white concrete and build the platform on which the golems will spawn. Around the edge of all this, I'm going to be having these fences and then water in each corner, which will perfectly reach the edges, but won't flow down. My only issue is that it, it will freeze. As you can see, that one is literally just frozen right in front of my very eyes. So this seems like as good a time as any to fly back home and get some signs. Then I can waterlog the water and it won't freeze. And I can't really waterlog it with something like a fence because it'll get in the way. I could do a gate, I suppose, but you know, signs just seem like the best option at this point. Especially when you see just how many signs I've got here. More than enough for the task. Now placing the sign like that will waterlog it. And all the water at the bottom of these now is no longer... It's covered as you can see, so it won't turn back to ice. So I might as well unfreeze all of that. And I can do the exact same thing on this side. Now to place the water and add the signs. And now let's get these item water towers built. So this is the system that we have got going down here. Obviously the water is freezing again as usual, but every single bit of iron is going to gather up right in this very spot here. It'll then be sorted into hoppers, but I'll worry about that later. And instead, I'm just going to start building a big glass platform that's going to cover most of the stuff. And at the very least, it will stop all of the water from freezing. I'm also going to add these powered rails, which are what the pillagers are going to be going on. And they're going to be whizzing around, scaring the poor villagers and making iron golems spawn. And this right here is a little system that is going to make a pillager stay still. He's gonna stay still on this, not go up there for a, for like maybe three or four seconds. That will scare all the villagers, give them enough time to spawn a golem, and then they will go on up and carry on with the, the pillager to scare more villagers. If it sounds complicated, it's actually not that bad, and I'm, I'm sure you understand when you actually see it. It's just that I'm not the best at explaining these things. And this minecart track has gone all the way as high as it needs to for this bit, so I can begin, well, I'm going to be building like another one of those and those, which will allow more golems to spawn. And now two more of these golem spawning platforms have been done. And now I'm going to keep building up this track. It is starting to take shape. It, it looks a little strange because it's all made out of glass. It's kind of hard to see in the snowy area. But I think it's now time that I tried my hand at the very tricky task of getting some of the villagers into the farm. I have a village right here, which is, is very useful, but that village won't have anywhere near the amount that I'm actually going to need. So I'm going to grab loads of hay bales, as well as wool and wood, and then I can craft a load of beds, place them in the village, make a bunch of bread, and give them the food so that they'll all breed. And whilst they're getting me baby villagers, I can continue building. So I'd pop to the village, and look at that, we've got loads of baby villagers. It's, it's, the plan's working perfectly. I'll leave them all to keep busy and uh, getting me more villagers, and I'll continue building this. And two more of these have now been done, which means there's only two more to go. The farm really is starting to take shape, but it's it's missing something pretty crucial. Yep, you guessed it. <laughs> it's missing the villagers. So I'm going to craft 16 beds, and then they belong in each of the four corners of all of these different stations. So there's going to be quite a lot of beds, and they're basically just going to be around like this. Then you've got string on top of the beds and carpet on top of that. And the final thing to be done is remove all of these wooden blocks and add the same thing to these other corners. Although for this one and the one over there, it's going to only be three beds and then that one and the one over there is going to be four beds. So an end rod is going to be what blocks the villagers in and then we're just going to have a bed like that. Actually, yeah, I, 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 you know what? I'm just going to swap it around, I think. Not 100% sure if bed direction matters, but I definitely know putting them in that direction does work. Next, we'll put string on, carpet it all up, then move on to the other two corners. And there we go. They are now all in. And now I need to make a track to actually transport the villagers. So I shall grab all the blocks and materials needed to make that happen. I've got everything that I need. So let's get this first track built. Pretty sure that if I make them drop right here, that they should go in, but you never can tell with villagers since they usually manage to screw something up. There we go, this has reached all the way down to the village. Then we just lure them over here with a job site block. That's right, this ain't gonna be the job that you think it is, Sonny Jim. He goes in, alrighty, no problem. Yep, you're not having that job anymore. If I quickly go like, oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, well, you know what, it still worked. But the real question is, how well has it worked? There he goes. It worked pretty well. Yes, he took a bit of fall damage, but he's not dead. That's the main thing. That could actually be a great quote, couldn't it? Yeah, he took fall damage, but he's not... Whoa! Of course something has to go wrong. You get back in there. You... <laughs> it can never just go perfect, can it? No, he has to fly out onto an end rod like a crazy guy. Let's just place a block on top of there so that does not happen again. And we can get another villager. And you're in, you're in prime position. Come on. Oh, he's just escaped. But he's come back for more. Come on. 
Oh, come on, he's so close. <laughs> now they're all having a massive mating at spawn, so none of them are going to want to come over. No problem, though. I'll just have to kidnap a child. Don't take that out of context. I'm going to do a little two for the price of one here. Yes, boat in a minecart's an interesting idea. Whether it works remains to be seen. If I break this, are you all going to die? Let's, let's find out. Okay, wait, they went down. I, I think they're good. Look at that. Three feet in a pod. All in bed. Happy as they could be. And I'm going to have the very fun task of filling the entire rest of this farm with even more villagers. Although it shouldn't be too hard. You just wake them up whilst they're in bed, push them along a little bit, put a minecart down, and uh, see you later, mate. Honestly, I I'm having way too much fun with this. I just realised I can actually physically push them out of bed as well. I did not know this. Okay, hold on. Oh, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> but the second that they get up, they're going to be transported. And oh dear, oh dear, we seem to have had a little bit of a... <laughs> A little bit of an issue here. Okay, guys, let's just keep things moving. Come on. That's it. Down you go. I'm sure that one will be back soon. Here he comes. And that is four more all in bed. And all I can do now is just keep going. I've come to realise that transporting villagers is... Uh, <laughs> it's quite annoying. The main issue has been that I didn't have enough villagers, so I have, I've placed down loads more beds... Got them all breeding. There's millions of them now. And since over 100 are going to be needed in total, it's it's just as well. That's four more in here. I'm going to add three to this little compartment. That'll be golem platform number two complete. That's one. Well, you'd think it'd be sorted. Yep, he is. He's just going the wrong way before. Nice to trap a baby villager as well. I'm sure he won't mind. And finally, there's one more adult to be sent up as well. It is starting to look like quite the contraption now, isn't it? Oh, no. This baby has escaped. I didn't think about that. You should have... Don't go down there. No. <laughs> Don't you dare jump down there, I swear. You're going to die in lava if you fall down a little bit. No! <laughs> oh, no, he died. And that's why you should never kidnap children, ladies and gentlemen. I really can't believe what I've just done. So this time, we're going to send an adult through and, and, and leave all the kids here. Welcome to your new home. Careful. Okay, they're all in bed. That's good news. I think it's best to take a little break from transporting villagers and instead add in more beds. And that's all the beds on this platform added. Now to add in the final ones on this platform. And that is all the ones on this side done as well. Now to grab plenty more white stained glass as well as redstone stuff and lots of rails. And I'm going to complete this pillager minecart track so that it goes all the way up to the top. And so I've now successfully connected this track all the way up to the very top. Next we're going to have loads of glass staircasing above it as well. And the same thing is also the case above this top track. Now to also connect this track to go all the way up to that one up there, which I have successfully done. You know, you'd think that this entire design is a little bit unnecessarily complicated for an entire iron farm. Also, we need to put glass on top of the rails so that golems don't spawn on there. But once you see this entire thing in action, I, th I think you'll just think it's amazing. As far as building is concerned, everything is done apart from these water tunnels but by using kelp and bone meal i can just add in the water right here and then you guys have told me to stop placing all the kelp like that and instead just bone meal it i don't know if there's an unlimited amount you could if you can, can is it unlimited or is it max height looks like it's unlimited so we'll <laughs> we'll do the same thing for this one and hopefully that will keep you guys happy next i will break the kelp everything should work because they're bubble columns it no longer needs to be covered up in dirt and the items are all gathering up exactly where the iron will gather glad to say that's working properly now to do the exact same thing on this side you know what, guys you're right this is this is so so much faster than placing it all i don't know why i ever doubted you all and that is the entire building bit complete the only thing i would like to do is kind of test it out by grabbing a minecart and see if it actually correctly works so i get here i stop for a, a, a split second that's so that everything can spawn and then it carries on sending me. Same thing happens at each bit. So yeah, because there's villagers here, the pillager will make them spawn an iron golem. This is just basically an overly complicated roller coaster. And then from there, I fall all the way down. And all I want to do from here is just check that it actually works going the other way as well. Since it's kind of two different roller coasters in one. Yep, it all works perfectly. So all I need now is two pillagers and about 80 normal villagers. So let's keep crafting bread. And giving it to villagers so that they will keep breeding. Oh my goodness, there's actually quite a lot of villagers now at this meet and play. But yeah, you know what? There's, there's just not enough. I've just thrown everything I've got at them by mistake. But guys, take as much bread as you want. You know, you want some pork chops. You you have what you ever you like. Now I better get back these precious tools. Yeah, they're not good enough for villagers. <laughs> and this track right here can be removed. I'm making another track for the next set of villagers. Although I have somehow run out of levers. Started off with over 40, so I'm not sure how I managed that. But thankfully, levers are probably one of the easiest things in the world to craft. 
And with that, I can get back to work in placing the levers. And the tracks are set up for the next two platforms. So let's send off more villagers. That's three more in there. And I'm going to get this entire thing filled up as quick as I can. And that is platform number three filled up, which means there's five more to go. I've almost filled up every single platform. I just need four villagers there and another 14 for this platform. However, I'm, I'm starting to run out of villagers. So I need I need to wait for more to be bred. In order to breed more, I'll, I'll actually give them some bread. And because most of this village is in spawn chunk, they will continue to grow will the baby villagers and everything which means I can grab some obsidian make a portal right here and then when I head through to the nether I'm stuck in the shulker farm that's uh, <laughs> probably the worst place to actually be the completely overloaded shulker farm might I add I should probably make a shulker box loader for the shulker farm. Anyway, if I build another portal right here, in theory, it should connect to the one I've just built. Indeed it does. And so next, I'm gonna need to head to a pillager outpost. Probably the best way to get to one is to go to this particular portal right here, which brings me to a stronghold, and then fly up and out of it. There is an outpost and, okay, I was about to say, I don't have the mob switch turned off, which is a problem because nothing can spawn, but that actually might not be a problem. So building this portal, will connect to this one. I'm gonna break this boat if, okay. Don't hit them. Okay, these guys need to be alive for me. Okay. <laughs> We're going to put you, good sir, into a boat. And you are coming with me. All right, I probably need to take off thorns, which is, is not a good thing either. There we go. He's gone through the portal. I have some non-thorns armor, although I'm out of ender chests. So it looks like we'd lure him all the way over this way. I'll just have to use skill and not get hit, which with these guys is, is, is not very hard at all. Oh my goodness. Okay. Slight disaster. Got a pillager following me. We've got a million of these guys, right? We're just going to have to suit up, get out a sword. And, uh, yeah, get rid of all of these without hurting the other guy. <laughs> all, the, all the all the stupid shulkers have started coming through. This is a disaster. Absolute nightmare. Eh? All I have to do is just turn the shulker farm off and this would not have been a problem. Can it be done? Can we can we, can we we lure the pillager through this absolute nightmare? No, he's, he's gone. He's, he's dead. Right, we're going to have to regroup here, guys. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> all damage got him. So it's time for plan B. First of all, flick these levers to turn the farm off. There we go. Now let's remember to switch off the mob switch and grab an ender chest. This is my armor with no thorns on it, which I'm going to put on if I can find them all. And then we get ready to put on a brave face and take on 60 million shulkers. Only this time we're using a bow. I think they're all hitting each other and duplicating, which is, is not helping, but all of the projectiles come after me that way and I just fly to the other side to get away from them. And even when I'm floating... I can still hit them. This has realistically been a lot more effort than it should have been. But all shulkers have been defeated. Now to try and lure two pillagers through. And you guys can be the victims. Okay, you just walked right around me, Paul. That's that's not the idea. <laughs> and you guys can follow me all this way. And now we need to stick them in boats so that we can disable their crossbows. For whatever reason, they're not very smart. And if we're in a boat together, he can't hit me no matter what. So now we just sit and wait <laughs> until his crossbow breaks. Really hope he hasn't got an unbreaking one. And I think this guy's crossbow is broken because he's, he's no longer shooting. Let me have a look. It's, visually, it's still there, but he's, yeah, he's lost the ability to use it. After relogging my game, he now has no crossbow. This other guy's taking a bit longer. I think he has got an unbreaking one, which was kind of stupid of me to get one of those. So I'll just keep waiting. And this guy has now finally broken as well. After a quick relog, he's got nothing in his hands. So for now, I will leave those two guys right here. And I'm going to hope that I now have plenty more villagers bred. Yep, by the looks of things, there's quite a few more of you guys. Here's more bread for you all as well, which I'm sure you'll all enjoy. And let's send the remaining villagers into the farm. That is platform number seven with all the villagers, which means these four right here are the last ones. So right here, I have got five baby villagers and four adult ones. But to finish that final platform, I need another 11 villagers. So I'm going to have to keep waiting for you guys to grow up now. And whilst I do that, I might as well start tidying things up a bit down here. Since all this stuff is no longer needed, don't ask why there's villagers congregating that. I think because, yeah, the villagers have been breeding in there. <laughs> yes, they've gone through the entire system and got in there. In fact, those are the final villagers I probably need as well. You know what, if I make a little hole like this and mine out the floor, it's entirely possible that when I block this up, okay, hopefully they don't walk off and die. Oh, well, that's one falling off. All right, well, they're all surviving at least. <laughs> Makes me feel a little bit better. You can go down there too. And then I might be able to make a minecart track that connects up. That's the track I have set up. So it'll just go above there and then they'll carry on up. Let's get you into there and you can then go on up. And we can see if the plan actually works. Yep, look at that. It just keeps going. And that means there is just 10 villagers to go. And I think that is the final villager into the minecart. Once this guy makes it all the way along the track, as well as this guy to the farm 
is now done. I really hope it works as intended. We're going to set a minecart going on here. And then I've got to try and get these guys to walk through. I wonder if crafting some planks and placing them around will help. Then I break this boat. Okay, don't you walk it. You know what? You, you want to be annoying? And I'm just going to put him in a minecart and send him through that way. See you later, buddy. Then we push him into this minecart. And I've just got one more to go. He is being sent through and is also put into place on the farm. If I go ahead and replace these, the farm should now start working and golems should start spawning as the, uh, the pillagers go around. So yeah, they stop right here, which should give time for a golem to spawn. Yeah, look at that. We've got two golems spawned here. Three golems spawned. Okay, this is this is going to be very, very fast, isn't it? Look at them. They're just golems falling from the sky like there's no tomorrow. And then all those items should be gathering up at the bottom right here. Although did I... Oh, we've made a bit of a mess here. I forgot about this. If I open these up, is, this, is everything going to go everywhere? But yeah, it is filling up. I, I need to make some sort of storage to collect all this stuff. I'm going to need a bunch of hoppers to make this storage. And to be honest, since I've got so much iron, that's, that's going to make life very easy now. Also grab a couple of composters. So I'm just going to temporarily click this lever to turn the farm off. Because you can see we're... We're getting a major buildup of iron. And then I'm going to try and bring hoppers all the way down. Next, we are going to have these comparators. I'm just going to make a pretty simple storage system that will auto sort everything for me. And that is the storage completely done. As you can see, it's, it's two separate systems. I guess the only thing left to be done is to switch on this lever and watch the iron come pouring through. Yeah, this is all going to fill up very, very fast indeed. And that does mean that this old farm can be removed. Don't know if I'll actually remove it because it's kind of a memory, you know, from, from simpler times. But I make sure that it doesn't work anymore. And I can also spend some time getting rid of all of these millions of golems that now inhabit spawn. And I think that is all of them dealt with. This is working very, very well indeed. And so whilst I let that keep running, I am going to repair all my tools, my light driver, broken elytra in a shulker box. This is one of the biggest farms I've ever made. It took so, so much work, but it's it's just amazing. And in fact, before I do go back and get everything repaired, I think I'll remove all of this dirt scaffolding of minecart tracks as well. And there we go. Everything has now finally been removed. The farm is still doing amazing, getting a little bit of bone meal as well. And the great thing about iron farms is they just work 24-7. You don't have to be in the area. They'll, they'll work if they're in the spawn chunks. So I don't think I'll ever have to build an iron farm ever again. Now to drop all of this off, grab the loads and loads of broken items that I have amassed, such as these elytra. And I think I'd also like to craft a little more ender chests, since I didn't really have enough, but now we've got a full stack's worth. With all that done, let's get to the gold farm and gather up all of the necessary XP. Everything's now fully repaired, and I'm going to check how much iron we now have at the farm. Look at that, loads and loads more already, and it's not even been a long time. I reckon having a a couple of crafting tables in the ground will be useful just for getting loads of iron blocks. And for now, I'm just going to put these in the bottom of the bone meal chest. And next, I think I'd like to use these last couple of days to go on a diamond mining challenge. I'm flying far, far away to brand new chunks and even find a ruined portal on the way with nothing in it. But I do now believe that the new chunks have been reached. So I'm going to dig straight downwards and attempt to find a decent cave. I don't think I've ever seen this much copper in one place. You know what? Just based on principle, I'm mining it all up. And already this cave has got diamonds galore. There's some right here and two more in the floor here as well. I reckon in 30 minutes, I should be able to get a stack of the diamond ore, especially when you consider how easy diamond is to find nowadays. I mean, look at that. Found even more right here. And it was two, three, four, five pieces. Oh, this is easy. Already got nine and we're not even two minutes in. And it seems exploring these little caves is, is not really the best way to find diamonds. However, I've, I've been proved wrong before because I've just found two more. But generally speaking, searching the bigger caves is the way to find the diamonds. Although underwater seems to be good as well. I've found so many down here. Oh my goodness, it's diamonds galore. In this one water cave, I don't know how many I've found, but it, it's, it's been like, I don't know. 12 maybe? It really is beautiful to see. Definitely nicer to be into some bigger caves again. Gives much more chance of spotting diamonds. And in just 10 minutes, I've already got 28 diamonds. Man, I'm, I'm on track for like 70 odd diamonds in half an hour. That's just completely crazy. And look at this. One, two, three. Yeah, finding diamonds is it's just so, so difficult. Just when you think you've looked everywhere in this particular cave, you realize you haven't. And oh my goodness, we've found yet another massive cave. And this one 
looks so, so good. The lava under the dripstone. I don't think I've ever seen a cave like this before. And because everything's so much lighter thanks to it, it makes seeing the diamonds actually much, much easier. Well, we're now at the halfway point of 15 minutes and I have got 40 diamonds already in that time. And I'm still not slowing down. I have to say, this is one of the greatest caving systems I've ever found. Just keep finding new areas to explore all of the time. Things have slowed down a little bit in the search for diamonds. But despite that, I'm now up to 50 and 51. Got just five minutes left and I would love to get myself an entire stack of diamonds in just 30 minutes. Although I'm starting to think that that might be a bit of a stretch even for me unless I come across a new massive cave. Uh, th these small ones, they're just not very good as I've said before, not very good for finding the diamonds. You know what, I'm gonna risk it all and dig down and See what happens. Well, digging down did get me into another cave, and a cave with an extra diamond. And the mineshaft. Mineshaft seem to be something I come across a lot down here. Two and a half minutes to go, and I need 11 diamonds. More importantly, if I want 11 diamonds, I, I actually need a miracle. Especially in a small mineshaft like this. Although, you know what? Despite its size, it has found me a few diamonds. Although, it's too little too late, ladies and gentlemen. We've done over half an hour. 57 diamonds in 30 minutes. I can't complain at that. And the best way for me to get out of this cave is just going to be to grab some obsidian, make a quick portal, and head on through. Then I can fly in this direction. I, I do recognise the area we're in. Might as well nip to spawn on the way home. So I can see just how much time we've got. Oh my goodness, yeah. Iron supplies absolutely through the roof. And it's all at the expense of these poor villagers and these poor golems. Now I think I should probably fly back home, dump a load of this stuff into the auto storage, add the deep slate diamond ore to this chest. Look at that, we've nearly got an entire row of the deep slate diamond ore. You know what, I think I might add the copper in there and lapis can go in this one. To begin with, I'd like to start a challenge. And the challenge is to fully fill both of these sides with notch apples. In order to do that, I'm gonna need just three more. So let's put them on the wall in preparation. I've repaired up my elytra so it's now at max durability. And now let's fly far, far away to brand new chunks. And now to create a portal and track down a desert. That mission has been accomplished and I've spotted my first pyramid. As expected, nothing really of use. Nothing to be found in the second one either, nor the third one. And the fourth one hasn't been any good either. But the fifth one, well, that is integrated into a village. And a lot of times in the past when I go into one of these in a village, I usually find a notch apple. Will the same happen this time? Uh, no, no, it won't. Oh well. <laughs> At least it didn't hurt to dream. I'm also actually thinking that every time I come to a village, it may be wise to steal their hay bales. Because in the last 100 days, I basically used up every single bit of wheat that I own to breed all of the villagers for my iron farm. And now let's see what the sixth pyramid has to offer. Once again, <laughs> absolutely nothing. Considering I'm trying to find three notch apples, it's, <laughs> it's not looking too good at the moment, is it? Could really do with a ruin portal stepping up and giving me what I need. Plus the other positive is that desert villages do give you loads of hay bales. So stealing up lots of these is not going to be a problem. I mean, why build a massive wheat farm when villagers will do it for you? Once again, nothing to be found in pyramid number seven. And it's the same case with the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, eleventh. Never seen a minecart chest in <laughs> in a desert pyramid before, that's interesting. Must come across every single combination possible when I search this many desert pyramids. But even after 12 of them, I've still had no joy. 13 might be unlucky for some. For me, <laughs> well, there was no joy. In theory, every 10 pyramids, I should find a notch apple. I've searched 14 and had no joy. I'm also not gonna stand on that pressure plate because I had completely run out of rockets and that, that probably could have been the end of me there. So, you know, I don't wanna be too stupid. It's amazing that maces just seem to be so, so much more common since 1.18. I think the same thing happened with jungles as well. And that is pyramid number 15 that is empty. And do you know a feature that Mojang needs to update? Yep, desert wells. Put a chest in them, just right there. It would be brilliant. Or at the very least, it would make a useless feature a little bit less useless. I'll tell you, I don't know what my record is for the most search in a row to not find a notch apple, but I don't think it can be much higher than 20. I'm starting to lose count, but I, I think this is the 17th one. And it was not a disappointment. We have finally got a notch apple. Okay, we're, we're on track now. <laughs> Things are looking up. Although there's still two more to be found and a lot more wheat to be stolen. Wow, I nearly didn't spot this one. It is completely buried underground. This has a notch apple in. I will be, uh, it'll be very satisfying. But yeah, realistically, it wasn't likely. And this is pyramid number 20. By the law of averages, I should have found two by now. <laughs> that is not the case. Although I was supposed to make the law of averages relevant, I'd have to search a lot more desert temples, so never mind. <laughs> let's not bother with any mathematics. Instead, let's keep flying around. And it looks like I'm, <laughs> well, I was about to say, I'm about to lose my elytra. It happened right as I was speaking. Not to worry though, that's why I always put a spare one in the shulker box for long, long journeys like this one. I think this is now 21. 
And we've got another one. Okay, that is great. That is absolutely huge. Look at that. Told you by the law of averages, it all works itself out. Now on this very stormy night, let's go and find the last one. Doesn't this one have? You've got a few diamonds from this whole uh, journey though. I think this is the 25th one that I have searched. And it was the 23rd time that I had no joy. But you've never seen one of these inside of a cave before. Look at this. It's, it's really, really cool. It's have to say that the loot wasn't as cool as the structure. And I think that this is the 30th one that I have searched. So statistically by now I should have got three notch apples. But clearly that has... <laughs> not actually happened. And that is 35 of them searched. Tracking them down can be a nightmare. And as I keep coming across empty ones, 40 gets closer and closer. And I think this is now the 40th one that I have been to. <laughs> My goodness, why did I think it was a good idea to try and get three notch apples? But I've come this far, I'm, I'm not going to stop now. Even if all of these are pretty useless. And finally, I have found the third one. Okay, this is beautiful. I no longer have to keep searching these stupid deserts. Although since I am in quite a big desert, I might as well search all of it. Although I'm not holding my breath as to whether I'll have any more success. It seems that we have reached the end of this desert. I didn't find any more notch apples. So now I'm going to build a portal. And instead of flying back home, I shall dig a very, very long tunnel back home. Also on this journey, I'm going to do my best to grab as much gravel as I can. Because I'm going to need a lot of it for today's massive project. Well, I have dug an absolutely massive tunnel. It must be, it's probably about 9,000 blocks long. I am also going to need a ridiculous amount of gravel today. So I've been collecting it as I go. As you can see, we filled up quite a few shulker boxes. And how have I managed to keep my tools from more breaking? Well, anytime I've come across quartz, I've just put a tool in the offhand and then mined it up for the XP to repair stuff. Look at that. Under this gravel, a bit of ancient debris as well. You'd have to make a bit of a trip home to get all of the shulker boxes, by the way. Well, this is definitely killing two birds with one stone, getting me plenty and plenty of gravel and also lots and lots of ancient debris. My goodness, it is crazy just how much gravel there is in the nether. I think my tunnel is now long enough. I've come into another of my... Uh, blast chambers so I'm going to build my way out. I was going to say hopefully avoid lava in the way. I <laughs> didn't successfully manage that. And in fact whilst I'm down here I can go around and collect up loads and loads of gravel. In some of the areas it's quite clear to see that the gravel has just been blasted up. But in other places there's quite a bit to be mined. And it's a lot better when it's not right next to lava as well. Look at that whilst mining more gravel found more ancient debris and there was two pieces here. It's just a win-win. And another piece. Oh it's brilliant. Just mine up quartz because I need to mend this shovel a bit. <laughs> the gravel is uh Really lowering its durability. That XP should be enough for me to at least mine up the gravel here. It's another shulker box filled. Although plenty more gravel is still needed. Because all the shulker boxes in the ender chest also need filling. It's a massive task and it would be a lot easier if I would just dupe the gravel. But I don't know, I feel like duping gravel is just cheating. And look at this, mining that gravel revealed you. And I should continue mining quartz as I see it. Seem to have reached the end of this tunnel. I think that's enough gravel collecting for today. Although having said that, as I'm building out, I've, I've come to even more gravel. Oh, maybe I haven't. Oh dear. It's a good job my armour is so good that lava is literally useless. And it looks like this mining expedition is now finally over. Ah, I recognize that portal. And I'm now home sweet home. I was going to go up there, but first I think I should drop off all the gravel. It can all go into here, along with the other five shulker boxes that I already had. And then all of these ones in my ender chest still need to be filled. And they're, 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 well, they'll be ready to go when uh, I'm next there. I did also drop some ancient debris off midway through that mining journey. I think, yeah, look at that. 28 in there already. If we go ahead and split this into eight, then they'll all smelt pretty fast. And whilst that's doing that, I can grab a load of... Let's just grab a load of these shulker boxes. I'd like every single one to be orange. And then I can head to the blaze farm, which, which is also an XP one. Before I AFK it, let's go and load up shulker boxes with the millions of blade rods I've got. And I bet you thought eight of these was going to be a bit overkill. It turns out I only needed seven, so it technically was overkill, but... We'll soon fill those up as I'm going to go AFK at this farm. And if I put my shovel in my offhand, that will be repaired. And now that everything is fully repaired, I can fill these last two shulker boxes with blaze rods. Gather them all up and head back home. I think I've got more blaze rods than I know what to do with at this point. And that means I've pretty much got unlimited fuel for life. Also, I completely forgot something. I spent that long digging the tunnel on the way back from getting the notch apples. That I actually forgot to put them on the wall. Now, I, I don't know if I did I put item frames on the wall already. I did, so that, that was a waste of a journey downstairs. But if we go into this shulker box, we have got the three notch apples. So let's put one there. One there, and one right there. And look at that. Every single slot has been filled. Don't really know where I'm going to put the rest of them at. And I can grab ingot, scrap, gold, all that good stuff. Combine it with the netherite in all of these. Might as well use this XP to fully heal the flint and steel as well. From there, I can craft the ingots, make two blocks, and the journey of layer number two 
has now begun. And in both of those blocks actually means we are now officially past halfway. Only took me 3,726 days to get there. And the next thing I'd like to do is turn this very simple yet very effective guardian farm into an XP one as well. It won't be too hard. The main thing I'll need to do is move this portal. For now, I'm just going to grab loads of glass, probably for the best of it's in a shulker box. Plus, I'll need scaffolding. I'm going to change this spawning platform to instead be made of glass. And it's also not really a spawning platform. It's, it's more of an AFK platform. Then I'm going to add more glass like this with some around the sides. And this is the chamber that the guardians are going to fall down. 29 high in total. The portal is at exactly this height. In fact, I'll build it up this side first. I'm also going to block up the back of the portal. This is the drop shaft on all sides. So they'll only be able to fall down a little two by one gap. Technically, this pillar and this pillar weren't necessary, but you know what? I'm sure it'll make it look better. I'm also going to block it up like that so that it's only a two high gap. They will fall all the way down here where I can add a couple of pieces of scaffolding. And I will also need a bunch of other items, so <laughs> might as well go and grab them. This is going to include hoppers, chests, iron bars, fences, and water. And now with these items, I'm going to place a couple of these iron bars and waterlog them both. Oh, not like that. <laughs> waterlog them both. These actually need to be redstone blocks, so let's go ahead and replace both of those. Then we can add some glass like so. Trap doors like that and the iron trap doors like that. Now, how do I get out of here? That is a good question. We'll just kind of... <laughs> I'll try and get out. Bit of swimming and I managed to sneak on under. Now, these ladders are what is going to keep the guardians from entity cramming. And if we put a couple of fences here, that'll stop them from escaping. Let's go and waterlog both... What on earth is going on there? That's not meant to happen. Should probably waterlog them as the last thing instead of... <laughs> yeah, build the walls first before we do anything else. So that's what we've got. And then... The reason that this is kind of going to be open and water can flow out but the guardians can't is because of the item sorters that will exist along here. I'm going to use a C pickle to align up the... Oh, oh, hold on a second. This, oh, it, it's going wrong. It's okay. It's meant to be an iron trap door there. But yeah, the C pickle will align the items so that they will go into the hoppers, which will be by the side of the wall. I'm a little bit short of water. Thankfully, we are above an ocean. So let's refill these. And now I can safely waterlog the ladders like that and the items from the guardians will kind of float like that and as you can see they will uh, they will all work fine although i'm actually going to make a slight adjustment here i think and use glass to be along here otherwise some of the items could be avoiding the sea pickles but now they can't these are going to be placed along like this you know what i'm just going to change things up a little bit all i did was swap it around so that the hoppers are on the outside because i wouldn't have had space for all the redstone in the middle otherwise and now i can be cracking on with all of the redstone just one of those super simple item sorters that you've seen me build a million times side one's redstone is complete well it will be once i get all the hoppers down anyway looking very very good and now to repeat exactly the same thing on this side that's the redstone done and also the storage next i'm going to put the item filters into each and every hopper and next i need to collect up all of the different items that are going to be sorted thankfully my old guardian farm is going to uh, provide me everything that i need and i've actually just had a thought i was going to use some of these hoppers to filter items like cod salmon you know those rare items you get but i actually don't care about those so i might as well just have five filters for the prismarine shards and five filters for the prismarine crystals and of course that's going to be mirrored on both sides so it's actually going to be 10 for each and that'll definitely work out to be more than enough space. Next, if I just pop back to the nether quickly, grab two pieces of magma and add them to the end. I need to get that blue ice, actually. That's kind of precious, but add them to the end and light them on fire. That will destroy all the excess items. And I can do the exact same thing on this side. It is almost completely done now. Although very importantly, I need to light this portal and build the other one on the other side. Right here is the place where the portal will be built. And then there's going to be a platform around it. I'm going to make the walls glass because even though I will be too far away to ever see this, I think it'd still be nice to be able to see the inside. The entire thing is going to be filled with scaffolding, except for these four areas here because they are going to be gates. Next, I can cover up the top. Now let's build the hopper clock. You've also seen me build millions of these before. Very, very simple indeed. Just goes back and forth. And then if I hook up redstone like this, we should see that the gates will close every 15 seconds. I'm going to I'm gonna make you watch until it actually closes just to make sure it's working because it's, it's not looking too promising, guys. <laughs> there we go. They're closed and then they'll open again shortly. And I've been working so hard that I've completely run out of food. Hungry work building this farm, guys. Very hungry work. Now, I am pretty sure that the farm 
is complete. Part of me feels like it's going to be a small miracle if it works perfectly. And another part of me is quietly optimistic. The only important thing that I'll definitely need to do is remove these portals. Then I can go ahead and switch off the mob switch and hope for the best. I haven't really got an easy way to actually get to the farm. But I suppose for now, I could just use this portal. And once I go through... <laughs> Everything should work. Although, in saying that, it should be working. I'm actually in the farm, which is probably the worst place for me to be. There should be millions of guardians starting to spawn below me. I'm going to be stood right here. I see them going through. That's a very, very positive sign. And if they're going to the right place, they'll shortly start to fall down this chute. Okay, I was getting worried, but we've got one. We've got two. We've got three. We've got loads. They are all now falling down very, very quickly. Oh, it's going to get very busy very, very fast, isn't it? Okay, so whilst we've got them here... They're actually going to stop spawning down there once we reach the mob cap. So we've got 70. Should we just see just how many we end up getting there? We've ended up with about 167. Now then, how's it work? Just, just go like this. Look at that. They all get taken out. Yeah, I take a little bit of damage. That's not a massive problem. Get the XP. Look at that. Beautiful XP. You get a lot from the Guardians. Oh, more just going to come. It's, it's actually really, really fast. The real question is, okay, I've got loads of stuff in my inventory. Didn't want that. How's the old storage system coping? Five in there, 22, seven. <laughs> They're very random numbers. Probably didn't help that I more or less picked up all of the items in my inventory anyway. I'm curious to see. So obviously they're burning, which is what I want. If I go and go like that, is it enough? Oh yeah, it comes with it, no problem. The XP side of this farm is working pretty well. Items are coming through nicely. I put a wall here so that I can actually lodge myself in and be completely safe that way. My only issue is that some items will fall down through the fence and end up where I'm stood, which I should have actually put hoppers where I stood and that would have solved the problem and made the whole storage a bit lower. So I think I'll go back home and disable the mob switch. And then it's back to the drawing board for this one. Also something I, I, I've just realized, I, I'm guessing <laughs> that yeah, this farm is a little bit backed up. It's been running for so long. Yeah, we've got a massive backlog. Plenty of bone mail though, that's nice. I think I'll switch the farm off for now. Just to give everybody a bit of a rest. Here's all the items that I'm going to need. So let's get everything added. Hoppers in the floor will pick up the spare items. And they're going to go all the way around to a dropper. Which is going to be like that. And I can have redstone, a repeater and a comparator. Connected to a piston which has an observer that's... <laughs> It's going to be facing... Hold on a second. Let's get this right. This observer will face that way. This observer will face this way. I need glass around the side of this fully so that we can now make a water chute. Sign here will make sure the water just can't get down. I, I could have done with some kelp and I could have done with some water. Thankfully, in this box, I have enough water to at least do something. Place one, two. You know what? To make this easy, I can refill my buckets and I can grab a bit of kelp. So yeah, let's, let's, let's do that for sure. That'll make everything easy as I just put water right there, fill it with kelp and then break the kelp. That kelp is, is going to get burnt sadly, but that is this side finished. So if I go and chuck an item in, let's say I just want some prismarine shards to go in. They should go through and look at that. They are going through the system as you can see in the top left. Kind of. <laughs> now to do the exact same thing on this side. There we go. I think that should be working. Remove this menagerie of glass all around here that's, that's just basically in the way. Let's spawn proof these few blocks with pieces of glass. Finally, I am going to grab the fence. Oh, hold on. <laughs> We've made a bit of a mess. But yeah, the plan is to change the fences to be walls. That'll make less items able to fall through. And then we just want a fence there to wedge myself in. And to make it 100% AFK safe, I would next like to have a beacon. And it's going to be one of those massive four-way beacons, so I get lots of different powers. There we go. And the main two powers that I'm bothered about are resistance and regeneration. Strength 2 will also be kind of useful. And to spawn-proof it, I shall cover the entire thing in glass. I don't think there's anything more that I can now do. I'll just go all the way back to spawn. Once again, I am going to press this button, dump off a load of items, and AFK at this farm for a bit, since I'm going to be needing so, so many sea lanterns. And as you can see, the improvements to the farm are working very, very nicely indeed. And this farm has been working very, very nicely indeed. I made a few modifications by putting the fences back, putting a wall there, and adding hopper minecarts under this glass so that even more items get collected. And it seems that, that more items sure did get collected. We are completely overloaded. Almost every chest is full. It's, um, yeah, it's quite good. But the real question is, will it be enough? Because I need 145 stacks 
of sea lanterns. I'm going to craft absolutely everything that we've got right here and see just how close I get. And that is shulker box number one completely filled. Um, we need about five and a half of them. As you can see though, these are all those prismarine crystals we've got left on this side. Not a huge amount. My guess is that we're going to have about two and a half shulker boxes worth in total because I still have all of the prismarine shards on this side. And as I'm doing the crafting, I can keep using the farm as well, so I've still got more items coming all of the time. And that is shulker box number two also filled. And there we go. All of the ones crafted that I can have been done. And it, it was two and a half shulker boxes. <laughs> I can estimate very, very well. It's not enough for the entire project, but it will be a great start for me. So let's now go and gather up all of these items. And I need to sort my inventory now, but we're going to pick up every single one of these shulker boxes use the farm one last time for good measure and fly back home let's put all of these into here and now to deal with my next issue for this massive new base i'm gonna need so much light blue concrete and regular blue concrete and to craft all of that i'm gonna need so much light blue dye and normal blue dye as you can see nine pieces is just, just not gonna be enough so what's the answer well the answer is to make a very, very powerful orchid farm. It's the kind of thing that will require a lot of bone meal. Also, if you're wondering why I'm smelting stone, it's because I want loads of more smooth stone. I have a few stacks of it here, but I, I don't want to run out, so uh, more will be coming through the system. Although I can't remember if the chunk loader is still on, so I'm just going to nip to the nether and check the lever. It is switched on, so that's perfect. So the smelter... If I can't go back through there, can I? But yeah, the smelter will be working even whilst I am not in the area. The farm will also require quite a lot of grass blocks, but don't worry, we've got shulker boxes full of that. In fact, we're nearly out of space. No, we've got quite a bit of space, never mind. It'll also require quite a few gates. I think 34 is probably gonna be enough. I'm also gonna grab some of these precious sea lanterns. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. And also a bunch of different redstone items. I've got every single item that I need. Although I suppose I'd, I'd better bring plenty of bones as well. And we're going to start with the light blue dye farm. Which thankfully is going to be really straightforward. Because the only flowers that can spawn in a swamp are orchids. Orchids are the only flower that gives light blue dye. So we're not going to be getting loads of dyes that we're not bothered about. We are only going to be getting light blue dye when I build this in a swamp. And I want to be smart enough about this where I build it in a swamp. But I also can have another flower farm running at the same time. That will be in a plains biome because we're going to need cornflowers for the dark blue dye. And I don't know if you knew this, but there's something called flower gradients in Minecraft. See how this block has a dandelion? If I was to bow mill this block a hundred times, every single time a flower spawned, it would be a dandelion. Same with where these puppies are. And so I would need to find an area that has lots of cornflowers. And you know what? This is it. This is the area, okay? If I was to bow mill this, I would be getting a lot of cornflowers from this area. So I reckon that's the perfect plan. I will build one in the swamp. It doesn't really matter where in the swamp, like I say. And I'll be near enough to load in the other one so that both the two flower farms can be running simultaneously. Now I just need to clear a good space, which can be achieved by mining lots and lots of oak trees. I'm also just going to run a little test on the area, make sure the orchids are spawning. Okay, but before I do that, let's go ahead and fill in a lot of the water gaps. I, did, I never realised... That swamps are two different shades of green, depending on the area, which, yeah, I never knew. I think the colour's based on the temperature, but it, it doesn't seem to be a problem for the spawning of the flowers. There seems to be, yeah, plenty of orchids spawning in. And the rates of them spawning don't seem to be any much more in this section. So I'm just doing all the tests here, guys. There's not really much information out there for the technical side of flower farms. So that's why I'm testing it out. I also thought at first it was a bit overkill to bring an entire shulker box of grass blocks. But now that I'm filling in all this water, I've realized it was actually a great idea. I think that should be enough of the area filled in. Just quickly tidy up this land over here as well, make it a little bit better. Also, apparently we have floating vines. Yep, yeah, bet you didn't know that this was possible because it, it shouldn't be. Apparently there's been a squid casualty as well. My goodness, it's all happening here. To begin with, we're going to have some blocks along here with redstone on top and also a bit of a system here which is going to have all of the bone meal. Next, we're going to need target blocks, pistons and grass. And then we're going to kind of mirror this redstone on this side, but it's all going to be one block higher. And there also needs to be pistons facing upwards next to the target blocks. Once you see this farm in action, you're going to think it's pretty cool. It's kind of like an entire a conveyor belt. It moves all the flowers along, it collects the items itself, it, it's very, very efficient. We're going to fill in this entire floor with black stained glass. One of the reasons that glass works well, well, A, we can see through it, and B, I can still open this chest. And on top of it, I can place down lots of grass blocks. As you can see, I've also left gaps in the grass, and what will happen here is these gates will push items along, because I can run over them, but when they move, it will push an item, and some items will fall in these holes, and they will still get pushed along. In fact, all the items need to get fall in the holes, and they will, yeah, get pushed along to the end. What happens when they reach the end? Well, they will be 
in a water chute right here. And before I forget, I will fill that in with water. Now, I don't really know the easiest way to get in and out of here, actually. Maybe if I just go and grab my second bucket of water. And then it's going to take some good flying in. There we go, without killing myself. That would be nice. We'll add both of these. That stops right there. And here is where I can build a collection system. And now to start adding more pistons and also a load more redstone stuff. The lever on the back of this piston will be the on off switch. Although, yeah, well, you can see how it's working. It's a bit more redstone to be done. I, I should turn it on just yet. Since I first need to add more glass, grass and redstone. All this grass up here is going to be part of the conveyor belt. And it's going to be spawn proofed with black glass and also sea lanterns around the outside. Well, I say around the outside. They're actually just the corner pieces of this machine. And I could put black stained glass across the top of here as well. But I, I didn't actually bring enough for that. And I, for some reason, put my normal glass back, which is what I was going to use there. So that means a pretty quick trip back home to grab a stack of glass, which will be placed right here. And now I just need to add a few blocks along here with redstone on top. And that should be it. The farm should be 100% complete. Let's test it out by flicking this lever. Okay, look at that. The conveyor belt is moving swimmingly, <laughs> as you can see. So this will be getting a lot of flowers. Yeah, it's also very, very noisy. And if I also go ahead and add some bone meal, that will make it so we, that we actually get some flowers. There you go, you can see orchids are spawning. There's absolutely loads of them. Okay, we might run out of bone hill quick, pretty quick. But as you can see, when the gates come along, the gates actually collect it and pick it up and it all comes flying down here. So from 57 bone meal, let's have a look, see how much we've got. We can't have much bone meal left. Yeah, we've run out of bone meal now. Everything has been collected and we have got ourselves, look at that over two stacks already. This is fantastic. And now I'm going to once again nip home to grab a few extra redstone items. Since this machine is going to need a very nice little storage system. And I'm also trying to put more effort into actually making storages instead of just placing a chest and it, it being awful. I usually end up making a nice storage for stuff in the end anyway, so I might as well just do it straight away. I already did this for the garden farm, a similar kind of thing. There's just going to be comparators and hoppers. I'm confident that four will be enough to deal with the amount of orchids. Let's add the repeaters underneath with a little bit of glass because I like to be able to see what's going on sometimes. Also apparently ran out of redstone, but don't worry, I have plenty of redstone blocks. Why is it always after rain? At least we've got a little bit of shelter under here. Next, I've got my chests right here. Hopper's going into them. I have like a pixel to aim for it. It helps if I... Uh, I actually zoom in and then torches underneath the hoppers. I'll name these to get my item filters, which will all be going in here. If I do something like this, it'll actually take more it'll take more orchids, if that makes sense. Like, I'll be able to... F I, it'll, no, wait, less orchids for it to filter through. I, I know what I'm trying to say. And the orchids the farm gave me before, I did send back home, so... We're going to have to collect some up from this swamp. This will be the last time I'm ever farming these flowers by hand. And then a singular orchid can go into every single hopper. Glass can go around the outside. I'm going to go to sleep because I'm sick of this rain. I'm also going to need a bit of this wood to craft some composters, which you don't craft composters like that. Everybody knows that. SB. Come on, basics. <laughs> I'll get it right in the end. And so there'll be three composters here with three hoppers. And this will just be for any excess flowers, but hopefully not for any orchids, but it will be for seeds. I'm actually going to move this chest to be on the other side. It's just going to make life easier because then I can have droppers going up into it. If I can actually place one like that. Hoppers going into the droppers. My goodness, this is getting very, very organized, isn't it? I've never never been so organized in my life. And I have a couple of observers like that, which is, is going to be doing this. This is going to be a noisy farm as it is with all the pistons, so I suppose a little bit of extra noise doesn't really matter. I think something like this... Okay, I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, I think if I go and put a torch here... There we go. That, that shuts all of that up. And then if we go and put... Let's just... You know what? I need to get some actual bone meal. Not like I'm short on bones or anything. So if I go ahead and turn all that into bone meal, put it into this hopper. Okay, this is it's kind of working. It is filling up, but then that's going to go in, I guess, to the entire system. Made a few adjustments to the redstone. I'm pretty sure now it, it should work pretty well. Okay, I, I think I'm just going to add a little bit more delay. Oh, that worked. Because I only had that one tick, it was a problem, but now on two ticks, it's staying like this, as you can see. If I go and take that out, it'll stop, and then I can go ahead, put it all back in. And yeah, it stays. The piston's not moving in and out loads. So storage is almost complete. We're just going to need some water to go at the edge of here. Now I've just got to once again work out how I'm going to add the water. I'm going to try and fly in. There we go. That'll work. I'd also better add something here. Otherwise, the water will go and break all my redstone, which I most definitely don't want to do after spending so long on it. So we go like that. Look at that. Stops at the end. Okay, now I'm stuck. I have to break this bit of glass. They both need replacing. 
that is gonna go like that to stop everything. You know what, actually, let's let's forget that. Let's go and change. Okay, this could be a, could be a mistake here, so I've just gotta <laughs> make sure I don't do anything too stupid. But I'm thinking just at the end here, why don't we put a couple of hoppers, okay? And then if there's any extra items, they will still manage to get composted as well. And you know what, just to push the boat out, why don't I instead just have five composters? Are they all going to get used? Probably not, but you know what? That doesn't matter. I actually remove one of the composters because otherwise I'd have no way to get to this chest to fill it with bone meal. Speaking of filling with bone meal, I think there's no time like the present to start uh, doing In fact, can we just start the machine as well? It's, it's, yeah, it's going to be work. It's already got bone meal in it. Let's just see if this collection system actually is all that it's cracked up to be. So the items flow along. Yeah, look at that. The orchids are all getting picked up and it's just the seeds that are going to be composted. Okay, where are you? What are you on earth? I haven't seen hostile mobs in ages. I need to turn that mob switch back on. A few things have gone wrong with my system, unfortunately. As you can see, this one, for some reason, there's nothing in it. And then this one, well, it's, it's that one's okay, but this one's letting seeds through somehow. And that's all because I took somebody's advice in the comments where they said I could put more of the filters in and it would make it work better because you get more items. You can't though, because if you pick up a load of orchids, it'll give too much power to one of these comparators, and it'll power other hoppers and mess it all up. So, you know, I was always right all along, which I, I, I guess I knew. <laughs> Hope you guys haven't got any more bright ideas. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I, uh, I love to hear your guys' ideas in the comments. Most of them are very helpful. Now let's actually get on with adding the bone meal, which would be a fairly simple thing because yeah, the EOL farm gives me so, so many bones, which means I don't think I'll ever, ever run out of it. Everything has almost been filled up to the, in fact, it has been filled up to the max. So I'll turn on the machine once again and watch all of the orchids come flying in. I'm also going to make a slight tweak to the design and mine out this. The water should, yeah, just stay in there. Perfect. And I think I'm going to remove this water source and do the, well, do that kind of all the way along. I'll be very careful over the red sun that I, I don't let it flow down in time. The reason for doing that is because the items were kind of just sticking to this side, missing this hopper out completely. But now that problem should be fixed or not. I think I think I might have created a disaster here, guys. <laughs> yeah, the orchids, they just, they just straight up fall out of the entire machine. That's my bad. Now they should all go into the storage system and all of the chests are getting used. And next I'm going to slightly expand the storage and declare the light blue dye farm to be fully complete. And as fast as it goes through bone meal, it can't go faster through it than I can go through it. The farm is almost working perfectly, although I do have the one issue of this hopper being locked a lot by the the redstone torch, which was a bit of an oversight. I, I, I don't think it matters too much. It just means that we end up with a bit of a, a buildup of seeds in there. And every now and again, it'll let some through. But since this end hopper isn't getting overloaded, it's, it's not really an issue to worry about. And the only other tiny thing that I think I should do is, let's just make a hole there, is I'm going to waterlog this slab right here because sometimes items are just landing on it and getting stuck inside the hopper. That will stop that. In fact, it's, a slab's a bit big, isn't it? A nice little trap door will probably work a little bit better. So let's break that and quickly pick that up. Put that there and then we can put the glass like so. And I think I'm fully happy with it. I don't think I can do much more. I mean, it's already got me plenty of orchids as you can see and being realistic it's probably already got me all the light blue dye i need anyway for now i'm just going to stop this farm running then fly to spawn so that i can actually turn the mob switch back on instead of constantly forgetting over and over now the quickest way home is going to be going through the nether where i can gather all the resources to build another of the flower farms this time for cornflowers. Also, you know how I smelted all of that stone? Well, as you can see, none of it went into the chest. Now, I was trying to work out why. And also, where did it actually go? Well, it turns out it all went in here for some reason. What was that reason? I don't know when this happened or how. Maybe from a water leakage. Bit of redstone broke. So, now <laughs> the uh, smooth stone one will work again as normal. I'm going to have to transfer all of these. Can I, can I reach it from here? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I can reach it through the gap and there's a much more healthy looking supply of smooth stone. I've got every single item that I need now. I'm also going to grab a couple more shulker boxes of bones. I'm going to switch this on so it can be running in the background. And I thought I had my spot, but I've now just realized that just because a flower naturally generates there doesn't mean it is actually part of that grain. As you can see, we've got a yellow one. What do we call a yellow flower? A <laughs> so I'm going to have to do a little bit more work than I first thought to work out where the gradient of cornflowers is. Alright guys, it, uh, it, it turns out I'm an idiot. Well, I suppose you guys already knew that. Flower gradients are really, really simple in Plains Biomes. They don't, they don't really exist, generally speaking. Any flower can spawn on any block, which would be good for like an old ice farm and stuff. It's in Flower Forest where the gradient is much more active. And I guess it's not going to be a problem 
then I'm going to have to go a lot further away to find a flower forest. Because this orchid one has done everything that I needed it to do. Thankfully, I do happen to know where there are a few flower forests, so we'll be going to one of them. Here's one right here. It's, uh, it's a pretty small island, but this, this could be what I'm looking for. You can kind of see how the gradient thing works because they're all in little patches together. But the gradient is also not the same as what was naturally generated. I don't know if that's because that's, this was generated. These chunks were generated in 1.17, so the gradients changed because... Now we're in 1.18. By the way, you're probably sick of me telling you about flowers. I just need to find a place where bone meal will get me some cornflowers. I've done even more research and <laughs> come to a conclusion that the best thing I could do is find a 1.18 biome. Because that was yeah, generated in 1.17 was that terrain. I'm going to find a flower forest in 1.18. I, I have an idea of when one or two of them are. And then the cornflowers that naturally generate are those ones were more likely to generate with bone meal there as well. You didn't expect to have a flower education lesson <laughs> today, did you? And on my travels to find flower forests, I'm, I'm coming across ruined portals. Apparently already been here though. Because I've built a massive tower. And mission to find the flower forest has been successful. This hill has got quite a few cornflowers all around it. So I'm going to build upwards to be able to make a bit of a flatter platform. Next I'll build a platform and make sure the gradients match up. I've got to be careful. I don't think I'm quite going to that but it might be different flowers at this end so I just have to get the platform's position in the exact right spot. And if I do this correctly only cornflowers will be able to spawn on my farm. Although I'd like to put a lot of emphasis on the word if. At first glance with the testing it does seem like I've got a pretty good spot over in, even over on this side in line with there, the gradients don't seem to overlap. We have got one rogue lily of the valley, which which definitely... Well, I mean, it's not a massive problem if it's... Oh, but there's a few of them. Maybe maybe if I move the whole platform this way one. And this is basically where the whole trial and error situation comes in. I'm doing it block by block now, just by breaking the grass and then until I get a flower like that. This method does use up a lot of bone meal, but hey, I've got plenty to spare. I've managed to grow a flower all the way around the border. So this strip along here... Won't even be part of the farm anyway, so that doesn't matter. It's going to be cool. Yeah, this is how I'm going to make a cornflower only farm. So with my grass block platform sorted, I'm going to build the rest of the farm around it. The easiest way I can think of to do that is to create a platform below it that's going to be like the scaffolding kind of thing, just so I can place the blocks easier. It didn't have to be made of grass blocks, but that's like the only block that I have loads of spare ones of, since I did bring an entire shulker box. And now that that's all done, let's get down to business and build this thing. And I've completed yet another of these farms. Just need to somehow fly my way into this little gap. There we go. Place the water. And then items can come down through this gap into what will be storage system 2.0. Because I've got all the items falling down so, so far down here, I've realized the best way to get them back up for the bone meal is to use a, uh, a water column. So the water will come up here and connect up to this hopper like so. Um, I'm just going to need... A few extra little blocks just to make... I mean, I've run out of glass, but... Yeah, basically, the water will come up here and it'll flow all into that hopper. And I am going to slightly adjust the design so it's a little bit more consistent. There needs to be a block next to this hopper, otherwise items could have got stuck in the side. Anyway, I need to go home. I need to get some... I think I need... Yeah, all sorts of soul sand kelp, water, and of course, plenty more glass. I'm not flying all the way home. We're like 4,000 blocks away. I think just going through the nether should be fine. Yeah, we're only about 500 blocks away. It's a pretty short flight in this direction. I've got the remaining needed items. So let's get back to this portal and get this build finished. I'm going to place that water like that and then <laughs> let's block that before I can get around. Next, I've got to somehow get in here without making a massive mess to all the redstone. So I'm thinking, if I do that, look at that. Beautiful. That's, that's still okay. Then we add this, followed by loads of kelp on top. And when I break it, I'm, I'm probably, yeah, I'm going to be stuck. Can I actually swim back down? I, I, sometimes you can swim against the current, but, but this is not one of those times. I think I'll block off this water. Then I can mine my way out. Break that, place that. Beautiful. Somehow did all that without making a mess. My redstone is still in one piece. And I reckon this farm is now done and we can start adding loads of the bone meal. All of this should be enough just to get it going. Starting to realise that I should probably make this platform a little bit bigger. So that it's easier to get to the awkward things like this lever. Alright machine. Cornflowers are all... <laughs> well, I was going to say spawning but they're growing. Now the machine is pushing them through. And they are going down. Look at that. Beautiful. Heading on down into the system. And if it is working, then these composters will fill with bone meal, which will go up there. And my chests will fill with cornflowers. I got even more bone meal added to the machine. And all of this really is just beautiful to see. They said that a cornflower only farm couldn't be done. Well, like, maybe nobody said that, but <laughs> anyway, I found a way to do it, which I, which I am very, very pleased with. I need just over a double chest worth of cornflowers, which it shouldn't take me too long. I, I think maybe, you know, half an hour and we won't be far off. 
So I'm going to leave this machine to keep running. I might give it a little bit more bone meal just to keep it nicely topped up. Then I will hide myself in a nice little safe hole like this and be back very very shortly. Plenty of time has passed and I have got all of the cornflowers that I could possibly need. I'm not going to take all of these home for now since I'll need a bunch of shulker boxes but let's just turn off the farm for now and continue with the big item collection job. So I've got the blue dye, I've got the white dye, I've got pretty much all of the gravel. So what's the one thing that I'm missing lots of? Well I'll tell you once I've fully mended up my elytra and also once I've looted this little ruined portal. Sand. I need lots and lots of sand and I reckon I can get plenty of it by TNTing this massive area. I'm going to initially have to grab a bit of sand by hand so that I can craft loads of TNT and blow up the area. 31 shulker boxes worth are going to need to be filled, which is of course going to take quite a bit of time, but I get large amounts of sand like that <laughs> all of the time. Well, I have, uh, I have completely destroyed this desert and I've also filled up so, so many sugar boxes. There's three in my inventory. Just look at the destruction. It looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> you can just see where I've been TNT in it. I've ruined the land so much. Good thing I'll never be coming back here again. And there you have it. 31 shulker boxes all filled with sand. I'm going to craft a couple more of these boxes though. And then show you the faster and improved method that I found to TNT the desert. I'm also having to use pressure plates now because my flint is still broken. I didn't have another one. So basically, I've realised that if I just go along and blow it up as I'm going... That then, because before I was placing all the TNT, then running back and lighting it all. And that was like an extra journey. So this is like 33% faster, isn't it? For me to light it up as I'm moving along. Gets me the sand so, so much quicker. So once I realized that very simple tweak, things move so, so much faster and end up getting so, so much sand. So I'm going to collect all of these final bits. You also do get the pressure plates back because they get blown up, so they just add one of the drops. And now for the slight issue of how am I going to get all of this sand home? I've got all of these shulker boxes filled to the top. Definitely not going to be able to fit all of these in my inventory. I can put all of this stuff into this shulker box and then put some of these into an ender chest. The rest I can get in my inventory. We can come... This is actually going to work somehow, guys, because I can put that in there. I can mine up these chests. I don't have my axe anymore. It's stored away in one of these shulker boxes. So they go in there. I can pick that one up. Pick up that one. Go on. Every single one. Come on, surely. Yes. <laughs> We've got a slot to spare. Is there anything else that I can take? How about on principle, I, uh, I take some sticks. Just kidding. They're not even worth bringing. And now I think the best way home for me is probably to head to the flower farm and go through the portal that way. Otherwise, I'd have to fly 7,000 blocks to get home. I think I'm in the vicinity. I am in the vicinity. I see it up ahead. Now, whilst I'm here, can I also bring back a load of cornflowers? Let's just chuck all this sand out here. Imagine if I accidentally burnt them or something and put them in lava. All the last, like, <laughs> two or three hours I've spent collecting up sand would just be completely wasted. Couldn't quite bring back every cornflower that I wanted to, but we've, we've got a decent amount. Now let's just get back home. And so first things first, let's put all of this sand into here. I don't know why I'm trying to do this in an organised way. Let's just chuck it all in. <laughs> now the real question is, which one did I actually put my tools into? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to search every single one until I find it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think this one through. <laughs> There's loads of them. You just know that it's gonna be the last one that I come to. It's just it's just the rules of nature, the rules of life that it's the last one. Look at that. <laughs> Only got seven left, you know, and we've now six left now. And with five to spare, I have <laughs> found my items, thank goodness. Makes me want to double check all the other ones just to make sure that I didn't put any other items into them, but I don't think I did. I think the other one was in a grey shulker box. So whilst I'm here, why don't I go and grab the sand out of here? and then combine it. Okay, well, if we could actually get to it, we could combine it anyway. Combine it with that, so that is another completely full one. That sand can fill up there. And I can mine up all these millions of shulker boxes and add them to the chest. Got worried for a second, because I was like, well, there's only 28 in there. I should have more than that. Then I realized I have loads of them still in the shulker box as well. Thank goodness for that. Thought I'd misplaced a load of sand at some point. This shulker box can be dyed blue for all the cornflowers. I don't think I actually have a cornflower place, do I? But I have one for something pointless like lily pads. Yeah, that makes sense. Not to worry though, they're going to be used as blue dye anyway, so I might as well chuck those in there. And I might as well craft all these now because they're going to have to be turned into the blue dye eventually. There we go, that chest is looking very healthy. And now five of these shulker boxes are going to be needed to turn to be turned into glass. Let's grab a couple more hoppers, place them on the side of this chest. And this bottom one can be filled with sand, as well as this double chest. And finally, these two shulker boxes can be placed on top like that. When these create glass, it's all going to be going down. It's going to be heading to the chest room and eventually it'll be reaching the glass chest. Now, I need to make sure there's enough room in here for all this glass to come through. So 
I'm gonna fill a couple of shulker boxes. In fact, I probably don't need to fill a couple of shulker boxes. Uh, yeah, that's fine. In fact, look at that. Already it's coming through. So that's just great news. It's, it means it's working. I do have a slight worry that it's gonna kind of get stuck when it comes along because if there's too many items that come through, basically I'm gonna be using a chunk loader to load the chunks, but not these chunks. So it might all come in one big go. <laughs> all the glass come flowing along and then I'm worried that somebody's going to get lost. Anyway, I'll, I'll worry about that when I actually need to. And whilst I let that smelt in the background, I'm going to turn the mob switch back off. And then I can fly back to the Guardian farm and watch them as they all spawn in. And AFK to get loads more stuff for sea lanterns. And I've also realised that this, I don't know if this is the most efficient place to be. I wonder if, if, if I was actually a, a few blocks lower, would it be more efficient? I've no idea. I'd have to test that sometime. But anyway, less of that. Let's just uh, get loads of stuff. This, the prismarine crystals will be filling up. And yeah, then I'll have all the sea lanterns that I'll need for the build. And we'll almost have everything we need to get started. Spent a decent amount of time here again. And got loads more XP. As well as plenty of crystals. Fairly confident that with all this, I should have all of the sea lanterns that I need. And that is shulker box number one filled. And also the second one. And also a third one for good measure. And that's enough time crafting them. I don't really need any more. Let's just fly on back home. And whilst I am now very close to having every single needed item. There's one thing I haven't got enough of. And that is gravel. We've got about 15 shulker boxes worth. But we, we still need a few more. If I can fill up all of these, I'll have everything. I need and we're going back to the best place to find it. Yep, all I really need to do is just find one of my tunnels that I blasted before and <laughs> I mean you'd think maybe not digging into lab is a good idea but I don't mind, you know, with, with nothing to lose. I say with 3,762 days to lose, so maybe I've got a lot to lose. But anyway, well, we managed to find one anyway. <laughs> Didn't expect to dig straight down in one to one. I thought I'd have to strip mine. But now that that's sorted, let's just go and get mining. It does definitely make it much easier to spot these gravel areas. But a lot of the time, most of the gravel has actually been blown up. Although not this one. This is a very, very big deposit. I don't want the lava to ruin my day. Whoa, it's, uh, it's coming through. Oh, no. Hey, lava has no business being in the nether, ruining my gravel collecting spree. Look at this. Found a bit of ancient debris that I missed on a previous journey. And there's another one just floating right here. My goodness, I must miss a few more of these than I actually realise. Although in my defence, when I built this tunnel, I don't think I'd even got to 1,000 days, so... <laughs> I'm going to let myself off. Two shulker boxes have now been completely filled. And I have reached the end of this particular tunnel. Although I'm sure it won't take me long to strip mine to another one. And on the way, I'll find more gravel too. And a nice bit of ancient debris as well. Oh, and, and actually, whilst digging through for the ancient debris... Look at that. We found another tunnel with gravel ready to be mined. Look at that. Was mining up a bit more gravel. <laughs> and covered another piece of ancient debris. I think it's... Oh, it's a double as well. No, it's a triple. Well, that is very, very nice indeed, isn't it? Came for the gravel, but I stayed for the ancient debris. Speaking of gravel, I now have four full shulker boxes worth. But I think I'm still going to need to get another four more. Just been happily mining away at all this gravel, and I've just realised... My shovel is nearly broken. Now, I do not want to let my shovel break. That could have been a nasty disaster. And I reckon my best option to stop it from breaking will be to pull out a fortune pickaxe, put the shovel in my offhand, and begin mining up all sorts of bits of quartz. I'm also going to have to be careful I don't do anything stupid because I'm not holding my totem. So, yeah, yeah like walk into lava yeah, and have piglins attacking me. Brilliant. A little tactical switch to the totem was, was probably wise in that situation. But now let's return to mining the quartz. That's shulker box number five filled up. And another bit of ancient debris spotted. Very nice. I just can't stop finding it at the moment. And that is the shovel completely repaired as well. Shulker box number six has almost been filled. Just need a couple more pieces. There we go. If I can fill up one more box, I'll probably have enough. And look at this. Mining a bit more gravel. If I can just find a way to actually uncover this lava, which is, is causing me some problems. Watch it disappear. Two pieces of ancient debris. Nicely waiting for me to be mined. Got ten on me travels here, which isn't bad considering I haven't really been... Oh my goodness. Can you just ruin, stop ruining this moment for me? But yeah, considering I came out here for gravel, coming away with ten ancient debris is not half bad. And yet another one. Look at that. That's piece number 11. Sometimes the best way to find ancient debris is to not look for ancient debris. I'm serious, guys. I'm serious. I cannot... It, honestly, I'm just looking for gravel. It, uh, just a humble... Get, look at me. And I just... I get every block I mine. It's like, oh, yeah, there's another piece of ancient debris for SB. We know you've spent countless, countless hours getting another item beacon so we're, we're gonna help you out a little bit and there we go i have i've got all the gravel that i need and so now i shall dig my way up and out of here it will involve a bit of a swim through lava which is nothing i can't handle to go home i need to fly in this direction and now that i'm home sweet home i'm gonna load up this chest and i also need to check oh my gosh yes there is a build-up of glass as i was worried about 
Yeah, I need to do something about this then. Um, how are we? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of glass here. Let's fill up one shulker box. And I'd better grab a few more to uh, to be able to deal with the rest of it, I suppose. Managed to pick it all up. Very nice. I will come up with some sort of system to stop that problem. But the priority now is, well, not priority, but we're going to get that smelting as well. Grab a few light blue shulker boxes. And then I'll fill them with a bunch of orchids. Although to fill them all, we are going to need quite a few more, which means flicking this lever... And uh, yeah, running the machine for a little bit. Left it running for a while, and we have got plenty more of these orchids, which means every shulker box can be filled. Now let's get them all gathered up. Okay, uh, <laughs> just fly away from these guys. Oh my goodness, there's millions of them in the sky. Also, don't forget to turn off the machine. And let's now get back home. So I've got the sand, I've got the gravel, and I've got the dyes. However, I'm going to need to craft 75,000 concrete powder and convert it to concrete. If I was to just use this little contraption right here, we, we will be here till next Christmas, guys. We'll be about 5,000 days before I convert it all. So it's time I built a bigger and better concrete machine. It's gonna require quite a few different items to build this, but it'll be so worth it when it's done. And I now have every item that is needed for this build in the shulker boxes. I also want to make this somewhere kind of out of the way. I don't want it to be like in too much of plain sight, I don't think. Don't really know where I'm going with this. Don't, <laughs> don't want it to be too near the, the millions of goats that I, for some reason, have in, uh, in boats. I'll build it right here. It's kind of out of the way enough, but not too far from my house either. And we're going to start off with a row of chests along here to collect the items. With hoppers going into those. And then ice behind it. And this is where we can use a few items to align things properly. So when an item is going to flow around, it's going to hit this. And so it doesn't get stuck, we'll also have glass panes all the way to the end. Let's get a slab right here. Then we can put water like that. We can have some more here so it will push the items all the way. And I need to get this platform above built before <laughs> my water freezes. This is going to be a pretty massive platform and it's going to act as the collection system for the concrete that falls down. Ultimately it will push all of the items into this hole right here. That is why I haven't been able to cover it up. Eventually it will be covered up though so <laughs> it will be under sunlight and it won't freeze once I've finished the build. And that is this massive platform fully filled in and there will be a lot of water all the way along these edges but I don't have to worry about it freezing because there will be sea lanterns all along the side. That order nicely stop any ice from forming. Since they're all down, let's now go and do something like this. We can use the old infinite water source system to very easily cover the whole... Okay, well, not very easily if I do that, but yeah. <laughs> to very easily cover the whole thing in water. One second, guys. I've uh, <laughs> I've completely got this one wrong. Sometimes my own stupidity really does surprise me. Now I'm going to have to head all the way down to the storage system to grab some sponge to clean up this mess that I've made. And now that that's all gone, let's go with take two. And this time, yeah, not be quite so crazy. You'd think by now I'd learn, wouldn't you? But yeah, the corners needed to be raised and that was where I was going wrong. And now all of these bits can safely be water sources and it, it won't all completely fill with water. And that looks so much better. Everything flows perfectly to the middle. And now the next part of the build is going to be quite a bit higher up and it's going to consist of an obsidian platform and on this part there is just a bit of redstone to be added i think that's all of it and now this is where the redstone starts to get a little bit more complicated and this is where the area that the tnt is gonna go i'm not gonna place it just yet because I don't want it all to <laughs> all to go wrong, basically. It's starting to take shape. We've got another water bit of collection here as well. That's going to yeah, just keep pushing things around. The water did freeze, but we can easily do that and then cover it up like so. Just going to add these hoppers into here. Yeah, it's, it's all coming together. Everything, the, the way it's everything, you know, it's all going to get pushed. I am now covering up the sky route from, uh, from this bit, so... That can also become water again. Then I can add chests that all the concrete powder is going to be put into. And once I place this piece of TNT right here, Operation Concrete Farm is complete. At least I hope it is anyway. Let's go and turn on this lever, see what happens. So we flick it, as you can see, pushing stuff very fast. The TNT is being lit and is... I, yeah, I think it's... I'm not sure if it's meant to do that, actually. <laughs> Hold on a second. Pretty sure something isn't quite right down here. Yep, turns out I'm an idiot. And I forgot to place a waterlogged trapdoor in here. So let's go and uh, add that. Now the farm should be working as intended. At least I hope so. And I, I know I'm using a TNT duper. I don't usually end up using for farms, but I feel like I'm not farming some. I'm converting some. I'm just defining it in my head somehow. But yeah, let's have a little look. See, the TNT should just blow up just below the obsidian. There we go. That's working perfectly. Which means all I need now is all of the powder to turn to concrete. Before I craft and bring all that powder, I am just going to add a few more chests, I think. Because I'm going to be doing so much, I definitely don't want to run out of space here. The design is by Il Manguin Pixels, by the way. It does 72,000 per hour. Which I suppose means it'll only take me about an hour to convert all of the necessary concrete. And whilst I am in the area, I'm also going to turn more of this glass... Well, more of this sand into glass, because I think all of this one's... 
have been done so double chests can be filled up that's four shulker boxes worth into the system and now to craft a whopping 45,000 light blue concrete the shulker boxes are laid out ready and the dye is here to be gathered and now to get crafting and all the crafted dye has been used up so now we have to start turning the orchids into dye again which is a bit of a slow process but uh, it's not that bad and that is a lot of shulker boxes worth of this crafted i reckon i get these mined up and then begin adding all of these items to the chests and that is 12 shulker boxes worth added to the system. Although I'm going to need 27 of them altogether. So yeah, I'm going to have to keep going with the crafting. But you know what? Let's test this machine out. Let's see how it works. First of all, I need to grab a few items to fill up my inventory. I tell you, let's do it with ender chest because we can only have one available slot. Then I need to rebind my right click to be a keyboard key. That will make me click faster. Well, place blocks faster. So yeah, you can place blocks so much faster. You can see we're just we're going at extreme speeds. And it, it seems to be working correctly i think <laughs> actually maybe i'm not too sure is it working correctly let's just temporarily stop the machine see what's going on here okay we've got a lot and i mean a, a lot of uh, concrete here more than that my inventory can well i guess i can't hold it i'm trying to do that let's pick it all up okay yeah we've got a few stacks here let's just put those back into the system i'm not convinced it's meant to look like that guys i'm, I'm really not convinced this is <laughs> this is how the farm is meant to work so i know that you guys know that i i am at times a bit of an idiot and today well it's <laughs> it's been no exception i need to very very quickly grab myself four water buckets then mine up all of this spare <laughs> concrete powder hopefully having all this come around hasn't broken the farm and then i can rectify my very very stupid mistake forgot to waterlog these stairs didn't i yep it all went wrong from uh, from that moment forward because believe it or not if you don't have water you uh, <laughs> you can't make concrete let's now go with take two and i think it's working better it definitely looks like things are are going as they're supposed to anyway the only real issue i see here is that it is dispensing me concrete powder way faster then I can place it, as you can see. Suppose that means that maybe just filling two of the double chests is better than having all four of them running. But on the positive side, I have managed to get quite a good amount of concrete through here. Not quite the hundreds and hundreds of stacks that I need, but it's a, it's a very, very good start for now. Just done a little experiment where I dropped the render distance down to two. And I think the increase in FPS has slightly sped up the speed of the pistons move, which makes the farm a little bit faster. So I'm very glad to see that this is working so well. More than enough concrete is going into the system. And I have also got the glass smelting, so I want to grab a couple of shulker boxes just to fill all of that in. I don't want to... Uh... Oh, look how close my chests were to getting overflowed there. <laughs> I had that realisation while I was up there that, hang on a minute, I've got a lot of glass on the way. I need some storage for it. And thankfully, I managed to get some sorted in time. Plenty more space there ready to be filled. And I'm going to now get all the concrete converted that I need. I've been busy and I've turned every bit of concrete powder that's light blue into the concrete that I need. I've also been to Ibiza for 10 days mid-video. So yeah, this, this one has, has taken me a while to do. But all of the blue concrete powder is almost crafted. I just need to make a few more. And I've got 16 shulker boxes worth right here. We, we do still need, we need about 17 in total. But I have made a little adjustment up here. I've realised that there should only be three of these droppers in use for it to go at the right speed. And I can also place down a bunch of shulker boxes up here. And blue concrete will start filtering into the machine. And whilst that does that, I can craft these last few bits of concrete. I think what I've got here is actually going to be enough. And I'm also going to need to make a few modifications to the uh, the concrete machine. Pretty much all the items I want are there. Except for an iron trap door. That will also be very useful. And so all I'm going to do here is just extend the storage system. Because I've seen a problem where this machine is so fast. If I run it for quite a long time, you just end up with a buildup of concrete at the end. Which we don't want that because then it'll despawn. So Instead, it'll be much better to do something like this. And I think this might be an opportunity for a sea pickle. The water will flow to here. And then we're going to put some more water. Oh, let's just put these panes in first. So now we can put the water here. We'll put two sea pickles like that. And add a few more chests. Trap door there. Bit more packed ice. And now this machine will never run out of storage space. Well, once I add this final bucket of water, it won't. Anyway, so to stop this freezing as well, we need to put glass above it. And then I'm just going to do a little test by... Uh, I don't know why I'm doing it like this, but you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just chuck down a load of random items. That's probably a smarter idea. Oh no, that's not going to help though, is it? I'm just going to have to temporarily break these hoppers. And now when I send a load of items down, they should reach the sea pickle. Are they go oh, they're going past the sea pickle. Uh oh, let's instead see if a wall will work. Nope, it did not. 
And I'm not messing about with this any longer. We're just going to place some chests and put all of the hoppers on the other side. And now that I've moved it to this side, as you can see, it all works perfectly. Now to put back these hoppers, I can place down more shulker boxes to fill up the machine and manually fill up the rest as well. And there we go. That is all now sorted. I can drop these into here. And with that, I can begin using the machine. And it looks like I have now run out of concrete powder, which means it's all converted. I'll mine up these six shulker boxes. And the easiest way to get them back is to literally just turn on the machine and <laughs> look at that, they all come through. Meanwhile, at the bottom here, I'm going to see which chest has actually managed to pick up concrete. It looks like it hasn't even come all this way around, which is good news. There's just a couple of bits in these ones at the end. And so the overflow system has worked perfectly. And that is all shulker boxes filled up with a bit to spare. I've also got some of this light blue concrete that has now filtered through the system. Let's gather up the shulker boxes. And I'd also like to dye all of the shulker boxes so that they're the correct colour, just to make life a bit easier for finding stuff later on. And now that I've got the concrete, that's the hardest part out of the way. Next, I'm just going to need a bunch of glass, which will also be dyed light blue. But because I'm using less ingredients, and I don't have to convert it from powder to concrete. It's so, so much faster. And that is all of these turned into light blue glass now. I'm going to make sure all of these are dyed white just so I can differentiate them from the light blue concrete ones. You know, if I, if I did them both the same, it would be kind of pointless. Next, let's grab some cyan dye. I don't know if I'm going to have enough there, but we've got loads of blue dye and plenty of green dye. And this shulker box worth of glass will be turned cyan and will also dye the shulker box itself. And with that, we are pretty much there with all the materials that I need, except for one last thing, sea lanterns. I can't forget all these sea lanterns that I spent ages getting. And the next biggest challenge is probably gonna be getting all of these shulker boxes to where we're gonna build the farm. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what my best move is here. I think I'm just gonna go ahead, chuck that in there and then break this chest with me. We uh, pickaxe, don't get angry, but once that's done, we can pick everything up and I'll grab a couple more chests just to be helpful. And then I can fly over to spawn, chuck down a chest and fill it with shulker boxes. And now I can go all the way back, grab the rest, and add them to the collection. So most of the hard work is done because I have gathered up all of the resources. But to build this mega base at spawn, I am going to need to clear quite a big area. Because this is going to be a very, very big base. And so to clear that area, I'm going to put my best foot forward and mine out this entire forest. Not only will that include chopping down trees, it'll also include mining away at this mountain. And I've absolutely got no idea what a snow golem's doing up here, but I'm just going to leave him to it. Turns out that mining out an entire mountain area, it, it took a lot longer than I thought. I've spent hours and hours mining all of this out. I've almost dug a big enough of a space, but I need to remove this entire mountain so it's the same level as all of this. I can't believe it, but the sun is setting on day 3800 already. Yes, I've, I've spent days and days doing this, but I'm still going to keep going through the night. And as much as I was hoping to build this entire mega base in this episode, it will take a long, long time to build. Will you guys leave me alone? I'm trying to talk here. Yeah, it'll take ages and ages to build. So I think it's definitely something to save for the next episode. Well, I guess I don't really have much choice anyway. There's, <laughs> there's only like a few minutes left. Can you believe it? 15 days of Minecraft mining. That's literally five hours straight. And I broke my silt touch pickaxe in and amongst all of that. Oh, well, not to worry because because my other pickaxe has almost broken. 4,000 days draws closer and closer. I have a mega base to complete. But before I can build it, this mountain has got to go. I already got rid of most of it in the last episode, but it needs to be flattened so that it's down to this level. In a very short amount of time, I've already filled my inventory with cobblestone, and it's probably gonna be useful for me to keep as much of it as I can. Even though I have got quite a few shulker boxes of it, I could always do with more. So let's grab a few of these and a few of these. Don't know if I have much gray dye. Oh, look at that, we've got loads, so I want four to die all the red ones. These two light grey ones are going to be used for gravel because that still has uses for stuff like concrete, but that won't be my main focus. Instead, it'll be to get as much cobble as I can. And that is another layer completely mined away. Not too far off from finishing it, but my pickaxe is nearly broken. So I'm going to fly up to the gold farm, get it repaired, and then get back to mining. And now all of this is completely mined away. So I'm going to head back home to drop off stuff like all of this cobblestone that I've mined. And now I must do something about this pickaxe issue. You see, I did break my silk 
silk touch one, so I've just got that fortune one there. If I grab three diamonds, two sticks, and a netherite ingot, then I can create a brand new netherite pickaxe and add the necessary upgrades. And now that that's sorted, I can begin to mark out the area that this mega base is going to go. Also, just to clarify, this mega base is not going to replace my actual home that's, you know, thousands of blocks in that direction, but instead it's just going to be a base at spawn that I can use whenever I might need it. And one of the redstone contraptions that's going to have to be moved because it is in the way is this daylight cycle stasis chamber. The redstone isn't too ridiculously complicated, so if I did want to build another one, that wouldn't be an issue, but now it has completely gone. I finished this bottom layer here, and it might just give you a glimpse of how big it's going to be because there's going to be eight of these all in a circle. This may be the biggest build that I've ever done. So I shall grab a load more resources and continue on this building project. And the base of this is almost done. As you can see, it's <laughs> it's very, very big, but we, we have a problem. And that problem is that this wireless redstone machine is now in the way. When I first built it, this machine was very, very useful. But since then, the designs have been modified and improved. So I, I should probably build a brand new one anyway, which is why I don't mind breaking this one completely. And there we go. This is all now being removed. So let's now get back to building everything. And there we go. Everything is now connected up. And next, I think I'm going to work on this middle section, which involves removing this beacon. And with that now removed, I can begin work on this middle section. I have to say that snow is very, very annoying, but I've created a bit of a pattern down here of different concretes. And in all these gaps where I haven't placed anything, I'm going to put sea lanterns. And then on top of all of that, I'm going to place light blue stained glass. And whilst it is difficult to properly see because of the snow, that section is finished and I can do the same thing on this area. And that is another section complete. So I'm going to take this opportunity to go to sleep to stop the snow and then add in all of the other sections. I have now almost done all of these sections. I've just got to do this final one in here and then I'll be finished. And there we go. That is now all done. From a top angle, you can see it is, it is starting to take shape. It's starting to come together. But I do now need to mine out this middle layer of blocks. And there we go. Next, I'm going to add light blue concrete under all of the edge of this border. And the next thing I'll do is fill in this entire layer with glass. And I have successfully placed all the glass. Oh, okay, well, I was about to say on this outer layer, but uh, now I've successfully placed all the glass. However, I also need to fill in the bits inside of this blue concrete as well. And there we go. And now to add another layer of concrete and another layer of glass. And there we go. That is a, <laughs> that is a lot of glass. I think I'm about to cry, guys, but... Um, I've, I've just realized something. It was not meant to be light blue glass. It was it was meant to be cyan glass. Just give me a moment while I fix all of this. And that is now fixed. That's an entire Minecraft day that I'm uh, I'm never getting back. And now to add another layer of glass. And this time, it's definitely light blue. I've got the right color. And now I don't have to add any more glass. Instead, I'm adding a bit of a raised section here that's going to be over the top. It's just going to kind of add a bit more definition in a pattern. And then all of these will connect up to this part in the middle. The base is really starting to take shape now. I've built up these bits quite a bit. They're connecting to the middle. I've just got to carry on doing the same thing over here. And now that I have completed all of this middle bit, you can get a view of it from the top. It is definitely looking pretty good. Starting to come together, that is for sure. The actual base part of this mega base will be underneath here. I'd have to dig all that out and sort it out, but... Uh, for now, we are working on exteriors. But for now, I think I should take a bit of a break from building that and instead focus on getting yet another Not Chapel. Right now, I've got 42 and the goal is for me to eventually get 100. But up there, I've already filled up the wall completely. So I'm trying to think where I should put any new ones. I could put them on the roof, but I don't know. That just, that just seems a little bit strange to me. Or maybe along here. But again, I, I don't know if that works. Instead, let's do a little bit of mining out here. Fill behind it with blackstone and the underneath with some bricks. And then we can have a display set up like that. And I could also do the exact same thing on this side. Now I'm trying to decide which I think looks better. Either like that with a bit of an indent or this on glass so it's more like that one. And I've got to be honest, I think indent looks better. When I've filled up both of these two ones with the 18 notch apples, I can do the same thing on this side. But it'll probably be quite a while before that happens. Now to give all of my tools a quick repair. And I also need to craft a brand new flint and steel and give it mending and unbreaking. And now with everything that I need, I can fly far, far away and search for Notch Apple number 43. Look at that. It's taken me out into a lush cave. This is an interesting place. Always nice to find one of these underground. But when you're looking for Notch Apples, you, uh, you actually need to be above the ground. Also, as a little experiment, let's put a timer on screen. See how long it takes me to find one. My goal is to try and find one in less than 10 minutes minutes. Although being in a jungle is uh, probably not the best place for me to be. Well, hang on a minute, this jungle was connected to a desert. The first of the pyramids has been spotted and sadly it had nothing in it. Now we've got another one here. Let's see if this one is going to be any better. The answer is no. RNG wasn't on my side. Well, the 10 minute mark is just about to pass and I'm uh, I'm not having much fun in actually finding these pyramids. Can't even find a desert at this point. Oh, but hang on a minute, we found one and there's one right on the edge. Now that we've got, oh, we're already over time, but I'll tell you what, 
if we find it here, then we've done pretty well. But it's only my third one, so I highly doubt it. Highly doubt it doesn't mean impossible, though. Oh my goodness, it did mean impossible. Whoa! I did not expect that. I was just kind of hoping for the best, but... Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Not chapel number 43. And I was only like 20 seconds too late in getting it. That was, that was a pretty valiant effort. And whilst there is still quite a big bit of desert to explore, I think... I'm going to go and head home. It means that these ones can be saved for another time. If I can remember where I am, I'm like 40,000 blocks away. But let's not worry about that. Let's instead just fly back home. Also, guys, if you are new to the channel and you're enjoying the videos, 4,000 days is so, so close. So make sure to subscribe. I am on a quest for 4 million subscribers. And I can't do it without the help of you guys. And so this can be the first one to be added to the wall. Looking very good indeed. And apparently these are going to be much easier to find when Ancient Cities comes out. So uh, that, that's another cool feature. But I'm still very proud of all the hard work that I've put in to get all of these and now after that short break i can go back to spawn and start working on one of these massive towers that are going to be part of the base as you can see it's got the dark blue on the outside and the light blue on the inside and then the glass in the middle and then we're going to kind of build this upwards so it goes at a bit of an angle so that it's like a diagonal upward building same thing on this side it's going to come out one like that and you can probably start to see how the curvature is taking shape as you can see yeah it's like diagonally going upwards and there's different pillars and stuff and well, beams as, as we go up. So whilst it is taking shape, it still has to be built up quite a bit higher. It's only now that I'm starting to realize how big of a project this is actually going to be. As you can see, it's it, like it's coming together. It's looking good. There's some random pillages on my base. I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, it is, it is definitely getting there, but it's got to go so, so much higher. And so with that in mind, I'm just going to keep on building. And I've now successfully placed down all of the light blue concrete. And that is what the size of the building is going to look like. It looks a little bit stretched to the top out, I'll admit. I still need to add all of the blue concrete with the glass and the sea lanterns on the side, though. Hopefully that will make the building look a lot better. And that is one of the corners now complete, as you can see. Just three more to go. And that is one side finished. I've done three of the corners and now you can you can start to see how it looks from the side i think it looks a, a bit better now it's got the dark blue on it as well and all that is left for me to do is finish this corner right here and then i can finish the top bit up there as well and there we have it mission accomplished that building is complete it looks pretty amazing you can see how the whole thing's gonna look i've got to build that though seven more times yes yeah, it's a slightly bigger project than i first realized but i'm not gonna be building it seven more times right now instead it is time to grab some tnt repair my items and i was gonna look for a desert but this portal that i've made has spawned me in an amazingly massive cave so i think the best thing i can do is put 10 minutes on the timer and see just how many diamonds i can find already i've found more than 10 and it's not even been two minutes the diamonds are literally everywhere and i'm just jumping into lava like an idiot let's uh, maybe not do that not that it really matters this armor is uh, it's pretty op with that we have reached 15 also it's times like this i must clarify that diamond armor is for peasants but diamonds themselves are, are not. It's a pretty common misconception that I get whenever I go mining for diamonds. Five minutes in and the diamond total is sat at 22. If I can make it to 30, then I will be very, very impressed. And with diamond number 26 being found and 27, oh, it looks pretty likely, doesn't it? There's another one. I am struggling to find some big caves though, which is a bit of a worry. But you'd think that I can find just two diamonds in two minutes. At least I hope so, anyway. One minute to go, still no sign of them. And this looks like the original cave I was in. Now, did I miss any diamonds in here? Oh, no, I did. Look at that. Perfect. Right, let's just quickly land it. Take two. We're trying to land. There we go. That was better. Please be two. It's two. Okay, perfect. We have got 30, and it was in less than nine and a half minutes. And in the remaining 20 seconds, I have actually managed to find one more, I think. Is that 31? Is that the grand total? It looks like it. And if you ask me, that was a very successful, spontaneous diamond mining session. And now my priority is to track down a desert. And now the mission has been successful. So let's start placing TNT... I'm blowing things up. I found this to be an extremely fast way to collect sand. And even though I get loads of comments just telling me to dupe the sand, as I've said many times, I, I will not ever dupe sand or gravel. Might as well just dupe never right if I'm going to do that. Already got two shulker boxes from that one journey. And now it's time to blow up another strip. I have collected up so, so much sand. And I'm just going to use up these last bits of TNT. There's about 36 of them left now. And once all of that has run out, I will go home with almost 20 shulker boxes worth of sand. If you ask me, that is not a bad day's work. And that is 15 shulker boxes worth of sand collected up. I'm gonna turn all this spare sand into gunpowder. And I think we can now safely go home. I'm not sure the word safely was, was the one I'm looking for.
looking for. We can happily go home with everything that we've got. And as usual, the fastest way to do that will be to make a portal and fly home through the nether. One thing I didn't tell you is that I already have four shulker boxes of sand waiting for me at home. So let's place all of these down and get crafting all of the TNT. And I've now used up all of the gunpowder that I have in crafting TNT. And we've got three shulker boxes worth so far, but there's still quite a bit of sand left to go at. So I need more gunpowder. And the best place to get that is from the EOL farm. Although having said that, there is there is not a huge amount of gunpowder. Okay, maybe in this chest there is. Had me a little bit worried for a second, but yeah, we've got absolutely loads of it. I'm, I think I'm going to take every bit of gunpowder so I know that I have now got none left here. Although having said that, my inventory is not big enough to take it all because we've still got quite a few ones left. And really that can only be a good thing. And that is absolutely all of my sand crafted into TNT. And that has given me a grand total of 8,326 TNT. And very conveniently, in the last 100 days episode, I dug a massive 10,000 blocks long tunnel. The entrance to it is right about here. And I can now use this massive creation to place down so, so much. Much TNT. I want to obtain at least 18 blocks of netherite today. That is that is the goal to keep us on track for the netherite beacon. And as people tell me all the time, I could space the TNT out a bit more, but it, it kind of it doesn't make too much of a difference in the sense that if you space it out more, the tunnel will be not as big. More TNT together will make a wider tunnel, meaning you'll expose more blocks and see more ancient debris. Maybe it uses a bit more TNT, but as you can see, I can craft it so, so fast that it, it makes no difference to me. And that is every single bit of TNT placed down. Might as well chuck load this netherrack into a shulker box. And then we light this up, grab a bow with flame on it and some arrows. That way I can keep the chain going if I need to and I can go ahead and collect up lots and lots of ancient debris and already I have got one netherite blocks worth and there's still a long way to go in exploring this tunnel and that is now one stack of ancient debris progress is going very nicely indeed and now I have two stacks of ancient debris and now also a third stack a fourth one a fifth and also a sixth one all of this ancient debris will get me over 10 netherite blocks. Ten and a half to be precise. And there's still thousands of blocks left in this tunnel to explore. So I'm starting to become confident that I won't be far off those 20 netherite blocks. I'll just have to keep exploring and mining the ancient debris. And I have now reached the end of my TNT tunnel. D didn't quite get the amount of stacks I thought I would. But eight stacks and three is a pretty good amount. And now to get out of here, there is a hole somewhere up here. It's actually the exact same one that I came down. I've just got to try and find it. There it is. Let's fly on up. And I can begin the smelting process project of all of this ancient debris. Using the super smelter just bounces it out so much. Look at that. There's just one in each and it fills this chest up very, very fast. I believe I might also have a bit, not in that one, but in this one, I might have a bit of yeah, look at that bit of netherite scrap, netherite ingots. And we're going to need quite a bit of gold, in fact, a lot more gold. Yeah, whilst I leave all that to smelt, I'm going to make a trip to the gold farm. Now, I'm going to start with this one up here because it is closer. Let's have a look at what we've got. Okay, well, is it going to be enough gold? I'm going to guess no. But there is quite a few ingots in there as well. Well, we're getting there with the gold. And whilst I'm here, I might as well repair my pickaxe as well. And then I can fly all the way over <laughs> somewhere in this direction. That's it. Just follow the blackstone slabs. And I will come to this farm. Although the place I really want is the farm down here, the gold farm, which is got so, so much gold. I did not realize I had this much gold waiting for me. Better start crafting these into blocks and putting them in here. And I think all of these should be enough. They don't even need to go in a shulker box, really. Let's just fly back up to the top and then we can go back home. From there, I can grab all of this netherite scrap, chuck a bunch of these items into the sorter and make all... A Wait, where on earth has this slab got? Okay, did I break that once upon a time? Let's um, let's put it back. There we go. And now I can craft all these netherite ingots. Oh, look at it. Two stacks Two stacks, three stacks, no, oh, well, two stacks and four. That's insane. And then we can make the blocks. It's 14 blocks with three short for the 15th. But I tell you what, that is still some very, very nice progress. Because the layers are smaller, of course, it's going to speed up. It's, it's really taking shape. And whilst I'm doing stuff with the beacon, might as well grab a bit of string and put it on these blocks so that snow does not go on them. And the same thing can be done on these outer ones as well. I really can't wait until that beacon is finished. It's been going since the beginning of time. What an achievement it will be. And I've only been working on it for 7.5 million years. And whilst I'm doing stuff in this chest room, I might as well grab three stone because if you notice, I think I took the stone cutter when I went to the end for the, the wither farm or the obsidian farm rather. And I never made the stone cutter again, so... We're going to go and put one back because it's just annoying that there's a random hole in the ground. At some point, I should make a better solution for this water as well. It's like, I need an infinite water source, but it, it could be better that, couldn't it? Anyway, now that some beacon progress has been done, I'm going to head to spawn and begin work on a second tower of this mega base. And this time it's going to be a diagonal one. I've no idea if that's going to be easier or harder than the, uh, the, the one I did over there. 
Only time will tell. Well, I'm already starting to realize that this is going to take a little bit longer than uh, than that one did. But not to worry, I'm just going to crack on and get placing as fast as I can. And it has taken about 40 minutes, but I'm now working on this roof. As you can see, the building is... <laughs> It's very, very tall, but it still needs the blue border stuff to be added as well. So the work is far from done just yet. And that is all of the light blue concrete placed down. And now let's add the blue concrete, the sea lanterns, and also the glass. And once I place down these four blocks, another one is now complete. Oh my goodness, the, uh, the massive mega base is coming together. And I have to say, I think you can see how it is going to look really, really cool when it's finished. Obviously, there's still six more of these to build, but I am I am very, very impressed with how it's looking. Each of the towers does seem to take a couple hours to build, but I'm fairly confident I can get it all built at this episode. I said, I, to be honest, I was confident I could do it in the last episode, and <laughs> we know how that one went. But this time, I'm sure things will be different. And speaking of things being different, I'd like to fix an issue with my storage system. Basically, if I have this big super smelter working, and I'm using it with a chunk loader so I'm not in the area, then once I load the chunks, there will be a big buildup of items in my storage system. You probably saw it in the last episode if you're watching. Basically, all of the items will get clumped up here because the hoppers will be full and they, they can't hold any more items. So I'm going to attempt to fix that using hopper minecarts. It's going to take quite a lot of them. My only hope is it doesn't cause this area to be too laggy. And to help me with this, I'm going to craft a stack of hoppers. And for now, I think 15 hopper minecarts. I can fit a few more in the inventory. We'll, <laughs> we'll do as much as we can. Now to turn all of these into hopper minecarts and chuck them in this chest because I, I don't need them right now. Instead, I need to run some tests by using dirt. I think I can safely break this block. I can. Now, the issue here is this double chest is kind of in the way. So if I just break that, Okay, that's, that's gone off into the system forever. <laughs> but now I've got a hopper. Yeah, if I just place a hopper here, and then I could just put a load of hopper minecarts on there. Or at least I could if there wasn't a flipping redstone torch that needed to be here. So instead I'm going to have to block up the water, remove this hopper and remove this chest. Okay, see this is where it's starting to get a bit complicated. I think from here I can then begin, if I maybe place this like that. Now I need to get my hopper minecarts. Can we just mine on through? We can. Let's start placing them all down. Tell you what, if this works it's going to be a miracle. But now I just need to, I need to break the rail. There we go. And if I have a block right here... There we go. That, now they can't move. Is, is, is that going to work? There's going to be water on those though. And, and I need to do a sign or push a block into those. And I reckon we do the risky thing of pushing a block into it by grabbing a piston. Let's make the block a piece of glass so we can see what's going on. And so the block will start there. Then I need to somehow uh, just uh, make it so I don't fall all the way down. Then I can place a piston upside down. Followed by... Like, oh, we didn't want to do that. But anyway, that, that's worked. So that doesn't matter. If I break this, does that... Look at that, into the system. Just send it all through. Now I can break this. Look at that. I'll add a couple more pieces of glass to protect everything. Then I think I just need something like that. Does that... Oh, okay. <laughs> we also need a block so that, that can power that. There we go, that'll be better. Perfect. That like that. Seamless. And now I want to test this out by smelting a vast amount of items and just see how it copes with everything. Let's chuck all of that into there. And you know what? That wasn't enough items to really test this out because all those hoppers can hold 115 stacks worth of build-up. So I'm going to go all out in pushing that to its limits. There we go. All these shulker boxes have successfully filled it up. These are nicely smelting stone. I've just realized there's been a big build-up already <laughs> without me even meaning to. But now they will all be released. And I can just leave the area, leave that to it. And to actually correctly test out those hoppers, I am going to have to leave the area and let the chunk loaders do the work. So, I, I mean, what can I do? Where, where can I go that's far, far away and, and actually do something? Well, there's always time for another notch apple. So, in, 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 uh, in the name of science, I'll go and find a notch apple just to kill some time. Or alternatively, I could build one of these tunnels because that kind of needs to be done as well, doesn't it? You know what? Yeah, I need to build a tunnel to spawn. But in reality, I don't really have enough of the materials here and I'd have to go back through and then that would mess up the experiment. So you know what? We're just going far, far away. I have successfully found a desert and uh, look at this, the first of the pyramids. I feel like it wasn't that long ago since I was doing this before, but let's just keep searching, see what we can find. Hopefully it doesn't take too many attempts. Up ahead is the second one with no notch chapel. And whilst I'm near a village, might as well grab a hoe and take the opportunity to steal their wheat. Because it'll probably come in handy further down the line. And these deserts sure do have a lot of villages. Look at this. It's like a mine shaft connecting up to this one. Some of the things you see when you explore Minecraft really are crazy. All I seem to be getting from these is diamonds. I've got more than two diamonds in every single one. Room portal ahead. I'll take the obsidian. That's about all that's uh, useful to me. And... Over here, another village. Let's just keep mining the hay. But me stealing this doesn't mean that little Timmy doesn't have anything to eat tonight. Once again, not good loot in the fourth. Although considering I got one in the third one early today, I'm probably due to search about 17 before I find another one. This is going to be the seventh one that I search. And the seventh disappointment. Seems to be having more success at just grabbing hay bales. 
And in the eighth one, we've got it. Okay, perfect. It kind of caught me by surprise there, but there it is. Not Chapel, what's that? Number 44, something like that. The Desert Temple odds have definitely been in my favour in this episode. And I am just scanning the rest of the desert to see if I can find any extra ones. Or if nothing else, I can grab hay bales. And I think I've searched around enough now, so let's go ahead and build a portal so that we can go back home. And see if the new hopper system is working as expected. Well, look at this. We've come across a bit of a treasure bastion. These are a place where it's very easy to die, but it's also a place where you can get yourself... Not chapels. Yeah, all these guys are the reason it's easy to die, but they, they weren't hard to deal with, were they? Same with you. Get spleefed. Let's go mine away this spawner. Even if there's no not chapel, we could... Well, we've got diamonds. That's, that's, that's kind of decent, I suppose. We're glad we can get netherite stuff as well. And since I'm in the area, I'm just going to grab a load of gold, okay? This is going to get a lot of angry piglins on my back, but I'm just going <laughs> to risk it all, grab as much as I can, and get out of here. There we go. Look at that. No problem whatsoever. Pretty sure if I keep mining out, eventually I will find a place to go. Let's just block that up so we're safe. And there we go. We can carry on flying back home. Found another one. I can't remember if I've been to this one before. Although considering that that is, uh, is like that, let's just spleef you. Let's have a little... Whoa, you just dodged it. Wow, okay. Try and dodge this one as well then. Yeah, not so good now, are you? Although the fact that there's terracotta in there would, would indicate that yes, I have been here before. I think I'll just concentrate on flying my way back home. And I have made it back. And in theory, there should be a big influx of smooth stone coming through. It's even possible that it's already come through and I've missed it. Although that would then be doing that. So I don't know. I think I can hear it. There it is. Okay, yes, it's all flown through. Oh my goodness. So, okay, I don't really want to be picking it all up. Now then, I think the hoppers picked all of it up though. All those 23 hoppers managed to process it. Because you'll see... Yeah, there's, there's none left here. And and I guess I can throw that extra piece down. Oh, brilliant. Look at this. Yeah, so this hopper, you can see these hoppers did grab some of it, but not all of it. And, oh, that's brilliant. Okay, it works. So it can take a massive backlog, all those hoppers. Okay, whoever, somebody gave me that idea in the comments and it worked perfectly. So whoever you were, thank you so, so much. It looks so cool to see it all come through together. But yeah, whilst doing that experiment, we... Um, we managed to get a Not Chapel as well, which is nice. As well as some Netherite items. For the purpose of symmetry, I'm going to get that added onto there. There we go. So both of them now have one in it. I mean, Elytra, as you can see, are, are all but broken at this point. So I'm going to hope that there's enough durability in them for me to make it to the gold farm up here. How far are off are we? We've got, oh, we've, we've, got, we've got enough. We've got plenty of time here, okay? And now that I am up here, they can be repaired. Managed to get over 450 levels, which is pretty nice. And now I wish to get a new pet. You see, over the thousands of days that I've spent in this world, I've uh, I've amassed three little doggies. Here we go, my buddy Junior and Brittany. To be honest, like, they never see the light of day. I've got all sorts of animals in this farm area. I've built amazing buildings for the villagers. I even made an enclosure for the pandas. I still don't know what happened to the black panda, but we do have a brown panda and a, a, a polar bear in here. I've got three different foxes down here that have apparently eaten <laughs> chickens and rabbits. But there's one creature that I've never got a pet version of. And that is the ocelot. Now, they did remove it so that cats do not be... Well, ocelots do not become cats. If you tame an ocelot, it stays an ocelot. It doesn't really work like a cat does. So I think I should go out, tame one, and bring it home. And that means that the first part of call for me is to try and find a jungle. So I'm just going to fly very, very far in the rain and see what is ahead. So I'm pretty sure there's one somewhere in this direction. There we go. Quest to find a jungle. Successful. Look at that lava in the mountain. Doesn't that just look really cool? Not cool to uh, to fly. Wait, here's a question. So if I burn myself and I go into the rain, it puts me out, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I knew that. I just wanted to test it. Anyway, I'm sure somewhere near there will be an ocelot. The next thing was chickens everywhere, apparently. Well, the next thing I'm going to need to tame this ocelot is fish and salmons will do just nicely so we can take those out and we can collect a raw salmon and of course one is not going to be enough we're gonna need plenty more than that and i can't use my sword because it's fire aspect it'll cook the fish these have to be raw fish i'm also sick of this rain so i think i'm going to go to sleep and i can get back to hunting salmon being a penguin i am uh, particularly talented at catching fish so that's what that random backstroke thing i'm doing is either <laughs> my goodness the more i search the more fish are spawning in this is ridiculous i don't need all of these i just can't stop myself it's so satisfying all right 40 fish to tame an ocelot. If, if that's not enough, then nothing ever will be. Also, don't really need this bone meal, so let's just use it on the land. There we go. That looks better, doesn't it? And now let's see if we can find an ocelot. So far, it's just been chicken, chickens, and more chickens. And you know what I'm going to grab as well while I'm here? Cocoa beans, because I, I don't actually have any way to farm cocoa beans, and sometimes I will need a lot of brown dye, and I've just, just not got the means to get it. So I do think it is in my best interest to grab some. Anyway, SP, stop getting distracted. <laughs> You're here to find an ocelot. All I'm finding is things like ruined portals. Have I been here before? 
well, I, I, a bell. Can you, wait, is that normal? There is a 1.5% chance of a bell being in. It's just as rare as a nut chapel. I don't think I've ever, I don't remember anyway seeing a bell in a room portal before. Pretty cool indeed, but also not really relevant to the task. Tell you what, quest to find Ocelot is, is really not going well. I wish I'd called this quest to find Cocoa Beans. It would have been much better. Well, I haven't found Ocelot, but I have found a parrot. Now, I don't know if only the OGs remember this. The people who've watched like, all the episodes... Do you guys remember I used to have a parrot that, that looked exactly like that? And then it just it just kind of disappeared at some point and, and nobody knows where it went. Well, I'm pretty sure I killed it and didn't tell you guys. Like, I, like I, <laughs> let's just get this straight. I remember going to hit someone with my sword. I can't remember if I was breaking someone. And I, I'm pretty sure it swiped and I accidentally killed my parrot with my sword. I, I don't think I have it on video. I, I can't remember. I don't think I was recording at the time or something. Something like that. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I killed my last parrot. I think we, I think we get another one. I think, I think we get runner 2.0, don't we? Because you know what, cool little thing, and yeah, I, I finally come clean. That's a real weight off my chest, guys. That's been on my conscience for some time. Come on, let's get some seeds. Let's tame you. Come on, don't let me down. Accept, accept the offering. Come on, what are you doing? Oh, oh, you, you only took one. Okay, well done then. Um, right, runner. We are. Uh, <laughs> well, this is this is runner two. Okay, that's just, that's the name of it. Okay, we're we're gonna get you home. Don't feel upset. You just, you just, you weren't the one that was chosen. I'm sorry, Parrot, but yeah, let's try and get uh, Runner 2 home. And I can come back for the Ocelot later. Let's just give you a proper name as well. Where have you gone? Okay, you're on my shoulder. That that doesn't really help me. I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to give you a name. So there we go. Runner 2.0. Okay. <laughs> That's a blast from the past. We've not seen him in like 2,000 days or something. But you come with me, Runner 2.0. Pretty sure it was a light blue one. I, I can't remember. Was it a dark blue one? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember actually. I've looked and I, I can't actually find any footage of the parrot. Maybe maybe runner 1.0 didn't get much screen time. Guys, whoever in the comments, find find the episode, find the timestamp of where we can see the parrot. What kind of parrot was it? Have I got this right or wrong? Because I'm starting to think that it was a dark blue one. But anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? I mean, runner 2.0 is still going to be chosen. Oh my goodness, a dripstone cave that is not in a cave. And a forest fire. Whoa, 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 get out of it. No, no, no. I ain't losing you as well, all right? I may have killed one. I ain't... Where are you? Are you... Okay. You stay on my shoulder where we know where you are, Runner 2.0, yeah. One died to me. I don't want one to die to, to lava. I get distracted very, very easily, don't I? And now I remember why I called him Runner. Because <laughs> I have to do a lot of running back home. I can't fly because otherwise it won't teleport after me. Yeah, I just have to do a lot of running back home. And in this Minecraft world, because of my elytra, I'm, uh, I'm not very used to having to use my legs. Normally, I just fly everywhere. Even using a horse would have been better than this. And do you want to know the best news, guys? It's, it's really, really good news. Just check the coordinates and I'm actually going in the opposite direction. I should be going that way. Are you kidding me? Oh, well, there's a ruin portal at the top of that hill. Hopefully, this makes the ruin journey at least a little bit worth it. Um, not really. Okay. Whoa, no look, lava again. I need to stop taking you near lava, runner. He says as he flies past another pool. Seriously, if I get this parrot home in one piece, it will be a miracle. But on the positive side, we are at the very least now going in the correct direction. I mean, would you look at that? I've even found the jungle again. And now that I have made it to an ocean, I'm going to craft a boat, grab my parrot, and if I get in the boat, are we we're, are we in? We're off. <laughs> it's working. Look at me and my parrot sailing across the seven seas. I feel like a proper pirate now. And here is the guardian slash cactus farm, so we, we know we're getting close to home, followed by the good old raid farm. Side note on that, somebody has actually released a way, way better raid farm that would take so long to build and would be way better than that, but I, I don't think I'll ever bother building it because it's just too much effort. You never know, if I get to like 15,000 days or something, I might change it in like a few years time, but for now, I've, I've built two raid farms. I don't really want to build another one. And here we are. Well, runner 2.0. When, you, when you're ready to come in, just come and land on my shoulder. It's going to make everything much easier. There we go. We can now go up the ladder. And this is your new home, okay? I will I will try to not give you the same fate that happened <laughs> to the last part. Don't ask what happened to it yet. You just go over here, buy the old plushie. We can give the plushie a little twirl. And yeah, all is well. We've got runner 2.0. Successful mission. Do I want to go back and get an ocelot now? I, I, I tell you what I want to do. I want to make a cocoa bean farm because let, let's just go and have a look. This is the current state of brown dye. As you can see, only got 21 pieces. Now, do I have a cocoa bean chest? I'm not even sure if I do. Turns out I do indeed. As you can see, we've got 68 cocoa beans, which is barely anything. So it's definitely time that I solved that problem. Also, I don't really know what to do with this bell, but I feel like the dogs are a little bit left out that I have I have a bell and, and they don't. So how about we go like that? And if somebody comes around, because nobody ever comes to see them. <laughs> oh, you know what? 
Day with the dogs. All right, that's what we've decided. Day 3862 is day with the dogs. We're probably just going to cause a load of trouble, but you know what? Doesn't matter. And so I need to grab jungle wood. 64 should be fine. And of course, the cocoa beans. All right, everything we need is right here. And it's going to be built down at the bottom of these stairs opposite the old chorus fruit farm. You know what? Whilst I'm here, I might as well harvest this. You get some free glow squigged ink in the process by the looks of things. That thing's not going to survive too. You know what? All right. You know what? Last time I did that near me pets, yeah, it didn't end well for the parrot. So, yeah, <laughs> got to be careful when I do that. But uh, plenty more chorus fruit right here. And I can send all these items into the auto sorter. And now that's enough with the distractions. Let's get this farm built. It's not going to be a particularly big farm. I'm just going to have a... Well, I, I don't really want the log that way, actually. I want the log facing like that. And then the cocoa bean is just going to be right here. And we're going to be using bone meal and stuff to replenish those supplies. So we can just have a dispenser there and a dispenser here. I'm actually going to move everything back by one block. Just, I just feel like it'll be better. <laughs> I actually think I could do something like... The, will you guys just... You know what? Stay calm, SB. Okay, it's take your dog to work day, apparently. <laughs> so we're going to do that. We're going to have... Yeah, that. that's basically how the farm is going to look. I kind of... Part of me wants a dispenser there, but I think in reality I'm going to end up with like a lever here, maybe. That might be a better better option, something like that. And some observers right here are going to be powering these dispensers very fast. And then just to turn it on and off, we're going to have a piston like that. I think that, that should be fine. There we go. So that's off. Whoa! What's going on? <laughs> right, this is why we don't bring dogs. Buddy, what are you doing in the machine? Will you just get out of there? Right, I want all three of you. Sit, sit, sit. Okay, right, buddy, you can have a bit of pork chop since you're not doing too well. My goodness, if something's going to go wrong, it'll, it'll go wrong, won't it? From there, I can have a chest. I think I'm just going to put cocoa beans in the chest and maybe like the bone meal shulker boxes. We can always have a shulker box on this side. So we do need to fill the... Okay, well, there's a lot of bones in there, isn't there? But yeah, we do have to fill these up. I could attach these to hoppers, but I feel like it'll just make it messy. I think it's going to be nicer to actually just have the dispensers on their own. And just kind of manually fill them every now and again. Because I'm not going to need that many cocoa beans that I've got to do that. So I think using this method shouldn't be too much of a problem. We've actually got a bit of spare bone meal anyway. So that can go... Let's just have it along the bottom like so. And then if I go like this... Okay, well, don't go like that. But you can see the method for this is very simple. Just hold right click and left click. Okay, well, not like that. But there you go. That's it. It's working perfectly now. We are getting all the cocoa beans we could dream of. Actually going to move slightly across so that I... Okay, well, you can see we're, we're starting to lose a few here and there, though. They do tend to go flying out a little bit. And I'm thinking we just lace the floor with hoppers so that that does not become a problem. Then let's get back to using the... Okay, well, I've got to turn it on. That would help. <laughs> As I was saying, let's get back to using the farm. If I press F3 and T, no hands, the farm will run itself. And the farm has now run out of bone meal, so I'm going to switch it off. And uh, okay, we've got a bit of cocoa beans everywhere. But we've got uh, some that I put in here from before. Loads more there as well. Looks like these, this hopper right here is also full. There's a few here. A very, very successful farm indeed, if I do say so myself. It's also a ridiculously simple one too. And thanks to all these cocoa beans, I can make brown dye and then I can make brown sugar boxes for it to go in. That, that makes the most sense. Colour coordinate these things. And now that that side project is done that completely distracted me, I can get back to the main purpose, which was to find and tame an ocelot. And this time I, I won't get distracted. I'm going to once again go in this direction to find a jungle. Once again, jungle so successfully found, although it's it's a very, very small jungle. A sparse one, to be precise, and sparse ones do not spawn ocelots. This, on the other hand, is a, a proper jungle, which should have a better chance of spawning them. Nothing found in this little jungle. Let's see if this jungle is going to be any better. As I explore this place, in my opinion, it is a prime place to actually find ocelots, but I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious of the reason as to why then there is none seemingly spawning. If you didn't know, ocelots, for some reason, do not spawn in peaceful mode. I don't know why, because they're not a hostile mob. And whilst this wouldn't make sense. I am wondering if my mob switch is stopping ocelots from spawn. I feel like that shouldn't be the case, but I'm not finding any ocelots and I've explored three jungles. So I reckon I first make a trip all the way back to spawn because yeah, there's, there's, there's no ocelots here anywhere. And now that I'm here, let's turn the switch off, fly all the way back to a jungle again. And now we shall find out if my ocelots here is correct. I've been to this jungle before, so if there's miraculously ocelots here now, then I can, I can guess I can put it down to the mob switch, which would be pretty bizarre. Although in reality, it's it's not looking very good for the, uh, the ocelots. I, I don't see any anywhere. Hang on a minute. I do. Wait, you weren't there before. 
Is my theory correct? Does the mob switch stop ocelots from spawning? That would be crazy if it's the case. Now we have to tame it. You don't really tame them. You just kind of make them trust you. If it would stop walking away, I might stand a chance with it. Come on, ocelot. This is your favorite thing. You've got to turn your head slowly. Do not stand in the grass, please. Okay, there we go. No! I'll give you one more chance and then I'm just going to put you in a boat. That's it. Now take the fish. That's it. Wait, do you trust me now? That's it. We're friends. There you go. Me and this ocelot. Best of friends will not run away from me anymore. It, it trusts me, which means I'm now going to put you on a lead and uh, take you home as well. And the best thing about ocelots is they don't take fall damage. So I can craft loads and loads of planks, build up very, very high into the sky. Now that we're up here, we can glide on home. Okay, little ocelot. Do not be so terrified, okay? This is this is nothing to worry about. That ocelot looks like this is the last place it wants to be, doesn't it? <laughs> no, we're, we're going home. I did say ocelots don't take any fall damage, but it looks like we're, we're going to land in water anyway, so it, it, it doesn't really matter. From here, I'm, I'm going to drag you underwater. Sorry about this. Don't uh, don't drown, please. We just need to quickly grab a boat. Now, let's get you out of water. I, I don't think cats can swim very well. We shall put you into said boat and sail home for the rest of the distance. Glad to see familiar fans. We've not got far to go. And I'll let you guys come up with a name for this little ocelot. A lot. Okay, whatever you want to name it, guys, just say in the comments and I will I will choose one of those names. It's been ages since I got a new pet, so it's, it's kind of cool to do this. And now we have made it to <laughs> to the homeland. For some reason, part of me wants to do something evil here and, and, and put it in with the creeper because then the creeper's going to be scared for the rest of its life. But I, I'm, I'm not going to be that mean, okay? Let's just put you with the goat for now. We'll sort out a proper home for you when you've actually got a name. You know, you're a bit more established. Screamer and uh, the goat of Minecraft have got their names. We've got two random endermen that have been here for, for years for some reason. I'm <laughs> going to drop all of this off to the uh, down to the storage room. Couldn't think of the name of it there for a second. And now I'm going to continue the hard work of this mega base and build some more of these towers. Well, building these three towers took an absolute mega effort. It took so, so long. But there we go. We have five out of the eight done. I'm sure I can get the other three done before the end of this video. At least I, I definitely hope so. For the first two, I did all of the light blue concrete. And then I added the blue concrete around it and all the glass and stuff. But for that last one, I just kind of did it layer by layer. And I think it was faster. It took about two hours on that last one, so... I'm, I'm going to probably try that for the other three ones. But before I finish the mega base, I'd, I'd like to take a small break. You see, with 4,000 days coming soon and, and, and possibly a world download if, if you guys behave, I feel like I should spruce a few things up in the world. Like for a start, th this pathway. This pathway is, is just the worst thing that I've created. I mean, this way doesn't even go anywhere. And this one just looks bland. It just doesn't look right, you know. It, there's work to be done. I think we get the old pickaxe out. Remove these slabs. Bold move, I know, but I've... Uh, I've got a plan. I really hope this plan works because I'm I'm running out of ideas of what I can do for this pathway. The only thing I certainly don't want to do is accidentally break the ice as I am mining these slabs, which is apparently a, a slightly bigger challenge than I first... <laughs> yeah, definitely a bigger challenge than I first thought. Now that these have all been collected up, I think I will leave this staircase here. I don't know whether I should modify that as well. And you know what? I say go big or go home. I'm also going to grab stone brick stairs. We don't need these stone brick slabs anymore. See you later, guys. And this staircase right here is also getting removed. Which may be for the best considering it's all covered in snow. Alrighty, all pathway gone. Fresh new start incoming. And I am going to take a bit of a risk and I'm going to do something like this. We're going to see if it lines up well. But I feel like staircase into the side of the mountain does have quite a bit of potential. Oh, look at this. It's going to it's gonna fit very, very nicely. In fact, do we, do, do we just uh, do something like... Yeah, look at that. And, and do we put a... We're not going to go slabs. We're going to go full blocks, I think, here. Something like that. What do we reckon? It's different, okay? It's uh, <laughs> it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. And then rather something on top of the ice. We're actually going to have the pathway integrated into it. Yeah, this again, this this could go very, very wrong. But I'm determined to commit and see what happens. First problem I just realised is it's not going to actually line up correctly. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just can't do anything right, can I? Let's redo this pathway, place ourselves down these bricks. There we go. In a slightly regrettable move, we are now filling in all of the ice back that I've destroyed. And then removing more. I'm going to slightly move this staircase to be like this. And I think I can kind of modify the terraforming of this as well. Just bring it down a little bit. That'll make it a bit nicer. M maybe... 
that could be moved a little bit as well. I think I'm pleased with the way this is going so far. Let's just get all of the stone bricks down. Oh my goodness, I'm just trying to build a pathway and we're, we're being invaded. I don't know where they're going, but they look like they know where they're going. There's literally eight of them. Is, is there eight? Is there nine? I mean, somebody pause the video and count, but... My goodness, they're going for the netherite beacon. You guys stay away. You know what? I'm just going to leave them to it. They're, they're obviously know where they're going. I don't know where they're going. But as long as they're leaving me alone, I really don't mind. They also sadly do not have enough blocks for this. But not to worry. I can just grab a bunch of stone and turn it into bricks. Then this can be completed. Now, does it look better integrated into the ice? You know what, guys? I'm sick of changing it, so maybe we'll just stick with it. I think we'll also turn... Like this direction and oh, let's go and put that back as well But let's go and make a pathway that kind of leads to the teleporter All I'm realizing is I mine this ice is I'm probably not gonna have enough stone bricks once again for this We'll make it so that a corner gets turned right about there and let's carry on digging it out We've only got a stack left. So yeah, we're definitely not gonna have enough You know considering I demolished about four mountains in the previous episode I find it difficult to believe that I have now run out of stone I don't know why I didn't at least collect some of it up I feel like stone is the one thing that I should never run out of yeah Here we are completely out of stone. Well, not quite quite out of stone, but more or less. So the plan is to go uh, to something that I, I don't use that often very no, no, I don't use that very often. You know, I can't get my words out. A farm that I don't use very often at all. There we go. Yeah, the, uh, the cobblestone farm, but I, I guess I can do something like this and will that work? No, it needs to be, it needs to be more of that. No, it seems to be working actually. Yeah, it's working. So yeah, it, it uh, generates stone for me. Which, yeah, apparently I, I sorely need. And I also need to anger the aggressive man so that I will get XP from those pigmen when they fall down. I just remember the fastest way for me to collect stuff is to go like this. I think I've spent enough time here to get what I need. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's no, you know, nothing crazy, but there's a decent amount of stone in at least some of these. <laughs> Not all of them. From there, I'll make four stacks of stone bricks. That's definitely got to be enough. Mine out this final bit of a gap if we just can. There we go. And we can be adding all of the stone bricks. And I'll carry on adding them all the way along here. Definitely going to have enough, which makes a change. There we go. So yeah, we've got a pathway going over there. We've got a pathway going to the village. It goes to my house. It would probably be a good idea to add something that connects up to the pans as well. And it could also go all the way. You know what? We're going all out on pathways today, guys. Because yeah, I could have this three white. Look at this. This is going to fit perfectly. You know, if I just go ahead and put myself down something yeah look, i think this works been a while since the old bear enclosure has got some tender loving care so i think i might even add some stairs as well just to really give them a nice six bit okay well not in there but yeah just to give them a really nice experience let's go ahead and oh, oh, don't do that my goodness, you know what haste sometimes it's just a pain because you can't you can't like just mine like one block although even haste wouldn't be make a difference on dirt i suppose so i should just get a little bit more controlling of my actions that would be a better idea we'll go ahead put the staircase down and then we do the same thing i think i'll put some staircases here and we'll kind of have it staggered down along with the mountain i think this is what i'm going for at the moment i think i think it is working from here i can dig out a straight line that will then connect to that stone pathway in the distance look at that perfect it's all working already ran out of stone bricks maybe my uh, my analogy that i will definitely not be running out is going to be slightly wrong at this point. So I'd also like the pathway to go in this direction so it's a bit of a crossroad. Maybe this is a good time to just get rid of these random rails. They were for transporting more villagers into the trading hall, which to be honest, it, it probably could do with more villagers going down there at some point, but that some point is not at the moment. So we're just going to tidy this up a little bit. And this stone brick pathway can connect up to the grass path. I've no idea if this is going to look a little bit strange, but time will tell. A little bit of terraforming just to make it integrate in a bit nicer. Oops, okay. <laughs> I just dug down and it's amazing what you find underground. A flower and everything, okay? I, this is why I tend to just stay above ground because there's all sorts of rubbish underneath my world. I can't even seem to build this in the right place. Can, am I just an idiot? You know what? I'll do this pathway and I'll, I'll see you when I've, uh, I've finished the struggle. Or maybe I won't because it turns out that I have once again run out of stone bricks. So it's... <laughs> It's back to the old cobblestone farm to keep mining. And this time, I've got I've got plenty of stone, all those stacks. And I've successfully filled in this path. If I clear the snow away from the front of my house, I can also build a pathway going towards the volcano. Let's just destroy this bit of mountain. Got to be the world's smallest mountain if I'm calling it one. But anyway, we're just going uh, to allow it. Then dig this trench going all the way through. And that is volcano pathway complete as well. Yeah, I think Operation Add Better Pathways to My World is... Is kind of getting there, but there's, there's one thing that's missing. Firstly, chuck all this stuff into a chest, and then grab fences and lanterns. And these can add a little bit of decoration to the area and make the pathways not look terrible. I'm pretty sure the lamps at that height won't melt the ice. And I suppose we're going to find that out one way or another anyway, hopefully without melting everything. Well, I went pretty crazy with the, uh, the old lampposts. 
maybe it looks a little strange. You know, maybe I'll just never get this right. But you know what? I'm happy with it, okay? We're, we're, that's it. We'll, we'll revisit this in another thousand days and maybe change it up again. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, apparently uh, apparently we can melt the ice as well if we do that. And now let's chuck all of these things into the storage. And I need to make my elytra. If I, if I want to finish the mega base, elytra need to be fixed. That can be done very quickly and easily up here. And it's also going to fix my pickaxe at the same time as well. With that mission successfully accomplished, let's fly down this particular bedrock hole. All right, watch out for that. Well, how on earth did I get hit by Hoglin? I was going about 50 miles an hour past him. He just punches me on the way or whatever Hoglins do. I suppose they don't really punch. They kind of just snout. Yeah, I got snouted by a Hoglin. That's lovely. But anyway, more importantly, we are now back at spawn. And just look at it. Just look at it. Okay, yes, that Obsidian Tower is... You know what? That Obsidian Tower is definitely in the way. And this tower has been here for way longer than it ever needs to be. Although apparently mining it is, is, is going to take a little bit of time. Now that's all gone. Perfect. I feel like I can have a proper look at the mega base. I am wondering whether to cover it in string so that it's not got snow on it. I don't know if I can, I've got the willpower to do that. There'll be a lot of string, but um, <laughs> yeah, imagine this. Look at this. Okay, I do need to put string on the glass down here at the very least, but imagine coming to this. This is the area, and I can actually make it so there's tunnels going into all these buildings, having stuff in there if I want to. I mean, I don't know exactly what I'm going to use this mega base for because I'm still going to live at my house, but it needs to be finished, okay? And then the yeah, underground here is where the base is actually going to be, you know, in the in the glass down there. I'll have to chisel it out at some point, but yeah, I, I just want to get these towers done. It's it's going to be a big, a bit of a graft, okay? I have all of the... Did I put them all into this choker box? I did all of the items. Perfect. Look at that. Ready to be placed. We're going to need a lot of light blue concrete. It's, yeah, it's going to take a while, but I am getting faster at building them. Now I think the whole uh, layer by layer thing has come in and, and these str these ones that aren't diagonal are a bit easier so i've got two of the faster ones and then one diagonal one which will take a little bit longer but it's also not too bad so yeah i'm gonna just do as much of this as i can I'm, i mean I've, I've got you know very few days left 11 to be precise but it's time for me to build as fast as i can And it took a little bit longer than I anticipated. Yes, we are, we are past 3,900 days. But look at it. The mega base has been built. At least the exterior of it is completely done. Although there is a bit of a problem. Obviously, it is covered in snow a bit, which, which doesn't look the greatest. But I'm, I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. I'm more worried about these bits down here being covered in snow. Because they, they just don't look very good. So I'm going to pack up all this stuff. Ended up with quite a bit of spare light blue concrete, which is nice. And then I will very quickly go back home to grab a load of string. And when we've gone this far over time, I, of course, I'm not going to cover the entire thing in string. It'll probably take me up until 4,000 days if I tried something like that. But anything on this bottom layer where snow can form, I am going to place it. The, now, where this sea lantern is nearby, I don't have to worry about that because it lights up the area. The main place that I need to be the most concerned about is this area in there. And then also that big one. <laughs> well, I can't just about show you that big one in the middle. I'll just place this down wherever there's snow because I'm guessing if there's no snow, then it, it can't develop there because of the light. All snow on this outer edge has been removed. Now to put some around this bit and over all of this. Almost all of the string is down and it, it kind of looks bad when you're up close and you can see the string like in this bit. But when you look over there... You can't really see the string. It doesn't look as bad. And when you fly on up, you can't see it full stop. And it, it definitely looks a lot better. So, yeah, this is uh, this is almost a finished thing. I'd love to add string all on here to get rid of all this snow. But, like I say, I think I've gone on long enough. I would love to add the inside of the mega base, which, as I said, is going to be under that middle bit. 4,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. I almost die multiple times, and on day 4000, I take on a sky limit MLG without a totem that in hindsight, I, 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 I wish I hadn't done. I also throw a load of netherite into the void. Yeah, you, you, you'll soon see why. And I build a very cool custom portal room and a new and improved dragon farm that can defeat the ender dragon instantly. I did have to use up a few days from this episode to finish the last project, which is why we're starting seven days in. And I would like to make things a, a little bit more interesting. I'm going to give myself 20 minutes on the clock and those 20 minutes start now in this small amount of time i have to try and find a not chapel if i'm successful then it's it's happy days but if i fail this challenge then i will force myself to do a water bucket mlg from sky limit oh and when i do that mlg i won't be able to use a totem so yeah there's quite a lot riding on me actually finding a not chapel in the next 13 minutes and in this first pyramid 
We have had no success. I'd better keep searching as fast as I can. On average, it should take 10 of these to find one. I don't expect the second one to have anything, but <laughs> I can only hope. The third one has also had nothing. Maybe a ruined portal can save the day. No, <laughs> no, it can't. But the fourth pyramid is here and the fourth failure. I have to say, it's not looking good. We've got about five minutes left. No joy so far. I've only managed to find four pyramids, which is, is a bit rubbish. Two minutes left. I've found another ruined portal. But can I find the chest? Well, yes, finally, I can. Nothing in it. Of course, there isn't. There's a pyramid up this way. Less than two minutes left. It, it's got to be in here. Come on, game. Don't let me down, please. Just when I need it. No. Okay, come on, come on. Let's just keep searching. There's got to be a savior somewhere. None of that ruined portal, though. 40 seconds left. I've found the sixth one. Surely this has got to be the last one. And there is absolutely nothing here. But I see one down there. I've got, I've got eight, 19 seconds, 15 seconds. Come on, SB. This is it. We're swooping in. We're not messing about. Let me in, please. Quick. Don't blow the place up, though. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I think we've failed the mission. Which means a Skylim MLG with no totem will soon be happening. But before that, I am going to still try and track down a Notch Apple. And I've now searched 10 of these without finding anything. The odds are not in my favor. What an interesting temple. We've got ourselves a dungeon right by it. Does it? Oh, it does connect as well, but it's, oh, it's got one chest. Well, nothing useful. And that is 17 pyramids I've searched. I've still not found anything. And I've spent 40 minutes looking. This is really not going to plan. And this is the 20th one. Can't believe I've searched so many without success and nothing has changed. Finally, after searching 23 of these stupid pyramids, I have found the Not Chapel. It, it took just less than an hour, 59 minutes and 50 seconds. Just in the nick of time, and I am most certainly now going home. And look at this. A giant bastion with a netherite ingot. And there's another one here with another netherite ingot. And it is now very nice to be back home. I can get all of these different items repaired and add this Notch Apple to the wall. Although despite that, I did fail the challenge, so I can no longer hold that totem. And last episode, I got so many suggestions for the name of my new ocelot. But I've decided to call him Leo. Yes, Leo the ocelot. I thought that's a, that's a really good name. And what are you, what are you guys all looking at? Oh, the new poster for 4,000 days is here. Looks like you guys aren't too happy that you're forced to stare at it, but I have personally signed each and every one of these, which took a very long time. And they are limited edition, which means once they're sold out, they are gone forever. Just like all these other ones, you, you gotta get them for your collection. And I've also signed one of them with a special gold pen. And the one random lucky person that gets that poster will get a free Nintendo Switch with Minecraft as well. They'll probably run out in less than a week, so get them whilst you can at sp 73 uh, sp737.store the link is in the description. And you may be wondering, why have I come to the end portal room? Well, if we hop on through, apparently my game has, has frozen. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't know what's happened. It's it's frozen if I try to move around, but I can pause the game. I'm going to try and lower the render distance or something. Okay, for some reason, being in third person is okay. Wait, we're okay now? It's... I don't even know. Did that? Did, what happened here? Did the wither escape or something? I don't remember. I think maybe TNT went through the portal or something. That was the problem with that. I, I don't know why everything went laggy, but we're, we're okay now. I decided I'm going to do the totemless water bucket MLG at the end of the video so I actually have a video for you guys to watch in case I die, because there is a there's a decent chance of me dying. And I wouldn't want this video to only be about three minutes long. Bro, what is going on? Why is it updating so slowly? <laughs> it's weird. This is so weird. Oh my goodness, what is over there? There's just like a million... I can't even see it, but I'm gonna die here if I'm not careful. It's like, I just flew over towards the Enderman farm. Okay, come on, SP. Don't die, don't fall in the void to lag. I'm just spamming rockets here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so over, <laughs> over in that direction. Okay, they all despawn. Were they, what were they? Were they particles? It was the TNT, I think, not detonating. Because this is crazy. But everything is now absolutely fine. Must have been the TNT back from when I blew up the M portal room area. I was very worried for a second. But anyway, I'm going to remove all of this old dragon farm that's broken and ruined. Because of course, we're going to need the space to make a bigger and better one. And there's no time like the present, so let's get busy clearing everything up. And now that this has all been removed, I should also destroy this contraption all the way up here. And before I'm ready to do any building of the new dragon farm, I'm going to need to collect quite a few resources. And what's one of the main ones? Gas tears. I need lots and lots of gas tears. <laughs> 43 isn't going to be enough. And before we start that quest, let me grab a hoe and then dry out all this sponge. And then it is time for a little bit of good news. Earlier in those two bastions, I found two ingots. And if I put that with the seven that I already have in this shulker box, I can craft a block of netherite and add yet another one to the netherite beacon. Hopefully I'll get a few more than that today, but, but for now that's good progress. And no doubt a lot of you guys would love an up-to-date world download for 4,000 days. Well, if this video gets 250,000 likes, 
I'll release one in the next episode. If you pull that off, it would be my most liked video ever, which, <laughs> which would be insane. Now, in order to solve the gas tier situation, I'm going to need lots and lots of items. And that is every resource gathered up. Although I should also grab some obsidian. That, that, that bit's kind of important. And we, <laughs> we've got a lot of obsidian. And glass. Whilst I'm here, I'm grabbing glass. And now, some of you may remember, I, I actually already have a gas farm. It's this very nice big farm right here. And I'm going to go and head on through because this is where the ghasts will teleport. And I believe the gas tiers go into one of one of these. But as you can see, we, we've not got much there. It's slow. That's all I can say. It's slow. So the plan is to first break this portal. And then I'm going to build up way higher into the sky. Look at that. I can build the scaffolding as I'm climbing. And now that I'm up here, I can begin building a portal. Now my portal can be created. These walls will hold in the ghast. And the composters are very important to make sure it doesn't escape. And now for a bit of fancy redstone like so. This is what's going to turn the portal on and off. Which is going to teleport the gas back through. And will allow me to use the looting on this farm and that is what will quadruple the speed of the farm now i shall create a hopper clock and that is portal number one complete and then above it i'm pretty much building the same thing as what i did down there except i should probably have that composite to be one higher there we go that's much better then i can add the portal walls and the mission has been accomplished but i'm, I'm missing a very important item and, and you guys <laughs> You just missed me. A bunch of iron is required and also a load of flint. Although we, we haven't really got much flint. However, if I grab some gravel, I can then break the flint using Fortune 3 and guarantee myself to get one every single time. I know it'd be fast with a shovel, but I am going to Fortune 3 one of them. And now with mission accomplished, I can craft a bunch of flint and steels and fill up this chest. There we go. These need torches on the end so that the hopper clock is going to actually work. But I'm also going to need to actually put items into the hopper clock. And look at that. One of the portals has been lit as well. Well, at any moment now, there we go, look at that, swaps perfectly. I think my work here is done. Right here is the very middle of this part of the farm. I'm going to grab a bunch of scaffolding again and stack it up right here. Although, having said that, there is already a platform up here anyway. Although, it's a little bit higher up than I need for the portal to work. So, you know what, let's just go back to the scaffolding idea. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Why did you guys not teleport? Is it... Could you... Oh my goodness, it's carnage here, guys. We've got gas everywhere. You guys get out of it. Come on, you're meant to be able to teleport. I think they've, they're coming through and then they're coming back through. It's carnage, guys. It's absolutely carnage that I'm getting out of <laughs> I probably should have built that top portal before building the overworld ones. Now, I've made it to the height I want to be. I'm going to have the portal right here. This platform is it's kind of in the way now. Now to build a bit of a collection system, which will make use of these hopper minecarts. And now I've built this little area that will trap the ghasts when they come through. They'll get stuck thanks to the composters. I'm going to light the portal and... In theory, if it's correct, if it's working, gas should already start to come through. I don't know if it will, though, because I think there might be an overload of gas. Maybe I need to fly up first just to unload those ones. And now we wait. Okay, something's happening because gas is spawning and, and things are coming through. But the gas aren't getting teleported back. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? This is... This is a disaster. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've now got the farm working again. So I'm hopeful that this time we can wait and, and everything should work. There we go. Wait, a ghast has come through. So I stand here and I take out the ghasts. And these chests nicely fill up with loot. And I'm very pleased with how well this farm is working. Which means I can grab obsidian and also a load of stone bricks. And now I can expand this farm to add even more portals. This layer has been completed. Now that I have obsidian farm, I can just make so, so many of these. I might... I might try and go as high as I can. Look at that, there's a lot of gas there as well. But yeah, I think I'll go as high as I can go without messing up all of the portal connections. And I've now successfully added many more layers. I just need to spawn proof these portals, then light these final ones, and the farm should run so, so much faster. It's absolutely massive. There's already a bunch of gas up here, which I can easily take out in one fell swoop, and more keep coming through very, very quickly. This is definitely the new fastest way to get plenty of gas tiers. The loot effect really makes this so, so much more profitable. And now that I have more than enough gas tiers, I can focus on the next project, which is it's a bit of a mini project. Let's chuck all of that in there, and then I'll grab this string and the shulker boxes and get busy covering this entire mega base so that not a single piece of snow can spawn. This is going to take a lot of string. And for once, I'm actually very glad that it has started snowing because it means I can see any bits that I might have missed with the string where snow can fall. And I believe every bit is now covered. There's no snow that can form anywhere. That's, a, that's another job jacked off. Might as well get all these resources back home as well. Well, as many of them, of them as I can. Can't quite fit all of them in my inventory. And for this next project, I'm going to create something that won't be able to be made in 1.19. 
So I want to do it now. It's going to begin by me digging a tunnel down here in the treasure room. Yeah, we're, we're going to be expanding into this area now. I'll have some stairs like this. And I can use this extra stone that I am mining to make more stone bricks. Because stone reserves, as you, as you can imagine, are a little bit low at the moment. But we can easily now do something like that. And now that I've dug this down far enough, it's time for me to create an update suppressor. You've seen me build these many times before, but it is the last time I'm going to make one. So I shall grab all of the resources and get cracking. And the whole thing is, is now complete. It took a lot more mining out than I first thought. And next, my vision for this room is to have quite a lot of white on the walls. And I reckon white concrete may be the answer. Though as you can see, we, we need way, way more of it. Which means grabbing a few stacks of sand, as well as some gravel, crafting it, and adding it to this machine, where it will all be placed down. And in a very short space of time, all of it has been blown up by that TNT and filtered into these chests. Before I can actually do anything to the walls, I, I think it'd be a good idea to mend my pickaxe. I don't really want any more to break in my world. And so this gold farm will solve that problem. Next, I should also grab the materials that I'm going to make these fancy... Have I even told you guys what I'm about to do? I guess you could probably tell from the update suppressor, but I'm going to be using that to build a room full of really cool custom portals. What's the point of these portals? Well, well for now, there won't be too much. But once I update to 1.19, I won't be able to make these, so I'm going to take the opportunity whilst I can. First things first, I will switch switch the update suppressor on, break this bit of obsidian, and also this one, then they can be changed to diamond blocks, and then I need to raise up this slime a little bit, so that I can move the rails up without the machine, like, connecting on the slime, so there we go, then I can break these, because it's once again all suppressed, then I need to do some more modifications up here, which isn't quite as straightforward as it was for the last one, but something like this, it works. Okay, that's that's all I was hoping for. I can then move these to be all the way at the top. I, I think I, I think it's yeah. <laughs> can't believe this is actually working, guys. It's gone very very dark and you can't see the portal. But look at that, nicely exposed. And I can break all of this. Look at this. It's, oh, it's definitely coming together. Now it's going to move downwards. Which I, I think if I just do something like this. And uh, maybe not slightly modified it does does this work <laughs> i have no idea i'm, I'm going to find out the hard way if it, if it doesn't work because it's all going to break but if i break this little bit of obsidian look at that update suppression is still working so this is this is the way to do it because i can do that and then i can also do these bottom ones there we go and just like that we now have ourselves a diamond portal. I think it looks very, very cool, but uh, we need more. And now I just have to extend this line so that I can make the second portal. Had a bit of an issue putting the longer one without getting in the way of this diamond portal. If, if this works, it would be a miracle, innit? I don't think it's quite quite there. And after a few more adjustments, the update suppressor is working and extended. But I would like there to be an ancient debris portal right here. I mean, we're, we're not really rich enough to... Uh, to afford a netherite portal. Although having said that, we are technically rich enough. And after this episode, I'll never have the chance to make a netherite portal again. So you know what? As much as it pains me to do this. We're mining up this netherite. This is like 10 hours of work down the drain. But you know what? I, I don't care. That was actually a bit of a lie. I, I do care very much about what I'm doing right now. But I'm sure it'll be worth it when the project's finished. So as always, we first start with the obsidian. Light it up and then begin mining. Those two are gone so we can add in the two netherite blocks. And this is where I'm going to start to get a little bit stuck. Because I've got to actually extend this rail to now go upwards. Which means moving all of this up by one. And it wasn't actually as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Because now it's budded. And when I break this, look at that, it still works perfectly. And then I need to raise everything up by one block again. After using pretty much every single brain cell in my body, I have come up with what is actually a very simple solution. I have worked out a solution which should work perfectly. Okay, wait, it didn't quite. One moment, I just need to do something like this. And there we go. Update suppression is back on. I just realized I could... I, you know what? That's what I did. All right, if you get that, well done. If you don't, most people don't. I'm not sure even I do. Let's just get on with this netherite portal. Oh my goodness. I messed up. And for some reason, I thought I could just break that block. Oh no, now I've got to <laughs> start all over again. I really can be a stupid idiot sometimes. I raise it up so that this time when I break the top one, it won't be a disaster. As you can see, the, the portal's still there. And I can place these netherite blocks on. Guys, I've, I've just realized something. I've duplicated netherite. I've, I've broken all my principles. Update suppression allows you to duplicate blocks. And I accidentally duplicate the netherite because I started with 14 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 now I've got 22. What, what, what do I do? I'll tell you what I'm now going to do. There we go. That is now completed and I now understand what's going on. Look, if I go ahead and mine this block, watch what happens 
Okay, we don't pick it up, but then if I go ahead and place a block, and then I click on the inventory, it comes back, and then I, and then I, and then if I stopped update suppressing, I could then break the block like so. He's probably going to go through the. Okay, well, for demonstration purposes, but I can see how he's duplicating. And this netherite port. What the heck? What? Why is every time I redo this portal, I'm just duplicating more and more netherite. This time, I've done it. No, no more mistakes. Netherite portal is complete. Let's get those blocks down. I built it in the wrong flipping place. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but I, I just cannot do anything right. And now just look at all these netherite blocks that I've got. I came with 14, now I've got 62. This time, there will be no mistakes. And this time, the portal is finished <laughs> and it is in the right place. Thank goodness for that. Well, my next issue is that I have these 61 blocks of netherite that are all duplicates I, I shouldn't have these i also have these 10 blocks of diamonds which i think i also duplicated them by mistake and what am i going to do with all of these duplicated blocks well of course i'm going to finish this netherite beacon don't know why i didn't think of this sooner this is way better than mining for netherite you know what who cares about duplicating you know you guys always tell me to duplicate sand and i always say well i might as well duplicate netherite if i'm going to do that and then i've only going to do it so I, I might as well duplicate sand as well i'm actually kidding by the way i i don't plan to use this this duplicated netherite that's cheating and i think i placed way too many netherite blocks for that joke because now i have to spend ages mining them all up. Could have just placed three of them down and called it a day. Also, do you notice how I cleverly kept all those ones separate from the ones that are not duplicated? Because, you know, I, I wanted to keep the originals separate. And now let's head to the nether and burn all the netherite. Oh, there it goes. We'll burn the diamond blocks as well. Oh, what a shame. Burnt a load of netherite. Didn't need to do that. And meanwhile, I shall build the next of the custom portals. This one's going to be an emerald one. And this one is now also complete, which means I need to burn these emerald blocks as well. We don't allow duplicating in this world. And I've also created the gold portal. And I've wanted to make one out of redstone blocks, but I think it updates something. So yeah, it doesn't work. Instead, I've done one with amethyst. Five custom portals have been created. And I do want to do five more on this side. But first, I've got to get rid of these blocks that I accidentally duplicated. And the lava's got to be the best place for that. No oh, look at that. My, my netherite's still here. I, I guess I'll have to keep it. Yeah, all this lovely netherite. We're not getting rid of it. I feel like I can only make that joke so many times. You know, I wonder if it's these snowballs that caused all the lag for me before. If that guy's throwing snowballs for hours, yeah, and, and then they, they all just kind of get thrown at once when I load the entrance. I, that's the problem. And so that means I should turn this chunk loader off and place a redstone block here so that that guy stops throwing snowballs. Look at that. Look at that. You see them all? They just, they just came through. That was the problem. That was what caused the lag. I saw the snowballs. Okay. I nearly died because of a million snowballs. That's interesting. Anyway, we've got all these netherites going in the void, guys. Okay. That, that is that is where there will be no issues, okay? I, I will not be going after... Oh, I'm jumping in after it. No, just kidding. Look, watch it. Watch it get destroyed. There we go. It's all gone. I'm not going to get destroyed with it. Let me, let me fly back out of here. Yeah, that was a little risky. I mean, like, have plenty of durability. I've got plenty of rockets. Maybe not that risky. And now I should get back to creating custom portals. First one's been lit. And the sandstone's going to go along here. And I believe to turn a corner, I've got to do... So I've never really done this before, so yes, this, this might not work. But I believe something like that is needed, and then I can... Can I go in this day? Is this how, how it works? <laughs> this works. It will be nothing short of a miracle. And after a lot of trial and error, I've managed to send it around these two corners. When I do this, everything gets update suppressed. And I've also realized it makes the most sense to do the end one first and then work my way that way. So let's get creating the portals. I want the end one to be made out of beacons, although I, I'm going to need a few more for that. So let's craft all of them together. Then I'll place a bit of white concrete behind where the beacons would go. And then we do something like that. The reason the white concrete's behind is because you, you can see through beacons. And that is the beacon portal. Portal now complete. The duplicated ones can be burnt. And next I want some glowstone for custom portal number seven. And now this one is done as well. And I want this one to be made out of mushroom blocks. But I don't think I've ever got any of them in my world. It's one of those things that I've, I've never felt the need to collect. Well, there's mushrooms up ahead, which I can mine with this silk touch pickaxe. And now that I've got 14, I can chuck away that spare glowstone. Okay, why? Oh, blocks of netherite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when I... Right. I'll explain a story. I have been doing more netherite block duping because when I was trying to get this update suppressor to go around corners, I, I did accidentally briefly break the netherite portal. So it had to be redone. So I better chuck all these into the void. And the mushroom portal can now be created. There we... All right, well, gotta do it again. And there we go. Although mushroom portals are a little bit more complicated because if you break a block next to a mushroom block, it will break the portal. But I, I think this one... It's okay because it's update suppressed. I don't know if I break that one, it won't work though. But I need the white concrete in between. So I can't place white concrete there unless I suppress... Yeah, <laughs> mushroom portals are weird. So will placing this break it? 
No, okay. Maybe I don't quite understand the, the mechanics of mushroom blocks as well as I thought. But anyway, that doesn't matter because it is time to do the next one. I think I'll grab the materials for the final two, actually. Pumpkins is something I shall need. And they also need to be carved. And I can craft them like that. Very nice. And continue the building work. Bit difficult getting all this machine to work, but I have now <laughs> finished this one. I've got one to go. It's going to be made of magma. Hopefully it goes to plan. Kind of against the odds, it, it is going to plan. Oh, and I spoke too soon. I am now so close to finishing this. It's been a very, very awkward one. But once I place that, it is all done. And we can put that there. I don't have to worry about it. I can now break the rails. No problem. And the 10 custom portals are complete. I do just want to add concrete all the way around the mushroom one to make sure nothing breaks that might break. But I think I think it's all okay. Yep, it's all completely fine. I, I don't see anything that can go wrong anymore. <laughs> Famous last words. So I reckon I can safely remove the entire contraption. Things are starting to look a lot tidier. I can start removing all of this as well. Then I can go around it with the white concrete. Everything is starting to come together. Next, I will need some sea lanterns, which I apparently have loads of in there. Plus, I'm thinking prismarine bricks, which can be turned into stairs. Iron blocked because I have a ridiculous amount of iron. And if I head to spawn, I can grab all of this spare light blue concrete that I didn't use on that mega base. And then I can use the concrete to fill in the floor. The room's really starting to come to life. And I want stairs in front of each portal which is why I haven't filled in these edges so we're going to just do something like that which goes all the way around and then in each of these gaps is where the sea lanterns are going to go it'll just nicely light up the room currently working on the walls which involves a lot of iron blocks and this is sort of how it's going to look it still looks a bit uh, a bit rubbish but maybe with a bit more white concrete i can sort it out it may be helped a little but there's still work to be done i was going to make this back wall to be only white concrete but it's going to look terrible so I'm, I'm adding a bit of decoration to it and in order to do that i'm going to need quite a bit of glass and also some lava. And so the glass is going to go in these gaps that I am creating. Very nicely done. And before I add the lava, I've just got to make sure that it, it, it won't go everywhere. You know, I don't want it to go onto all this machine. So I'll get these walls all filled in. And also the roof. And I'm pretty sure it should now be... Oh, what on earth? <laughs> Didn't expect to fly all the way down there. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure it should, should now all be fine if I just do something like that. Yeah, look at that. The lava's flowing. It's, it's working perfectly. And look at that. I had enough lava buckets as well. I, I didn't expect that to be the case. So that means I can fill in all of the white concrete as well. And I was going to say, look at that, it's really coming together, but for some reason something didn't work. Probably can't count or something like that, but yeah, one more lava bucket will do the trick. I like the look of that, and I didn't accidentally get lava everywhere either. And now to get this left wall done, I almost finished the wall, but uh, then I ran out of concrete. And I'm going to need quite a bit of concrete for the entire roof, so I might as well craft a load more. Although there's one slight issue with that, uh, <laughs> not enough sand. So I'm going to craft a bunch of TNT and grab some iron pressure plates. I can never remember where I put them. Okay, I do put them in there. And then I just need to find a desert that I can demolish. Kind of already ruined this desert, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to just use this little area left and finish the job. I've not done too much blowing up, but I think I've got enough for what I need for the time being. That's the shulker box full of sand. Plus the inventory, yeah, that's that's absolutely perfect. Then I can craft plenty more of the white concrete, convert it with the machine. Next, I can finish this wall and get the scaffolding out to begin work on the roof, which is going to be completely made out of white concrete. And that is all complete. The scaffolding can be removed, which is it's just satisfying to watch because you just kind of break them and you just look at it. It just all collapses right in front of your very eyes like, uh, well, like that. And that leaves me with one wall left. What am I going to do with this wall? Well, I'm going to require quite a lot of obsidian for the project. And then I'm going to create some art. You never know, there's a chance that you might work out what it's going to be. Go on, I'll give you guys a guess. I barely placed anything. Any ideas? <laughs> if you did have an idea, then uh, you're, you're pretty much just a genius. Oh, now you know, don't you? I bet you can tell what it's going to be now. Unfortunately, I have once again run out of all the concrete, but it's finished. This is, uh, this is what it will look like. Yeah, I need a bit more to go in that corner. But what do you think for that? That's a pretty uh, pretty nice design. Still not quite finished, but, but but it'll get there. And so it's back to converting more concrete. And so that is all of the white concrete pretty much placed down. And next I'm going to go around this edge with obsidian. Very bizarrely, I, I can hear shulkers. What on earth? There's shulkers living <laughs> <laughs> in here. Okay, well, uh, you guys, sorry to disturb you. I am very, very sorry. I'll leave you guys alone. If I ever need another shulker, I, uh, I know where to find one. Anyway, the full obsidian border is done, but I am not done because I'm also going to have obsidian at the back of it, which is it's going to require quite a lot. Did I bring enough? Possibly not. But either way, we are soon going to find out. And that is mission accomplished. Did I, wait, did I place that final one? <laughs> Maybe it's not mission accomplished. We are about to find out. 
think it was, wasn't it? I never miss. Why would I think that I missed? Anyway, let's mine back out. As you can see, it's it's probably looking a bit worse right now. What's that? It looks like some weird Sonic EXE thing or something. No, instead, I need to grab myself some flint and steel, light that up, and when I turn and look at it, it it's going to look... Like a Sonic the Hedgehog portal! Look at it, it's amazing! Part of me would have liked to use an update suppressor to get the portal blocks to be in, like, in between the obsidian, but you saw how hard it was just to do something simple like this. That would have probably taken me about 20 hours, so I, I, you know, I didn't fancy it. But yeah, the portal room is now complete. I hope you guys like it. I think it's a, a very, very cool room, and I, I won't be able to do this in 1.19. Wouldn't be able to create it, so... That's why I've done it now. Oh my goodness, we haven't even finished these walls. And whilst I fill in these walls, could I maybe just ask that you guys could subscribe? You know, I work so, so hard on this series. It takes so much work. I basically have no social life because of the series. And I'm really trying to hit 4 million subscribers this year. So if you could help me out and subscribe, that would be amazing. The bricks have been filled in, but I could definitely do with some torches to nicely light everything up. And now everything's definitely finished and I'm very, very pleased with it. And now I think I shall take this moment to repair all of my different tools and whatnot. You know, my Elytra could do with a little bit of it. And the best place for that is, of course, going to be this gold farm. Everything repaired and I've gained lots more levels. And now it is time I gather the materials for my machine that will one-shot the dragon. This is gonna be very, very powerful and require a lot more red concrete than I currently have. But at the very least, it's not going to require more sand or gravel than I currently have, because we, well, actually, are we gonna have enough gravel? Maybe that's the, the missing thing. Yeah, we actually do not have enough gravel. Now, there is two ways to get the gravel. I can trade it with piglins, but that, that would take quite a few hours. Or I can go and search for one of the ancient debris tunnels that I've made in the nether. I happen to remember the exact location of one which is right down a hole here. And in this tunnel, there's loads of gravel for me to find. And this tunnel is thousands of blocks long, so I, I don't think I have to worry about running out anytime soon. Managed to fill up my inventory once. I didn't actually realize I'd brought this many shulker boxes. I almost feel like I'm obligated to fill them all now, but that's gonna take a, a, a bit of mining, but it's, it's all here to be gathered. Not sure I need all of the gravel for this build, but it will be useful for future projects. I filled up all the shulker boxes, but I filled up two. I've got a load of inventory. I, I think for now, I've got enough gravel. Although I think I've got lost in these tunnels and I have randomly come across loads more gravel so maybe it is worth grabbing at this point i've just decided to dig my way out but even doing that means that i still can't stop finding the gravel oh my goodness look at that a little bit of ancient debris as well for my time and not just one piece <laughs> well if i can pick up it pick it up at least two pieces could it be three it could be three well that was a very nice little find indeed and now i'm just gonna risk everything and swim up through the lava i think i might be able to even fly upwards maybe I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm hitting. Some sort of roof. Is it a bastion or something above me? All I know is that it is impossible for me to die, so, you know. <laughs> I say. Right, look, I am in some sort of bastion. And my totem is not close to... It's not far off being used. Okay, I've actually got to be a little bit careful. Imagine someone just comes and grabs me. Have I been to this bastion before? I don't even know. What a, what a cool thing that would be if it's just a random bastion. Watch this. Oh, look at this. More ancient debris. Oh, wow, this is, this is really cool. Could there be an old chaplain here? I'll tell you what, I'll take the diamonds. Okay, um, watch out for that big guy, but... Whoa! Okay, now I've got to be careful. Now, I've, okay, we've got we've got fire resistance. I actually do not want to die. I've, I've, I've almost died. Of... Okay, hold on, speak. Don't, don't panic. <laughs> oh my goodness, what am I doing with my life in a bastion? Right, get myself another totem ASAP. That was way more stressful than it ever should have been. Okay, let's put all that back in there. We're okay. <laughs> I just want to go home. What did I say before? I can't die. Yeah, well, those were famous last words, weren't they? Well, they, they were almost famous last words anyway. What are the chances of digging up under a bastion? Have I been to that bastion before as well? Well, I guess not, considering the loot that was there. But let's not worry about that. Let's just go ahead and get home and find another bastion on the way. Is this is this a similar size one? I, I, the thing is, it, you just don't know what... Right, let's just stop being in lava. But yeah, you just never know what you're going to find in these bastions. I think it is another treasure one by the sounds of... Well, by the size of it. Okay, well, we're straight to lava. Oh, yeah, it is a treasure one, I think. Yeah, alrighty. Let's, um... Let's go ahead and see if there's any loot here to be grabbed. Have I been here before? Uh, I, I, I guess possibly, but I think... I think is that just... Yeah, there's just... Whoa, where did you come from? Only one chest, nothing worth grabbing. Let's keep going home. And I'm glad that I finally made it back. And before I craft the rest of the necessary materials, I'm going to once again repair my items. And I'm particularly talking about repairing my shovel. And that is everything repaired. So now I can happily craft the 2100 red concrete. Got all the necessary materials, which I can craft like so. And add to this shulker box. And now I can take all of this once again to the concrete converter. That did not take long at all. However, there's still many, many more items to get, so... Uh, 
Don't think we're out of the woods just yet. For example, I require 20 stacks of black stained glass, which makes me glad that I built a squid farm not that long ago. That's definitely going to save me a load of time. And I'm also going to grab a load of these emeralds so that I can get a lot of redstone. With the amount of emeralds that my raid farm gives me, this is the fastest way that I can get quite a bit of redstone. That is more than enough for the task at hand, although they have all just restocked again, so it's, you know, it's worth just buying more. When they're willing to sell it, I'm willing to buy it. Slowly but surely, I'm getting all the needed items, but I still need quite a bit more sand. So I'm going to blow up the area around this poor village. That will allow me to craft all the TNT I could possibly need. And now I can get back to collecting up everything else, which includes getting plenty more redstone. Quite a few items that I need are actually... Oh, look at this. I love this room. Just nice to come and see it again. But as I was saying, quite a few items that I need are actually still here on this update suppressor, which, you know, I plan to destroy. I just hadn't got around to it yet. So I'm going to break a bit of it. I don't know if I'll bother breaking the whole thing just yet. Although, you know what? I've decided there's no time like the present. I need a few shulker boxes for the materials and I'll get busy mining. Everything's been removed. That'll probably be the last time I ever make an update suppressor in my world since it won't be in 1.19. Definitely the end of an era. And the helpful thing about all that is I definitely have enough powered rails now for the machine I will build. And also redstone blocks. Could also do with a few stacks of spruce leaves, which the tree farm can easily provide. It would probably be even easier if there wasn't snow everywhere. And I might as well mine up all the spruce wood whilst I'm here as well. And if you ask me, that's been quite a successful harvesting session. Got lots of leaves and lots of logs. Quite the process to get every single item that I need, but I will get there eventually. And I now have every single item that I need in all of these different shulker boxes. So I'm not sure I quite have enough redstone because I had to use quite a bit of it to craft other things that I needed. No problem though, I'll just do a bit more trading and get loads of it again. Perfect, I will not have to worry about redstone anymore today. Now all of these shulker boxes can be transported to the end. In fact, before I go to the end I'm going to grab a bit of wood and I was going to use that to make a chest to put everything, although to be honest that, that chest is kind of otherwise engaged so I think I think I made the right uh, <laughs> the right call in having this so we can just put a chest somewhere over here that's got all my shulker boxes in and I'll continue this project in a bit as I'm, I'm still not quite ready to be making the dragon farm because I feel like in this episode rather than make progress on the netherite beacon like I want to I have unfortunately regressed so that I could make a netherite portal which is it's a cool flex and I suppose I'll never be able to do it again so now my goal is not only make a netherite beacon it's make a netherite beacon and a netherite portal this is this is getting out of control. But anyway, because of that lack of progress, I'm going to go on a TNT collecting spree. And I've tracked down a desert. It has a pyramid right here, which is nice. So this is where I shall set up camp and destroy an entire desert. Although it might not be the entirety of it this right. It might, might just be some of it. The plan is to craft TNT as often as possible. Rather than bring back loads of sand, I'll just kind of craft it as I go. Before I do another row, I, I want to check out what's inside this uh, desert pyramid. You never know. There could be something special. Although I've searched so many of these that we, we do know the answer. You know what? We're taking gunpowder and more gunpowder and sand because that's what we're on a mission for at the moment. And I'm going to take this 19 TNT. It's, it's usually not really worth it, but I feel like, I don't know, on principle I should. And now to get back to blowing things up. Well, mission to fill three shulker boxes was successful. So now I should gather everything up and create another portal. And it's probably the best idea for me to first go home and drop off... <laughs> all these millions of shulker boxes. Even though I literally have millions and millions of shulker shells, I, I'd still feel bad just discarding these empty ones for, for some unknown reason. Although we're at the perimeter now, so we uh, we can't be too far away. All of this can now be dropped off. Then I can dig a big massive tunnel that'll be ready for lots and lots of TNT. I'm also grabbing as much gravel as I can because it, it'll just come in handy whenever I run into it. Although maybe it would have been a good idea to, to bring a few extra shulker boxes. Anyway, I'll grab as much as I can. Let's just get mining. Then I can place the TNT. The tunnel has been dug and all TNT placed. So now I shall light it up, chuck away a load of netherrack because I don't really need it, and then see just how much ancient debris I can find. Already got over a stack just from mining the tunnel. And I have to say, there's already been a lot of ancient debris that has been revealed. Hopefully it continues. And it probably will do when I keep finding these veins of three. And you know what? Sometimes when you see gravel, you just might as well grab it. And I am now up to two stacks on this mining trip with plenty more ancient debris in sight. It's not often you see six ancient debris all in an area this close. And in fact, it's, it's seven, eight ancient debris because uh, this is a vein of three. That could still be a vein of three. But no, it's actually a vein of two. Look at that, we've got some more over there. Things are going very, very well. And that is stack number three. These trips now are not just searching for ancient debris. It's also a great way to get so much quartz and also lots of gravel. That is stack number four. Oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen that much ancient debris that close together. Five pieces all next to each other. Yeah, you never, you never really see that. 
Let's go ahead and grab them. That makes stack number five. Progress is coming along nicely. And that is the sixth one. And now I shall fly back home, grab a load of dirt that I can use as temporary blocks, and then I can begin work on this machine. So I will first grab all of these, then build a dirt tower going up really, really high. And now that I'm at the correct height, I'm going to build a fairly large dirt platform, which can have all of the shulker boxes on it. And I can also mine away at this tower. And so the first thing we're going to build here is the part that is going to shoot out the arrow that will one hit the dragon. So we're going to have something like that. And then I want dark oak fence with nether brick fence on top. And then the same thing here, which might be a little trickier. So I'm just going to do something like that. And from there, I build up with blackstone walls. Things are coming along very nicely. And this is the point where we need to create some headless pistons. I've made these before when I made a raid farm. So it's, it shouldn't be too difficult. There's just going to be a little bit of mining to be done as we replace things. I've also noticed this platform is absolutely full to the brim. <laughs> with endermen. I guess it's because they can't spawn anywhere else, so they're just all spawning on a tiny little platform. So I need redstone dust with a lever like this. Then I need an end crystal there. Bit of fire on top of that. If we can just move away from the end crystal enough, we can set it on fire. Perfect. And then if I just stand back here, <laughs> flick this lever. We've got it. Oh, well, I accidentally fell, but we have got ourselves the headless piston. And now without depowering these, I need to, well, first of all, I need to put these redstone blocks and then I can remove the stuff behind them because if I unpower them, then they'll, they'll just go back to being normal pistons. Now let's continue building this. As I build more and more of this, it is starting to get more and more complicated. And this is just the beginning of the redstone. I feel like at this point, I should probably explain exactly what I'm doing. Basically, higher up, there's going to be loads of TNT that's going to come down and through a load of mechanisms, it's going to all converge here, be sent all the way down here and you know you can see some some movement will happen if i do something like that you can see loads of loads of redstone happens and an arrow is going to come down and the tnt is going to blast the arrow there's going to be so much of it it's going to blast the arrow to go so so fast that it one hits the dragon but all this involves is just basically me doing lots of complicated redstone it's really starting to take a bit of shape now that doesn't need to be there let's uh, spray that but yeah it's, it's starting to take shape but this is where it starts to get really really complicated i'm getting closer and closer to the top i'm, I'm optimistic that i'm going to finish but we need a boat here and this boat is kind of kind of bit of thing if i can place the boat it's going to be the thing that detects if <laughs> is, that, is that far enough in the corner but yeah it's going to be the detection system for when there's an end crystal in that little hole right there. Basically how it works is there's going to be a piston there and then fences either side. And then I use those other pistons to push this down into the boat like so. It can all be mined up, no problem. And because of that pressure plate there, if something activates it, it activates the piston, activates everything. Well, the end crystal blowing up will act will make the boat wiggle. I, can I, can I, can I, uh... Okay, well, it, anyway, it will make it will make the boat go on the uh, the pressure plate one way or another, which will activate this piston and activate the entire machine. And so now I shall get back to building. And I'm also going to break all the concrete above this dirt because it's going to have to have TNT put there anyway, so it's, it, it might as well be removed. Then I'll be able to place it in once the TNT has been added. And I have now nearly reached the top of this. As you can see, it's, it's taking shape. Shall I give you a little bit of a, a look at it? Yeah, look at that. That looks like it could take out an Ender Dragon, doesn't it? <laughs> Very, very nice indeed. I thought the red really fits well. I can't find my fire rockets. There we go. So yeah, I'm just kind of covering up the top now just to really bring everything together. And once I place down this bit of redstone, I do believe the entire thing is finished <laughs> except for the TNT. So the key to adding the TNT is that you cannot place a single one wrong. If I place one above, like, like let's say I place one there by mistake, the whole thing blows up. Any wrong, one wrong placement with the TNT, and the last <laughs> however many hours, four hours, whatever I've spent on this, it, it, it's all going up in, in, well, it's all going to blow up. So I'm just going to take my time. You know, I'm, I'm not going to rush. We're going to be having red concrete on top, and then there needs to be glass on top of that. And I am just being so careful, so slow and steady. Mainly because if something does go wrong, I, I can't really, like, carry on the video because we've... You know, we're on day 4,000. We've got to get this finished. Got to, we've got to get wrapped up as soon as possible. And that's one of the TNT sections done. Just five more to go. Bit of a disaster. I, I seem to have run out of red concrete. I don't know, don't know how that happened. <laughs> and the sun is setting on day 4,000. We don't have much time. I bet the missing concrete is stuck up there in the machine. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what I need to do. I'll grab a few stacks of sand and gravel. Craft it all together and send it through the machine. Now to grab it all, get back to the end and back to placing TNT. And I have now done five out of the six ones so i just need to carefully do the final one on this side without misplacing any tnt and there we go everything should be absolutely perfect 
think I'm ready to take on an Ender Dragon. Now, before I do the test shot, I uh, <laughs> need to get rid of this platform. Sorry, Enderman, you thought you could live here, but the answer is no, you cannot. Let's let's go and get rid of all this. And we're gonna make sure it shoots this arrow directly downward. So it's it's all doing its thing, okay? And it needs to land this arrow right down the middle. Oh no, I didn't I didn't do it. I need to manually fire it. Hold on, I'm not summoning an Ender Dragon just yet, okay? Manual fire. That that should set it all off, okay? It should be happening, and an arrow should land. Don't fall in the thing. But an arrow should land directly in the middle. Let's let's just go and get in position. Yeah, when it when it works, <laughs> an arrow should should come flying down right about here. Would have been cool to stand underneath it and get hit by an arrow that's going a million miles an hour, but um, <laughs> we'll have to just forego that. Unless I've got an idea. Right, we go like that, okay? Arrow aligned perfectly. Then we go and put this in, right, which which should make, I guess once I break that, that should that should now be setting off the mechanisms to shoot the arrow down. I, I want to just get hit by an arrow. <laughs> I don't know why. So if I stand right here, I'm, I'm right in the middle. I'm going to eat up so I've got my full health. I'll make sure Totem's in hand because this is going to hurt. Okay, I think it's coming. An arrow should have been fired down if... If everything's going to plan. And it missed. <laughs> Alright, time for take two. This time I know exactly where to stand. Here it comes. Oh, look at that. There we go. We got one shot by an arrow and used the totem. That's cool. Okay, I hope another arrow doesn't come flying down now. But how cool is that? From full health to nothing in one quick shot. And I've also had a little mod that lets me see what's inside Shulker Box if I hold shift. Because I was just getting annoyed at having to op open each one manually and stuff. So anyway, that that's that. But I am so glad that everything is working. So now I think we, we do this properly. The new machine that is going to one shot the ender dragon and I haven't got what I need. I need a piston and a lever and also a bit of obsidian. So we place that there and then we go ahead and get rid of this. Next I can add a piston that will push that on but the game doesn't kind of register that all four end crystals are there until you place another end crystal in the world and then it realizes. So I'll fire my arrow, place that end crystal and you'll see something is about to happen. There you go. Ender Dragon is beginning to be spawned. The timer is starting. I want to get a good spot to watch the, the show here. Okay, so you can see, yeah, it's happening. All right, the Ender Dragon is spawning. Where do I stand to watch this uh, This beautiful, beautiful thing? I don't want to miss it. Okay, here we go. Wait, don't stand here. It's me. No, 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 get out of there. <laughs> that was a bad place to stand. Right, here we go. Here we go. It's starting. Ender Dragon spawns in. There we go, and it gets defeated in one shot. That's it. You think you're so powerful, Ender Dragon. No. You gracefully land right there, and it's defeated. I can't even see the machine up there because of the fog, but what an incredible machine this is. Such a much, much better dragon slayer thing than the last one that I built. Also kind of a penguin slayer because it, it did hit me, but anyway. So, I, I, we're on day 4001 now, and I've got one last thing that I promised that I would do in this world. Yes, I, I've got to do a jump, an MLG from Sky Limit. And you guys don't know if I survive or not because I still have technically survived 4,000 days in Hardcore Minecraft. I just might not survive 4,001 days. This is the bucket that I choose. And this is the water. <laughs> That needs to say, why am I even doing this? Is it worth it? Some of you are probably saying, no, it's, it's, it's not worth it to the screen. <laughs> but hey, I've been doing this world for ages. I've got to spice it up one way or another. And I'm not just going to do sky limit to the, the top of the world. No, no, no. We're going all the way down to bedrock. The stakes have got to be high here, okay? There will be no totem in this. I can actually feel my heart start to be beating. It's, <laughs> it's going a little faster than it was before. Farms are getting sweaty. I didn't think I was going to be this nervous by it. So I've, I've done this MLG before, but I had a totem in my hand. So totem, you go there, okay? Cannot equip me elytra. We, we've got to be elytraless. I think it's time I stop stalling. The uh, the sun is going down. It's going to be the day, end of day 4001. Let's just do it. Here we go. All right. The first question is, do we make it through this hole? I hope so. I, I lined it up correctly. Yep, I did. Okay. Now... There we go. We landed it. Thank goodness for that. I couldn't really see the ground as I was coming down and I started to get a little bit nervous because it's, it's too much of a small hole to see where I'm going to land. I don't know why I even decided to ever do that. I'm never doing that again. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a day late finishing, but that was 4,001 days in hardcore Minecraft. Thanks so much for watching and being on the journey. And thank goodness the journey is still going to continue.